Hello everybody, welcome to the Elite League with myself, Epidemnos. Joining me is Danog. We're coming in for day two of the Swiss stage. And with our first game coming up shortly, it is going to be Virtus Pro versus Aurora. Now, we did have a look at Virtus Pro, and this was in the first days of the Swiss stage. And unfortunately for them, they were beaten 
um, by Secret, which actually took us by surprise, didn't it, Dan? I got 2-0 from Secret, because uh, even in the interview that they mentioned, they said that they weren't having themselves the greatest of games at the moment, but mm -hmm. they were actually able to start prevailing, and maybe it's a new page for them. Maybe it is. Maybe it's Afu, you know, just getting a little bit more comfortable playing with him. Gotta say, though, I, I know Boom said they felt like they were in a really comfortable spot in game number one. And yeah, the win probability was kind of favoring them for the majority of it. But it did reach that point where they were really under the pump with an alchemist that just got a little bit too far out of control. And yeah, I think they just let it drag too late, VP. They, they looked... They looked... Uh, what's the right word here? competitive at least in both of their games mm. against secret right like they it, it was never a blowout gotta say it had to be a bit of an opposite story for aurora yes it was a, a one two loss that they took against enigma galaxy but those losses were not competitive at all it was like 22 and 27 minutes that they just got absolutely stomped and even the game that they won which was game number two they came back from like a 21k net worth deficit so uh clearly something's going on in that early game that needs to be fixed yeah, we'll see how we have a look at the game, though, against Aurora, which is mm -hmm. the team that they'll be going up against within this first series. So, looking at Aurora, they did actually go one game. They did win one game within the best of three, but unfortunately, they did lose the other two, and that was against Enigma Galaxy. So, with us having uh, two loser teams of the first series, they will be going up against each other. So I, I think you mentioned here a little bit about the Swiss stage, about, you know, when, when there's a winner versus a winner, then the winner goes up against the winner and the loser goes up against the loser of the other series. So it makes it for a lot closer games and uh, it, a, it a lot more exciting to watch. We, we heard that from Boom as well, coming through in that uh, winner's interview that we had with Secret. I got to say, I, I don't envy you having to call boom on secret taking on boom esports coming up later on that's going to be i'm sure very confusing but uh yeah no definitely it was a well-deserved win from them like they said the swiss stage means a lot more close games winners play winners losers play losers and you know, it just means that every single game has a lot on the line basically the the winner of this first series will have a little bit of breathing room the loser though will only be one loss away from just being knocked out of the entire tournament and then later on when it gets Ooh. to some of those winner series the winner of secret versus boom will be one game away from being able to progress through to the group stage so you know it's uh really high stakes coming through at every stage of this tournament and that's what you want you don't want these like leagues that last forever and ever and ever and you know the, the games don't have that same weight to them definitely not this time though as we have a look at the vp roster gotta say squadix looked pretty damn good throughout uh, that series even though they lost 0-2 his win ranger in game number one was absolutely amazing. I like the fact that they were able to flex it to Kiritich, but it never really felt like it came online in that game too. So we'll have to see if they've got the stuff to be able to defeat Aurora. And, you know, maybe maybe they were kind of studying the, uh, the Enigma series that Aurora was playing yesterday, right? Because, like I was saying before, laning stage really does seem to be the bane of their existence. If it gets to late game, there's not too many better teams. Like, Falcons is probably up there, and, like, the best teams in the world, like a game in Gladiators and Spirits. But uh, Aurora definitely has that in their back pocket. They just got to work on that first 10, 15 minutes. So, speaking a little bit more about Aurora here, because we've already seen Versus Pro play at hand. Um, tell us a little bit about Aurora, if you do have some back information on it Dan. okay well, well what do you expect from this team going up against virtus pro i honestly i expect to win coming through from them you know this is a really talented roster um clearly the loss of makoto has kind of hit them a little bit hard but coming in with Lorinov, they had a big uptick in terms of their performances as soon as he joined as like a stand-in and then ever since then they've just kind of gone from strength to strength they're breezing through a lot of these other qualifiers within the southeast asian region but for whatever reason that like Nigma crushed them. It was not even close. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just keen to see what they're able to have out of their back pocket. Maybe some of their key heroes are being targeted, like Q's Tiny, for example. He's one of the best support Tinies in the world. So, um, you know, I'm keen to see if that gets focused down. I think we actually have a fair few common interest heroes between these two teams, like the Lashrak, the Mars, the Razor, the Sven, the Morphling. They're definitely ones that are up there. So. I'm keen to see how both of these teams kind of approach the drafting phase. 
And speaking of drafting phase, we do have ourselves a draft getting underway, ladies and gentlemen. So hopefully we'll be able to present you with that draft soon, as we're already getting into the ban phases here. I'll be quite intrigued to see whether what you just mentioned about uh, both teams actually having some contest on heroes that both the teams play and see whether they will leave them for each other in the pool here so they can first pick them or they will ban them away. It always makes it quite intriguing when both the teams actually play the same heroes here. So maybe perhaps they'll go a different option and some orthodox heroes like we did see yesterday or maybe perhaps mm -hmm. they'll just pick up the same of what we used to. Maybe, maybe. I mean, we were interviewing Devai Lama after Heroic's win yesterday, right? And he said it's very important to him to have a really widespread, diverse hero pool so that you can't really get exploited quite as much in the draft. And, I mean, these bands coming through from... I think those those logos might be switched, actually. So it's it's VP that have gone ahead and banned the Lashrak, the Tiny, the Chen, and the Timbersaw, which is completely on board with my thinking. Like, um... The Tiny in particular, it's a Q specialty. The Lashrak, Loranoff played it five games straight for five wins uh, in, I believe, Dream League qualifiers. Uh, Chen busted, and they didn't feel comfortable enough to pick it up first for themselves, and they don't really play the Timbersaw all that much, whereas Jabs loves to play it. So, um, yeah, this all kind of sticks true for me. Yeah, so just to confirm, folks, especially what Danok said, um, just just kind of swap the uh, the logos around here uh, on, on the draft phase here. So it's actually VP that pick themselves up the Conquer, and Aurora, they get themselves the Dragon Knight. They have just banned up the Death Prophet. Uh, we have seen that quite a few times. I don't think we've seen it be very impactful though at the moment Dan. Like, have we this vp uh, the, uh, Maybe, the dp here sorry the, no dp for vp uh yeah I, I i guess it's it's worked really well in like one game or so but i just don't know if you can commit a core to it the the times that it has worked is when it's been like an all-in push style strat and i i think push is it's always been important in Dota, but more than ever, right? Uh, one thing I do like about the Dragon Knight that they've picked up on Aurora, though, that was one of the heroes that they played when they won against uh, Enigma in that game number two. And um, I, I like the fact that both Loranoff and Jabs can play it. So again, there's the flex there. Doesn't really feel like a 23 Savage hero, but again, not too many people are playing the one DK. It's only the small handful of people. So I think it's fine enough to be able to open up with it. Tanky, frontliner, a stun, some push, and flex. It just provides you a lot. Yeah, and I think we were touching on the fact that it's also quite a basic hero as well, right? Not not, not to kind of shunt all the pros that do indeed play the hero, but it's, uh, you know, blink in, stun, dragon form, you're done. But that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's about it. Maybe, yeah, a BKB and maybe a Manta is all you really need to be worried about. There is at least another layer of complexity that gets added in there when you've got the Ags, right? Like, do you use one of your illusions to, like, go up on a cliff, for example, when it's got the free path thing, just to provide that little bit of extra vision for the team fight? Do you use that to specifically push a little bit more? It, it doesn't just become as simple as big body hit tower when dragon. Like, it, it just becomes a, you know, a little bit more complicated. So uh, the fact that they've gone ahead and gotten rid of the Undying, I think they just want to keep that flex open for themselves. One, it's an FNG staple, not really something that Ollie plays all that much. He prefers his, like, he plays more like a, an Elder Titan or a Clockwork or, you know, a little bit more, I guess, different styles of melee pos fives just because 23 savage does tend to lean a little bit more towards the range style like he's got a great morphling although didn't really show it against nigma yesterday got stomped uh medusa he's been playing a lot lately drow he's even not shy of picking up something like that so uh i'm keen to see maybe that they're going to pick up something for ollie in this next little bit that kind of fits that mold I mean, the Marana comes out with the second pick, though, here for VP. So something to combine with the Sacred Arrow, especially the X Marks and the Torrent. That should provide more than enough time for Marana to get into position, because that takes quite a long while in order to set up the X Marks and the Torrent. What comes up for Aurora? Now, we saw this before, Danog. We did indeed see an Elder Titan from Davai Lama yesterday, and it was uh, disgusting. And mm -hmm. I, I think it was the fact that it was indeed up against the Meepo, which just made it all that more disgusting because, you know, you place it upon the clones, it counts as a hero, you get more damage, and if you have an Agnims, then you have got yourself some spell immunity for days. They put themselves up 
Rubik here too to go with the Elder Titan. Just feels like comfort to me from Aurora coming through. Uh, like I was saying before, Ollie much more likely to be the one playing this Elder Titan this game, unless for whatever reason VP decide to pick a Meepo. Uh, or, or maybe even a Morphling, you never know. Uh, Elder Titan is actually pretty decent against the Morph as well. But I, I'm a little worried about what I was saying leading into this game in terms of Aurora's somewhat weakness when it comes to the early game right i gotta say rubik elder titan you're not like 100 to zeroing anyone just off of those two making rotations even dk it's not exactly a huge amount of that burst damage so i kind of want to see that come through with these next two heroes that they get you know something either for savage that is it's like a free pause one game for a, a hyper farmer for whatever they have uh, or something that actually is going to get a little bit more active, considering you've now got an ET and a DK to stand in front of you and tank up a little bit of that damage. So um, I, I, I'm a little concerned at their damage output, especially against something like a Kunker, who's already quite tanky already, especially with that uh, run buff. Yeah, I agree. I feel like they do need themselves something active here on Aurora, because Rubik and Elder Titan, they are very good heroes in terms of uh, the middle stages of the game, you know, fighting in regards to team fights, but when it comes to trying to help on the side lanes and trying to get pickoffs and rotate around, they're not the best heroes. I mean, we had ourselves a, I think a Rubik and Mirana game. Uh, I can't remember if that was yesterday or back a while ago, but we mentioned it was yesterday. Uh, about, it was yesterday <laughs> about the fact that um, you know these two heroes together, it it it, it can be danger. Uh, when you pick these up because they're not the best rotators together and they don't really provide all that much in the team fights when they're together. I mean, we saw that. If you have yourself a mad Rubik game, then it really goes downhill and it feels like you don't even have a hero on your team. But they pick themselves up faceless void here for Aurora, uh, the strongest of strong carries. We don't see it that often, but it is a very solid carry hero about the fact you can Chronosphere and destroy someone and i can see a few squishy heroes here on the side of vp if they don't decide to build you know some extra staff items like that rider and pangolier that they've picked up but uh, i am indeed liking the uh, the pangolier just got to make sure you don't give the rolling thunder to rubik though yeah and q's a really good rubik player so you gotta be extra careful for that there's a lot of good spells to steal this game so i can understand picking the rubik this game is quite heavily on 23 savages back though right just because he's going to need to be the one to make a lot of those early rotations time dilation is great this game against a lot of these heroes you know lots of frequent abilities being cast you're going to get a lot of extra damage a lot of slows in particular to enable the rest of your team I like the fact that they've picked up the Faceless Void now as opposed to in the last phase, just because if you picked it up in last phase, they still have the counter pick. So better to pick it up now, ban out some of the bigger counters to it while you're still sure this is what you want to do. And it keeps Virtus Pro guessing as to what they're actually going to be laning up against you in that mid lane. Uh, it might be the DK that they've already picked, pretty decent against the Pangolier, uh, or they might just throw DK into the off lane and uh, yeah, pick something else for Lauren off that's perhaps a little bit more aggressive maybe it's something like an ember spirit but yeah I, I don't know how strongly i feel about that you know, just the one stun leaves me a little concerned yeah I, I i see what you mean there so they do need to pick themselves up something active here on aurora because faces void once he uses the chrono that he'll be down that's a long downtime. i think it's around about two minutes um hopefully he's able to do okay and get himself a mask of madness and actually able to solo someone in the chrono because if not then you will definitely be relying on this mid lane of being picked up here for Aurora, which they are looking for. They'll ban out Razor and Magnus here on VP. They could potentially move Kunk to the mid lane, but it's most likely an off lane here for Virtus Pro. Uh, they have moved Kunk into the mid lane in the past, I'm sure. That was they have, yep. They, yeah, they did, yeah. Mm hmm. I'm really just thinking what they want to get for jabs here. Uh, I, I'm assuming that it's going to be jabs as hero last, and it kind of seems like that's what VP's thinking as well, as uh, thank you, the, the teams have now been switched around, so that's good. Um, yeah, they just need something really aggressive, whether that's something like, could they get away with a Doom? Wouldn't be the worst. It's not exactly aggressive, but at least it allows you to like lock out a Pangolier from the team fight if you're the ones to get the jump. Puck, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with Puck. Aggressive, good against the Pango. Um, 
I don't think VP are going to switch this Pango to being in the offlane, just because against the Faceless Void, it's not exactly too much better uh, because of that time dilation that I was talking about before. I feel like you should be feeling very happy having a Kunker into two melee heroes as well. So that's something that I'm sure they're going to be mindful of. They don't exactly have amazing lockdown for the puck. Like, it, 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 they've got a lot of yeah. stuns, don't get me wrong, but it's like nothing that can instantly happen. So that's something where a face, uh, sorry, a monkey king is quite good, right? The boundless strike, all you need is that, you know, one, one and a half seconds to be able to find that um, bleak lasso onto the puck where she can't really do anything about it. So I, I quite like this as a response to it from Kiritich. It They realize the fact that they want to try and get aggressive. They want to abuse the the weak point of Aurora's draft, which is, you know, early-ish on into the game. So, uh, hmm. I'm not sure who I'm actually favoring this game. I, I'm still a little worried about the uh, the combination of these supports alongside Loranoff, but mm -hmm. maybe he won't actually make too many rotations until Ollie's level six. So at least you've got that Earth Splitter perhaps to throw down when the Dream Call is being dropped. Hmm. I'm, I'm actually trying to have a think here as well. Um, Faces Void should do a, a go, go okay against Kiritich um, if the game goes middle to around about late stage. Uh, they are doing offlane Pango, actually, on uh, notice. He's playing it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I do see. Yeah, so it's Squadix on the Conquer. So okay. That'll be me I mean... here against Lorna. I, I understand it. Like against Puck, Kunk is great, just because you're dealing all this physical damage, Puck, and it's stuff that you can really heavily bait out, right? You can't just be base shifting uh, every single second, so you're going to be able to land some tired bringers. You're going to be able to harass the Puck down and prevent her from making too many of these rotations. One of the other strengths of Puck is that you can like shove the lane out very quickly, grab a uh, a power rune, and make that rotation. But Kunk is kind of the counter to that, so. I, I like the fact that they've had this flex to enable them to do this sort of thing, but I'm just not so sure about how the Pango is going to do relative to the Kunker in that offlane, and you can't let 23 get off to a good start. No, you cannot. I mean, if 23 is able to get off to a good start, we've already mentioned, uh, of course, Chronosphere, Mask of Madness starts popping around, and you haven't got the tankiest of heroes here on VP. No possibility that can... Just go ahead Straight and to uh, the bottom solo. With you. I, I have to say, even with the Chronos player looking at it, actually, they do have some very nice setups here with the Earth Flitter here, too. So, cast that through into Chrono. And they're not going to be moving, surely, because they're enough to be They're going to be caught by this Earth Flitter. So, we'll see how this goes for either teams. Draft wise, are you still kind of 50 50 as to who to, who to favor here? I'm probably going to fa slightly favor Virtus Pro, even though I am a C fanboy. Uh, it, it feels to me like seconds to they've got a draft that's a little bit more cohesive together. Uh, the one area that I do have concerns is if it does go late, right? So um, I yeah. feel like if Aurora get out of that dangerous early 20, 20 or so minutes, they should be able to have it fairly comfortably. The thing is, I'm, I'm just not sure what they're going to be able to do with that initial period. Like I mentioned, the support duo, it's not the strongest, so this is 23 Savage's game to win. They gave him probably the strongest pick of the entire draft the to be able to pick begins. up his hero. I can tell. They actually full hit. Blood grenade committed. First. And they will indeed get the kill, and the kill will go to the mid lane here for Lorena. So, <laughs> and that is going to be a bottle pickup straight away. Just 25 gold remaining for that bottle. Pretty happy with that. I mean, I mentioned how strong. Yeah, look at that. Lorenov just basically a third of his HP goes immediately as soon as Squad X uses the Tiebringer on the range creep. But having a bottle to kind of counteract that and be a little bit healthier, get the refill off of the first uh, set of water runes feels really nice. You get nothing. Already not the great. Touch some curiosity that he has. I mean. It's, it's okay, you know. It, it, oh, I might actually, I say that now. Look at that dragon tail and the fade bolt there. They're, they're doing the right play here on Aurora, making fully the monkey king when he's the lowest level. He's not gonna have the impact right now. But he's level two in his Jingu mastery in order to start dominating. They're gonna go on to Kiritich. 
Yeah, but they will return it around to find the kill down to jabs in return. One more physical attack is needed to take down Hiritid. But he's hiding they around the trees here, avoiding the Rubik. And they may actually find the kill here on a few hit. Bit of a stick rare next there. There's another leap. Nice telekinesis, but it won't be enough, will it? Trying to hide around in the trees here, avoiding the Marana. There's another leap, and there's a mind to kill. There's still no work jabs. to do. Comes up with a dragon tail there, but not able to do any more. That would be a turn of events. If they were able to kill Kiritich, he still had a good 30 seconds left on the TP, so he wouldn't have been able to come back to the lane. He would have been able to get off plenty denies in that sort of situation. Uh, but instead, they turn it around, they kind of fix things up a little bit, and now he's at least half a level ahead of, uh, of the DK. So, good news coming through here for VP and their fans. I was just saying before, like this top lane with the uh, the time dilation already leveled it up before even the time lock. Just considering you're going up against a bat rider as well, it's a great spell for this lane. Looking to get it again, he's found there by the free fire of the dragon. They did the same thing again. Down on just dragon tail and the fade ball. They also use telekinesis now. Because of our level three but fade ball is going to hurt a lot more. This is uh, King not having a fun time. No, definitely not, and uh, I feel like this pull perhaps has happened just one wave a little bit too late. They still have the dangers of how late laning up into this, and he was really late to actually level up the uh, the Jingu Mastery on Kiritich. You know, he wasn't actually active for the entirety of that skirmish, so they were able to get away, and the big reason why you pick the MK into the DK is just being able to actually be one of the few heroes that can out-sustain him through this brawling style. I'm very intrigued though to see what jabs will level here on the DK because at the moment, Kiritich has not been able to abuse the level 2 Jingu Mastery to push away the DK. So I'm wondering whether he'll just go one point into Dragon's Blood, maybe more, and just go into Breathe Fire here because the nuke damage on this lane is pretty strong. You and Jab, Fade Hole, and Breathe Fire have been able to do a lot of nuke damage. These are only like level 1 spells. Don't be angry. Fade though. With Oh, there we go, got the Jingu off, so he will be totally fine now to be a lot more aggressively positioned in this lane. He's going to get off a ton of denies, or at least let FNG do so. Now, this becomes a whole lot harder, and uh, we'll just have a look at this water rune battle between the ET and the Batrider, never mind. Uh, on the bottom side, they've made a, a bit of an interesting decision, right? They used the Sentry Ward on Q to be able to block up that hard camp, just because they're not wanting to give FNG a lot of uh, free gold, basically, coming from oh. Sacred Arrows. But that also yeah. means that the lane is pretty heavily pushed towards Heritage, so the fact that they are continuing to want to go for a little bit more of this heavy ganking style, the lane's just never in a good position for them to be able to do so, right? Nice. You're right next to the tower, you run the danger of creeps connecting a little bit earlier. It just feels a little bit more awkward, you know? Yeah. yeah. I do find that block kind of interesting. Yeah, and I mean, all the actions happening on bottom at the moment. Our eyes have not left the bottom lane. Right. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, on on the top, things are looking pretty passive here with both Angular and Faceless Boys. Not dealing lots of damage to each other. Anything. Both of them here at the moment. Yeah, I think they've given up from wanting to actually contest in that lane all that strongly. Q's oh, oh. moved back and started building up some stacks. We, we say this now. Notice that the lane in harassment there to 23, forcing a time warp. Uh, lane yeah, he's got 10 sticks. He'll be fine. That was Lauren off doing against the Kankur. I never expected the Kankur to be winning. I didn't think it would be this hard though, especially considering Lauren off did get that first blood bounty. Not just the, the gold, but the experience as well. Right now though, Squad X is the one slightly in front. We'll hit this level 6. It doesn't seem like anyone is going to be able to make a rotation Radiant to be able to scanning. assist him to potentially get a kill onto the puck, but like we were saying, puck doesn't feel directly countered by any of these heroes, at least in terms of the overall macro hitting. Lane, sure. Game, not so much. Yeah, I mean, you, you said it yourself in the draft, the only, you know, instinct patch that they have is the last one. Well, what else are they going to use after that? I mean, yeah, they could use, you know, x marks to maybe perhaps, like, Torrent or something, and maybe perhaps, like, a Ballast Drive, but that's not a very long time. 
So yeah, it, would, it would need to be a boundless into a lasso to really get that that big value out of it. Um, of course, gives time for the Pangolier to get some stuns in as well. Plus the arrow, of course, becomes a whole lot easier. But yeah, yeah, I, I, it really requires full team coordination to be able to come through from VP if that's going to happen. Even with those two deaths, I mean, Kiritic is basically sitting top of the net worth right now, only behind the Conker. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, that that is surprising because I, I've seen on the uh, on lane that he's been harassed up quite a lot against this Rubik and this DK, and yet it's very surprising to see that he's above. That. <laughs> FNG's just scouting out these camps as well, so you're saying, all right, you could block up my hard camp, but I'll just go and start stealing away some of yours. Yeah, I'm sure they're pinging him out as well, and they want to make a rotation there as quickly as possible. Squad X about to hit up to his level seven, so perhaps they're going to put a little bit more attention onto the lane. Uh, have that be addressed for someone to have to defend that and then look to pick up that farm for themselves. Uh, they know exactly where FNG is. They've got this observer Radiant's wood planted by Q. It's going attack. to be scouting them out. So they, they know that they need to sort of protect this area in the next few or so, few minutes or so. Speaking of Q, he's kind of walking a little bit deep. Hasn't gone up onto the high ground, so if he does, oh, you'll yeah. see that that observer was there. Yeah, there we go. Might get denied. Never mind. FG well, not wanting to reveal his coming. position, I guess. Blood grenade committed. Q. Just avoiding the sacred arrow there, but the X mark. Oh, the night time. Ready. Orin. Going to commit. Think about. Oh, I'm a kill. I mean, interesting play there from Ollie. The EA mm -hmm. tried with the Echo Stump. Trying to stop it. Not able to. Lauren off now. Only they had themselves a last, though. Level 4 on the Bat Rider. I mean, the, the, there's no way he can level this Do have the Arcane Rune, though, on Squad X. They were able to yoink that one away. So, once again, Loranoff doesn't really have too much in terms of uh, runes to be able to play around with. And as a puck, it's just so incredibly important to have that little bit of an extra damage Ooh. burst. Gee. Initiated on there, but I rotate the notice of the rolling thunder. The Wolf on the planet is out. Ollie very close to death. Actually able to pop the magic stick and get away, they will find the Dragon Knight here. So jabs, we will fall. Yeah, once again, they're just losing all three lanes. It's already two, three K net worth advantage going through for Virtus Pro. Kind of what we were expecting, right? They were going to come out of these lanes in a really strong space, and it just doesn't... They've got two kills. One of them was a first blood, so I don't know if that really counts all that much. And the only other one was in that period where Monkey King didn't have the Jingu Mastery. So I'm, yeah. I'm just still a little bit concerned as... Do I hear a Chronosphere up on this top? Yeah. Do, They'll take yeah. any kill they can. Chrono Wing of the Bat Rider there early on. Lauren off her taking in with an Illusory Orb. Helps to find the kill. Meanwhile, though, action happening on the bottom lane here. Two Tanog, they're pulling in a boat with the x Look Look next there on two cube. And look Jabs. like that, but a lovely disengage with that Echo Stomp. Stops further initiation here upon Q, and he will survive. Yeah, well, he's been playing really well so far. Built up a few stacks. Almost saved, uh, almost saved Q on that bottom side. Just before, about a minute or two before, and then, yeah, we saw they're not only saving him, but Jabs. Jabs was dead if they uh, were able to just confirm that kill without the Echo Stomp. So, I'm going to need to see more of that from Ollie, but he needs more levels, right? It's already 10 minutes, and he's only level 4. At least this D-Ward will help him out a little bit. No such luck for Loranoff, though. Once again, doesn't have a Power Rune to be able to play around with. And an Amplified Damage Rune here for Kunkit. And Kunk is already strong at these early levels, I mean... I remember when he used to get himself to level 10 pounds and just get himself some absolutely stupid damage. I think it was about... I think that was 45 damage. It was a little bit less, but I'm sure that was like a level 10 talent ages ago. 23! It was stupid damage. And if the X-Pod is going to well... Both is going to connect. Will they find the kill? Yes, they will! If the will fall... Just a little late there. there. We probably wouldn't have connected on that kill if they didn't have the amp damage, right? Really just showing the importance of controlling these runes. It feels like Loranoff has gotten every single one uh, stolen away from him by Squad X and the rest of Virtus Pro. Would have given Ollie the time to be able to actually complete that TP, get a three-man stomp off, and yeah, probably 23 lives on his Faceless Void if that happens. 
taking a little bit of damage into the tier 1 bottom at least at the same time. But this is the other thing as well, like Sayush, he's just going to be able to influence a lot of these early ganks with his relatively high damage. It's slow-ish damage, but it's, you know, fairly consistent damage that you're able to output. And he's going to be able to have the lasso. And you don't really need that many items to have high impact. We've seen that so many times with Batriders, right? Just 600 gold away from that that blink dagger and then suddenly they could start to address the puck a little bit they will be playing a lot more defensively now because they use the moonlight underneath vision gosh he's a warrior man he, he's got a savage three blood grenades oh x mark in the arrow but still able to get off time wolf there so face this void practically taking zero damage here he will be okay will they actually get a lucky rune this time around it spawns bottom all right Lorenov has something to be able to play around with i'm still not so cer certain he actually wants to be able to go out and make plays like we were saying before it feels like they need something else to be able to enable this puck's dream coil to actually have impact and maybe that's why ollie's sitting in this mid lane he just wants to soak up a lane or two of xp hit up onto his level six and then you can actually start to try and make a play or two yeah, because during these stages, the puck is kind of a little bit weak, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Needs this Witch Blade in order to start dealing the damage, so we'll need just a couple of minutes to try and farm the gold needed to get that item. And then we'll have some kill potential here on the puck. Yeah. I'm sure Savage wants someone to be able to enable him to use this Chronosphere as well. Just to try and bring himself a little bit further into this game. Could it's buy the gloves and paste. He does, yeah. Could buy the gloves if he wants, and he's actually got his camp blocked up here by oh, FNG, no. just being a little bit annoying. Maybe Savage thought he was standing in the wrong spot there as well, because he didn't ping anything out. Oh, the blink dagger to now. Able to go yeah, 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 bat blink dagger. I mean, you've got a lot of good targets, honestly, for this uh, this Blink Dagger. I guess you'd have to say the counter-initiation potential coming from E.T., Puck, and Faceless Void is pretty crazy, though. So you have to be very careful of knowing where the majority of them are. I'd say probably the most important would be taking out the Puck, just because she is the squishiest at this point in the game, while still giving high value. As they go for a smoke here, but Ollie's still not yet level 6. I'm sure he would love to sit in that mid lane just to be able to claim it up. Oh, yeah. I'm wondering if they can get Squadix here, but they can get a little bit safe here, hanging around the Tier 1 tower. So if they do jump upon him, I definitely think he can survive. They've uh, stolen away the Wisdom Rune as in. well. Oh, yeah, 14 minute Wisdom too. Rune. Yeah, yoinked away. They're going to run into someone, Jabs. Actually blinks away because he's not directly with the rest of their team. And it just seems like they want to put a little bit of pressure onto this Tier 1 tower, although... Not giving up for free, it seems. Savage does have a TP if they feel like they've got a good fight finally in their position, but who do you even go on? Lorenov's not with the team at all. Oh, Sayu hanging around in the trees there too, ready with a blink and a lasso. I mean, blink ready on the DK too, Danog, but in this regard for Aurora, what, what can you do with it here? Oz is still farming up. DK ready with a blink, but Face Void wants to get up on Chrono, and uh, Lorenoff still doesn't feel like he's ready yet to try and make a move here. I mean, I mean, they tried with a smoke, but they weren't able to find anyone. He's got the haste rune to be able to get away as well on Lorenoff, so shouldn't be in too much danger, although 23 has to be a little bit careful with where he's positioned. Yeah. Oh, again. Oh, that Chrono doesn't catch FNG, though, in the back. But they will find the Pangolier. Killing's free for Lorenov. So there we go. At least they find themselves something here on Aurora. Jo oh, nice blink away there from Jabs on the bottom lane. They oh. used the Boundless Strike to be able to take him out. But uh, you also had Sayush TPing in. So he was very, very close to being killed off there. Dragged underneath the tower. Completely away from the rest of their team. With no ultimates to be able to play around with. So finally, they get a kill. A pretty valuable one as well. Taken out a Pangolier who had relatively freshly purchased that Diffusal Blade. 
It's going into that Blink Dagger as well, obviously seen as a Puck slash Faceless Void controller. Oh, this game. Last though, down to initiation play there from the Metallic, and he's actually got the last play coming out, but they have got some plus an Orkin here on Florida. Florida off the name, he dead, and will be he. With thanks to Wukong's command, with the physical damage being pumped out there, oh, will fall killing three down, and will go to get it. And the Orchid as well, really coming into the equation, right? Squad X able to land that onto the Puck. As long as he doesn't have that uh, that Yule Scepter, he's pretty much dead in the water as they go for another play of their own. They're going to be able to find Kiritich. Q has a Lasso stolen as well, so I'm just constantly looking out for him if he's ever to make that sort of play where he's able to quickly jump in with that extra cast range and land it off onto someone, but it doesn't seem like they're feeling all that confident. They just want to protect their tower and play for the late game, the area that they are one of the strongest in the world at. Yeah, well, as, as we were saying, this is a big item on Squad X. It's very, very good against the Puck. I mean, as a Puck player, you do not want to be buying a Dispel here. You, you just want yourself some damage items here. You want to be very annoying, just evade with the phase shift. You really don't want to have to go into a Dispel item. And I can see here Lorenoff still wanting to get a Blink Dagger here, just enable his ability to get the jump upon the hands of Virtus Pro and Try and attempt to take them out. I mean, this spell-wise, I think the early, the earliest thing you can go for, which is kind of cheap here, is a Yule Scepter. But putting a lot of gold into that, I think, oh, what is it, 2,800? Around about there, it's, it's kind of expensive for a dispel, especially for a puck in the early stages, because you want to be impactful during this stage, don't you? Yeah, for sure. Maybe later on when you can convert it into a Wind Waker and you can look to combat the combinations that they're going to be having, like the... Uh, X marks into the arrow, into the lasso, all that sort of stuff, or even just a rolling thunder onto someone. Just Wind Waker up into the air, you break it, you have, like we've been mentioning, good counter initiation coming through from at least three of your heroes, maybe even more, depending on what Q's been able to steal. Um, so I'm, I'm really keen to see how they're going to be able to respond to this aggression that they've got coming through. They do have a bit of a power spike now, though. Maelstrom coming through from Savage. He's also got the Vampire Fang, so a little bit of that additional night vision. But they don't have any wards up on this side of the map, and FNG just placed down a couple that's giving them a lot of information. Regarding that, with Kiritich is doing pretty well here. Radiance on the Monkey King. Okay. I mean, bit of a... A blink disabler, perhaps, assuming that it's going to be coming through from the puck. A little bit of damage reduction for the face void as well. He's able to jump in. Speaking of void. Oh, yeah. Could we jumped. Sacred arrow. It connects. Rolling thunder there, too. They have the chain stun. And they find the kill on the faceless. They're trying to get a quick response here onto Squad Ooh. X if they can. Yeah. Going for the jump in here. They don't have any vision of him, though. Do they have any wards? Ollie just places one down in the river. Maybe they're thinking, look, we've got good vision all across the Radiant Jungle. We haven't seen anyone be down here for quite some time. He has to be inside the Ancient Camp area. That's where the lines being drawn on the minimap were all about. But again, it just feels like they're moving a touch slow. You know, even Ollie's TP up there to potentially save Savage probably came a good two seconds too late. And yeah, this VP lineup, they are not lacking in damage. So two seconds is an eternity. Yeah, they're making sure they're not alone either, which I like here too. Uh, jabs? So VP actually playing together, although, yeah. Jabs. He's, he's got the boys behind him. You have to be very... Oh, jabs. gosh! Uh-oh, he's blinked right into the team. He's going to be found here with the boat. The Glimmer Cape is actually there. Good As Chrono. comes 23 here with a Chrono Sphere. He's locked in place two. We'll find the kill onto Marana. No, the mechanism. No. Able to survive, 23 now, not a lot of mana remaining, but in comes Puck, able to find Oh, this is a good egg. MNG. Split up, split up. Two, the Earth Splitter, they're actually able to dodge the damage there with the Mischief. So Kitty Teach is actually okay, but the Silence coming out there, and in return there, onto the Faceless Puck, they're able to find the kill onto the Monkey King. They're just coming in now with the Rolling Thunder, able to take down 23, Jabs is soon to follow there too. But Sayu will be found, it's a three for two here. And what a team fight. It's a big burst damage coming through there with the Earth Splitter being able to take out only FNG, but it softened up everyone else for them to be able to go for the kill. You saw there, you know, Puck coming in second. It was a great three-man dream coil that they were able to land off. Jabs just putting himself so far out on the front lines, and it was actually a stolen Sacred Arrow as well by Q that ended up being able to confirm that kill onto the Monkey King. So nicely done there by the Time Man. Hopefully for their sake, they... Well, they 
build up another stack. They need to. And they need to make sure that they're not losing too many more of these Wisdom Runes as well. That's the area that I'm most concerned about. A 3k net worth lead at this stage of the game, it's not that bad. But you can't be falling too far behind in the experience front. I do feel very sorry though here for 23. He had himself a nice chrono, but not able to take down the position 5 Marauder. And had had a mechanism at the end of that, were just able to heal up, so... Actually able to get the kill there onto Marana. They do smoke up here though on Aurora. They haven't Trying seen Kiritich. Yeah, Spidey senses were tingling. Gets on out, moves to the other side of the map. Another rotation. Just not going to be successful. And th this is what you hate when you're playing these heroes like a DK or let's say a Tiny and you go that, that really early blink dagger. If you're going to Blink Dagger, it's not so that you can move between camps a little bit faster to farm, right? It's so that you can get kills, and I just feel like they haven't had the opportunities to do that so far. Free getting the Wisdom Rune there. He's a little bit close to VP, but I don't think they'll dive between the Tier 1 and the Tier 2 tower, so he'll be okay. They're just trying to comb through the rest of Aurora's map, trying to scout out. I mean, they do have themselves a nice Observer Ward here underneath the Tier 2, scouting out Q there with the Sacred Arrow, but don't want to go too deep here on VP, because that could lead to trouble. And Savage is just going all out into damage. He realizes he needs to be outputting a lot more if it's just to be able to kill a position 5, right? I mean... Marana's holding the mech, so it's understandable that you want to make sure that FNG is taken out at this early stage of the game to really soften them up, allow Lorinoff to come in alongside the other supports and dish out that additional damage. So going into the Mithril Hammer first before any sort of survivability, despite how targeted he has been by a lot of these ganks. He just wants to do damage. Well, notice maybe jumps though, Danug, they come forward, they... Saw a swashbuckle there, jabs ready with the bling dagger, there we go, they've got the dragon tail and the silence there too, onto the pangolier. As they find an easy kill there, I mean they committed the earth splitter too just in case pangolier was able to escape, but able to find that kill and we've got ourselves, I, I don't know if you mentioned this or not Danok, but we got ourselves a an orchid here on the D key now too, so another silence. It is. It was when they were going for that previous smoke gank. They just freshly picked it up. So again, they just wanted to get yeah. some sort of use out of this blink dagger, find that real pickup potential. But you just see how heavily they need to commit all of their spells just to be able to feel secure in picking off a, an off lane Pangolier, right? Who's sitting at the bottom of the net worth for his team in terms of cores. Although Sayush has certainly been able to uh, make the most out of a lot of this map space that he's been given, right? He's constantly putting pressure onto this tier 2 tower just through creeps. It's essentially forcing Aurora to be considering moves back towards, uh, you know, a bit more of a defensive post. Yeah, he's Although considered might... a rich support, isn't he? I mean, look at that net worth yeah. compared to Notice here. Just 1k behind mm -hmm. and almost 3k ahead of the Rubik. Look at how far back Aurora just went, just feeling not safe around the map. Without that uh, Elder Dragon form available, without too many smokes at their disposal, they feel like the best option was just to get that Tormentor. Goes over to Ollie. He's been hitting some pretty good Echo Stomps so far, so reducing the cooldown on that one is going to feel pretty nice. Wonder if they're now going to look to play around this top side of the map a little bit more. You know, get prepared for a eventual Roshan that's going to be on their side of the map. They have a couple of buybacks for their team, but I don't know if you want to be using it already considering how far behind you already are in terms of your uh, your net worth there yeah i mean they did have themselves a beautiful ward scouting out vp there actually come through the twin gate so they're just playing it defensively here for now ollie just to be careful actually finding the observer ward which was instantly placed there taken out that must hurt as a support they just got mid though with jabs, so they're doing a pretty decent job of splitting up the map, and the net worth lead is actually shrinking. You know, even just using that uh, astral spirit to do a little bit of scouting towards the Roche pit is Ollie. Wanting to make sure he's not giving up too much for free here. But Sayush, again, it's just a support that's able to very, very quickly fix the, the state that a lot of these lanes are in. Once again, we... Ollie just scouting king, right? Yeah, I mean, we haven't got ourselves a dispel item here on Lorinoff. He did decide to actually go 
the Lincoln Sphere instead on the puck. Yeah, quite nice TPing around his teammates, but again, no Elder Dragon form to be able to play with. Getting closer towards that BKB though, and then he can feel a whole lot more confident in standing in on the front lines. He, he basically is acting as the bait a lot of this time. That's I, I thought it was perhaps a little bit early for him to do that previously with that blink into four heroes on the bottom side where he was kind of alone. But once he's got yeah. this BKB, feel so much more confident in his uh, capabilities to be able to do that. A lot of their damage right now is physical, so even something like a Dragon Scale is going to do, do him a whole world of good. He'll have the Dragon Blood maxed out by that point as well, and he'll be really hard to take out. Yeah, he's pretty close to that BKB, isn't he? Only around about 700 gold remaining, and then that will be a big help there, because... As you mentioned, that blink, that was a little bit scary for Jabs there. I wasn't expecting the entire team of VP to be right underneath him when he blinked forward. I mean, that's, that, that's the dangers of blinking in blind. Now, previously I've been very, like, VP-sided. VP are doing a lot of good things. But i got to say, I, I think they would be very dissatisfied with how little they've gotten out of these aggressive wards that they've placed, right? They've taken only yeah. two tier 1 towers, they haven't taken a Roshan, they haven't found a kill onto Savage for the past, what, 10? Maybe even 15 minutes? And he's just been farming away. He's level 18 on this Faceless Void, and we know how scary late game Faceless Void can be. He's not even getting overly greedy with going into the lanes. He knows as long as people are missing off the map, he just needs to make sure that he's, you know, playing a little bit more conservatively. And he's doing just that. Look at that nose. No VP. From what they can see is on the map at the moment. So he is just hiding in trees. But they are heading his way. So if he does reveal himself underneath this creep wave, it could be trouble for him. But very patient. Actually just deciding to actually back off here. But they're, they're getting closer. The Wisdom Rune. He gets that one, but... Ooh, uh -oh. oh no, this is not... Oh, this is the wrong place to be! They find him! Rolling Thunder coming in, the BKB Oof. did not have he himself time the walk. time walk. Ooh, did he have I don't it know if cooldown? Yeah, I, I thought he did. It is not the time to be using that first BKB charge though, if you're just going to give your life up like that. I guess the plus side is you don't have uh, an immediate way to get towards that Roche pit, but I'm seeing Kiritic make a beeline towards the twin gate. Perhaps that being the next objective they want to take while Savage is on the sidelines. Even if he bought back, he probably doesn't feel confident to go into the fight without that BKB. Jabs this ward is still... Escape there it's giving them the so much information, this ward. Yeah, they're gonna go for Q, revealing him there. With the dust of appearance, they find the kill. Rubik down. That's two dead. Well, you activated the BKB there, though, for that kill. Uh, Nine-second BKB usage to just stop Rubik from... Using telekinesis and stopping the kill. I mean, okay. I mean, at least it still gets you the kill, but they're going to have themselves Roshan now. Take themselves the Roshan with the Sacred Arrow. The question is, are they going to contest the smoked off as three? I mean, yeah. Faces Void Savage could coming to the outpost. He's not going to. He's going to TP behind the rest of his team, realizing that oh, the team okay. have the delay potential for him with that Echo Stomp. If he wanted to, he could land it onto at least oh, three. Oh, they haven't taken it in time there. There's the BKB there, two from the DK. The lasso came out, but there's no follow-up damage here against Jabs. The Savage is coming. coming in now into the back line here. It's affecting two. The Wukong's command has come out along with the boat as well, but Jabs attempting to flee there with the Ogre Seal Totem. So close to death as the Radiance burning him down to a crisp. They will lose the DK. In return, though, they're trying to find Monkey King here. The Chronosphere will come out. We'll find the kill there onto the Monkey King. Though they will lose two here on Aurora. That's the the Titan dead. Loranoff in a tricky situation here. He was in the middle of a corner. He has been able to use that waning rift and blink away. He's on 140 HP. He's going to oh, the neutrals. Real, but the swashbuckle will find him. The neutrals almost killing him there too. And Notice gets the kill. So in return for taking down the Monkey King, they lose three here on Aurora. They lose three and the gem that Loranoff had just picked up as well. So really takes away a lot of that that vision potential that VP have been playing around so effectively. It means Moonlight Shadow has even higher effectiveness. And, well, I was talking about Aurora going for that delay style of gameplay. It's good to delay so that Faceless Void gets his items and so that he respawns, but they've delayed it so long that now Roshan's back on the VP side of the map, so it's just going to be so much easier for them to be able to play around this. 
No tier 1 tower for Aurora to TP to. No tier 1 tower top either, just if they wanted to go through that Twin Gate and make a big sort of play like that. So this feels like it's a really comfortable position for them to be playing around with. No Chronosphere to have to worry about either. And Faceless Void's BKB, it's already down to 7 seconds, basically. Once completely wasted, second time just to enable him to live against a Pangolier, because Notus was doing a fantastic job of locking down Savage in that fight. Now we even have ourselves a Agnim's 2 on the Conquer pickup here by Squadix. So has himself Torrent Storm now, which is going to be proven to be, be quite beneficial within these upcoming team fights here. Lots of disruption now, lots of utility for the Conquer. They so got themselves the Aegis. Yeah, considering going for the boys, he doesn't have a gem on himself right now, so I'm sure he's just asking for them to come nearby, oh, but he might kill. get picked off first. He's okay for the time being. I mean, Lauren off. He's stunned up here. Oh, silence! Breaking through the Lincolns. Torrent finds him, gets the kill on the puck. They're just way too disjointed right now. I understand wanting to fight around their vision, but... No one was there. You know, you use the uh, the Earth Splitter without any follow-up stuns. Maybe if a coil was happened, four staffs don't actually save him. This is not the Aurora that, you know, has been so successful, at least, you know, the majority of this roster over the past couple of years. Look at these lines on the map. What what does that even mean? <laughs> Just scribble on the map by, by FNG. Well, here we go. 10k lead and it actually dips the win probability back in VP's favor for the first time in well, around 10 or so minutes, maybe even more. Um, you know, Aurora was doing a good job getting the farm onto their heroes, but it's kind of halted a little bit here with those last two deaths on Lorenoff especially. They have great possibility to get themselves a good initiation here too on Aurora. They just haven't had the chance to do so. I mean, you even mentioned it before about how we have ourselves a Dream Coil, an Earth Splitter, and a Chronosphere, along with a Dragon Tail too, to even set up here against BP, but they just haven't had the opportunity to combine all spells together. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Incurity Teacher. <laughs> Goes Gang's Q there, pretending to be a healing self. That's kind of difficult to spot out. Cheeky, cheeky. Even Jabs, like, he just popped the Elder Dragon form to be able to farm these these camps, but he doesn't feel secure to be able to just be here. And for a good reason, nice blink away again. That's twice now that Jabs has just gotten away from a gank attempt onto his life. It will mean, though, that they saw the Elder Dragon form pop, so maybe they feel confident to actually push into these two Tier 2 towers that are both getting hit on by creeps. Look at Savage. He's waiting in the wings, waiting for someone to reveal themselves. 23 is Jabs. playing very defensively here now. He, he really needs some vision here. Elder Dragonform is about to wear out, though. It it's is. A big weak point coming through from Jabs. Oh, Kiritich reveals himself near this tier. Has the Aegis, though. You don't want to drop a Chrono on that. No. And they got a He's smoke up behind him here, too. Jabs is in a good position again. How quick is his fingers? Oh, the smoke's going to break, though. The lasso's there. Bringing by the D. I mean, a little bit of misplay there with the Sacred Arrow. He will activate the BKB in the Ogre Seal Totem. He will get away. Meanwhile, Rolling Thunder in the back lines here. Notice has caught himself. Q here on the Rubik. There's the Primal Spring forward. 23 here. Ready with the Chronosphere. There it is. He will commit it there onto two. Finding himself the Pangolier. Pangolier dead. Is now trying to focus down Kiritich. But going to respect that BKB along with the Aegis there as well. 23 will back himself off. And the buyback here from Q. Wasn't necessarily needed, but, you know, insurance policy, and you do take out a hero. Yeah, you don't have to worry about the Aegis all that much. It's only got a couple of minutes left, and, well, they're probably not wanting to fight for that next period of time anyway, just because you've got that Chronosphere on cooldown for pretty much the similar amount of time. Uh, just seeing here with Savage as well, it looks like he's going into a Sanjin Yasha for himself, just to reduce a little bit of that duration of all of these uh, lockdowns that are being used onto anyone. And honestly, I wouldn't hate seeing Jabs go for something like uh, a Heaven's Halberd for himself, just to, you know, have a little bit of that additional survivability, while also potentially reducing a lot of what Kiritich is able to do once his BKB starts to run a bit lower. Yeah. Trying to take this poor mentor though here on Aurora. They're going to be very low here. 
And in comes VP. A torrent. It won't catch anyone here, though. Kiditic has and found damage. himself jabs. Can you get through the gate? Yes, you can. Not able to follow that. That Ogasil totem saved him like three separate times now. Yeah. Oh. It's such a good item, the Ogasil mm -hmm. totem. Even just from the stats, let alone the active. Like, 10 strength? Pretty huge. Especially, like, for me as a support, I always lick my lips whenever I see it. It's like, cool. Free 200 health. I'll take it. Double Wisdom Rune. Look at that. They haven't even been on their side of the map for the past eight minutes on VP that they've been able to pick up two Wisdom Runes for notice to. He's level 23. He's doing a fantastic job from the off lane to be in the lead on the experience front. Wow. Has he got the Sanjin Yashi yet? Yeah, he has. 23, he's got it now. Going for a Nullifier. What do you think the Nullifier here is for? 23. What's he, what's he want to dispel? Uh, you want to be able to dispel the um, the the Jingu buff uh, coming up for the Monkey King, as well as there's a couple of times now that you've been using Force Staffs to be able to stop that Dream Coil into the Earth Splitter combination. If you use the Nullifier, that's not going to be the case. But they're deep. They just okay. had themselves vision there of 23. Ages Moving. just expired though, so this becomes a little bit more of a high risk play if they did want to go for it. Yeah. Tier 4 item for 23 2. What's he got? All the tricks okay. this cloak. Yep. Just soak up that initial damage. Again, like we've seen, their counter initiation has been pretty good. I just feel like they need to be the ones on the front foot for a change as they continue to walk through a lot of great vision that FNG has been putting down, not putting them in obvious spots, just giving that key information about when they're moving into these smaller choke points. Smoke up. Close together. Smoke coming, uh, sorry. Moonlight as well coming through, level 15, so the evasion is a factor as well. They don't want jabs. He's just a little bit too tanky, I think. Might have to Maybe take him out. for him. Oh yeah, Ballast Strike, Lasso there as well, but a Four Chrono in. disrupting four. Do they have themselves the damage? The Earth Splitter is there along with the Dream Call 2. They're going to turn it around. Kiritich is going to fall. Jabs is able to survive. Time walking forward. They found themselves two. Marana is going to fall. Squadix now attempting to flee here with the BKB. He does have himself a TP in nine more seconds, but they found him. Look at that. They got themselves the vision as they'll take down the Kunkka there too. They lose three here on VP and Aurora will come out on top. That's why you don't go on the DK. Just such a tanky boy and... Savage in the perfect position around the one last remaining bit of vision that they had on the map at the time. Just amazing. Four-man Chronosphere onto the Pangolier as he was mid-air as well, by the way, from that Rolling Thunder. And suddenly the net worth lead has shrunk from 14k all the way back down to 7. It's probably going to be 5 by the time they, uh, they're they able to respawn. Might even lose a tier 2 tower in that time period. And they did just find Sayu there too on the top with still in the dragon form here. Just dra <laughs> Used the dragon tail there and the orchid, and pretty much got a free kill here on the DK. DK was wanting another free kill onto the tower, but just being a little bit more cautious. I'm sure, if he needs to be. I mean, the whole team had a rough time being able to kill him, and only the Pango and the Marana were there. Maybe just wanting the illusions to do it, take the safe route. Oh, look what he's going for now, Donald. What a fly here for 23. Try and beat my evasion here, you know, 20% evasion on the Radiance. Pfft, I'll beat that with a butterfly. He does mm -hmm. have a mind breaker though, that's pretty nice here on the Monkey King. Wonder what he goes with his level 25 talent as well. I gotta say the the backtrack is actually quite nice this game, considering you're going up against a Monkey King that might have a Jingu that goes in onto you uh, against a Kunker with some big Tidebringer hits eventually. Might be value. I think you do definitely go the bat track here. I think it's just so good. I start. I still remember the old days though of when that was a passive ability. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> just finger of death, someone. Nope, nothing. Yeah, that was that was when the hero was much simpler. And back then there was there was no time dilation. That wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. There was no shard. It was just uh, time walk forward. But it had a, a a much bigger range. I think, didn't it? Yeah. You got a backtrack. He was pretty much a glass cannon. Glass cannon. Mm hmm. Glass cannon. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> sure. 
the Roche uh, respawn had around two minutes left on it, so it still has about 40 seconds remaining. Right now, Aurora have some decent vision set up, and of course, they're always going to be able to scout with Ollie's Astral Spirit. Moving out, seeing if there's any smokes coming to potentially prepare for this second Roshan. And well, there won't be a smoke, but there will be a Moonlight Shadow coming up from FNG. Might have been under the uh, the vision that Ollie had actually placed down alongside those trees previously. So it seems like they're kind of aware of exactly what's happening. They don't have a sentry ward, though. They just see that an observer got placed down, though. I wonder if they want to try and take care of that or, again, put jabs onto the front lines. Well, they're going to smoke themselves. 23. Ready with the Chrono, but it's going to be jabs who initiates first. Instantly taking down the Mirana. The Rolling Thunder is there. 23, biding his time. Still ready here with the Chrono. Ready to pop it. They come forward here with the lasso. He could chrono three here if he so wants to. Jabs will fall though within the Wukong's command. Because here we come. 23. Wanted to try and find notice here. He's going to roll up. He's still okay though. He's stuck in the corner. He will be used arrow? on Sacred Arrow. Just able oh. to avoid it. 23 is still okay. Has themselves the chrono still. Unable to oh. sleep up the Monkey King. Oh, the Chrono, it doesn't connect! 23! A little bit of a misplay, but still nonetheless, they may actually find the kill here. Oh, it's a good coil. Beach, but they're actually going to attempt to turn it around here. Still surviving. There we go. He finally falls. But they have themselves the Torrent Storm. Able to help take down the Faceless Void. Down for 100 seconds. Both carries are gone. Ollie very close to death here. But no rush. Jazz with the buyback here too. Ollie is going to be found and will attempt to buy back here straight away. Q in trouble here. Is actually bashed by the Roshan. Take it out. Three remaining here on Aurora, but they won't go for the Rosh on VP. And buyback from Jabs, buyback from Ollie. Such a long death timer as well for the Rubik. And yeah, Savage just spent so much time waiting in that one. I thought they were clumped up quite nicely for them to be able to get, you know, a three man Chronosphere or allow Jabs to turn around and use that BKB so that he could survive. Even the Breathe Fire Talent feels really good. A lot of the time you see these DKs want to, you know, be transitioning and to be a little bit more of that damage dealer so they get the level 10 talent that goes plus 15 damage. He went full Breathe Fire Reduction, so that is pretty significant. Like, minus 60% damage, and total damage that is, that they're able to do. And yeah, Savage just stayed back and there was only a Chronosphere onto one at the end. It was, it wasn't so even onto one, he, he, just, he just missed it. He got the Marana, like, but it doesn't matter. Really thought if only he got so the Chrono close. there onto, uh, onto Kiritich, that, that could have been a different story. But better, yeah, as you said, if, if, if he got the Chrono onto three or four, cause they, they did group, group up quite nicely there, didn't they? For, they had for turnaround Chrono. potential, for sure. I just don't see the value of putting jabs onto the front line like that and baiting them all into this really clumped up position if you're, you know, not actually going to use something to enable the turnaround. And they know that Roshan's going on. How long on Chrono? 20 seconds. Can they stall it out long enough? It'll probably be around that time that Savage gets to the Rosh fight anyway. They do they stall that... it out, actually. They stop VP from taking it. Sayu trying to scout out here. Oh, BKB. Early commission there. Yeah. No BKB for Jabs. A whole lot squishier now, but they do have the Chronosphere available on Savage. Any smokes available on Aurora? They don't. They would love to be able to use this to be able to bypass any sort of vision that they have. Any gems? Yeah, lorenov has got a gem, so if he moves over to the right-hand side, he'll be able to see the ward that Sayush placed down. No one's touching Roshan. It's just a little happy little tree running around. <laughs> I mean, how do you jump this here when you don't have yourself a smoke? You need really need to take down that observer. Is under I mean, well, you should know it's back, there. It. I mean, it's going top, Roche, in five seconds, oh, right? But yeah. they've already taken the twin gate. I don't know if they're going to get there in time here on Aurora. I, th I think they might just have to leave it with the Roshan rotating away. Oh, you think that, but look at Savage. He says, I've got an arcane rune. I've got time walk up every four and a half seconds. I'm ready to go in. BKB, oh six gosh. seconds, who cares? Chronosphere is available. He doesn't want to reveal himself on the lane. He doesn't want to reveal the fact that he does have 
this ability to have a huge impact, but he's farming underneath an Observer Ward right now. Oh, they know exactly where they are. Oh, he is. Here we go, Rolling Thunder. They get themselves the lasso there onto Faceless Void, but because of that, Sanjay Yasu, is he going to be able to survive? Here's the boat comes in. They have themselves enough nuke damage to take down the Faceless. Down for 100 seconds. They're attempting to go for more here now. Jab's going to activate that BKB there and trying to flee. Aurora, they have to get themselves out. They don't have themselves this Faceless Void. Can VP find any more? They cannot, but a lovely pick up there onto the Faceless. He's down for 80 seconds, which means this is a Roshan team. Yeah, and they do get a enemy team has vision here from Q after the fact, but by the time they go and scout it out and try and get a D ward, it's going to expire anyway. Sayush and FNG, their warding has been amazing so far this game. So uh, really just showing how a lot of information can turn the fight in your favor. They had everything that they could have possibly wanted there on Aurora, a Roshan fight, an enclosed space to be able to play around, and some big timings with that Arcane Rune and Chronosphere available, but they just weren't able to do anything about it. They want a free pick off here onto Sayush, it seems. Jabs. Might be able to claim it, although he's got a BKB of his own. Oh, nice dream coil. They have vision there too with the GM a true sight. They do indeed get the kill, but Aegis now in the hands of the Monkey King. And d during that fight, when they did get the pick off there and faceless, where, where was this observer? Was it the. Uh, did they have the standard from high ground the watcher, one? Or it was just the no, high just, ground? Yeah, the, there was one on high ground and they had freshly placed one down where Sayush has a sentry ward there now. So they dewarded that one mid fight. Oh. But, uh, the high ground one was just there seeing Savage farming basically the entire time. So sad. Might be able to bait out some BKBs now though with Savage. Getting the Tormentor, getting that free Aghanim shard for himself. So I wonder how they can use this Aegis. MKB now on the Monkey King too. Monkey King getting the Monkey King bar. His item, personal item. Still, Still looking to go into that nullifier. His savage. I guess it's it's good that he went into the butterfly instead, right? He probably would have died even quicker if not for that uh, that evasion. And you know, you've got that evasion plus the Sanjin Yasha uh, status resistance plus the trickster cloak for both the magic and status. Uh, sorry, magic resistance. Just shows how much overwhelming damage they've got right now on Virtus Pro, D despite everything that seems to be going their way. Only a 6k net worth lead. Lorinov still topping net worth right now on this puck, and I'd say he's probably the one that they're most scared of. They would love to be able to find the pick off from him, and it's a lot harder now that he's got the Lincoln Sphere. Mm hmm. Wonder if, if we'll see something like a. Uh... In Agnims, too. And I, I know it's kind of late right now, and we've practically got a six slotted puck. Mm -hmm. at the moment here with the Octarine Core, but I'm wondering whether, you know, an Agnim's Blessing comes out here, because we, we've Max mentioned Wade. this Dream Coil before, if you upgrade it with the Agnim's here, and it is a, a little bit disgusting if you get yourself something like a Maelstrom. Mm -hmm. Might eventually see that. I mean, the way the game is going, I wouldn't be surprised to see Aurora up against Mega Creeps and be forced to go a Maelstrom on the puck, and that's what ends up being the big difference maker. They've already got a Monkey King bar on the Monkey King, though, to be able to combat all of that evasion that Savage has been playing around with. And he's happy to put himself out onto the front lines as well. Wanting to bait Ooh, himself. Dragon Tail! Okay. Finds an easy kill there to FNG. Grabs a gem, a gem as well. well. Yeah. yeah, free and gem. DK gets his level 25, so some AoE Dragon Tail feels really nice, especially if Puck is able to get that Dream Coil off for. You know, you're able to survive long enough that you're just not worried about BKBs. An attempt to go for a Blood Fawn here now, too. Really wouldn't hate to see them if they had a smoke go for one right now on Aurora. They've got a vision advantage, they know that there's no Mirana, so there's no Moonlight Shadow that you need to be concerned with. Even one fewer four stuff and no Guardian Greaves feels pretty significant. Maybe that's what they're pinging out to Savage, saying, look bro, we just need to... We need to stamp our place on this map once again. We can't let them take over. To be fair though, Aurora haven't let them up onto their high ground. No damage to their tier 3 towers and... Is, I mean, Elder Titan is one of the best high ground heroes at just being able to delay things out and finding the right pick-off if someone just 
makes one small misstep with, uh, you know, some defensive cooldowns. Yeah. This age is slowly expiring soon, though, Darnog. They haven't been able to do much with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, 23. There's a nullifier. It's moving around here. What do you sell? Mm. Didn't even see. I know he had a Wraith Band in his backpack, but... I thought maybe he was going to try and attempt to go for a kill here onto Squadix. Has to be careful, though. I mean... Refresher Orb comes out, you've got a double Hex, double Torrent Storm. And they seem to know where they are. Just making a path along the top side of the map. Watch it. Protecting them a little bit. All the way yeah, back inside the, the base. This is just Aurora Dota, isn't it? Like, stall, stall, stall until we get the fight that we want. And now you've even got Q, who's been pretty good with a lot of his uh, Moonlight Shadow... U uh, sorry, not Moonlight Shadow, Spell Steel usage, and he's already stolen the Moonlight Shadow, so might be able to catch them off guard, considering in that last fight, they were able to take away one of the gems that they had on Virtus Pro. FNG has picked up uh, another one in the meantime. No basher for the Pangolier too. Aegis expired, though. They know they're, they're pretty here. close. Both, both teams know exactly where they are right now. Scans being used perfectly, Loranov, ooh, just slightly out of position, he's going to be able to get that arcane rune as well, so another big win coming through for Aurora. Jabs once again just on, puts himself onto the front lines, right next to an Observer Ward, pushing in lanes, forcing someone to respond. To be honest, if I was VP right now, I don't know whether I'd want to go up against a Pok who has an Octarine and a arcane rune. <laughs> <laughs> What is the cooldown reduction of that, actually? Mm, 25 25%? It's probably like 40% when it, the multiplicative stuff comes into the equation. It's, do, it's not additive like some things are in this game. Oh, a little bit like the, uh, the evasion, right? Yeah. So the very few things in this game have, like, additive, um to it, I guess. Pure damage reduction is one of them, so you can get like, uh, a Bane with Enfeeble plus a DK with Breathe Fire and the, um, the level 10 talent, and if people don't have a way to dispel it, you're literally doing zero damage for at least, I want to say, eight seconds is the, uh, level one duration of Enfeeble, which feels pretty mm -hmm. damn good. I think the other one is blind, I want to say, like, mischance. may look like we're just waiting out another Roshan here. Don't know. That's because we are. It's <laughs> <laughs> exactly what they're waiting for on Aurora. They want those closed-in teamfights. That's where they thrive. Especially if it happens on their side of the map. But, oh, FNG might get caught out here. And there's the Dragon Tail. There's the gem. Stolen away. And, uh, yeah, it also... What are they doing? They're just passing gems around for no reason. Uh... It also means that, like, if you've got that Arcane Rune and the Octarine, you're very happy to drop a, a Dream Coil onto someone, just because, who cares? It's up in 22 seconds, right? Like, it just feels like so much value for Loranoff at this stage, and really showing the reason why Aurora picked him up in the first place. What's he got here on his Courier? He's going for a Arcane Blink, okay. He says, screw the buyback. I want to pop out of control. Already, what, 7 second cooldown on the Arcane Blink, reduced even further by the Octarine. So it's 5.3 seconds that he's going to be blinking around. Whew. Oh my gosh. Roche is 2 minutes away. So BP going to be breathing a small sigh of relief. It's going to be on their side of the map. Mirana will be alive for it. But in the meantime, Aurora has been able to pick up some of that additional farm that we were talking about. Now a Bloodthorn for Jabs. Of course, the arcane now, link that we mentioned. For, Lincoln Sphere for 23 too, so able yep. to protect against the lasso. It's mm -hmm. been actually catching him quite a bit, even with the Sanjin Yasha. Yep. What's he got here? I mean, he's got a four staff though on Sayush, right? So if Savage reveals himself on the lane, 
or under any sort of vision, they'll know that that Lincolns is available, and if he's on point, he can make that counterplay happen. Pop the Lincolns with the Force, then get the Lasso back to your team. Of course, you still need to consider all of his status resistance and evasion and magic resistance through his uh, both item and neutral item choices. Look at this. They want to fight, they want to claim that high ground area. Just constantly sending out that Astral Spirit to give some information. And, uh, well, even Ollie wants to scale. He has an Aghanim Scepter for himself as well. Mm -hmm. And it is connecting onto a few of these heroes, so they know that the Moonlight Shadow is going off here. Well, Jabs has the high ground. <laughs> Ollie just got a <laughs> plus 420 damage when that spirit came back to him. Nice. Oh. Arrow nearly connecting onto Lorof there, a little bit lucky. Just 30 seconds away. Again, the, the one with the scouting advantage is always going to be Aurora. Maybe they're just seeing where this Astral Spirit is coming from, and they want to try and pick off Ollie to be able to start out this one, but they're going around the other way. Wanting to hit the back lines. They don't have, like, l too much lane vision. Lucky Arrow. Doesn't land on anyone, but they know the direction they're coming from. The smoke's gonna break soon. Here we go, Rolling Thunder coming in. Good dodge. And Aurora are going to disengage here as this Rolling Thunder will expire soon. Meanwhile, though, they've got themselves a Dragon Tail to help the Squadix. Squadix falling very low. Actually able to heal back up there. The Wukong's command coming out. Ollie in some trouble, able to survive. The Chronosphere comes out, though. It only connects onto Sayu, 23 now. Able to help find the kill there onto the back rider, but instantly buying back as well as Ollie. Trying to come back to the fight here. 23. He's all right. Coming Q's in a bit here deep. With the time dilation there onto the Pangolieras. Meanwhile, they call themselves the Rubik there. Q will fall. And Pango's still fine here. Has no, this is doing so good. Maker. Will get himself back. It's only Double the ports who have fallen here at the moment. Mm -hmm. Q just got his buyback as well. It was only a little bit of gold short. Do they feel confident enough to be able to go for that Roshan without BKBs, without the Chronosphere available? And maybe they think, well, there's no Rubik either, but he, of course, can join at any time. They just want to get these D-Wards off first, I suppose. But maybe when he jumps on forward, they're going to go try for a pick-off, although... Far enough, yep. Just, again, trying to bait a few cooldowns out, it seems. Are they going to go for it? Up in back up in 80 it's 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 not enough time it's it's not going to be back up soon vp are just going to attempt to take down this roshan I'm, I'm not sure whether they want to even jump here without krona i mean 23 is hanging around i think they're just waiting for jabs to have that elder dragon form for the little bit of additional magic resistance that it provides put him onto the front yeah, lines they've given him over a lincoln spear as well oh well, that's Ooh. a good thing getting the bkb popped up nice and early yeah so they would love to be able to pick off Oh, they have caught themselves a Puck, though! Sacred Arrow comes out! Uh-oh! Puck found! Taken out! Down for 100 seconds! The torrent catches her as she blinked in! That is so unfortunate there for the Puck! It's now they actually may even find themselves Q here, too. They will. It's a dieback. They may find themselves more. Ollie could be possibly in trouble. Attempting to flee here with this Agnips. Bashed up here. But in comes 23 oh, with the BKB. They're bashing into the Pangolier. But out comes the Wind Waker. They want to try and find themselves more. 23 going to back himself off here with the Time Walk. And BP will only find two there. But notice, is just so strong on this Pangolier. They can't take him out. They can't take him out. And yeah, got a little bit lucky with that Torrent being used. Maybe just... Not wanting to get poked and prodded by the puck. And with him buying that arcane blink, there was no way for him to be able to buy back and rejoin that fight. So, should finally be able to secure Roshan for themselves with them pushing Aurora all the way back to their base. Not even giving up a little bit of presence in the other lanes for it either. Sayush tipping down to the bottom side. Doesn't have any mana though. Has to be very careful that Savage doesn't spot him out. This is a very deep place for Faceless Void to be. Maybe just assuming that Norm wants to be farming this place anyway and he realizes that in just five seconds tier five items are going to be available Epi. So just wanting to get oh. out on the map and try and get those up as quickly as possible. Well, here we go. 60 minute mark passes. Tier 5 items, all are very available for either side of the teams to pick themselves up. Will we be getting something juicy? 
A mirror shield, maybe, perhaps? Oh, a magic lamp for Pangalier. I mean, he's already unkillable, and he gave himself a magic lamp. Sticky and Desolates for the Monkey King. Okay. I mean, talk about that quick kill potential that they've got. They've got amp damage, they've got a Daedalus, they've got Stygian Ooh. Desolator, and a Monkey King bar on a Monkey King. Just imagine if he's got those Jingus built up as well. And I mean, how do you Far even enough. fight into this? They, they don't have the... Sure. They don't have the displacement as well, so I don't think they're going to be able to move him outside of Wukong's if he decides to just drop it on the high ground, right? Like, you're going to be a lot more protected from the Faceless Void because you're inside of that uh, that ring. It's going to be much larger because you're level 25. And even if he kills you once, uh, Savage doesn't have a refresher, right? So he's not going to be able to drop that second Chronosphere that you're really wanting if you're trying to take down Kiritich. Unwavering condition for Marana. 95% magic resistance. Now, Maybe I have not like... seen anyone pick. Oh, look at the tiny Marana! <laughs> <laughs> I totally so forgot it changes the scale. It's a little kitten. Oh my gosh, it's as small as the. It's this as small as the small cat creeps. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I find this so funny. I want to see like oh, a Ricky it? with that. Ricky's already pretty small. Oh my god, it, it'll be like an actual rat. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I guess he's feeling like so. the awesome. only one killing him is the puck, right? So may as well just get that 95% resistance. Although, I mean, you're dealing a decent amount of right click damage as well from, uh, from Lauren off at this point as well. Gets a tier 5 item of his own. He's got the magic lamp, so not wanting to put himself into that position again. Always will have a save now with a hard dispel without even needing a uh, an Aeon Disc. Yeah, I think magic lamp is a big item here. I mean, especially for Lorinoff. Ooh, okay, careful, Ollie. Careful, Ollie. <sighs> Q the finally gets support. Yeah, Q finally gets the saving telekinesis, which. Honestly, pretty huge. He's got a Seer Stone as well, so plenty of extra cast range to potentially go for the saves there. Uh, yeah, I mean that someone doesn't get, like, arrow combination into everything else. What I'm looking out for, we see these big heroes, right? We see, well, except Mirana, she's kind of little, but we, we see all this really high damage coming through. I'm hyped for, hold on, who's caught out? Lorinoff? Oh, yeah. They've got themselves the boat there. Are you going to be able to face shift there Magic in time? Just about. Able to avoid quite a lot. Oh, but stunned up again! Stunned up again! The, oh, the rolling thunder! Able to bash up the puck down for 97 seconds, but buyback is available. Oh, the triple arrows nearly coming through as well, Savage. With the quickest uh, time warp, reverse time warp back that I have ever seen. I I'm looking at Q for these next few fights, man. He's level 20, he's got the cleave, he's got the astral spirit hero attack, but more importantly, he's got the pirate hat. So plus 150 attack speed. He could really start to chunk down some heroes if they don't pay him any mind. Looking for a well, bit of a freebie here. The Chronosphere comes out. They're attempting to try and take down the Pangalier. They will get the kill with the Chronosphere. However, with the command coming out within the base here of Aurora, finding Q. That is Q dead. Buybacks are available as Pangalier going to commit it and try and come back to the fight here and, and take the base here from Aurora. Be a little careful in the trees. Oh, Q, you have to be careful here and respect those back. Wukong command soldiers. Okay, here comes the rolling thunder. Notice coming forward here. 23 is okay. Has his own Wukong going to be expended. Kiritich may fall here. The Dragon Tail's there. The Manta style illusions are going to find the kill. The lasso comes out, but it's caught an illusion and not the right one. As though 23, he's going to be four staff backs here. The boat will connect, but there's no follow up here from the side of Virtus Pro. They are struggling to try and find themselves a kill whilst this puck is down. They just can't seem to get an additional one. Uh, Q learning something there in that fight as well. He used the uh, the Wukongs at max range, not realizing that because he's not standing in it, it's instantly going to be uh, removed. So didn't end up actually doing much of anything, but he did get a really nice spell stolen in the ghost ship. Now he's got that to be able to, uh, to play around with as well. So a team that's already kind of hard to kill unless someone gets really out of position or it's like three, four heroes getting the perfect chain lockdown, it just becomes even harder. 
Gosh, and level 30 soon here. Danog for the Faceless Void, 140 plus Chronosphere AoE. It is big. It is mm -hmm. big what you get. I mean, I always love Backtrack, but the, the Chronosphere increased poor. It is, um, it is it is quite noticeable, 140 plus AoE for this Chrono. What I want to see is FNG spend some of this money. He's holding on to 7.7k gold on a position 5 Marana at this point, just because he's been constantly shoving out lanes with the uh, the Sacred Arrow. <laughs> Doesn't have, even have the Aghanim Shard yet, which I feel like could be quite useful, just to be able to quickly get that big nuke off onto a wave, but... Oh, I, I, was, I was just laughing because when uh, FNG went to go place that Observer Ward there, he looked like he was the right size to enter that tiny crypt. <laughs> The mini Marana. Oh, the mini Marana, yeah. I mean, they commit the Wukong's command here. They will find that tier 3 tower. Oh, 23. That was an aggressive bling, but not able to get a Chronosphere off there. Oh, and the smoke actually disrupting 23 with that Wukong's command soldier. Mm -hmm. So they know exactly what's happening. They're going to back up around their vision. Also, the fact that this lane is kind of in the base gives away a lot. That breathe file goes way too far. The cast range. I know he's got the talent for it, but still seems kind of nutty. I did like something that... So FNG actually bought a Dagon at one point. He must have immediately sold it afterwards, but just as, mm. you know, a little bit of that spell lifesteal that you get, even just from the level 1, feels kind of nice. But more importantly, it's just a way to get rid of these pesky DK illusions. Like, you spend so much time uh, just hitting down an illusion because of how tanky they are that I don't think it's going to be really worth it. It's noticed. Oh, noticed. Yeah. He has committed the roll. Oh, Chronosphere comes out, though. Do they have enough damage to lay through onto the Pangolier? Oh, just able to use the Wind Wink. Can he get away? No. He and cannot. That's a dieback. He is down for 120 seconds with no buyback. Roshan, it could be an early one here, too. We won't know for sure. He may respawn in 20. But will it be an early one? I'm not sure if they want to wait for Roshan here. On uh, Aurora, you know that there was a dieback used now on the Pangolier. He doesn't have it for about four minutes' time. This could be the time that they actually use to start invading the high ground of VP. And now we need to think about something completely different, right? You're going up against a Pango. You're going up against the tidal wave coming through. So there is danger of you getting dragged back underneath some tier 4 towers. Might just let Illusions do the job, though. Oh, correct. Yeah. Arrow lands there. There come the creeps. That door protection now is offline, and that mad style illusion, my gosh, Jabs is just with the corrosive dragon breath. Oh, that was a, uh, a torrent. 23 caught there. The lasso oh. will not connect because of the Lincoln Sphere from 23. So in comes the Hex. Nice save there with the Talakinistis. And Jabs is actually going to see. They're trying to pick up Kiritich. To top and actually find Kiritich. the Monkey King here with the Dragon Tail. Kiritich is on his own here. The BKB there. The Wukong's command. Will he be able to heal up here with that Jingu Mastery? He's going to commit the Refresher again and try and find himself the Rax. He will fall here. But in return, he does find the kill onto Jabs with the Wukong's command. Meanwhile, Chrono. action going to be happening on the bottom lane here. We've got ourselves a Chrono here onto the two, trying to lay the damage here onto Squad X along with Bad Rider 2. Sayo's going to fall. Going to try and find FNG. FNG down. Four buybacks all available here for VP as they get themselves a team fight here on Aurora. Just going to use it on the, the supports for now. 23 Savage feels very safe to just continue moving on forward. No buyback used on Jabs as well, so he's even still got that at his disposal. Realizes that he can be a little bit patient. There's no way for him to quickly join in to this team fight with the rest of the boys. They've at least got a full lane to be able to counteract what Kiritich was able to do with his sacrifice there. Oof. How did that arrow not hit? Lasso. He's caught the puck. But the, as you said, when we're, we're, we're speaking about it during the draft, there's no follow up. Unless you've got yourself an epistle played there on the Pangolier. That Rolling Thunder is going to expire, though, very soon. I'm not able to do much with that. Has to oh, be he time walked into an arrow. I know, that was great. Oh, oh and Return then arrow. an arrow. A solid arrow there onto, what oh, a play. onto the Pangolier. Oh, they've been able to actually dispel the Wind Waker there with the Nullifier. 23 gets the kill. Pango down for 90 seconds. Oh, this is not good here. They're going to go for the tier fours right now. Buybacks available on both Kunker and the Monkey King. They do have themselves a glyph, though, here onto VP. They're going to try and 
play Will as they drag? much time as they can. Can, can they drag they get it to the base? Inside? Monkey King, the, range? the buyback is going to have to be committed here for the Conquer. They come forward now. Monkey King alive. The BKB committed here onto 23. Able to find the kill there onto Sayu. And that is two down here on BP with no buybacks. They can just get out if they can. Oh! Was off the mark with the Boundless. Oh Didn't gosh. connect onto the Faceless Void. And they get away with murder here on Aurora. Two full lanes of racks. Double buybacks. Was it triple buybacks actually coming through from Virtus Pro with Squad X using his at the very end there? And, and Aurora, they just seem to find a way in these late game situations. They draft for it. They give themselves uh -oh. that early game. Oh, Squad X. That's why it's made the BKB. The dream call is there. Uh oh, the Earth Splitter. Splitter. Oh, able to dodge the Earth Splitter. Squad X. Oh, he activates the refresher with the BKB. He has to. He's trying to get back into the base here. He's going to force staff himself there. There we go. The Wukong's command coming out there. The they're just going to throw. The agent here right now. They need to protect this as they're trying to take down Jabs right now. He's in the middle of the agent. Can they take him out? The BKB is there. Jabs is retreating on 100 Still HP, but this agent is slowly falling. Ooh. The Chronosphere, it will come out there. Trying to lay it to the Monkey King. They're trying to get the Ancient there, but the Ancient, the Glyph comes out. He's able to time up back his HP, but it's found there by the Monkey King. Monkey King able to take down Lauren off there too, because he has himself the Rapier on Kiritich, as they're able to defend here on the side of VP with, I think, he crowded the Ancient and the team, and he tried to finish the game there instead of hitting the Monkey King. It's understandable. They just wanted to test it out. They wanted to see if they didn't have that glyph available. And surprising buybacks being used as well. Is he going to go for the throne immediately? Oh, he smoked up. He TP'd out to the outpost. I think they want to go for a backdoor play. They want to try and pick off Squad X while he's just bought back. Let's see how quick they are. They, they might not have seen this Mjolnir being used on the creep. There's a lot of pings happening here. They land with the arrow. Oh, he's okay though. Even the CS Stone not catching anyone. How is Noda still here? Un unseen! <laughs> I mean, the only buyback available is on Monkey King here. 23 coming forward. He's oh, just going straight for the throw. The lasso there, though, but they're going to try and go for the end here on the side of Aurora. And they will get it because they don't have themselves the glyph. They will just end this game here. Game one will go to Aurora. Never an easy one with them, is it? You know, it's always going to go to the hyper late game. It's always going to resolve a big net worth comeback. I th I, I, what was it even at the very end of this 72 and a half minute game, right? Like VP were in really solid control, but Aurora just found a way to be able to split up the map, right? Didn't give up any of those key objectives off the back of Ollie. Just landing some amazing stuns, uh, some slowdowns that prevented them from being able to take Roshan so many times as well, and only dying four times as a result of that as well. So you can have multiple rapiers on Kiritich, you can have far more kills in the game than uh, than anyone on Aurora. Even just the damage was so heavily weighted towards Kiritich, but it's just not enough. They uh, they were able to manufacture those team fights that they really wanted and come back from a 27k net worth deficit at, when was it? At, at 70 minutes and the game ended like three minutes later. Yeah, that, I mean, the Divine Rapier is picked up here from Kiritich too. He was able to deal so much damage within the Wukong's command, but what does that matter when you don't have yourselves a glyph and they just jump in and, and, and go for the throne there and then? They knew how to end that game. They knew that they couldn't team fight um, the side of VP any longer there on Aurora, so they just went for the throne, and indeed they got that, and they will pit themselves up game one out of this best of three. And... If, if, if game one turned out to be something like that, then we're definitely going to be getting ourselves an interesting game two, that's for sure. We are indeed. Uh, it's... I, did, would you say they rectified the issues that I was talking about with the early game coming out from Aurora? Because it really did feel like it was all VP. Like, even though the net worth wasn't that far out of their control for the very start, Savage was way far behind. Uh, Jabs wasn't able to connect on that, uh, the Blink Dagger plus Orchid usage for quite some time in that game. I, I really feel like it was a big part uh, of this game was on Oli and Lorinov from just being able to, yeah, split up map, be uncatchable, and they, they just, they, they made these fights happen that they wanted somehow, some way, Aurora were able to do it. So 
Game two, coming around just around the corner. We're going to need to take a deep breath before that one because I'm sure the players need a bit of a breather as well. But stick around. We will be right back after a short break. So see you then.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Elite League with myself, Epidamnos, and Danog. We just had ourselves game one out of the best of three between BP and Aurora. Now, Virtus Pro, they were looking like they were in a comfortable situation where they were able to get themselves the ages twice, but they were not able to use it. And even with Puck being down when they siege the high ground, they still couldn't find themselves an objective. But Aurora were able to turn it around here, find themselves a very close victory here. It, it looked like a turning point where VP were actually able to defend their base, but because they had themselves no glyph, they went for the dive and they damn well got it. So they get themselves game one, Aurora do, as we're going for a game two now. Danok, how do you feel about that game one? And do you think it will go differently here in game two? I, I, I don't know what it is about VP. They put forward, like, a lot of good performances, and then they just can't seem to finish things off, right? I, I wonder if how much of it is, like, PTSD from past times when they've tried to go high ground and they've thrown, and they're like, oh, we had that game in the palm of our hands. But, I mean, this kind of felt like the same just without them not going high ground. They never forced uh, Aurora to actually, like, need to make those big plays in a really sis uh, risky situation where it was like, do the correct play, or lose the game. It, you, you always just seem to give them an out, an opening, a, a chance for them to be able to push it later and later and later, and that is where they really thrive. So we'll see if things are any different this time around. I think those bands are pretty much all the same as last time. Uh, I think once again, teams are switched. So on the right side is VP, on the left side is Aurora. Um, and so once again, we will get pretty much the exact same start to the draft. Aurora going ahead and picking up the DK. Again, Lorenov can play it, Jabs can play it, and uh, I, I didn't have any issues with Squad X on the Conker this game. I think it was fine. He did a great job in that mid game, but uh, yeah, Conker can't take towers. I think that's the, the big issue. So you need something else that's going to be able to address that. Yeah, and I definitely do feel like they need to try and find something for especially taking objectives here on Virtus Pro. Because if we take a look back at the secret game, uh, when we casted that yesterday, it felt like they had the same issue where they, they had themselves the advantage during the middle stage and early stage because they play so well. But then they're finding it quite difficult to siege the high ground and take the objectives that they need in order to close the game. Mm. No, I'm, I'm in agreement, and so, you know, a big reason of that could be why um, you've got, for example, the um, the TP being banned out by Aurora. The Even Undying is pretty decent, right? You don't want to fight into an Undying, so even if you don't win a team fight, you still force the enemy team to retreat, and that can end up getting you a, a free tower or two if uh, you've still got the heroes with the capabilities to do so, so... I, uh, I don't hate these bands, and I mean, VP's kind of doing Aurora's work for them in uh, getting rid of the Chen and the Lashrak. Uh, obviously, Lashrak is something that they can play very comfortably as well, so I'm honestly a little surprised that they haven't used the... Maybe they're just expecting Aurora to first pick it if it's not banned. That, that can That's really the only thing I can think of. Hmm. I'm quite excited to see, though, whether the draft will change in particular for supports. I was quite surprised to see... Uh, we were speaking about the supports, actually, on uh, on the side of Aurora. And we said, oh, you know, they, they got themselves um, Rubik with... Um, Elder Titan. Yeah, yeah, with the Rubik with the Elder Titan. Could it be troublesome for them if they were... Um, able to get the game and it, it it did look like they had, had a lot of trouble but then they come out on top of course with the uh, the late game and the middle stages of the game but just surviving that initial point i feel like vp they are quite strong during the early stage and they will go here a marana once again for the side of virtus pro so getting on themselves that yeah. cheeky marana please get I mean... the tier six item again <laughs> sorry right, right tier 5 item i mean it feels like a tier 6 with the amount that it changes things yeah uh i mean we were talking about like both of us didn't really like the rubik and elder titan combination for what you're not able to do in terms of mm. like you know uh effectiveness with ganks but that aurora doesn't exactly play normal dota either right like they they play their own little style i, I love seeing it I, i'm a little tired of the same cookie cutter stuff coming every single time. That's what made a team, I've gone way back here, like Alliance, really interesting in that they had a, a play style that was just completely different from everyone else's and they were able to make it work. Clearly, Aurora, they've had a lot of success through it, through this organization, through when the majority of the roster was with Talon as well. Um, so I'm going to 
have a different eye towards their drafts, I suppose I can say. Like, if they go something that does have a lot of that early damage, great. They can be able to make that work, and maybe they want to play a little bit more aggressively. But I think they always want supports that are able to scale into the later stages of the game, and Grimstroke is one of those. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite excited for this Grimstroke. We don't usually see Grimstroke all that often. Um, it's a kind of a, an on orthodox hero but when you get yourself uh when you're against an agility hero which has very strong output damage they always do like to pick up the agonims to get the dark portrait and just return that damage soul bind pretty good with dragon tail too so double stuns there like to see what they also combine with the, uh, the soul bind mm. here too for grimstroke that'll be interesting to see and it's very very good to keep mirana in place as well uh, yep in, in particular, I, I wonder of course it is a leash I wonder how much the Grimstroke pick is going to influence what uh, core they actually pick on Virtus Pro, at least is their position mm. one, right? Like you mentioned, those big beefy heroes, they just feel amazing if you're able to get the Dark Portrait off. And a lot of the counters sometimes were heroes that had like some sort of steroid or buff or transformation that really changed them to be much more amazing. Uh, so I'm talking like Sven or Bloodseeker or even Terrorblade to a lesser extent. So if you go like that and you're using Dark Portrait on a Bloodseeker, he gets a lot of his damage out of the Blood Rage, right? So it actually doesn't feel that good at all. But Bloodseeker kind of sucks right now as well. So, um, <laughs> I, well, it's, it's true, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, no, I agree. Yeah. So maybe it's going to be something like a Sven, which still honestly does feel pretty scary, even without the, uh, the God Strength transformation. But at least you can yeah. nullify a little bit of the effectiveness. So we'll see if they do indeed pick that up. I... I'd... I wonder if this is... Uh, I think it's a Grimstroke 4 with the DK from what yep. we see, right? Yeah, yeah Q plays the Grimstroke on this team. Also just a little bit easier for him to be able to make stacks with the Stroke of Fate. Um, I feel like one of the ways where you can potentially punish the, the fact that these heroes have a weak-ish mid-game uh, is the fact that you can, like, you know, maybe push them down. But the thing is, Grimstroke has pretty good wave clear, right? You've got the Q, you can level that up. Even just being able to toss the uh, Inkswell onto a DK and throw him into the middle of a team fight if you can get an early-ish Aghanim shard, that feels really good too. Um, same sort of thing, I suppose, could apply to the Crystal Maiden if you're able to get that Crystal clone up for Ollie to be able to make plays with. I, I guess the difference this game, like I was saying, is that this is actually a lineup that can get a lot of these kills early on. You've got stuns, you've got a lot of magic damage before BKBs are really a factor. Um, so I'm... I'm excited to see that. I'm also excited to see potentially an FNG Pugna. I mean, it's him most of the time that's playing it. Uh, also solo when he plays it on nine pandas. That's also really exciting to see. But, uh, you know, I'm, you know me, I'm just a Pugna enjoyer. I'll, I'm, I'm quite intrigued though with um, how you said that he will be playing the Grimstroke here because when they pit themselves the Rubik in the first game, I thought, oh, it's going to be a Rubik 4. You know, he might he might be able to trade, but I'm not sure whether they have uh, the damage to take down the carry. I mean, in particular, Monkey King, who's pretty good against Dragon Knight. But they're actually able to stop the lane quite early on uh, with the nuke damage. So I'm wondering if they have the same potential with Grimstroke with Dragon Knight. And they pick up Morphling here, too, on Aurora. Just trying to think what position one they want to go on Virtus Pro to be able to counter out this Morphling a little bit, right? Like, do they want to go something that just gets way too active early on? Do they want to go something that's going to crush the lane? Do they want to go something that's like a direct Morphling counter? There's very different options for them to consider with this. I think the thing that you'd be worried about is it is a lot harder to fight into Aurora now. They're not going to be giving up as many yeah. of these, these team fights quite as easily. Um, although Pugna is going to have pretty decent value this game, I would say, at least until Morphling has the um, the Phylactery available, um, just because Decrepify is going to save. And a lot of the damage from Aurora is actually kind of gradual. They don't have a ton of burst damage. Um, yeah, so something yeah. e even like the heal coming through could be quite nice. I, I was going to say that as well. Looking at the uh, the Virtus Pro lineup at the moment, and they pit themselves at Morphling, do you see them killing this Morphling anytime soon? I'm, I'm I'm scratching my head thinking. I mean, they have themselves rolling thunder. Um, they have themselves um, some disruption in the team fight with the torrent storm, which is going to be nice against the morphling, but not really anything kind of on the side of nuke damage that can help to take down this morphling quickly. Mm, yeah, that's that's a little bit of an area of concern for mine. I mean, it might 
it might lead me to think they do go something like this fan right just something that can mm. get that quick burst damage out if you're able to land the initial stuns onto him and again isn't weak against the grimstroke either also just uh giving the team a little bit of extra armor can never go astray especially considering how squishy pogna can be Ban Why wise, they'll ban out Puck. Yeah, they, they, they yeah. don't want to play against Puck like they did in uh, game one. They don't have themselves any catch this time. No lasso for them. Only uh, Sacred Arrow and Torrent. So actually, speaking of that, isn't it going to be a little bit difficult to catch the Morphling, even though they do have themselves Rolling Thunder as well? Potentially. I mean, I'm expecting to see four staffs come out pretty early on from both Grim and CM, just because of how effective it's going to be to get out of, you know, boat combination, rolling thunder, arrow, um, breaking range for the life drain as well from the Pugna. So, I think there's a lot of value this game. To mention that they, they were comfortable with the Pangolier in game one, but it's just hit me that they actually picked Pangolier after they had got themselves the Grimstroke as well. So if they do get themselves the Soulbind, it is going to have a giant effect on the, uh, the Rolling Thunder. I suppose the thing um, is, like, just hit me. He, he's not exactly going to be close by to any of these heroes, right? Like, even Kunker can do a lot of his damage from relatively far out. So I feel like mm. most of the time, whoever's going to be playing this Pangolier is just going to be completely away from the rest of the team and allowing you to, yeah, just take him down from afar. Okay. So, so Razor gets banned. And interestingly, I haven't I haven't seen that, but Aurora will ban the Anti Mage. I guess Anti Mage, a very good hero, particularly against Morphling, because Morphling does like himself the uh, the mana. And if it's burned down, then he can't really attribute shift effectively. It definitely needs mana in order to move around in the fights. And Storm Spirit comes out now. I can definitely see the reason why they ban out the Anti Mage here. That is definitely mm -hmm. some catch here on Aurora too, and a hero that we don't see quite often. Exciting stuff from Aurora. Once again, I mean, they can combine it with the Inkswell here, too. Combine it with the Inkswell, you've got a CM for a little bit of that regen, you've got an additional way to be able to find catch, you've got someone else that can make somewhat space for the Morphling. Alright, so now I feel like it's actually on Aurora to try and end this game a little bit sooner, right? Naga Siren, not too many responses for it on this team. Yes, you've got things like the Breathe Fire, you've got the Splash Damage, you've got um, stroke of Fate, you've got CM with a decent amount of AoE damage, but I feel like you're just going to be able to split the map up a little bit too effectively on Kiritich if they just uh, leave him be for too long. And I, I'd have to say that Morphling hits his timings just a little bit sooner than what the Naga Siren can. You just still got to watch out for something like the Orchid and the Ensnare. Can always counter initiate here with Song of the Siren. And they have themselves the Torrent Storm too, so. I feel like if Virtus Pro are quick on their fingers, then they can definitely kind of counter initiate a, a jump here from Lorinoff on the Storm Spirit. Um, I'm quite intrigued to see what Lorinoff will build here too, whether he will decide to get himself an early Orchid here or decide to go into the kind of Witchblade build because it's kind of it's kind of split between the two. I mean, they're never really sure. Uh, well, I personally am not sure how. You know, a, a pro player, particularly like Lorinoff, who plays Storm Spirit, decides whether to go an Orchid here or decides to go the Witchblade. I think he needs to focus on living, honestly, um, for a lot of this early part of the game, right? Like, you've got... Yeah. Uh, it's actually going to be Squad X, Squad X playing into him, so maybe I was thinking you could perhaps get, like, some early on rotations from FNG with the arrow from a, a uh, an X Marks to be able to kill the Storm before he hits up onto that level 6. Um, and then maybe look to kind of punish him that way. But I guess they're just really valuing the mana burn coming out from the Pangolier, you know, getting into that earlier yeah. refusal blade to be able to be impactful, not just against the Storm Spirit, but Morphling as well. I mean, that is one thing to highlight here too, that we have ourselves, of course, Squadix now. He's not on the Conquer, he's on the Pangolier. Uh, mm -hmm. So obviously, as you said, he is on the mid lane. Here. So maybe a little bit of a different uh, Conquer game here with particular of that being on the off lane. We see how things will play out in terms of draft. Who are you favoring here, VP or Aurora? What what draft do you like more here? I mean, it's been a while since I've seen Aurora actually try and play this more early game oriented draft. So I'm, I'm hesitant to want to give them my vote of confidence, but I feel like they did kind of manufacture a lot of the right team fights for what they were going for this game no repeat draft why yeah I know. 
Is he's just not used to playing the Morphling, is old mate 23 Savage, the Grandmaster on the hero. I, I, I'm going to say Aurora, just because I was impressive. I was impressed with how much they were able to delay that game out. I guess part of that can be on the hesitance from VP for to be able to actually try and force them to make that game-saving play. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I want to see if they're able to flick the switch and play some faster Dota here on Aurora. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to give them my little bit of faith there. Something to watch out here to Grandmaster Morphling. If, if yep. you didn't have a... If you couldn't show yourself off that you are a Morphling specialist, Grandmaster really, you know, puts the cherry on top to say, yes, I am. So excited to see a Grandmaster Morphling gameplay. See how 23 plays on the morph. Mm-hmm. Thirty seconds to battle. He did get crushed against Nick Brandon in like twenty-two minutes, so oh, you dear. know. He he is a very, very good morphling player, like top three in the world, but yeah, the oh, Nigma was just on another level that day. So will we see some skirmishes during the early pickup of the runes here with Aurora coming in? NG just staying where the bad spawns, spawns, but maybe falls back. Wait there onto two. Uh, Would have actually killed FNG, I think, if they committed with the um, dragon tail onto him. He'd already leveled up the sacred okay. arrow, so couldn't have had the leap to be able to get away. Not that you really but want two the leap for the laning phase, anyway. Yeah. I'm just having a look at the lanes here. What would be a uh, a good lane of interest to watch here? Because we had ourselves an amazing bottom lane here uh, when it was the uh, the DK and the Rubik versus the Monkey King. There was absolutely havoc there on game one, but this game, I'm not really sure. Because 23, he can just heal back up, can't he? With the uh, the attribute shift, we, we we saw that yesterday, and he he just morphed himself all the way to uh, agility, and then just popped a. 10 stick charge and voila he's back to full hp pretty much yeah i'm i'm kind of keen to see how this mid lane goes to be honest i think this is going to be much more of a a question of skill this game like pure mechanical skill as to who's mm -hmm. going to be the one to be able to get out on top just draw deny last hit potential coming through from both of them yeah loving how Aronoff so not only harassing here with the static yeah. random, but he's getting lapped with it at the same time whilst using the overload to harass. This is this is what a really good storm player is able to do. The understanding of the spells here whilst also harassing and getting last hits at the same time with the static random. Yeah. I, I'd say it's probably like his third best hero is the uh, the Storm Spirit, only behind like the Lesh and the Puck. He's just very good at being able to get a lot out of pretty much every stage of the game, when it, whether it be laning stage or those first few early rotations. What I want to see a lot differently this game, though, from Aurora, if they are going to be able to take the W, is helping him out a lot more around the power rings. He basically didn't get a single one until, like, 18 minutes last game, and I think that's... That sucks as a puck. That is horrible for a Storm Spirit. Like, he needs to be able to get a lot of these kills because he just doesn't have that same level of quick, unpunishable wave clear that a puck does. Yeah. And already, what it going straight away for this water rune. Already, the understanding of that. Far enough trying to aggro the creeps closer to him, but oh, that range creep is still going to survive. He should get that XP denied there by Squadix. Also, misses out on the flag bearer creep. Not too much happening in the other lanes for now. 23 taking a little bit of harassment, which is kind of to be expected, right? I think only at level 3, maybe, they can uh, make a kill attempt happen onto Sayush if he gets out of position. But for now, Ollie just wanting to have that arcane aura make it uh, a little bit easier for the other lanes to be able to make plays. Good play, though, to be able to shove the lane out a little bit further. It means that Aurora should be able to claim both Lotuses on uh, both lanes. Two braces here on Jab. I was intrigued as to whether he would go uh, kind of like a Soul Ring here on the DK in order to just spam out the Breathe Fire here and try and push away Kiritich to the, the jungle. They do have a Marana support. Plus five Marana. It's, it's okay, but not really, you know, 
benefit Kiriteach to, tr tr you know, try and heal up and push the Dragon Knight away. It's, it's... Yeah, D DK so... definitely isn't the one that's going to get punished in that lane. It's uh, it's Q on his Grimstroke if he's out of position, right? You can see on Kiriteach, yeah. he's already got one point in the Ensnare, trying to get a little bit of that harassment off, but... Jabs isn't the target that you're wanting to go on. You can see he's gone for a much more defensive build. He just wants to stay alive in this lane. Ooh, they do find themselves early here on the Crystal Maiden bottom with Ayu. A level 2 Never Blast able to help out and applying pressure here on 23 2. This pugnet position for coming in handy here. I mean, it was pretty much just. Uh getting that level 3 a little bit sooner, right? I think that's what uh, ended up being able to confirm the kill onto Ollie. I feel like it's a very different story if he had the Frostbite for himself to be able to play around with, but obviously not. It makes it a little bit more of a challenge as Savage, even taking a little bit of that additional harass as they now get that level 3, and you can see instantly they go in onto Noticed here on this bottom side. Yeah, the warning drop just a bit late on Sayush as well. To be able to do he much was getting anything. quite low there too on the on the morphling from that turret was just able to actually attribute shift. This is where morphling starts to come into play now and harass away against the conquer. But I I, I do share your um, your enjoyment for the, the Pogna support here, Dan Okay, I I find him quite a great hero in regards to the fact that he is very very good on the lane, a great harasser, a great power pusher too. Very early on. And then once you have yourself to level 6, you can actually withstand many attacks, possibly, the, the life drain. And you can also provide the mana of the force, too. Yeah. Probably not so much this game in terms of the whole life drain being uninterruptible. I mean, you've you got a lot of stuns that you're going up against, for sure. Uh, even just silences coming through from the, uh, the Phantom's Embrace, as well as on Q. And speaking of Q, he's made a little bit of a rotation towards that mid lane, maybe hoping that Squad X was going to try for some additional harass, but him just being here, and you can even see Ollie hanging around the area, they're doing exactly what I was talking about in terms oh, of power protecting runes. the power runes. Yeah. Well, Kondo is going to be committed Committing. early here. It's not actually going to spawn off, it's going to spawn top. It's a amplified damage room, but the ink while they're coming in onto two. Oranoff actually won't go for the kill here. He's attempting to try and get himself... Ooh! Oh, he zipped into an arrow! Oh, that is a blunder, and he doesn't get himself the Amplified Damage and He will zip away on low mana. <sighs> that was a blunder. Yeah. At night time, just didn't have that vision of it traveling along the high ground, so... Nicely done by FNG to be able to... Kind of ruin the lane a little bit here now for... Uh... For Laranov, as FNG uses the second last of his leaps to be able to get away from this gank attempt. Oh, he's actually picking him out here. Yeah. Don't think they can... Ooh, actually, they might be looking to invade here, steal away the Wisdom Rune. Look at Q. He's going to need to be very careful. Does he know they're there? Oh, he does. Oh, now he does, yeah. <laughs> they jump on him there with the swashbuckle. He's okay. The Dragon Tail comes out, and he does get the Rune Jab. There we go. So, at least they'll stop them from obtaining that Wisdom Rune, FNG now. And we'll find now you will be okay. As also, Squadix able to TP out of there and add himself back to the middle lane. Alright, so overall, much better early game coming through from Jabs here, right? Like, he's had a lot of influence. He's meaning that Nage isn't able to just sit in the lane and farm, having to go back towards these uh, these small camps to be able to pick it up. He makes a timely rotation that, sure, it's him that gets the Wisdom Rune and not the supports, meaning they're still both level 3. Doesn't feel the greatest. But he's also still topping the net worth as a result of all of that. So, playing a good game so far is Jabs. Reward there from FNG. Lauren off rotating in though. Maybe perhaps they can get themselves another power rune here. Ready with full mana. Zipping in. Has himself the electric board to the ink. Well, it's there now. Going to commit it here on to Squadix. Squadix may be in trouble. Never mind. He comes forward with the squash buckle. Still dominant here as he finds himself due there too. Gets himself a double kill. Lauren off didn't want to output any more damage there. And I think he was right to do so because. There's a possibility he could have fallen there and died. 
Yeah, very, very dangerous. They just ran out of stuns, unfortunately. And one of the downsides, really, of... Oh, actually, what top side. Look yep. what's happening to Jabs. Yeah. see him showing up. Won't be able to do much, though. Yeah, one, what I was saying is one of the downsides of having your supports be so XP-starved by making a lot of these rotations protecting you is that if a fight does actually break out, you actually don't uh, get much in the form of uh, your stun durations, for example. So that Frostbite was still very short, didn't have the follow-up that they were necessarily wanting to be able to take out yeah. uh, Squad X when he went for that committal into the team fight. they do here of Lauren. He's the lowest net worth core currently at the moment, but not far behind the Conquer. Oh, top of the Pangolier. He's top of the net worth, Pango is. But he's having a great time again. And he's 3 and 0, isn't he? And mm -hmm. He's 3 and 0 and farming up. He's about to get this Diffusal Blade soon. I think around about 11 minutes he'll have it. This is where we start to see him pop off even more. Oh, but they have got a can there. They found themselves by you in the jungle. Well, is that? And they will get the kills, but at least Lauren off will get himself some increase network. Mm -hmm. Couldn't ask for much of a better tier 1 neutral item unnoticed as well for this stage of the game. The safety bubble basically just countering out almost all of the effects of the, uh, the adaptive strike coming out from Savage right now. So basically not even worth the mana to be able to cast it does have that Vlad's offering, though, on 23. So obviously going to give a little bit of additional armor to the creeps, allow him to be able to push a bit more effectively, but of course the damage boost and the lifesteal, those are the main ones that I'm uh, I'm looking at. Might mean that Savage is looking to try again and get that little bit more active, though. As we were saying, can't let this Nagasaren get into the late game. That's when you really start to to get a little bit more concerned about Aurora's chances. But early on, it's all been all VP, right? 3k net worth lead just at this early stage. So wh when you do go this Vladimir's early, it, it is in order to try and join fights earlier, right? Because sometimes we do see Manta style built first here on, uh, on Morphlings, but occasionally a Vladimir's from here and there. Yep. Manta makes sense as well after it's, it's just standard morphling right and also just yeah. a nice way to be able to get out of the ensnare or the orchid if uh, that indeed is what Kiritich is going to go for which it is after his own Manta so yeah it really feels like with how well the early game has gone for VP it's going to be a much smaller window for Aurora to potentially try and make this this aggressive timing happen for themselves right you're going to have a Naga with the orchid to counter out your own you know, aggressive potential, which might be a little bit of a concern. So I think this next little bit when Jabs is going to have his Blink Dagger is actually going to be so vital. Uh, you know, you can't have a repeat of last game where he just roamed around the map for what felt like about five minutes without getting any kills, or maybe he got like one support kill. Needs to oh, make every post a winner. Smoke play from three on DP. We try and find two. Big next. Finding the kill there on the rim. The Baron comes out. They may have put themselves Lauren off. Rolling Thunder. Will it connect? Yes, it will. Along with that, in there, too, they find themselves two here on Vertical Pro. So, dominating in the early stages of the game like they did in game one. Not even just giving uh, Savage a completely free lane either. You had Sayush just still sitting down on this bottom side. Realizes that it is important for him to get up into that life drain as quickly as he can so that he is a little bit more sustainable and, of course, can keep the rest of his team out on the map for quite some time. Love the move from Kiritich as well. He stole away a bunch of stacks inside of the Ancient Camp area. He uses an early point in the Ensnare and the Song to be able to get that uh, that double kill. Yeah, we've got to start a Blade Mail now too for Notice on Conquer. So we have a much better time within these team fights here. It's going to be very impactful against Morphling and Storm. They gotta take out Squad X. Like to get off some new damage. Yep. Squad here will be in. Well, all they might get like the kill here on Tango, and they will. They'll take him out. At least they'll find themselves something and we'll get themselves two kills here. Open up as five. Aurora will come out on top, and this is what you need to do if they're ahead. Try and find yourself these pickoffs, and they do just that, taking down the highest net of four there at the time. Now surpassing it on the Morphling, but slowly, closely following the Nog. 
And we saw there it did need 23 Savage to be involved, right? Just that little bit of bonus damage, both from the maxed out Adaptive Strike, plus just the damage buff coming through from the Vladimir's offering, uh, providing his team the damage that they needed to actually be able to take down that Pango before uh, Pugna was able to get the save. Maybe a little bit of an oversight to not have a point in Decrepify at this stage of the game. Just the one point could have potentially changed that one. So we see once again, is Jab's going to take this wisdom as well? Yes, he will. Okay, screw the supports, I understand. <laughs> is level 7 though, on Ollie. That is a big spike for CM's effectiveness. As he's just trying to stop right now Kiritich's illusions from taking all of his hard-earned stacks. He's actually going to freezing field them, sure. Yep. Why not? You know, if they're going to steal his wisdom runes, he's got to forget his farm somewhere. I think he'll be able to take that out, yeah. Takes that stack. I have liked what Kiritich has been doing, though, with his uh, illusions, right? He's just using them to constantly scout. If he gets some uh, stacks for himself that uh, Aurora have picked up, great. If not, at least it gives them a lot of information about where his team can safely make moves like this with the Moonlight Shadow to try and invade into the Radiant side of the map. Just turns to nighttime, they get the detection up for themselves, and they avoided the Sentry Ward that Q had placed down around that Watcher. They're just hoping that Savage goes out into this lane. He's, he's going to. Agi morphed. Oh, he's caught with the Torrent and an arrow. Uh oh, boat coming in. They find it. Easy pick off there. Lovely torrent coming out from Notice with the Sacred Arrow from FNG. I guess you know, the kill, but they're going to back off. It, even the smoke. Yeah, they, they end up sentrying and uh, observer warding up on that high ground. They're not hitting it away it, it, immediately just to protect the the vision advantage that they have. But uh, yeah, they're, they're just going to back off. Why not? A free kill onto the Morphling. And this is why you never go full Agi. Always feel like there's going to be kills like that happening and an immediate move to the top side of the map as well which is really cool from vp alongside the illusions alongside the siege creep and even just sayush pumping in some of that damage with his nether blast walking now to on so should be able to start joining team fights very soon here on the naga siren huge again far enough or enough. He has himself his own orchid here. With two orchids now in the game. Didn't actually go that witch blade here. I wonder what he'll go next on the storm. Would he potentially just rush into the BKB here? Because there's a lot of uh, catch here now on the side of BP. I mean, especially when they pick themselves the Naga Siren up last pick. They have themselves an ensnare. Very, very Look at the lines being drawn on the map. They're just looking to really, I suppose, protect the bottom side of the map. But, I mean, they've got decent vision up right now on Virtus Pro, And that's actually where they're looking to make these next few plays, it seems, on Kiritich and FNG. We were talking about some of those timings that they're going to be able to hit because of how well Kiritich has been farming. He's already got Ooh. the Orchid. So they want to try Speaking and get this kill onto... Yeah. yeah, look at him. I mean, for Lauren off, but the Inkswell is there to protect him. He will be okay. An really reveal, selfless play from Q as well. Like, if you look at his items, he looks pretty bare. Just boots, circlet, couple of branches, and a magic stick. But more importantly, he has the shard. He has the response to that uh, to that orchid coming through from <laughs> Kiritich. And unfortunately for Ollie, he does not have that response. He is going to get picked off. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that is... The... That never Poor feels Crystal good. Maiden. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Actually, still rushing into the uh, the Agonyms on Q. I'm a little surprised oh, about yeah. that. Meanwhile, the Golden Sun's an Orchid here onto Squadix and finding the kill there with 23 joining in. There's the Pangolier on his own. The Orchid works out perfectly there. Maybe yeah, perhaps they'll try and find themselves more. Yeah, Q's playing with fire though, just standing inside of these trees, revealing himself for a second. They pop the Moonlight Shadow for it and they'll see. There's a bunch of uh, Naga illusions hanging around, so not wanting to go too far towards the south side of this, but 
Once again, Kiritich will just say, thank you very much. I will take all of your safe farm away from you. Might even use these Naga illusions from the Manta to be able to cut the next lane, so... Good response from uh, Aurora, though, to be able to toss the Morphling Manta illusions forward as well. So they're going to be doing their own little pushing to at least force themselves to not have to defend quite as quickly. I don't know how I feel about Q going into the Ags. I, I still think it's a great four-staff game, at least for the first item. And then if he still really felt like it would give him a lot of value, then by all means, go into the Ags beyond that. But it's just going to save so many rough situations, I feel, if he's uh, able to get up into that item. Mm -hmm. Pace is kind of slowed down here, though, for the side of Virtus Pro. I'm quite surprised here with Aurora finding pickoffs here and there. It's actually delayed the haste that they've had during this early game. It's, it never feels it. bad, though, right? Because Kiritich, he's going for a heart. You're very happy to wait until your Naga Saren has a heart of Tarask, in addition yeah. to a Manta and an Orchid, on top of everything else, right? So, like, I think as long as they're farming as aggressively as they are on Aurora's side of the map, they should feel very satisfied. I can't remember the last time anyone on Aurora actually was able to move across the map. I think it was that kill onto the Pango at, like, 12 minutes right in front of the tier 1 tower bottom. Ever since then, it's just been all on the Radiant side. Oh, if Lorinov got caught there. Oh, Ooh, no, he has song. been caught. Song of Triple. the Siren. Oh, he catches three. This is going to be a big vote if they can find it. Lorinov actually able to zip away. The Freezing Field comes out. They will lose both of the supports on the side of Aurora. And Lorinov zips the hell out of there. So they'll just lose the two supports. Still have the amp damage as well, unnoticed. No boat, but Torrent Storm is available. It doesn't seem like he feels dangered at all. Again, it's just about taking away the farm that they have to potentially make this comeback happen on Aurora. Jabs would love to be able to find a quick pick off onto someone, though, with the Elder Dragon form being popped in response to that gank. Doesn't seem like he'll be able to. He's still level 16, though. He's done a really good job on Jabs to have this much XP. That's actually crazy high. Yeah, that's the Manta style too. Uh, I won't be surprised if, like, possibly we could get maybe a, a, a Daedalus on, on Dragon Knight, because the, the AoE damage against uh, Naga Siren is it's not something to disrespect, though. Has Manta able to dispel the Ensnare? It's coming in now with the Inkswell trying to find no song. the Naga Siren. Is there we come. In comes the Torrent Storm. Will that be enough to save Kimitich? Slowly falling. Where's the heal? Not able to get it off. The, the Brief Fire will find it. But they were able to take down the Storm Spirit. They want to try and find more here on Aurora Squadix. Oh, he got Stunned. stunned up there. The, the BKP expired. Just as that ink swell had the stun effect there. Did, did you see that there? <laughs> I did, I did. Using the ink swell onto him. Just clipping onto that high ground. Wanting any part of it to clip onto that TP away. And... Oh, just to rub salt into the wound, 23, while morphed into the Pangolier, just gives him his own voice line, gives him the beep beep, and uh, makes him think twice about making that sort of move again. Hopefully Savage doesn't die to a Tormentor after all this happens, but doesn't look like it. Ooh, Lorinoff is actually the one that's going to be able to claim it nice and early. So no Crystal Clone, but certainly a bit of a, a damage buff for himself. It's so crazy to see the the types of interactions with ever since ever since they changed the BKB usage, like how it works a while ago. It, it, it's so intriguing to see how it works now. So obviously, of course, just being stunned up there on the cliff, like so that the stun still had the effect, but won't stun him until the BKB expires. But then there was a little bit of the stun remaining, which cancelled the TP. As mm -hmm. you said, rubbed salt into the wound. It's so cool to see interactions like that. Yep. With that, you know, glimpse, yules, all sorts of other stuns. X marks. <laughs> X marks. You've got to be so careful now. BKB isn't that ultimate safety net that it once was. Even just from a damage perspective, right? Like, I, I'm a little surprised at how much teams, not so much in this tournament, but prior to it, were still picking a lot of TA. And you consider like, oh, okay, well, previously you would pop BKB, they can't do any magic damage to you, and it's really hard to get through those refractions with pure physical damage. Now not so much, right? It might not be dealing as much magic damage, but you're still taking magic damage, so refractions wear and off inside of that. Just things that you need to consider. 
All right. Q's committed to the uh, the Ag Scepter. He's got the Point Booster already picked up, so not really too much else that a Grimstroke would be able to pick up as a result. I would say really good here for Lorinov too. Almost has that BKB now, and, and when you're a Storm Spirit this early on, when you don't have yourself anything like a BKB, you can suffer quite a lot, but he's actually been able to do okay within these last few team fights. Because they mm -hmm. did jump onto the DK, didn't they, near the Tormentor? And that's kind of not the target you want to jump on. <laughs> you didn't realize how strong Jabs actually is. He's been having a great time. He's almost level 18 on the DK. He's about to get it soon. Yeah, I mean, after I said that thing about his high level, I did remember that he's gotten every single one of the Wisdom Runes for Aurora. So oh, that okay. certainly helps things. But, uh, I mean, VP doesn't seem like they remembered exactly what happened to them last game, right? Going in on this DK isn't necessarily the best option for yourself, especially if Q is anywhere nearby, right? He had the uh, the Inkswell onto the DK, so providing him that healing from having a Naga and all of the Illusions and a Pango all on top of him meant that he was actually able to survive through quite easily with how farmed he is. It's only going to get worse as well. More than halfway towards the Aghanim Scepter is Jabs. As they look to make Not another move so here on VP. Away. They would love to be able to utilize this heart to its full potential. Trying to pick off onto a squishier hero, but again, Jabs is always the one that they just put out onto the front lines. Even maybe baiting out one of those illusions as being the real hero? Doesn't seem like it. And on the way to be completing a Kanda soon... 23. He almost has it. 350 gold away on the Morphling. They are going to interestingly go for the Roshan, though, on Virtus Pro. And Should I'm be able to get sure it pretty easy. Even if they were, I don't think this is the highest level of importance to them. I mean, who, who are they going to give it to, you reckon? I don't know if Kiritic necessarily needs it. You might just give it over to Squadex, although he doesn't even have the Ag, so... Maybe that's not who you actually want to give it through to. Yeah, it might just be Kiritich, actually. Feeling like they need to start going high ground, need to start pushing the advantage a little bit quicker. Yeah. There we go, gets the Aegis now. So Kiritich able to lay in a lot more aggression now on the Naga Siren. So we'll see if they can utilize this Aegis this time. Because they, they've been having a little bit of difficulty here, utilizing the Aegis to try and get themselves the high ground so hopefully they don't let it just snuff out again like a, a flame in the night hopefully they'll be able to use it once again q is doing a great job of just keeping those lanes shoved away from afar you know using the uh, the ink swell onto the target taking damage from the creeps so it life steals up uh, or rather heals off of everything around it and then you know a simple stroke of fate it's going to be enough to be able to uh, get that extra save. You could just see the importance of not even putting the standard three points into the Phantom's Embrace that people do a lot of the time. He's He understands his role in this game. He is a saving and delaying support. And he's almost close to that Agnims too that you mentioned as well, Danog. About a thousand gold away. Aggressive glyph being really used beneficial. as well by... VP, making sure that the range creep survived. So they definitely want to keep pushing on forward. I think that's when VP look their best, is when they can strangle their opponents out of the map. Just make sure that they just have nowhere to be able to pick up their farm, but honestly, that's... Aurora's pretty good at being able to maneuver around that. We saw that in game one. And speaking of, in mean, 23, he's got the Kanda available, and he's, you know, decent way towards the, uh, the Butterfly as well. Already picked up 2.2k gold, but... Finally, they're actually going to invade up onto the high ground with Kiritich and Sayush backing him up. They are, yeah. So they are sieging the high ground this time. They have themselves the Aegis. They've got a spiking here. With the Naga Siren. Arta Trask and Orchid this early on at 26. Oh, nice dodge there from the mirror image. Avoiding a dragon tail. But took a, quite a bit of damage, Kiritich, there by the DK. It's something that you have to be careful of. I wouldn't be surprised if J Jabs went the 85% um, the breathe fire damage cast range in dragon sure. form again, like he did in game one. Yeah, just keep him away for as long as he can. I, I wouldn't hate to see it either. 
What I do want to see is uh, Sayush either buying or directing his team to be able to take the Tormentor, because we saw the consideration for going the Dagon on FNG last game, just to be able to instantly clear those DK illusions who are just so damn yeah. tanky with that freshly picked up Ags. Well, you could do a similar sort of thing with the AoE life drain coming through from the Pugna if he gets the, uh, the Ag Shard for the Netherwood. Oh, they have bad door protection right now. Creeps are slowly coming in though, as meanwhile 23 just still able to farm up here. Is going for a butterfly next, which is going to be very beneficial against yeah. the Naga. But you have just picked up a blood fawn now, which can go through the morphling, through the true strike, uh, of course. Oh, but now they have themselves that dark portrait now. Look at it go! <laughs> it's going to fight. Wait, it's going. No, no way it fights. <laughs> Oh, it feels really bad for poor Sayush. Oh Just a cheeky God. 600 gold as well, coming through from Q off the back of that. Solo kill almost completely. They're able to force them back away from the tower. Oh, here we go. I, I don't know if they're going to be able to use this Aegis Danog. It expires in 1 minute and 20. Once again, and, and this is one of the advantages, right, of having the uh the dark portrait up against illusion heroes you can always just use it on an illusion it doesn't need to be uh, on the main hero as well a lot of the times against it uh, especially when morphling ags was the the way that it used to be you would use it on for example like a tb illusion for example from range and just steal a lot of the tb stats so not exactly something you want to do but is kiritich going to be forced to hold on it's getting gone on a little bit here 40 seconds yeah, left on the ages gosh kiritich He's okay though. The frostbite's there, he will dispel it with the mirror image. Attempting to flee, it's still okay. <laughs> the Naka illusion's going again for Sayush. <laughs> He's finding him. Oh, oh my god. Once again, they're okay. just forced back. They just can't get that, that key damage that they need finally crack that high ground and all the while savage is farming close by so he's morphed into the naga for right now they're actually going to go for a bit of a play of their own as they wait for the ages to expire one second away as jumping in oh yeah they are. oh on to the pangolier they take him out down for 50 they're on the aggressive now want to try and find more and i mean they do have themselves the song of the siren ready they will commit that but the dark portrait actually Finding the kill. Wait, the doll portrait's not affected by the song of nope. the siren? Nope, it's spell immune. Okay, fair enough. It's kind of like, it always has a BKB, and I think it's... I want to say 80% or 95%. Yeah, 95% magic resistance on it as well, so... I think it's the highest thing left in the game that has uh, magic resist yeah. on it. As we go for an even deeper jump here on Lorenoff, on to notice. Not going to be able to land it, though. Despite everything that's been happening, they've still been able to place this really deep Observer Ward on Ollie that's enabling them to just go for this additional push. And once again, a very big gold swing off the back of just one fight. Don't take advantage of the Aegis, it expires, and Aurora immediately make that pounce happen. Yeah. It's doing okay here, Aurora Art, starting to push back now at VP. They're starting to get themselves a lead, and especially take down Squadix as well. He's not having the best of time at the moment on the Pangolier. Trying to take the Tormentor now here too, he'll get it. They are very physical damage oriented on, um, on VP, huh? Like, sure, you've got the, the Riptide, which is magical, but I'm just thinking, like, even if Storm Spirit gets caught out and he doesn't have the BKB and he doesn't have um, Q's Inkswell on him, he still has that Vindicator Axe, so an additional 20 armor if he gets, you know, caught inside of a Rolling Thunder or an Arrow or a Boat or, you know, all these other things that actually could cause him a lot of grief. Won't. Yeah. <laughs> He's just going to be a little bit safer, allow time for the rest of the team to get to him. Yeah, Q's being so greedy here. And to be fair, they're not exactly punishing him, right? As long as he's alive, you'd never have that 
that freedom of just being able to push on forward. Naga Illusion is going to come back the other way, and I was thinking, all right, maybe now four staff time, you've done your greedy thing. He's going Octarine Core, so <laughs> he just wants to be able to spam that out a little bit more frequently. Uh, Scotty Greaves almost finished now on FNG. I guess that'll be a little bit of help within the team fights. Sure, that, helps nice. if he's the one that gets gone on by the Orca jump as well. Gets you out of Frostbite. Yeah. Savage basically has his BKB as well. And they're going to be able to time this pretty good with the potential Roche spawn on their side of the map. And, well, it's only 15 seconds, so... All things coming up for Aurora right now. Seeing a bunch of couriers fly out. I'm not sure if that Observer Ward caught a glimpse of it, though. Has it somehow been able to stay up for basically max duration, but they're going to have the BKB when this Roche comes up. So big win for Aurora now. They're fighting on their side of the map. They're fighting during the daytime. They've got the high ground advantage. They've got the vision advantage. They've got pretty much everything that they could possibly want, except for Jabs. He's all the way back in the base. He TP'd back here. So if they make this move now, it's actually oh. an outnumber for Virtus Pro. I trust they're, yeah, they're pinging. Yes. They're pinging the fact that Jabs isn't there. So they want to either isolate him or they want to go on the rest of the team while he's not there. I think, do they want to go on Jabs again? It hasn't really worked out too well for them in the past. Oh, he gets the shot out. Here we go. Oh, Kirjic just able to use the... the the mirror image there, they are attempting to try and take down Jabs though, with a lot of damage there from the Bloodfawn and the Stunlock, actually able to take down the DK. DK down for 70 seconds, only four remain here on Aurora, and no buyback available. They will all get themselves out of there and TP away, so it looks like they will get themselves another Roshan, apart from Q, who does not have himself a TP. He does so not. having to hide in the corner. They have They don't know, him. it's just him. Oh, poor yeah, guy. Uh, yeah, that's the fact of that Observer Ward staying up that whole time, right? Showed that Jabs was away from the team, TP'd all the way back to the base for... I'm honestly not sure what reason. Like, maybe he just wanted to pick up some of the components of his Octarine core, but... That's what Couriers are for. Yeah. And is low enough being able to get something nice here at the moment? I mean... Uh, still only a Kaya attempting to go for a Scythe of Vice. Laranoff okay. hasn't been having the best of scaling on this storm at the moment. No, even from a level standpoint, right? He's going to be lucky enough to be able to get the 35-minute Wisdom Rune at least, so he's going to have a little bit of that extra movement speed and, you know, damage output coming through from that. So that's a bonus, but yeah, certainly yeah. not the same level of damage impact that we saw from his puck in Game 1. This time, surely. <laughs> they're able to at least take a tier 3 tower on Aurora. Uh, sorry, on Virtus Pro. Q, yeah, once we'll again. See. They're just putting himself out on the front lines and they're allowing him to take uh, to keep all these lanes pushed away. It's not that much damage that they need to be able to take out that tier 3 tower. Just sitting on about 100 HP, so even a Naga Illusion should be enough to do it. Just 23, morphing Gaz, uh, the Naga Siren here, and Using the mirror image to split push. Dark portrait's up though, and it's onto the Pugna. Oh, so actually, the Siren comes out. He's up on high ground at least on jabs, so Kiritic shouldn't be able to connect in onto him. Oh, Although the Secret Arrow guns. though. Nice force. It's still okay for the time being. And in comes the Rolling Thunder now, zip forward. They actually find the Pugna in the back lines, maybe perhaps. No, still able to survive through it. There we go, we'll finally... No, they still found Q, alive. more importantly. Q-Titch falling very low, will finally be found. Take him down there, has the Aegis. Will be coming back alive, another zip comes out again. Sayu still living through it here with a Glimmer Cape. That's the second attempt that Lorenoff is oh, trying to find it to take down the Pugna. Pesky, pesky Pugna with this Glimmer Cape. They really got nothing out of that. They forced a buyback. Sure, they killed a Conquer. Yeah, they got the Aegis as well, but... It really felt like that was an avenue to potentially go in onto the Naga Siren, right? You'd gotten rid of a lot of the control, you didn't have the Moonlight Shadow, you didn't have heals, you didn't have all the team fight and the stuns, and Naga had even used Song of the Siren, so maybe just a little bit of an oversight considering 23 Savage was right in on top of her to be able to potentially take her out. Just a small victory coming through for Virtus Pro again. I think Jabs is the right target to go for here on Virtus Pro because they, they they have tried to go for him a few times. I mean, they picked him off once, 
Well, this second time, it was kind of a precarious position. I mean, you said he was on the high ground, so I'm not sure whether they should have gone for it or not. I think the difference was that time, I'm not sure how long the Bloodthorn actually lasted on him, but Q was nearby, so he was able to get the, uh, the ink swell onto him and remove that, so at least he wasn't taking that amplified damage. It means so much in terms of being able to delay things out a little bit. Speaking of Q, he's got that Octarine Core, so now... Uh, 25 second illusion duration, 26 second cooldown. So there's basically oh. always going to be uh, some <laughs> sort of uh, Dark Portrait on the map. Yeah. It's great against the Naga, actually. It's something that I didn't notice. You know, those Riptides are how those illusions do a lot of their damage, right? And it's magical. And he has 95% magic resistance with the Dark Portrait. So they can't do anything to be able to stop him from just fixing lanes or, you know, killing the creeps off. Jab's still no BKB, but Radiance strong as ever to be the one leading the charge. Will they get Roll, uh, tier 3? Not yet. I think it might be a tier 3 for tier 3 trade attempted here. Yeah, possibly. I mean, Manta's helping to try and burst down this tier 3, melt it down with the corrosive dragon breath. Even Sayush just gets off one Nether Blast and then is forced to TP away. Oh, Ooh, do they have a vision of him? They oh, do. they catch him there with a the Hex! There we go, they got him. That was a very, Ooh. very long TP. I think that was like yeah. five or six seconds for that TP. I was about to ask, where the hell did he TP to? That took an eternity. He seems to think they've got vision down there, but no, man, you just took a little bit too long to get out of there. Now the question for me is, what does is, what is Lorinoff go next? Does he want to go into, like, a, a Kai Assange for himself, just to give himself that little bit of extra tank ability, a little bit more of that status resistance? Just give yourself yeah, time good. to be able to get that uh, that BKB off here. I think that's the right choice. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. A swift blink as well for 23 now. Q's just taken towers mm. with his Dark Portrait illusions. <laughs> Tier 3 tower's gone because of him. FNG is really deep, by the way. They are really abusing the, uh... The Naga Siren against the Naga Siren. Mm -hmm. If you could say here, I mean, 23 morphing as the Naga using the illusions, and then you've got the dark portraits as well, so they're actually counteracting with the split push with her own illusions. <laughs> yep. And again, the illusions can't do anything about it to stop him, right? Like... <laughs> You all, you, it, it's such a waste to have Nagasaren and not be doing this, but the illusions can't take care of the Dark Portrait. It's like, I'm you, but stronger. Yeah. This FNG should just be able to get away. He's got the gem, so can't afford to let him die. But they've lost all Tier three, tier 2 towers now, excuse me, on Virtus Pro, so not quite as easy to be able to get out of their base. Even just using the Dark Portrait once again to put a little bit of harass in. <laughs> Look, he's just scouting out, alright, where are they? There, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. We know they're all lax in the base, so let's just push our illusions out and you know, fix at least bot and... Oh, who? Who they found out here? FNG, he's tra he was trying to split push. Got the wave. He will be Free found, gym. taken out by the hands of Lorinoff. They are smoked up here still, VP. With the Moonlight Shadow, well, I don't know if this is the correct approach here. I mean, the buyback is available, though, for FNG if they really want to try and find the jump hit. Not if you've just got the gem. Away. And if you've got jabs, like, just standing on the front lines like he's been doing such a good job at. Even Lorenoff, with the shield rune, is staying quite far back, but wanting to give his life up for free. They found him. Oh, Dragon Tail, though, is committed there onto the Nogasara. Meanwhile, in the back lines as well, they find themselves the Pangolier, who is deleted there. Lorinoff gets the kill, but it was mainly 23 there with the insane damage being outputted here. As no BKB. Naga Siren trying to get away here. He's actually going to zip right into on the Ooh, blood for Lorinoff. He so zips in and then he just deletes himself. Kiritich gets the kill. He's okay here, but they are going to attempt to try and siege this tier 3. Jab's completely healthy here also. That was... Um, an interesting play. Both the mid lane has been taken out there. Mm -hmm. Maybe just expecting to have an ink swell onto him. Yeah, prevent that Bloodthorn from having that level of impact. But yeah, 
no BKB, and the Sanj was actually really close to getting delivered onto him, but he just zipped in a couple of seconds too early, so... Shows what a difference that small amount of time can make. There's even an amplified damage rune up on this top side that I'm sure FNG wants to maybe yoink away from himself. He's just trying to keep those waves shoved as best he can, though. Yeah. Better him to have it than them. Oh my gosh. 23 is pretty much six slotted now on this Morphling 2. Wanting to go for a Divine Rapier here on the Morphling. Just completed a Satanic now. No buyback available, so going all in here. Roshan. Average time spawn, 1 minute yep. and 40. Mm -hmm. Do they have a blink on notice? No, doesn't look like it. I'm just thinking about like how he's going to actually get in there with the scythe. Unless it's, uh, of course, with a Song of the Siren setup. Still say, Kiritich has been playing a pretty damn good game, right? Like, he obviously doesn't have that net worth domination that he previously had. Uh, yeah. Going up against the Morphling. But he's still doing a really good job of just keeping the lane shoved. The Bloodthorns have been pretty good. The uh, the Song of the Sirens have been amazing for uh, for setting up onto Aurora. But it just feels like there's not too many other sources of damage other than him. I think Jabs is just trying to scout out here with the Mantas. It would see notice there. Maybe they'll take that information and head on forward. Thank you you don't want to be much, too aggressive Parker. though. The best things about this too is that Q has the ninja gear as well, so it's always oh, the smoke's gonna break. They have vision, dragon tail there, be committed onto the conquer along with the insane physical damage coming out there. Will they have enough to take down notice? He's able to survive as they attempt to turn it around now with the song of the siren laying in with the blood form there onto the morphling. And look at that 23 was taken out, not able to use the satanic there. It's deleted. They find themselves three on the side here of Virtus Pro and only lose FNG. That is is a victorious team fight for them it is they were just not able to be the ones getting the jump for a change it really felt like it wasn't the position for vp to get that sort of engagement from and Lorenoff, he was just basically on the back foot that entire time which meant that you didn't have anyone putting pressure onto these heroes it meant that you were able to get a perfect song the siren off not even needing to pop the bkb was kiritich either that was just an insane setup that vp were able to land Very careful with where Kiritich is moving, even just using the Trickster Cloak to be able to approach these lanes a little bit quicker. Honestly, the AoE Dragon Tail might be pretty effective, honestly, against the Naga if they try and swarm onto someone like that again. Just take care of all the illusions at once. Yeah, he is still laying into that tier 2 tower, though. I mean, he doesn't have back up here, but I mean, three down on Aurora, so... That's the possibility to do so. Yep, there we go. Tier 2 tower gone. Roshan is up now once again for VP to just go take. As we've said. And I don't know if they can get there in time. I mean, 10 seconds remaining on Morphling before he's back. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's enough time for them to contest this Roshan. We might see Naga Siren get the worst Aghanim Scepter upgrade in the game. Uh, of course, Ensnare going through BKB is nice, but Reel In is horrible, <laughs> so... I'm always excited to see if that one ends up coming through. Oh, he's gonna do it. Is he going to reel someone this game, Epi? I want a prediction from you. Is he gonna reel someone in? Uh... Mm -hmm. Hmm... I don't think so. <laughs> hold on, hold I mean, on, maybe, hold maybe, on. maybe a support? Oh. Well, again, they get themselves the back lines here. FNG along with the Pugner is gone. The cores only remain. They do find the support there. Crystal Maiden down. The they buyback here from Crystal Soul Maiden. And Pugner tried to come back to the fight. They did have themselves that Soulbind there, which has had a massive disruption on Squadix's Rolling Thunder. He will commit the cheese there. He's back full HP, but a lovely Song of the Siren. It disrupts the rest of Aurora here. And they will attempt to TP out. Kiri Teach now with his own BKB and TP will get away. So they will just lose the support they found here on the side of Virtus Pro, but they found Sayu themselves the Pogner. This is going to be a dieback, as they do indeed take down Sayu. Down for 90 seconds. It's down for a long ass time. You also see there's an arcane rune in the river as well. So Lorinov, he'll want to be scouting out for that one. He's certainly recovered his uh, his net worth and more importantly the levels, right? Just having that little bit of an extra duration on the electric vortex, so key. 
And now it's going to be a bit of an easier way to deal with some of these illusions as well once he gets into the level 25 talent. Whether or not he chooses the Overload Bounce, because of course he's already got the Shard, right? So that's going to be quite nice to be able to deal with all of these illusions. As Well, the push-in onto the high ground comes. They know that it's a 5v4 situation guaranteed, and they've got the advantage of this Naga Illusions as, as well, so you can push multiple lanes at once. That track fail. <laughs> you did follow DK. From the Kunker. Well, they will uh, attempt Ooh, to try and savage. take down the middle set of Rax here, slowly falling. As they'll get it, there we go. It will fall. 23, okay. This Aegis still remains though on the Naga Siren. Three minutes in, but they're, they're, they're the ones who have having their base ripped apart here by the side of Aurora. Even with them having the Aegis at hand. Jabs is so progressively placed considering how far back the rest of the boys are, but I mean, the only thing Savage is doing a good job. He's splitting the map up. One of the best towers to take early on, or Rax rather, is mid-set, just because, you know, you could push top, you could push bottom, and then someone also needs to deal with mid. There's no, like, right choice to be able to deal with it. They can just divide and conquer. I think the, the thing that they got wrong in that last engagement on VP was they used a lot just to try and kill off the Crystal Maiden. You know, she was the one that was focused by both the Naga and the Pangalia, and they ended up getting soulbound together, so Naga couldn't join in on the rest of the fight, and yeah, like we saw, they were completely free to just invade the back lines and wipe out the supports basically instantly. What would you, um, what would you buy on DK right now? Jabs has 8,000 gold. <laughs> Oof, um, people. what would I buy? Give me a second to think about it. He's kind of a little bit six slotted. Yeah. That's the gem. You could go overwhelming blink, maybe. Something to deal with the Naga Illusions a little bit. Disables Blink Daggers as well if he's able to blink on in. Nullify. Yeah, good. Gets rid of the Decrep, gets rid of the uh, the Shield Crash as well. Four Staffs, Glimmer Capes. Not as much of an issue. I think... Uh... 23 just sold his Kanda here in okay. order to trade it out for a Daedalus. Sure. Maybe feeling like it's more about those extended team fights than the full-on burst, right? I mean, even the uh, the squishier heroes have a decent amount of heft at this stage. You've got, of course, the Glimmer Capes to be able to provide that protection. You've got the Guardian Greaves. You've got the Decrepify. And building into a Lincoln Sphere as well is Sayush. Well, I think they have vision here Speaking on Sayu. He's got the glimmer. No gem. He's okay. TP. 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 He's out. He's out. He's, out. He's okay. Just before it went to daytime as well. Oh, he didn't get an amp damage rune up for Kiritich. Not sure if they want to be able to do anything with this, though, considering Aegis only 30 seconds away. This is normally the time that Aurora looks to abuse the fact that you know, you're the ones on the back foot. Even just hanging around the Roche pit. Not sure what he's doing that for. <laughs> Nowhere close to being available. And he did end up going that overload attack bounce as well. So it feels really cool. good when paired together with the Aghanim Shard. Do you know if it works on um, allies as well? Because he has the uh, the, the Aghanim Shard. Uh, yeah. Oh, the, the bounce? Yeah, yeah, the I, bounce. I, I don't think think it does. I might be completely wrong, though. I feel like there was a point where it did, absolutely, because <laughs> we're talking about Oz Dota, so this is complete clownery, but there was a point where one of my teams in their local tournament game did, like, a Meepo Storm Spirit strat, where <laughs> they just gave it over to all of the different Meepo clones, and they just took over the game super early, like a Poz 4 Storm Spirit that just rushed the shard <laughs> and stuff. What the heck? Is that a, uh, a Lincoln Sphere on Sayu? Okay. Yep. Still no uh, no Ag Shard though, which I'm a little surprised about, considering how much of a threat Jabs is being just with his illusions on their own. He's going that overwhelming blink eventually. Uh, and even like we've seen in the past few fights, Savage has been morphing into the Naga Siren as opposed to the Pangalia. You know, previously he needed that little bit of an extra movement source, but now that he's got the Swift Blink, 
he can just you know blink in onto the back lines and then use the waveform either offensively or defensively depending on how he sees the fight going but yeah just having those illusions to be able to provide not only vision but the ensnare of course it just gives so much vision and understanding and even we saw previously split push right taking the tier 3 tower bot lane yeah and even though it's a 1k net worth lead for VP, most of this gold is on Kiritich, as you can see. 49,000 net worth, about to be 50,000 net worth here on the Naga Siren. I was going to say, it doesn't feel like only a you know, one 2k net worth lead, and it's actually in VP's favor as well, so... I don't know, must have just been that, that Ag's blessing that he picked up from the previous Roshan, right? Oh, They're yeah, gonna yeah. need to try something different, though. Like, you, you cannot be going in onto jabs. You have to take out Q at the start of these fights. Do they have a gem on anyone? They do on Conker, but he doesn't really have a way to be able to get onto the back lines. He's got a Blink Dagger, but it's such a scary prospect to be. You, you're going to be forced to commit, like, everything in one of these engagements, right? Might be this yeah. one. Oh, G granted vision there. They're going to try and take down the Grimshrow. Still alive for some time, but will be found finally by that Rolling Thunder. This BKB going to expire soon here on the Morphling. As Morphling being bashed up there by the Rolling Thunder. As they lay the damage, they find themselves two here into VP. As the TP cancel there onto Oli. Oli found also. They find free here on Virtus Pro. That's the ballsy play that I was talking about, right? Like, you have to go for that sort of play. You can't just sit back and let them slowly walk up into you. They're just going to bleed out your axe. They're going to split you up and, you know, end up just being a, a perfect use of the smoke plus the Moonlight Shadow and Q for once being out of position where he gets picked off at the start of the fight and then suddenly you're lacking a lot of saves. You're lacking a lot of control for the Pangolier as well. So a little victory. Coming through here for VP. It seems like it's swapped around now. Well, it, it looked to be a good game here for Aurora. Now it's Aurora who are struggling here to try and push themselves the high I mean, they've got themselves a few objectives, but VP have yet to do the same here too. They've been getting themselves all these Aegises, but they're still not able to push the high ground. They've only got themselves one tier three here. But at least they're starting to come out on top of these few team fights. But all these team fights are indeed happening on their side of the map, above their high ground. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be forced to potentially pop a buyback on people here. I don't think you're giving up uh, 23 Savages buyback for this. He's up in 20 seconds. I think you give up one lane for this. That ain't swell. One off's okay. It's all about the delay. Jats is in. He is. That's a bit aggressive. Okay. It's all right there, that BKB. Will expire. They'll just find themselves the range racks, and that's about it here on the side of VP. And they will just get themselves back for another day. I mean, Roshan available, Ooh. as we have ourselves noticed, and of course, Squadix, who was just very close to having his TP cancelled there <laughs> in the trees, TPing here to the outpost on top. So maybe perhaps we'll look to have themselves another Roshan again. But I think Aurora are aware, darling. They're heading straight there with a smoke of deceit. Yeah, and again, just trying to use the illusions as much as they can. Even Q in that mid lane, away from the rest of the team, but it's the right sort of play. He just wants to shove in this mid lane, force a defensive move to give a little bit of information about who they can potentially make the jump onto. It's only FNG at the moment, sitting here on the back lines. Just trying to defend the base, make sure it's not taken over, but as soon as Kiritich is the one revealing inside the base, that just gives them free reign to be able to take this Roshan. So, nice little play coming through from Aurora, both the immediate movement inside of the, uh, for the smoke, excuse me, but as well, Q just realizing that he can force them to make a bad map movement in order to open up this Roshan. And that Roshan is just melting here. Look at it fall. It is completely gone now in the hands of actually Aurora here instead. And that is a... Agnum's... Blessing on Lorinov. Yeah, Agnum's Blessing on the Lorinov. So he's got himself that AoE Electric Vortex now, which may prove to be very, very beneficial. We'll see how this works out. Especially with what you said previously, Donog, about the... Um... The, the overload bouncing, the attack bounce, yeah, the level 25 mm -hmm. talent. Yeah. That's Even just like if someone else is getting gone on by Kiritich with the Bloodthorn, he can zip in and, you know, just stop all of that illusion damage from coming through. Ooh. 
So that was a oh, zip. No. <laughs> I yeah. didn't know if it was going in or not then. He's thinking about it. They're gonna need to do something very shortly on VP. Mid lane's pushing. Oh, they found FNG. Get onto FNG. Yeah, they'll try and attempt to find the kill. They will do so there indeed. Buyback is available. Rolling Thunder though in the back lines there. Trying to disrupt Q. Does have him. Great Soulbind. Soulbind. There we go. Onto two is caught both Naga and the Pangalier here. As they're trying to find themselves. Squadix, they will be able to do so indeed. The Song of the Siren comes out. Naga Siren will attempt to get away. They find themselves the Pugna. That is three down here on the side of Virtus Pro. As Aurora will attempt to try and find themselves more. They're on the aggressive now with three down. They have to be careful, though, of the buybacks. They do, but again, I don't think they need to overcommit here. It is their style to really push their advantage when they get the opportunity to, but why not just go tier threes? You've got jabs, able to sit in on the front lines. Mantra Illusions if he really wants, and actually they're going to look to commit for this? I'm not so sure I'd be feeling that confident, not without that Song of the Siren or BKB up on Kiritich. Okay, there we go, all three buybacks now, but with that, they just disengage Aurora. Yep. Just waiting for their abilities to come back online here, and then they perhaps we'll see them go for the high ground again, because they, they have themselves this Aegis still. Even just a Yule Scepter up now for Grimstroke. Providing himself that little bit of extra protection if he, again, is the one that gets going on. Wouldn't have hated the uh, the Aeon Disc, but maybe... <laughs> this is no Aegis Rapier territory for uh, for 23. So clearly he oh, wow. just wants to end this now. He's going to be focusing down those three targets that got caught with their pants down. All buybacks being used, and he wants to confirm those into diebacks. Where is FNG holding here? He's going for the Scythe of Vice, but he's just short of being able to pick it up. 300 gold away. So the Iron Branch, bro, surely. <laughs> I mean, nice Observer Ward there from Sayu as well. That'll help to scout out any initiation here from Aurora, but the, the backdoor protection has expired, and they're just trying to siege the melee racks here with the replication onto the Naga Siren from the Morphling, along with the top portrait here as well, using Naga's own illusions. It literally just comes in waves, right? Like, you've either got Jabs sitting on the front lines, or you've got uh, Dark Portrait Illusion coming through as well, doing the majority of things. So you never have a moment's breathing room. And you've also got Super Creeps pushing in through one lane completely, and buffed up range creeps in the bottom lane. So, like, how are you supposed to be able to deal with every single bit of this? Dagon is the right choice by FNG. I'm very happy that he went for it. He just needs to sell that freaking uh, Iron Branch as they go in. Oh, Naga Siren in some trouble. Beat Hex up there. The Naga dead. Down 100 seconds. Buybacks available. Rolling Thunder coming in now. Disrupting Lauren off. He is able to zip away. And the Soul Bind once again. Stopping this Rolling Thunder here from Squadix. But they're able to possibly find the kill here onto Jabs. As noticed, able to take down Q. The Song of the Siren there. They will lay into the DK. There we go. With the buyback coming out from the Nog Siren. They will get themselves to And now they're on the retreat. The, oh, bash. the bash. Actually taking down Lauren off there. As he was TP, arrow. he's going to be coming back alive, but the Sacred Arrow will connect. They find the kill there onto the Storm Spirit, and VP, they will defend. They will, but it's not for free. You've still got buybacks up on all of these Aurora heroes. You've still got the melee racks, and more importantly, you've opened up a big win condition. We've been talking about how much of their net worth is all on this Kiritich Naga Siren. Now he doesn't have a buyback for the next seven minutes, so it is just a big target on his back right now if he ever gets caught out away from the rest of the team i think uh 23 here ever since he's got this divine rapier is just ever so scared of you know mm -hmm. jumping upon them because it, it can go sideways so easily here with some of the turnaround items that they have i, I mean i kind of want to see another cheeky play yes. like we saw with the, the blade mail in last game right like i think notice could go a blade yeah. mail and it would work really well because Savage, if he's full edgy morphed, 1500 HP with a Divine Rapier and a Stygian Desolator. Like, he will blow himself up in like two hits. Whereas Kunker, he's going to be just fine. 4.6k, it's a natural thing to build into as a, a Kunker even at this stage. So I want to see if they can get really clever with all this. Notice doesn't have a way to join the boys though outside of that, uh, that outpost. But by the time he does that, with fixing these lanes, I feel like, yeah, everyone's just going to be rezzed on Aurora. 
Yeah, but we do have ourselves the tier 5 items now. Jarvis has got himself a mirror shield. We've got a Stygian Desolator on 23. Another mirror shield on Loridov. <laughs> um, and then some Force Boots for Cutie Teach and Sayu. Uh, Book right. of Shadows for Noticed. Uh, nice. the, the big one that you're looking at is FNG. He's got the Arcanist armor. So I've been talking about Blade Mail. It's a Blade Mail substitute. He just needs to be on point with that Force Field aura being in the right place. So if he can get like a leap off and then pop the Arcanist armor when 23 jumps in, that could be the game changer. And they all smoke up here now too. Once again, this is a second game. God, I mean, this is the first series of the day and a second, the second game of this first series. Another 60 minute game, <laughs> tier five items. Just Aurora Dota, man, what can I say? As they're looking to make that siege just a little bit easier with jabs going into the AC. Already taken down two full lanes, tier three down on the top side, everything's exposed. Will they be able to close it out? All those mirror shields, man, it's crazy. <laughs> Four, Blood four now for Lorinov to try and increase the output damage that they have. In regards to buybacks, uh, let's have a look here. So everyone on the side of Aurora has a buyback, and we just got ourselves a Wind Waker here too on the mm -hmm. Grimstroke, which is going to be very nice here. Rolling Thunder, oh, oh, nice going to be committed here onto Jabs, but. There we go, the soul bind will be committed here, but Squadix is completely fine because he is away from the rest of his team. But that's back online in 30 seconds already. Very low yeah. cooldown here on the soul bind. It is, but you've still got Elder Dragon form up. You've still got this pushing potential. You've still got creeps pushing other lanes. Kiritic doing his best to try and address those other two factors as best he can. <laughs> They're just wondering. <laughs> Yeah. Dagon's one of the illusions. It's, I mean, it's it a works. great response to illusions, yeah. I've seen uh, DJ, when he was playing position 5, went Dagon on a Warlock just to counter a Spectre who was trying to haunt onto him consistently. So it's uh, it's a good item for supports in the right game. Don't, don't grief and bite every game though, guys, please. <laughs> It seems They're like just Aurora just struggling once again to try and find an opening here and don't want to throw uh, it all away. I mean, not necessarily. Have buyback soon. They, they will have buyback soon, but I think they're just saying, look, the lanes are probably going to be in a good spot for us just off of the racks that we've been able to take. And we've got a rapier. So I think the bigger throw would be to go high ground without the security of having the, uh, the Aegis under your belt. And, you know, Roshan has the potential to spawn a minute and a half ago. It's up in 15 seconds, so... That's the mm -hmm. area that they've got a little bit of extra vision around. Sayush will be able to get rid of some of that, though. And again, Kiritich is doing a great job of just manipulating these other lanes, both mid and bot, so that they're not going to be pushing into base when they, uh, they eventually do have to make this move to try and contest Roshan. Because I, I don't think you want to let a Morphling with Rapier have Aegis for free. They're just sitting back for now, though. I wonder what he swaps out, though, in order to get it. Maybe the, the BKB or something? Daedalus, maybe? Yeah, oh, the BKB. BKB. Oh, I guess the Ags. Oh, wait, no. Who, who gets There's the Blessing? The ground. Mm, CM? Jabs has it at the moment. In his inventory. Come on, give it to the CM. Give it to the CM. Maybe he sells it. <laughs> no! Please, no! <laughs> He's already, he's already six line. I don't, I don't know what else he's going to build. He's still got it. I mean, does everyone have Agnims on there? There we go. Gives it to Ollie. It's good against the Naga, right? You just drop the freezing field. You can walk around. You end up freezing the actual uh, frostbiting, excuse me, the uh, the illusions that are inside of it. Feels really nice. And you should not be the main target that's uh, getting focused on as well. So I feel like this could be some really good value coming through from him. I wonder if he's actually made the call saying, hey, can we wait 35 seconds? I want to be able to freezing field in this next fight. Oh my gosh, that dark portrait coming forward. That actually might find the rain tracks. It will. Oh! Deleting FNG in the trees. Killing spree for 23. Yeah, he got right clicked for 1950 damage. Gosh. Just one Rax left. Good thing you've got illusions to be able to just do all of your work for you. Yeah, 
Oh, so you play this smart. He's trying to deal with the illusion on his own through right clicks. That's how desperate they are. The slow siege begins, Stunog. We're going to be here for a while. Oh, 23. Going to the Observer he, he did Ward. blink in, wait for now. <laughs> Book oh of my Shadows. gosh. Okay. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's an initiation. Oh, the bash there. Onto the storm. Storm. Is he okay? Yes, he is able to zip away. Squadix falling very, very low. Is he able to get back here with... Oh, they actually got the arrow there onto Storm. But he's still okay. He zips away. They have lost themselves. Their melee racks. There's 23 coming in now. He has been hexed up. Bashed up there too. Will they be able to turn it around? It's Another the good Torrent. Also stunning him in place. They've caught themselves the Conquer. The Song of the Siren. It comes out. It's caught themselves five. What else can they do with this? The Sacred Arrow. It will not actually connect there. They find themselves the Bugner. Bugner going to buy back. The Silence there onto Morphling. But he's just able to heal up here with the incredible damage that he's outputting here. Not a care in the world. He's going to go for the tier four he finds himself one one tier four tower is remaining another rolling thunder it's prepped it's coming out now will they be they able to find at least something here as the soul bite takes down the naga siren naga dead instant buyback here right now soul bite again not able to get off anything with this rolling thunder once again but the age is going to bring back 23 alive here 23 in trouble he's being bashed up he's going to activate that beacon satanic. The satanic though he will be fine as now he tries to lay into squad x squad x dead buyback available he has the buyback coming back 23 no longer any bkb at all trying to find fng here but he has been they kill him? they're gonna try and jump onto him right now they have been able to find the morphling three buybacks coming out here from aurora notice in trouble here slowly fallen notice is gone has the buyback available he will come back if they try to end it right now they have themselves like lift squadix is down no buyback only three chances is inside the throne they're gonna try and get notice here along with that electric vortex as the freezing field comes out now only one remaining on bp that is g G as Aurora get themselves game two out of this best of three. They will <laughs> win this series. I mean, we see some three-game series take about one and a half hours to complete. This was a two-game series that took, what, nearly two and a half at this point. What a performance again by Aurora. We were a little bit worried, once again, that, uh, you know, VP had this window. Kiritich got off to a way too good start with this game. But uh, once again, it was the 23 Savage show on his Morphling, showing why he is to be feared, why I thought this would be much more hotly contested in this matchup between the two teams, because Kiritich, he's no slouch on the hero either. And eventually, it just got to this point where they seemed like they had answers for everything. You know, Jabs being able to use those DK illusions for... Pushing everything. Riskless pushing, basically, was what that was at the very end of things. And Q, I was wrong. I, I was like, yeah, there's not a great Dark Portrait game. But uh, yeah, those Niagara Illusions just were so hard for them to deal with. He was getting solo kills on supports with them as well. It was just a really well-rounded performance. It still went late, but it was a different style of hero choice coming through, at least from the supports from Aurora. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure what they could have done there because that team fight at the last stage of the game was absolutely nuts. There was so much action happening. We, I, I don't think it would have been possible for us to take note of all the action that happened there because I'm sure there was three different team fights happening at all areas of the map mm -hmm. uh, around that ancient. Absolutely nuts, but eventually, yeah, they come out with the victory here for Aurora. Absolutely insane games. Both of those going beyond 60 minutes. And you said this was Aurora Gaming. That was the excuse for the plus 60 minutes. <laughs> that was the excuse. I mean, they, they had the win probability for most of this game. The one time it wasn't was, you know, those times around the the Manta Orchid on the Naga Siren where they were able to take a few of those early-ish fights. But uh, again, they just weren't able to truly crack the high ground. It felt like they had opportunities to do so. It felt like, you know, Sayush and Kiritich were doing a good job, at least with the tier 3 on the bottom side. But yeah, some of the itemization, I think, was a little bit off. You, you could have dealt with those DK illusions a little bit sooner, and it really was Jabs that got them through that scariest period of the game. He ended up top net worth on Aurora, by the way, on uh, on the Dragon Knight. So, would you say that Jabs was the MVP in your heart here, or would you go I think particularly so. for someone else? You think and so? any time, like, I think he limited what Naga was able to do, and I think any time that you can just be a really solid performer with 
first pick over all of the draft, I think you, you need to kind of weigh that into your decision rather than just waiting for the perfect morphling game or something like that, you know? But uh, we will have to go to a very quick break. We've got an interview to come after this. I'm sure whoever we get from Aurora is going to be exhausted, but they'll be generous enough to be able to take time to chat with us. So stick around and we will be back to hear with someone from Aurora. See you in a few minutes. <laughs> Bye guys, see you later. Hello everybody, welcome back. We got ourselves an interview here with 23 from Aurora. How are you doing, 23? Yeah, good. <laughs> That's it's good. good to hear, man. Uh, just, a, just a question for you. Um, both of these games, Game 1 and Game 2, they exceeded 60 minutes here. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering, did you guys have a thorough game plan of how to end these games or not for game one and two? Because it seems um, you had to do quite a lot of thinking in order to close these games up, obviously, of course, because they went longer than 60 minutes. I think basically just get the rush and we'll see how it goes. Like, if we get a rush and maybe something good will happen. <laughs> That's all we thought, I think. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. No, just every game just ever. Good vibes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How you doing, twenty three? Mm, um, uh... Yeah. That... So with, with these long games, uh, how how do you guys find the composure to like? Because it, it seems like whenever you play your style of Dota, it always seems to go late, right? You you always seem to just have your own unique play style. But doesn't that get like? tiring do you feel like it might be more mentally taxing for you guys or is it just something you're used to um of course it's mentally tiring but i mean we didn't want to play this long but some shit happens so it goes this long <laughs> and we get used because always like in c pups it's always like this so we're getting more use on like shit happenings mm-hmm yeah. Makes sense. Uh, as, as a resident of C pubs, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, how does it feel <laughs> being like the main C team that a lot of focus gets put onto, like in, in terms of maybe pressure, expectations, fan visibility, all that sort of stuff? Mm, I don't think we are the main C team. I think Blacklist are the main C teams. Okay, yeah. very clever. Just trying to take the focus off of yourself. Um, all right, cool, cool. And uh, one, one bit of easier question for you, 23. I asked you about it in the pregame lobby, but uh, yeah, what's what's with this recent obsession with Madonna? You know, you've got her as your profile picture. Your pub name is La Ila Bonita. Like, well, what's going on? Is it just good songs or something else? Yeah, I just randomly swipe and then I listen to her and the music is good. It's good for listening in the airplane. I just fall asleep every time listening to her songs. So I like her and her when she was young she was really beautiful. Oh, I mean now she is as well, but that. I'm not into yeah, older women. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice save, bro, nice save. Well uh <laughs> congratulations. I I'm sure this takes a lot of pressure off of you guys. Now you are one and one in the uh the Swiss, so who knows who you'll have to face up against today. Um just really quickly, do do you like the Swiss format? Uh, in terms of you know, playing more games and each game feels like it, it matters just a little bit more? Mm, yeah, I think it's fun. It's uh, unpredictable on who's we're going to play. And I think it's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sounds good to me. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure you guys need a bit of a break. Like you said, those games went a little bit longer than I'm sure you were expecting. So... Feel free to sit back, take a deep breath, and uh, watch who might be your new opponents coming up for tomorrow's game. So, okay, thank you very much. Three. Same. Bye-bye. Isn't that nice? Nice and wholesome being able to go through with, uh, with 23. As we see the games coming up next, it is Team Secret going up against Boom Esports. The dreaded Boom v Boom Esports uh, coming through for you there. And, uh, well, <laughs> it's going to mean that uh, we're going to have one team sitting 2-0, not just in terms of the game score, perhaps, but series as well, which would leave them only one series away from being able to qualify it through to the group stage, which I'm sure if you had a look at a few people's uh, predictions leading into this, they might not have had either of these two teams, both of them getting, uh, you know, some clutch victories on day one leading into today. Yeah, we, we said it was quite surprising from uh, Team Secret here as well, but it'll be exciting to see uh, whether they'll be able to win this series as well against Boom, because that is indeed, as you said, Danog, our next game. So I think we are going to throw it for a break. The, these are our real names, by the way, that, that, that just come in. The, these are our real names. <laughs> We did, we did have the wrong tags, but yes, th th those, those are us. Um, but we are going to go for a short break here, folks. I think around about 15 or 20 minutes before the next series begins. So stay tuned because we will be back with Team Secret versus Boom Esports.
Hello everybody, welcome back to the Elite League with Danog and myself. We're coming in for Series 2 of the day. Of course, we did indeed just have ourselves Virtus Pro versus Aurora, where Aurora were able to take up them a 2-0. And now we're coming up with the next series, which is going to be Team Secret versus Boom Esports. That is indeed our next series. Uh, not sure how this one is going to go. It's going to be quite intriguing here. I mean... Um, with looking back at the Swiss, that means Boom Esports would have won their um, mm -hmm. their first series, they and indeed. they're going yeah, and they're going up against Team Secret, who won up against Virtus Pro, which we indeed just watched. So I am unsure 
how this is going to go between uh, both teams at the moment. But how uh, I think we were just speaking about how we would rate um, Boom Esports within the region for South America. How we think they, you know, with they their matches are. They, they lose a little bit to Heroic here, but they're able to stay beyond Beast Coast, which uh, we, we think is puts them at a very high position within the SA mm -hmm. region. But for Team Secret, what would you rate them? Because they, they've been having a rough patch lately, um, which was confirmed uh, by, <laughs> by Boom coming in. Yeah, yeah, in the interview that we had. I, I mean, it's... It's kind of understandable, right? Because they are a relatively new combination of players. Uh, obviously, they've, they've tried stuff with Eki, didn't work that well. They tried stuff with um, Mid One, didn't work amazingly. FBZ, Armel, just for whatever reason, not really connecting. But at least from what we saw in that first series that uh, Secret were able to play against Virtus Pro, Corden and Afu working fairly well together. Um, just in terms of Boom, I think it's really hard to kind of base people's overall performance on what they do in their own regions qualifiers right because it's one of those things where mm. you know the the classic example was like team faceless in the southeast asian region who always dominated the qualifiers but then lost immediately when you got to international lands when you had tnc in second place a lot of the time and if they got to lands they actually did pretty well like they would get top six top eight pretty consistently so i think it just comes down to how, how well do you understand your own meta and how well are you able to adapt that to what other teams are providing because like boom they were able to 2-1 quest um yesterday and quest have been looking pretty strong i mean they're, they're i think a clear step below falcons uh but in terms of other teams that they're facing within the Mena region, they beat out Nigma a lot of the time, and Nigma are looking almost unstoppable um, so far in the games that I've seen. You know, just taking on Aurora, they beat them in two out of their three games in 22 and 27 minutes. They crushed Talon just now, I think, with a 38 to 3 kill score. Um, so they're just looking really, really strong. And uh, I, I, I want to see how Boom does against more teams that they don't get too many opportunities to play against, like your secrets and other uh, European teams. And we do indeed have ourselves a draft underway, folks. So hopefully we'll be able to present you that down below and take a look at what they are picking up. So currently during the ban phase, we do have ourselves... Um, Tiny, Primal Beast, Conquer, and Bat. That was banned by Secret. And they've picked up these supports, which um, are Bane here, Danog. The, uh, the Marana and Rubik together, but either side of the teams do pick them up. So Secret will have the Marana, and Boom Esports, they will get the Rubik. Yep. Teams, I think, uh, on opposite sides once again, unfortunately. So that is a Boom uh, Rubik that's been picked up. Not for Boom, the offlaner. God, that's going to get confusing constantly <laughs> throughout this game. But uh, I'm kind of wondering what else they're going to use to follow up with this Rubik, you know, because I feel like you can get away with it if you've got something like... Uh, Panda actually plays some quite high damage pos fives, like your, your Techies, for example. Like, he plays that in the position 5 role. Which I wouldn't hate to see. I mean, CM, it's decent damage, but it's slowish damage, which I don't necessarily like. And also, if you're going something like a Rubik plus a CM or a Disruptor, I feel like you're putting yourself in danger of just getting run down by a lot of different heroes. So who knows? Maybe it'll be like a Panda Butusk coming through and it'll allow mm. Picards to go, you know, more of these like range style heroes, whether it might be a Medusa or a Weaver or a, a Gyrocopter, perhaps. Uh, I think you could very comfortably pick up a Gyro now and still have a good amount of flex left for the rest of your draft. Do you happen to know if um, the SA region kind of meta for Dota 2 is uh, a little bit similar to the region that we know quite a lot, which is East EU and West EU, or is it around about the same here? It's around about the same, but they've got like their own little tweaks on things. Like, you know, we saw in the um, game yesterday with Tundra, we it was kind of a, a niche pick for Toby to pick up the Slada um, because it is a specialist thing for him. It's not as much for Boom, right? Like, they actually play the Slada pretty frequently, even in just regular games, if they feel like it's a good game for it. Um, you know, if they can pair it together with a Templar Assassin, for example, just for the old classic Minus Armor strats, or if they feel like they can completely crush the laning phase and then use that to transition into things beyond that. Um, I think are the main things that you're looking for. They do end up going for the Disruptor. So yeah. my main concern now is, are you going to... Uh, 
get like Night Stalkered, for example, or are you going to get Likened? You know, just something that both of these heroes are really bad against, in that they're just able to run you down and there's really not too much you can do about it. They are quite unconventional heroes, though. I would be intrigued to see if we could get ourselves a Lycan or a Night Stalker. Boom plays a lot of Night Stalker. This is the player, not the team. <laughs> <laughs> and the they, I, got, I did get confused there a little bit when you said that. I was like, I, I was putting one, to two, one and two together. I was like, oh, well, they just pit Rubik and Disruptor. You know, they said they're bad versus, you know, Night Stalker and Lycan. I'm, I'm going to ex expect it's Boom from Team Secret against Boom Esports. Can we just call them Boom Esports? Do you think that's going to fix things a little bit? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Why well, is we call Boom Boom Boom? Boom because he's got a uh, also a clan tag that says Boom on it. Oh my god, he does. No, he doesn't say boom, it says boom. <laughs> it's got an extra O in there. You just got me thinking of Veng boys, bro. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I want, I you, want in you in my room. room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're from the UK, right? It's a classic banger. Yeah. Anytime you always. go out there, that's always coming out. Mm -hmm. 100%. Mm. It's a great song on a night out. Doom gets picked up, though. Or the <laughs> third pick here for Boom Esports. Doom so for Boom. <laughs> It's quite an unconventional hero, isn't it? We don't see Doom all that often. Uh, it, it can have the possibility of being shut down and not have very good impact early on. Uh, but sometimes it can be devastating, right? It can. It, it is actually one of those other niche picks, right? It's, it's something that Boom actually play a fair amount on their lineups. Um, I'm, what I'm interested to see is, uh, I'm used to calling him Illich, but he goes by Little Boy sometimes as his tag. So I know right now it says Illich, but once you get into the actual player names, maybe he's, he's switched it up a little bit. But I think this okay. is just, again, comfort. You've also got um, the potential to pair it together with a Disruptor, not necessarily for the laning stage, but just to run people down, like a Doom plus Glimpse combination is really effective. Um, even the Rubik combo isn't the worst, right? Um, telekinesis as a bit of a displacement spell, plus a little bit of that burst damage. Maybe you put one point into the Infernal Blade just as a, an additional stun. Really depends on what the lane is. So this is just like a, a bit of a specialty thing coming through from them. And we've been seeing that a lot, right? And I feel like when you're going up against these teams that you don't necessarily get too many chances to play against, you're always just going to default back to your comfort. And uh, at least for the Rubik and the Doom, they are the most played players by, uh, most played heroes, excuse me, by Knight and Illich. Disruptors number two for Panda. So makes a lot of sense to me. I feel like they need more follow-up damage, though, right, on Boom Esports? Because I, I guess they have themselves the Doom Ultimate and they have themselves the Static Storm. Um, but these are just abilities which help you kind of shut down the heroes, but not take them out fully. I feel like they're definitely in need of some damage dealers now for Boom Esports. Are Boom going to pick up Anti-Mage here? It's not banned. And you're against a Medusa. You might not be able to have it for the lane itself, but it still feels pretty nice against a Marana in a Clockwork, in my opinion. If this next hero doesn't necessarily lane well against it, or doesn't have like a an AoE stun, or, well, Slardar does a pretty decent job against the, uh, against the anti-mage, so maybe just wanting to protect against that. Okay. What do you do now against it? Like, is this now your, your gyrocopter, where you can, like, outrange the Medusa, and you can have a good time against the Slardar, and you're going to scale well and be, you know, survivable-ish? Um, you could, is Razor banned? Yeah, first banned. So it's not going to be that. Okay, just Pangolier, uh, Diffusal Blade mm -hmm. Buyer while they can get it. Don't hate yeah. it. But of course, um, that Diffusal Blade is uh, nerfed a little bit on the hero, right? Because of what they did with the Swashbuckle? Yeah, sure. But uh, I feel like by the time you're you're getting it, it's just the number of hits, basically, that you're wanting, right? And you want range against Medusa. That's how you beat Dusa a lot of the time, is just stay as far away from her as possible um, while still being able to output a lot of damage. So Pangolier does a pretty good job at that. Um, gotta say, is a pretty good response to the Doom, though, right? Like, you're still going to be attacking uh, while you're Doomed. You don't really rely on your HP pool that much, so Infernal Blade's percent damage isn't really going to do all that much against you as well. Uh, if you're able to get off the Stone Gaze as Doom is running at you, then obviously that provides you that extra movement speed, perhaps, that you need to be able to get away. Um, so I like that mm. as a response, but I also like this Pango in response to the response. 
asked in the response to the response. <laughs> a lot of responses. Do you, mm-hmm. mm, I'm thinking of kind of a carry here now that Boom Esports can pick up. Um, maybe perhaps something which has very long. Uh, is it is it stupid of me to say sniper here for Boom Esports? What do you think? I don't think it's I don't think it's stupid, but I think going up against a Clockwork and a Slada with the last pick to come still for Team Secret that would just allow yeah. you to. Like, if they don't ban Puck, I would be very concerned, for example, because I feel like it's just so much control, you can negate what a Pango does, it would be a great Puck game if uh, somehow it gets let through. Um, So I'm I'm still on the gyro train. Yeah, there you go, Puck ban. Um, I... what else could we really see against the Slaughter? Drow feels kind of okay in terms of range, you can outrange the Deucer a decent amount sometimes. I think the Troll is a good ban. Sven, maybe not so much for the lane, but at least some quick burst damage. And you can rotate back to the jungle. Weaver is kind of so-so. Obviously, the Corrosive Haze uh, doesn't feel great having that on you, but you could stay away from the Slider in the lane, and maybe you just don't reveal on the lane a lot. Uh, You also potentially could still go into a Diffusal if you really wanted to on the Weaver. Yeah, this is good too. Okay, yeah. Stay at range. D- good lane against the Slaughter. Just feels nice. Yeah. Able to disengage nicely against the uh, the Stone Gaze that you're on about too, so that is going to be very nice on the Wind Ranger. I wonder if you can, like, invoke her this game. I, it's not really se- picked up all that much for a secret. Yeah, I mean, it's the last pick, right? So just a, a nice dispel for the Wind Ranger. Uh, good dispel for the shield crash gives you a little bit of space created away from the doom as well you can eventually mm. provide the alacrity over to the medusa which feels kind of nice oh yeah. okay dk i mean yeah so, it's good against the pango sure i'm on board so it's a dk mid all right so seems well, like a well, pretty measured response i'd say for cordon like You've got so much protecting Crystalis this game. I, I don't think they should have too much freedom to be able to get it onto him. So this is the sort of game where I think he could really run away with it. Um, just because of how up in your face everyone else is going to be, essentially. I also wonder if this is indeed going to be a... Um, like, Puppy's playing the Marana, but is it going to be Afu being paired together with Crystalis up on this top side? Just because, you know, classic melee range, melee range might feel a little bit nicer... Uh, Slithering Crush plus the Bash of the Deep into an arrow is certainly a possibility. Or are they just wanting to try and keep the harass onto Illich as much as possible so that he's not in a position to be able to just run you down? I think another interesting thing that... um, I can't remember if it was yesterday when you told me or it was another time when we were commentating. Um, Doom up against Medusa. Obviously, of course, Doom with the ultimate is going to stop any healing or any lifesteal that comes through, but it doesn't stop you from gaining mana. <laughs> they can pop the mana boots even if Doom's applied onto the Medusa and still have an effect. And it doesn't break until you get yourself the level 25 talent. Mm. as a possibility that you can do. You either apply a break upon Doom or you can either apply a mute. So then maybe it'll stop all the multi-shot arrows from coming out and maybe they'll benefit from placing the Doom, unless you think there's a better target for the Doom here. Well, I mean, I would say the... No, there's not really a better target, huh? Maybe it needs to be the DK, just to be able to stop some of the Dragon's Blood healing coming through, and get the percent damage coming in, but the real question is then, do you have the lockdown to actually confirm the kill onto the DK, while you've still got some potential for Hookshot Counter Initiation, or Four Staffs to come through, or yeah, it seems like you've got a very hard team to kill on Team Secret. And that was the meta for quite some time. I feel like we've gone a little bit away from that and we're getting all sorts of heroes being one-shot or two-shot a lot of the time. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm i pretty on board with it this game considering you are going up against relatively low damage supports and a Doom that does take a little bit of time to come on board. Come online, rather. So you think the Secret have um, got the better draft here compared to uh, Boomy Sports? I do. I may be swayed by if Afu goes top or bottom, you know, but I I feel like Puppy and Chrysalis just have a really good connection, so maybe they just don't want to break that, but 
even just the uh, battery assault against a doom that's trying to run at your Medusa is really good, just to stop that from happening. Uh, not even just melee range, melee range, right? Uh, you know, against a doom, against a primal beast, clockwork feels amazing, but we'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. I, I still am probably leaning a bit more towards secret. How about you? Um... I, I'm thinking secret here too, um, especially of what you said about how Dragon Knight will do uh, okay here against the Pangolier. Uh, we'll be able to hopefully get himself an early blink dagger here on Corden and rotate around. I feel like they can uh, do quite well if they get a blink dagger on Slardar 2, with both, the, both of them being also physical damage dealers. So both of those getting themselves a Dragon Tail and a Stun. I think they have very good pick off here, especially, you know, against Wind Ranger if she does have the Wind Run. So I'm, I'm going to go with Secret here too, and we'll, we'll see how this comes out. Mm -hmm. We shall indeed. I'm sure Puppy is going to be spending a lot of this time just bullying Illich as much as he can in the lane. Like, just try and keep that Doom away. Keep him using money on regen. Slow down the uh, the Helm of Iron Will timing that it allows you to potentially go for dives underneath the tower. You can see Puppy doesn't even have anything skilled up yet. And Illich oh, has yeah. been forced to use the, uh, the Scorched Earth just to try and bully him away a little bit, but it's not working. What, what, what would you level here at level 1 on the... the, the right? It's, it's usually the... Oh, okay, Leap. Actually puts a point into the Leap here on Puppy now. I mean, you don't really have anything to set up for the arrow. You're not wanting to steal too many creeps away as well from the Medusa, considering she's got ways to be able to secure those uh, last hits onto range creeps. So I think that's fine. Um, probably just not wanting to run the risk of dying and giving a nice early start off to, um, to either Illich or Knight. A little sad that he hasn't gone with a little boy nickname like he he sometimes does. What a name. That's Puppy. He's brawling. Together with Knight on the bottom side of the map. Surely you can't trade with Knight though on a Rubik. Rubik, one of the best traders. Chrysalis doesn't have a lot of mana. Oh, they're actually going to attempt to go for a kill here. TP commit there. They don't have a cancels. Meanwhile, we're also getting some action happening on the top lane. As Picard gets himself a kill onto our foo on the clockwork. Missed that. Some snazzy gold for the gods. I mean, this is not a nut, an, or, uh, an okay lane for Boom, is it? I mean, being harassed here by two ranged heroes, Wind Ranger, it's possibly the most annoying harasser that you have to play against on the lane. Yep, no, that's... It certainly isn't easy to have to go up into that one, and man, even Puppy was taken out there, paying the price for going for that courier snipe onto the Doom. Did he... I think he ended up just getting the Tango still delivered, actually, on Illich, so didn't actually result in too much other than a little bit of gold for the entire team. As you can see, he's gone for a bit of a dive here onto Crystalis, and... I mean, this is what I was kind of thinking a Clockwork would be able to stop, as also by naturally pushing the wave out, he means that he's always in a good position to be able to get that Lotus from the Lotus Pool. Yeah. I'm surprised Chrysalis hasn't been able to start bouncing these Mystic Snakes yet. To the Illich. What's the situation like with the... Unfortunately for Puppy, he was just a little bit off the mark with the Sentry Ward that he placed down, so he's not going to be able to get some of those free scaling. Oh, Crystalis is actually the one that's getting gone on, though. I'm sure they're, yeah, they're pinging out, like, let's try and turn around onto Knight if possible. Oh, there's the He's Telekinesis. The one gone on, though. Mango the there. Mango. Yeah. yeah. Still okay, Probably though. might want to give him over the, uh, he does give the Lotus over, actually, to Crystalis. Yeah, I think he definitely needs it here because theoretically he is. Um, if you if you have a look at the mana, he's like three hundred HP. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like he's full HP, but uh, don't let that fool you. Especially that top lane, that's going incredibly well for Picard so far. For a long time, he was known as like one of the best carries in the world. Not even just the SA region. Always seemed to perform on the high stakes situations and. Oh, this is certainly a high-stakes one for them. Not too many times that 
with Heroic coming in, Boom have had the chance to be able to have these big opportunities for million dollar tournaments to be able to try and show their stuff. They've already got the one series win, kind of off the back of Picasso's performance. And this is certainly a good win ranger game as well. Look at this creep wave that Corden has. He's brought with him an army here, just leading it in the river. This is going to push heavily. Mm, not really any potential for damage into the tower, though, so I feel like Corden's very happy with this. Of course, you're always going to be able to out-trade a Pangolier, not just because of the uh, outscaling right-click damage that you do, but just the breathe fire as that damage reduction means that Pango basically is subject to whatever you want to happen in this lane right like if you want to fight it's time to fight if you want to farm it's time to farm and there's really no kill threat going back the other way yeah he should get himself level six now too uh, after the these few siege creeps creep as well yeah with the siege creep so should have the possibility of pushing the oh, i was actually gonna commit it now with the dragon tail nice trying to lay in some body damage as well to slatums just got enough to be able to swashbuckle away. Literally, like, was waiting for the cooldown and seconds for it. Those infused raindrops doing him a world of good. Well, meanwhile, action happening on bottom two. Knight may be dead by the hands of Poppy. One more leap charge remains. Might want to hand it to Chrysalis. Chrysalis won't be able to get it. Yeah, Poppy's just going to secure that kill there. They get the kill on the Rubik. Disappointed in Knight. He had the chance to cliff the Dusa. That <laughs> would have been a very nice little exchange there he ends up still dying so no real gain there coming through as oh, rolling thunder starting to be queued up but no real damage into the tier one tower so even though slatums was forced all the way back to the base it's not going to result in too much map control changing uh because it's doing all right net worth wise Mm -hmm. What a javelin now. I mean, still a while away from focus fire, but I think once Picard gets it, then able to have a kill opportunity against Boom. I'm a little worried about Boom the Slaughter, <laughs> his, uh, his scaling potential. I can't just say Boom, you know this. Uh, because he's going to fall off, right? Slaughter doesn't even have something like a Night Stalker who's notorious for being very single target focused. He doesn't even have something like an Aghanim Shard that's going to act as like a a pseudo Midas, right? You have to be getting kills, you have to be scaling, so I wonder if he's going to go an actual Midas on Boom and just try and scale in that way. Yeah, I wonder, because he, he does fall off sometimes if he's not having himself a great time, right, on Slaughter? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. He's like the old Queen of Pain that just completely fall off. Uh, fell off, not fall off. <laughs> Me do English good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the same. It's funny how we're both big English speakers, yet... Yeah, to... well, you're from England, <laughs> okay? You have no excuse. Okay. <laughs> I speak oh, they maybe some, like... Oh, hold on. Afu, he's caught in a kinetic field. He is going to try and use the cogs defensively here as Corden hitting from the low ground, pushing away both the supports, so... Afu is fine. Really looking to play around those power runes as Puppy in position to be able to yoink away the regen rune. We'll be happy to do so. Oh, because it's rotating in with a focus fire. Gets the dragon tail off there onto Picard. Attempting to heal up there with the magic one, but will still be found. In return, Knight, though, will fall from a big star storm committed there by Puppy. Will be glimpsed back into a power shot from Picard. Ooh, it might get them a return him, however, kill, He's caught within the cogs. And Arfu actually gets a kill there upon a kind of a, a little cliff that he made with the cogs. Nowhere to escape will be found. Very cheeky play there by Arfu. And getting all of that solo experience is going to be huge for him. He was the one that picked up the Wisdom Room previously. He gets the solo XP already up to level 5. So that is going to be very handy if they are able to lock in play someone like that Wind Ranger. Might even be the sort of situation where... I don't know, Afu's definitely has that Giga Chad style of gameplay where maybe he goes a blade mail, right, and says, you know, hit me, Wind Ranger. What are you going to be able to do about it? Oh, and they see, though, that he has been oh, able Afu's to plant a deepish ward, yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, my fight Panda here. Whoa. Oh, oh, nice oh, soak up. Yeah, there we go. He gets it. Maybe perhaps he. No, he, I was going to say, deny himself to the tower. <laughs> Just try and reduce that gold, but able to find him with the swashbuckle. More solo XP, though. Almost up to level 6 already. 
They will probably get that D ward off though, so not the worst. Actually, would bring uh, would bring Panda pretty close to being able to pick up his own level six after he gets that D ward off. If no one else is around to yoink away the XP. Boom is uh, available on Elich, but uh, speaking of Arthu, he has rotated around. He is one creep off, I think, from getting... No, he's two creeps off! Oh my gosh, five XP away from Hookshot? Okay, there we go. We're gonna go on to the Doom now. Yes, we are. There's the Hookshot, Sacred Arrow. We'll connect within the Cogs, as that should be a kill onto Illich. Tries to heal up there with the magic wand, but will still be found. Very nicely done here from Arthur. You know, he's got himself a mid laner. Now he's got himself an off laner. He is doing work here on this clockwork. And more importantly, freeing up space for Crystalis to really be the one to go to work. I was mentioning about the Diffusal Blade obviously being a big reason behind the pickup for the Pangolier. He's nearly got it. I almost wonder if you want uh, Picard to be able to go into one as well. He's already yeah, got the Maelstrom. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I was thinking that if he would go it or not. Mm. I mean, even just as like a... It's good against the Dusa, right? Sure, but also feels pretty nice against uh, these strength beefy boy heroes that don't exactly have a ton of mana to be able to play around with. I can always turn it into a disperser too and be a little bit annoying and uh, yeah. and bring back the the old days which I used to hate of um, Wind Ranger having two charges of Wind Run. That was stupid. Never <laughs> thought of that. Dyer's middle tower. The frog thought of it. Oh, no, Christmas, you cannot be here on your own, my guy. Oh, four. He's, he's going to fall here, possibly. Yeah, there no we go. No possibly about it. That was a full-on rotation towards him. I mean, they probably will get a tier 2 tower in response to it. So, again, not horrible. No way for the Pango and the Doom to be able to rotate with still 30 seconds left on their TP cooldowns. But they might be able to... Can they take this tower or not? They've still got the glyph available if they really wanted to on secret to bend this tower. Hey, you heard the little excited ooh from me because I was looking at the mid lane and uh, Arthur just missed his hook shot against the Rubik underneath this tier 1. It could have been a kill, but they do take that tier 1 tower mid. But yeah, as you said, they're pressuring that bottom. It looks like they will find it. Yep. Arthur can't do everything perfectly. He's still human. bottom tower has fallen. As, oh, that's a nice rune to be able to get on the DK. Arcane picked up for him. Hopefully, for his sake, he'll be able to pop it when that uh, Elder Dragon form comes off cooldown. Shouldn't have any worries with there. And he's got a fresh Blink Dagger as well to be able to make plays with. So I'm feeling it's about time for a rotation with a smoke. Or who knows, maybe he just walks up to top tower and starts to potentially try and take that one for himself after he pushes out this mid-creep wave. Should be about time for them to make a play as well because boom he hasn't gone for any of that consistency farm secure i'm going to call it uh he has gone for the blink dagger yeah but right now at least in terms of his net worth he's doing a-okay -okay. sitting third but this is this oh. wasn't really what we were initiation on the mid lane they've got themselves the bangalore slatums is he able to escape he's so close to death they tend to turn it around as he will actually fall there from the corrosive breath from the DK, lasting three seconds. That final tick actually gets the kill, but in return, they will lose two here on secret. So they also lose Arthu. Just three. Puppy. He's got Illich oh. coming in onto him, and they actually want to make a bit of a turnaround here. Just dropping the Doom, why not? To be able to try and get away from him, but can still use that pig pole spell to be able to get out of dodge and run on back. Oh, Although, glimpse. yeah. Oh, nice oh, telekinesis, nice stopping one leap. But it looks like they'll attempt to turn it around. Yeah, Boom coming back. He's no He's longer back. doomed. And Panda is dead. Okay, there's the, uh, the Bash of the Deep. Is Boom sliding around for you as well? He, yeah, 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 Boom <laughs> is sliding around for me. He's looking uh, a bit weird. It's no attack animation for him either. Uh, it's just Dota things. It's still in, be it's still in beta. <laughs> I've got my beta key. I'm Dota He's on a nice rink right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, even without the DK, they should be able to get this tier 1 tower just off of the back of Boom. He's doing a really good job to... Well, I say that, but Picard does have like a 2k lead over him, but it's not at the, the result of him having poor farm on Boom with his slider. Are they going to be able to make a bit of a play onto him? No. We'll be able to back up in time as another fight. 
Panda may fall. It's okay. The Sacred Arrow connects onto Knight there instead. As they'll attempt to try and find Corden now with the rolling thunder. Focus fire also coming out. Hoop shot there though in return. Oh, Swash nicely will find Knight. the kill. Health to take down Corden. It will go to Picard's, but Picard's getting stunned up there by Boom with the Sliverine Crush. They actually find two there. Also getting the Disruptor also. So it is a two for two. Losing Arthu and Corden once again. Puppy in trouble. No mana remaining and Slassums. He gets himself a double kill here on the Pangolier with that Diffusal Blade pickup. I think the important thing is that entire time Chrysalis was just farming completely freely on the bottom side. He got like three free creep waves. He put a little bit of damage into that tower. And because of that, he's been able to pick up the Banter style. So a lot of uh, really good individual plays there. Uh, the stolen hookshot as well by Knight actually ended up causing the death on, um, on the Dragon Knight, I believe, at the very end there. But still, it's secret that come out on top because they were both you know, they, they basically evened out each other in terms of who died in that fight. They got a big kill streak. It went over to Puppy. But yeah, Crystalis just farming worth way more. Oh, hook shot top. Shots. Stolen, Stolen leap. leap. Dodges oh. the Sliverine gush. Oh, nice. That was pretty fancy. Remember talking about comfort? I mean, that's what we're talking about, right? The Rubik is by far Knight's most comfortable hero to be able to play around. Same sort of thing with... Um, with the with the Pangolier coming through there for uh, for Slatums. I think it's just something that they're always willing to go back to the the well for time and time again just because they know they've got the cohesion to make it work it's not some really weird unique play style like what we heard from 23 they're just like yeah we just get Aegis and hope for the best you know with a, a roster like this that's still relatively new to playing together uh, I think you just got to go with what's worked for you so far plan a is the the main one that you're going for I just wanted to go back on to uh, something that you said earlier about the uh, the Medusa as well you did say that chrysalis he you know he, he hasn't been having bad form um it's just that he is a Medusa in this stage so I'm, I'm presuming what you mean by that is now that chrysalis has been able to get some levels and oh, they find themselves doom here with the within the cogs um with the the split shot now at level four and you got yourself a manta style now is this where we start to see medusa like accelerate in net worth and start to surpass the wind ranger uh, i think less about it actually accelerating her in net worth like of course you're going to be able to sit back and farm i feel like the big thing that deuce is really concerned about is just getting into that butterfly asap and then once you've done that maybe you could start farming in a little bit more aggressive positions because you're going to be much more survivable if uh, boom do decide to make a move onto you and it's going to allow you to influence the creeps uh, the creep waves a little bit more strongly you can force some more defensive movements out of you and maybe that's what you need right like imagine if Picard's TPs to a tier 2 tower to defend at top, and Roshan is bottom. Then you just TP bot because it's on your side, right next to the outpost, you steal it away, and then suddenly you've got something that enables you to push into some tier 2 towers. Shiva's got now for Doom. Be able to finish that, that'll be uh, quite nice to slow someone down. I mean, not when you have yourself a haste, but you are able to dispel it with your Doom! Zilich comes in and gets the kill there onto Puppy. That was a pretty easy kill. They perhaps want to go for more. Oh, oh they glimpse back Chrysalis, but was able to activate the Stone Gaze Stolen. there before he was brought back there by the glimpse, but I don't think that will save him. Slowly falling. Oh, the Mystic Snake gives him some mana. Chrysalis is still alive. The Focus Fire comes out. He will finally fall. So there we go. They all attempt to turn it around here on Secret, but Corden be locked in a Stone Gaze state there as it was stolen from Nia, along with that Dragon Tail there too. They lose themselves three, possibly four. Arfu gone, along with Boom too. Boom kill Boom. And that was a team wipe. Getting five there. I don't think they, uh, they, they lost anyone there. I don't think they did either. And uh, a really big part of it was because of Knight, right? Obviously... Uh, we see Panda with the initial glimpse back inside of the Static Storm. Means, of course, that he can't cast anything else after the, um, the Stone Gaze. So, gets a great steal off on that. It ends up freezing up Cordon. That allows them to get the, uh, the Shackle Shot into the Focus Fire again. And he even ended up stealing the Dragon Tail so that Slardar wouldn't be interrupting them all throughout that process. So, yeah, Knight's putting in a 
fairly good performance right now on this Rubik. It's very refreshing to see some good Rubik games here too, because we we, we have been cursed in the past with um, some some Rubiks that just end up being like a a, a, a big creep <laughs> almost. Mm. So it, it, it's lovely to see some uh, specialty come out from some Rubik plays. I mean, especially a lot of Dragon Tail stolen with Arcane Supremacy. Pretty big. Yep. Oh, yeah, for sure. Feels real good. And the thing I like is that he's always... If he's if he was playing his own game, I would he would still kind of be in that rough situation where you are kind of a big creep as the Rubik, right? But he just knows the time that the rest of his team want to be able to make plays. And I'm sure he's just saying to his team, like, oh, hold on, puppy gets away. Uh, he's saying, as soon as you guys want to go, I'm ready. You know, I've got everything that I could possibly need to be able to make plays. I've got some good steals, and that's what's happening up on this top side. Yeah, they're going to go for Ilyich. He's caught within the cogs. He does commit the doom. The rest of Boom rotating in. Illich is fine. They commit the stone gaze there defensively. They can glimpse him back. Oh, they're not winning commit it. A little surprise there that they didn't like to oh, try they're and copy use that dead. one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. He's found in the jungle. Yeah, they didn't go for that glimpse back onto the Dusa, maybe banking on Crystalis to Manta dodge it and not wanting it to go to complete waste. It's a big response, and, well, they still were able to protect Illich at the end of the day. He is becoming quite tanky himself, and it's kind of the... I guess the issue that I was talking about that Boom would have against Team Secret, right? That, uh, you know, a lot of the Secret boys are very tanky. Both, uh, mm -hmm. well, honestly, all of them. Even, you know, Marana probably is the weakest of the lot, but she's got a mech. She's got a Gosma cape now, and, of course, the leap as well, on top of everything else, just to be able to get away from a lot of this aggression, but... You know, if you're getting caught out by a glimpse, for example, inside the kinetic field, there's just no way that you can get away. Say, Picasso's net worth is, uh, is still climbing. Oh, Knight? <laughs> oh, he gets, he gets broken out there by Picasso, actually. He was stuck in the trees. Uh, Picasso actually gets him out with a power shot. These SA carries, man, they, they know how to get their farm. Where first being Hector, then Picard's kind of is that 2.0 version of him. as oh. another fight coming. Panda is decimated. They've caught themselves Illich too within the cogs. But there's the BKB coming out. Oh, Fu in some trouble now. Attempted to TP, but that TP's cancelled there by the Infernal Blade. They will definitely find our Fu. But that's the only thing they will find here on Boom Esports. I think I'm a little surprised that Secret haven't put a little bit more emphasis on is actually going for this Roshan. I mean, they're playing with a Slada, he's level 13, so two points into the Corrosive Haze, and that really reduces the survivability of Rosh himself. And, well, speaking of that, it's actually Boom that are going to be the ones that make the initial move in onto him, and this is huge. To be able to take away a free first Roshan from a Slada team is not something that should be happening all that often. Yeah, it's quite surprising to see, but they'll commit the focus fine with Picars. Oh, they're they'll nearly willing to use the Doom onto Puppy as well. With really? That, yeah, the, yeah, they were glimpsing him back, and he was mid-animation of the Doom on Illich, but... Well, maybe just that sort of action, predict, making it not as obvious. They see Boom. Oh, they grab him there with the Gleipnir. But can they get the kill? I mean, they'll return it and counter initiate with that Stone Gaze fighting Knight there. As Slatum's also in trouble, will he get bashed up and fall? Yes, he will, but has the Aegis from that Roshan they just took, so gonna be coming back alive. They Power have the, the Doom ready to apply also, but the hook shot coming out there onto Slatum's. Will he be okay? Yes, he's able to swash Buckle back. The Glade near there onto two, the focus back coming out now. Along with the Rolling Thunder 2, that's gonna be able to take down Chrysalis as they find themselves too. Can they get themselves caught? And yes, they can! Stopping that TP. There we go. There's the tip from Knight. Well played, Slatum's. They get themselves three, and they will only lose Knight here on the Rubik. Well worth. I mean, the only reason he d even died was that he was just staring into a stone gaze that entire time. So not too much that you could do against that. And you just see the power of Picard's coming through here. He's even just going to get stronger. Still a universal hero. So something like that Manta style is going to be so impactful for him to be able to not only get uber aggressive, but also just dispel things off like the corrosive haze, get rid of the... Uh, the uh, the damage reduction coming through from the breathe fire as well. They're doing their best to try and 
limit the amount of impact that the cars is having, but it's just, it's not working. A gift from the Tempest of Battle. And the Blink Dagger now for Slatums, able to get some better positioning with this Rolling Thunder. So it makes it a lot easier, now. considering oh, you're going up, against a, going up against a clockwork with the cogs. I feel like Afu's cogs have been pretty good. And, uh, of course, do some stone gaze. Never want to just be rolling up into that uh, in the middle of a team fight. Much rather try and go for that chain lockdown. So I almost wonder what point Crystalis needs to go for a... Um, needs to go for a Lincolns for himself or, like, demand that someone on his team goes a Lincolns. Because right now it's a lot of single target stuff that's getting him offside, right? Whether it be the glimpse or the shackle shot or the doom. A lot of stuff is punishing him. Actually, going to BKB. So I guess that'll help with the the, the magic resist, but it's only fifty percent. Yeah, on the BKB. You just think you just want something you could still pop while doomed, I guess. At least for now, it's a while away from Panda being able to get into an Ags. Doesn't even have it queued up yet. Freshly picked up four staff though. Going to be very nice at being able to kite out Team Secret. Smoke might break, though, on Chrysalis if he still hangs around here. They're heading in the right direction here on Boom Esports, placing down an Observer Ward, but Chrysalis is added here with Poppy. I mean, no they'll, they'll just there. pressure the tier 2. Yeah. I feel like they know this is bait. They wouldn't have Picard's hitting into this tower if he didn't have all the boys behind him. They might be able to snipe this courier. It's going towards the secret shop, and we might get it destroyed. Oh yeah, Knight's got it. There we go. Oh, I had a point booster on. He just bought it as well before it got sniped, so... Nice little net worth deny coming through there. Still will have the buyback if he really needs it on Boom, though. Seems like they just want to backdoor a tier 1. Why not? It goes down fairly fast. He's still a while away from this Agnims on, uh, on Boom for Team Secret. Yep. Might even use this as time to put up some of that deep vision. Any time that you're playing with a disruptor, you just want to make sure that you've got that vision behind the team fight, so you've always got the potential to get that glimpse back. We can see there behind the tier two tower. That's where Knight has placed his one down to be able to help out his buddy. I mean, it's a pretty great combination Gosh. as well, actually. The gale force plus the glimpse, right? It just makes it yeah. so much easier. I'm just saying it. The, the game just favors Picard. They're just giving him the shard too from the tormentor. More well, gold for him. I guess it was either Doom or him. So, yeah. Even willing to pop the focus fire onto this tier two tower. Why not? I think Boomer in such a strong spot that they're probably not willing to pop the glyph for this one, just to be able to delay it out a little bit longer. They need that high ground protection. And I feel like Afu knows that he's going to need to try and get a little bit cheeky with this. He's going for an Aghanim scepter of his own, so obviously wants to be able to. Have that Rocket Flare spam out onto the map so that you're not losing out on all that much. He's trying to get a freebie, I think, onto this Wisdom Rune as well. Oh, Boom's been found from that Agnim Shard from Panda. Go attempt to kill for the kill now onto Slardar, and they will indeed find it. And he just bought up, again, the components for his Aghanim Scepter, so no buyback for him. Plus side, of course, is that he was farming in this really aggressive area, so they're not going to be able to immediately punish. You can see the lines being drawn out on the map by Boom, but by the time they reach the base, although, who has been found out here? Picard's on his own. Picard's, yeah, he's caught in the cogs. But he has been dragon tailed up. Stonegaze there does not have himself the Aegis because that was given to Sladems. Attempting to flee there with the evasion, but Puppy gets the kill with the Starstorm. That is a lot of gold for the support. 640. Mm. Yeah, how much in gold does it increase? Yeah, 648. Puppy has been what the one to kill him both times. <laughs> so he is going to be, you know, rubbing his hands together at all this farm that he's going to be able to get. 5-5-5 five, five, and five KDA on the man himself. But uh, yeah, just way too far forward we you know just mentioned how far away the rest of the boys needed to go using their teepees as well to be able to get that kill onto boom and, and that's just the the flow on effect that we see in dota sometimes right where 
if someone's going to put themselves that far out of the map, you're going to need to TP to respond to it, allowed the rest of Secret to be able to get out onto the map, despite not being able to for the past few minutes. Yeah, I think, I think he stayed around a little bit too long there on the wind range, because how long was he there for? Like, two or three minutes? Because they, they took the tier two, but he was still hanging around there for quite a while. And it was a lot tankier now, though. He's got the status resistance from the Guardian Sprint uh, being in the puddle. He's got the Aghanim Shard as well, so just that instant AoE use of the Corrosive Haze to potentially enable a, a bit of a rotation in. I mean, you've got to remember that Cordon is... Uh, what do you call it? Cleaving? Splash damage, that's it. Uh, on the DK, so if you manage to get multiple heroes in with that Corrosive Haze, that can be actually some pretty decent follow-up damage coming through from that and well speaking of Corden, he's level 18 as well so he is now a tanky boy with the Aghanim Scepter you know I'm so glad Boom is not playing Doom right now Boom on Doom against Boom oh, just able to get away from the vision always playing yeah, right okay. on the edge is Puppy looks like he'll be able to get away as well they're doing a great job this is this is remnants of what we saw in game one of uh, Aurora versus Virtus Pro right like Virtus yep. Pro, well ahead, but they just managed to split up the lane and find these individual pickoffs. Oh. Although, smoke break though, and Corden blinking straight in, and a slippery crush onto two, finding both the supports dead on Boom. As now they'll attempt to try and find because they're affected there by the cogs, attempting to flee with the wind run. And can they get themselves because he... Oh, as Elish comes and counter-initiates there with the Doom. Able to not be affected by the Dragon Tail with thanks to the BKB usage. But I think this is a dead slaughter. It is. He will be he found. He wanted the deny. He desperately wanted the deny coming through there from the, uh, the neutrals. But no dice. Not going to happen. Illich, very nice timing coming through there just to be able to drop that one. Good use of his BKB too. It was literally as the Dragon Tail was in the air that he was able to pop that BKB, so not even wasting a millisecond out of that. You see how important the Disruptor is to their team fight though. Like it was still a overall retreat coming through from Boom that uh, that team fight resulted in just off the back of being able to take away that glimpse, being able to take away that aggressive static storm potential. Yeah. And Roche is back up, by the way. Pings it immediately on Afu down on this bottom side. Just wants to set up a little bit of vision in the lead up to the fight. He's got his Agony Scepter as well, by the way. So just plenty oh. of vision being provided. Because it scouted out Chrysalis. Focus oh fire God. there. Along with the Gale win too, BKB will be committed there by Crystalis. Corden has the Dragon Form in one more second, could potentially try and attempt to turn it around here. They don't have themselves the Doom. Crystalis is still okay, but the Focus Fire still laying into him. He's slowly falling. The Medusa may fall here. Crystalis still okay. He doesn't have himself any more mana as the Doom there has now been applied to Corden. Corden attempting to try and flee. They will find the Medusa there in return here on the side of Boom. As they got themselves Afu there also. It will be a two for one. Corden trying to flee here and run away from the glimpse of Panda. There's another, oh my gosh, more Picards. Focus fire on Puppy. Sacred Arrow just comes out. Can he get one more? Arrow. Arrow attack, the power Ooh. shot misses. Puppy may Boom get away. Oh, the Glade near though. Catching Puppy. Puppy will fall. Shackle shot now. It's latched onto Boom. Boom in trouble. Boom is going to get jumped by Boom. That's what I hate Limps to say. Coming. Oh, but there is the Ogre Seal Totem. Able to bounce oh, maybe away. Not. Has the blink. Are they still going to pursue oh. here? They will with the Gale Wind. Pushing him back. The Focus Fire coming out once again. But the slow from the Sliverine Crush has an effect. Another Glade there coming out. He's in the river, but he can't escape. There we go. Monster kill for Slattens. That was a very long pursuit. It was indeed. I, I really thought they would be able to get him sooner. You know, uh, Panda was in range to be able to get that glimpse off, but decided to try and influence that mid lane a little bit so that they would be, they would be able to convert these couple of kills into some high ground pressure, but not going to be the case. And once again, Afu, his rocket flare spam is going to come in handy, just not giving them any opportunities to be able to push this into another objective. Maybe the objective they want is Roche, though. 
Smoke top is four secret. I mean, Doom is online, so got to watch out for that one. I know where they are. Rockets giving them everything. I mean, I like this bit more of a wraparound that they're going for, though. They might be able to catch Knight completely away from the rest of the boys. They will. Oh, they find this him. Free that, that's a dead time. Ruby. But they will yeah, be able Roche. to take Roshan. Will Afu go in here? Oh, hook shot! And he, he took takes it. the ages! What? He stole it! Afu! Oh, Thief in the night, part two, electric boogaloo! Taking the ages once again! <laughs> he did what he did at TI, and now he's done it again, but this time he's done it with clockwork. Oh my I'm gosh. I'm just shaking my head. You know, you can take Earth Spirit out of the meadow, but you can't take Afu and his clutch plays out of Dota. Oh. What an absolute monster. Making sure to use the overclock beforehand, by the way, so that you have that AoE battery assault going on. Just those little things that kind of interrupt their ability to be able to click on that Aegis. And, I mean, Roshan doing him a big favor with the raw, revealing that he was getting relatively low, just makes going for those Aegis steals that little bit easier. I mean, I mean, he did die for that oh, in the end, but still, so oh, no, worth from taking that Aegis away. Oh, tries to get the, the Slardar there too. He's just able to blink away and avoid the Glate near. <laughs> He's doing it all himself. Just Rocket Flare, Rocket Flare, Rocket Flare. <laughs> Keeps the lanes pressured away. Was the body block for Crystalis after he got Doomed. So Doom is used. Stonegaze is also used, but more Doom is, I would say, far more important in the context of this game. That's what's causing you to run away. And you don't want to be running in this game, Boom. They might be able oh. to find Panda, that'd be enormous. That is a dead Panda. <laughs> that is a dead Panda. Oh my gosh. For the Rolling Thunder. Oh, they're in on Picars. It's not, it's not committed, actually. They stun up Picars. Trying to get away, turning it around now with the Focus Fire, but Chrysalis. Forcing out the damage here with the BKB. Picars getting very low, just able to force Staff away. As the rest of Boom are going to try and flee here, they lose themselves. The Rubik and Secret have come out on top of this team fight, taking that tier two. Will they go for the tier three? I think they'll know that this is a dieback. I think they'll know that they've still got a little bit on that Doom cooldown, so I think they're going to go at least until they get a glyph coming out here from Boom. Oh, yeah, here we go, coming forward, but Corden. They got themselves a stun there to Picard's, but he's fine. They'll attempt to now try and turn it around. The, the Gale actually held glimpse. secret retreat there, but a glimpse back finds themselves cornered, but a hookshot coming out onto three, along with Cogs within two. As they do find themselves Illich there. Illich will fall, but Boom will go. The Slardar is dead. Puppy very close to death. Finally found, along with Arfu, also four down. The only one remaining is Crystal. And he will be able to get back there and not be affected. But very nice defense from Boom Esports. Yeah, just overstaying their welcome when not respecting the glimpse once again, right? Like, you can be cheeky with DK, but you've got to have a BKB if you've got to be able to make that happen. Or have supreme confidence in your Manta-style dodging skills. Because he was just thrown to the wolves, forced a hookshot in. It was a great hookshot by Afu to be able to potentially turn that one around. But... You know, fighting up on a high ground next to a tier four, uh, tier three tower. That's not where you want to be. Oh, amp damage in the river. It's free for the taking. Wonder if that'll be a bit of a, a lesson learned now for uh, for Corden. You know, he's died six times, which is fine. You know, your, your job as the DK is to be that one on the front lines that soaks up a lot of the damage, but he's got to go, <laughs> if you can imagine it, even more defensive items, right? Without the BKB. Oh, no. Without the Manta oh, Spam. What's up? You just say more defensive items. Don't want to go more defensive items. That's the uh, DK's that's not... role as oh. Chrysalis is afraid of dying to a Tormentor. <laughs> he's actually going to be forced back. <laughs> Not able to utilize this five damage rune that you spoke about, though, so. Nothing happening. Maybe perhaps we're just waiting for another Roshan, possibly? Sure. Um, what else could they be hoping for? I mean, he's getting close to having an Ag's Blessing. 
on Picards. Just wanted to get that Lincoln Sphere first. Not sure if Lincoln Sphere is necessarily the best choice for him. I mean, basically the only thing that you're going to be blocking is Dragon Tail, I guess. Like Slithery, uh, Corrosive Haze, sure. But you're getting that anyway from the Slithering Crush, so... I guess that does mean it's always going to have pretty good value against the DK. We've even got a Basher up on Slotums now. They do, yeah. He's actually going for a Disperser. Sure. Just quick buy. Um, do you think? Pa oh, okay. Yeah, I see. He's going for an Agnims. Uh, I was going to ask if Panda does have any plan on going in Agnims, and if it's a good hit. Actually, Agnims is always good, right? It's always good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then eventually, you're going to have to worry about uh, Doom as well. You know, whether it's applying Mute or Break, he's getting close to his level 25. He's already got a Refresher to be able to play around with, and this is a Midasless Doom. So Illich has done a fantastic job to be 8-3 and 15, involved in so many kills. He's been pretty on point with his Doom usage as well. I think I've only seen, like, one, probably not ideally used one, but that was only when the Medusa was just able to get off a uh, Stone Gaze just prior. So still, either side of the team's... Not adamant to take a fight yet, both of them still keeping their distance at the moment. It may look like we will have a look around for a upcoming Roshan fight. Both teams feeling the need that they need this Aegis, it looks like. Um, neither team compelled to jump each other at the moment, unless maybe perhaps a smoke plate comes out. Regen in the smoke. river. Just scouting that one out at the moment. I think they just need to fix their lanes a little bit further on Boom. And Picard is attacking so damn fast, even without that focus fire. It's actually pretty ridiculous. Oh, that was pretty fast, isn't it? 0.43. Uh, attack speed of 392. Oh, Doom! Oh, He's been down to now, Corden! Jumping forward here, activating that BKB, the Stone Gaze there too. Elix will try and be saved there with the Telekinesis. He will be saved. They commit the Doom now to Dragonite, but he just TPs out of the fight. As now they have themselves another Doom with the Refresher there, placed upon the Medusa, but they will lose the Doom. Nice arrow by Poppy. Fire. Coming out there from Picard's able to find Secret. Crystalis is dead. They're going to lose three here on Secret. Picard's still alive, actually using the Hurricane Bike and the Focus Bike, taking down the slot of a corner, blinking back in with the Brief Fire. Able to find Picard's. He's on his own, though. Still laying in damage. Able to find Knight there, but he's getting lower and lower as Slatum's able to get the kill. They'll get a team wide, but it's only Panda and Slatum's who remain here. What a bloodbath. What a bloodbath indeed. And again, it was just Knight being the one there to be able to save the Doom, despite the fact that they didn't have the vision advantage. He gets that one off. Then you're even able to get that uh, bit of a counter in onto the Slardar. Stole the Corrosive Haze. So, uh, sorry, the Slithering Crush, which meant that he was applying the Haze as well once he used it back onto the Slardar. Prevented Picards for dying just that little bit longer to enable that turnaround to happen. And uh, otherwise, I'd say that was a pretty comfortable fight coming through from Secret, if not for him. So, once again, just such a good Rubik performance coming through. 0, 8, and 20, and Roshan is back up on the bottom side of the map. Has the Refresher as well, so honestly, you would love to have this on Boom even more so than Secret. After that fight, the uh, the win probability actually moved down into Boom's favor here, too, so... I a 53% win probability. So at the moment, Ice Frog thinks it's anyone's game at the moment. Kind of crazy considering how far ahead in net worth they've been for the majority of this game on Boom that it's still looking dead even. And I guess really valuing the Medusa's contribution. It is still a great Medusa game, but if Picard is just able to lock in onto a hero, still doesn't have a BKB, by the way. So if they choose to go Giga late, they're going to be feeling very confident about this. Well, our food not even needed this time around. It's just going to be Crystalis and Boom being the ones to secure the Roshan for themselves. So we are just now in the hands of Crystalis. There we go. Maybe perhaps an opportunity to push now, but big item now finally finished. It's the Agnims on Disruptor. 
I feel like you should give this refresher over to Chrysalis, don't you think? Like, Slada's not really using all that much in the form of refresher other than a BKB. Whereas Dusa, another Manta, another BKB, another Stone Gaze. Just feels yeah. a little bit more impactful. Yeah, I thought they would have given the, uh, the refresher. He, he does have himself uh, quite a bit of items, though. I wonder what he would trade out for the uh, Maybe the just put it in the, when the Aegis gets taken. You're not really going to be using a arcane boots relative to a refresher. <laughs> you, know, you know what <laughs> I'd rather have. <laughs> but yeah, that's a fair point. There he goes. That smoke top is five, though, here on Boom. What is their objective here? Who find themselves a... That's an illusion. There has been times before where teams of uh, their smoke hasn't broken, but they thought it was real. Mm -hmm. There has been instances like that before. Thankfully, they don't do that here on Boom. It's a highly tense game. I can understand it. Not going to be able to make a move forward on pass either. He's still got that shield rune. It's just about to expire. So he's going to be a little bit squishier. Again, still no BKB on him. So he does feel very vulnerable to being gone on first. Look at that, Afu once again just revealing the positioning of Picars with those rockets flying over him. They know exactly where they're looking to clump up. Puppy, he's making a top side. A little bit of a ballsy decision to be able to farm this far away from your team, considering well, you Picaz. know that right there. He's so close. Oh, they're going to respond now. Rolling Thunder coming in, but in return, the counter initiation there from the Stone Gaze will be committed. That will force away Slatum, so neither team actually initiating on each other there. As this game will. Further prolonged, we may have ourselves another 60-minute game coming up here, Danok. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you love to see it. I mean, it, it's always going to happen. The high ground defense coming through from both teams, to be honest. And uh, I feel like yeah, going up against a Medusa, dangerous. Going up against a Disruptor, dangerous. Uh, it, it's always the sort of thing where you just need to be concerned about overstepping just that one time. And Pango, he's going to be in a position to that Rolling Thunder pretty quickly again. Might give them that little bit of an edge, even going into the Aegis, to be able to make another play before it even expires. But maybe they'll feel a little bit more hesitant, considering they don't have a smoke. Panda's got the Ags, by the way. Precious bounty. They want to find a quick pick off on someone. Even just the threat of Glimpse can force BKBs to be popped really early, and that's honestly a big win at this stage of the game. BKBs can be... Game influencing. I mean, especially for Crystalis. He, he, he understood that he definitely needed a BKB early. Finished that right after the butterfly, so. Radiant are scanning. And Arfir is just um, still doing work here with these rocket flares. He's never using them like the shortest possible distance. He wants it to go across as much of the map as possible before also influencing some of the. Uh, the creep wave, right? To just push out a little bit more strongly on that bottom side of the map. Yeah. Oh, God, to Crystalis. Actually, Crystalis opting here to purchase himself a refresher orb, which is now coming to his inventory. They are going to commit the rolling thunder, though. They place the doom there as well. On to the Medusa. You've mean, got Lotus Talk. Yeah, I mean, age is available. So Doom has doomed himself. Oh, Dragon Tail coming in with a crush there onto two, actually finding Panda. Panda dead. Hookshot comes in as well. They find Rubik there. Two is disrupted down for 100 seconds. Second but doom. another doom tried to be applied there, but Crystal is able just to survive through it all here with the BKB and the Stone Gaze Ultra Kill. The Crystalis. The buyback there from Illich and Pakaz. Oh, nice Second one. Shot comes out there in return. They find off food. The focus fire there too. Crystal is slowly falling, falling, falling. He will be found, gone and dead. Down for 90. Shackle shot onto two. Corden attempting to flee. He will be able to get back with thanks to the unobstructed pathing from his dragon form. But because his heart oh. on the pursuit, will he find it? The blink just in time in the trees is going to get away. They will not Dyer's find not the top. kill. But look how many buybacks they com committed there on the side of Boo. Yeah, three big buybacks. As most importantly, it's the one on Picard's that they've been looking for this entire time. He's the main damage threat coming through. They were able to hold on the Pangalia, though. I was constantly watching, like, is he is he going to is he going to on Slatums? But 
maybe just feeling like they had too easy of an avenue to retreat if he did uh, end up popping that one but turned out they actually needed that little bit of extra damage coming through from him and more control rather to be able to actually chase up and confirm a lot of those well, she needs to be very careful thousand damage on the medusa oh yeah ages very good didn't even get the first stone gaze off either only got it once it was refreshed but what a get great uh lotus orb usage by puppy right like just getting that reflect oh, onto yeah. the doom making sure that illich couldn't continue to be in the middle of that team fight even just little things like the the shiva's guard aura not being there um to be able to perhaps influence things a little bit further Too often you see someone go the level 15 talent that doesn't give evasion uh, on the Mirana. He's going into a little bit more of this right-click style. I wonder if that was a misclick, because he hasn't really gone too much in the form of other damage items. Oh, yeah. Maybe for wave clear? I'm not sure. I mean, you have yourself nah. Star Storm, though. The Shard just gives it the, the double Star Storm on everything, so... I really wouldn't say it's wave clear oriented. Radiant are scanning. Roshan is possibly going to be back up soon in one minute as both teams, I think they're aware of this, will try and smoke up, maybe perhaps find something. We're going to head themselves bottom and maybe perhaps start to try and take control of this bottom right part of the map where they know Roshan is going to spawn up for sure. Mm, I'm a little. I mean, if Secret are going to make this move through the Twin Gate. It's going to be a bit late. Like, it's, it's Boom that actually have control over this area to be able to start with. They get a sentry down, they get an observer. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, they have an extra observer, actually. They might look to just place this one down on the high ground cliff just to provide any sort of information about when they're going to be coming in to be able to contest this. Right now, Secret, they've just been in the jungle farming, not really pushing out lanes all that much. I think what Chrysalis is doing right now is the right play. Just... Force the lane in, use your illusions, don't run any risk of giving away a life for free, and then force someone to potentially have to TP back if it's a really long Roche respawn, because that's not what Boom want to do. They don't want to break their formation on this bottom side of the map right now. Yeah, that might definitely force some TPs. I mean, doing a lot of damage to the tier 3s, those illusions. It's a pretty long Roche respawn, and that's secret advantage. They don't want to be just hanging around here, and they committed two of their wards down here as well, so it's not going to be all that effective, uh, that vision, unless Secret are the ones that take the bait. The thing is, you've got Afu, so he can always just shoot rockets into the Roche pit. You know exactly when it's going to be available for yourself. Yeah. Just going to send the illusion again, top, this time the dragon form illusion. They know where they all are because of the rocket flare spam. Afu's been playing an amazing game. Oh, the smoke broke there onto Slatum, so he had to blink away quickly. They may get a wrap around here. Look at Corden coming forward as themselves the Dragon Tail committing it there. They have the Slivereen Crush as well. Two Slatum's in some trouble. He's going to roll up and swashbuckle away. He will be okay. Meantime, though, they did commit the Doom there onto Boom. Boom will fall here on the Slardar. They will lose one on Secret. Attempting to try and find this Disruptor, though, with the Dragon Breath. They will get the kill with the rocket level. The focus fire takes down Corden. In return, Chrysalis now coming out with the stone gaze. The buybacks all coming out from three heroes that have fallen here on both teams. And Boom are going to defend, but will they go beyond their base? Latin Seems like they want more. Out here with a rolling thunder. Focus fire here now being committed onto Arfu. Stolen Sliverine Crush finds the kill here from Knight. As that is a dieback here onto the clock, but he returned a dieback onto the Rubik too as Boom came in with his own crush and found that kill too. Poppy dead. Will attempt to buy back Corden. He's kind of stuck here within the kinetic field, so unable to move. And with that, Boom will disengage and just get themselves back. But uh, three buybacks here from Secret. Wow. Only two buybacks left in the game on the Medusa and the Pangalier. Still got a gem there on the ground as well. That was a really clutch glimpse there by Panda at the very end onto the Slada. Obviously, they wanted to use this Disruptor to be able to maybe find the Medusa as she was going for that solo retreat, but 
If he hadn't glimpsed the uh, the slider back, I honestly think that could have been game over. He was in a position to fully wipe the team. The advantage, though, of course, of Secret. Oh, damn. Look at this. Look at this, yep. dog. They're coming in yep. really quick to try and stop this Roshan. It's going to roar. It reveals to them that they're taking it. The Rolling Thunder is going to be committed. And in comes the Blink with Slatums with that Rolling Thunder. Trying to disrupt the rest of Secret here. Will he get the Aegis? No, he will not. He will not get the Aegis. He will fall here. It will go into the hands of Boom here. He will be taken down by the Focus Fire, but he has himself the Aegis. He's going to be able to come back alive, but there's no matter remaining on the Medusa. So Medusa is going to fall. Buyback is available if they do indeed want to commit it, but they've been caught That'll in be a, a die big back. static storm here that's caught both Puppy and Boom. Diebacks there. The only ones remaining is the DK. Corden is the only one. He's the only one, and uh, well, luckily for Crystalis, he still has the buyback left for himself. We'll be able to defend up on that high ground, but certainly not easy against all of this. What have we got? Like Clockwork's got his in about a minute or so. As soon as he reses, Afu is just going to be spamming that overclock to try and shove out as many lanes as possible, and it's at the worst possible time for Secret. You know, every five minutes beyond 35, you got those double siege creep wagons coming in, so mid lane already being assaulted right now. Buyback available on this do so. That's their only lifeline. The question is, is he going to commit it? Or do you think Corden will be able to, you know, keep the base intact for 30 seconds? I don't know if Corden will be able to do that, but I also don't think it's worth using the buyback. You know, the starter is such a big part of your front line of amping up the damage that you're able to do onto a lot of these heroes and even potentially getting some chain lockdown. Without him, it just becomes so much more challenging. Yeah, they go. It looks like they will wait it here. Radiance All right, Dan Ogbell. They'll, they'll just take the bottom set. They have themselves the glyph. Medusa back in ten seconds. So at least Crystalis has himself the buyback here. So if he dies for this second time, he will be able to come back for the third time. Okay, okay Medusa are alive well. now. They will take the middle set. Oh, they're going to get oh, a Corden. Uh oh. oh. He has been Can't doomed. Be there. There's no buyback available on Corden. Corden is just going to be decimated by the hands of Boom. That is not good. The Stone Gaze came out there quite early too. This does look to be a kind of GG situation unless Secret can pull something sneaky from out their sleeve. I mean, Slaughter and Marauder back in just a couple of seconds, but no buybacks available apart from the Clockwork and the Medusa. So we'll see. And this this has given time for all of Boom's buybacks to come back oh, as well. Gosh, they even find Puppy. Again. Puppy, he's in trouble. He will be able to get by me. Well, they have been able to find themselves because, because taken down very, very quickly there. They'll try to attempt to turn it around with the Doom now, along with the Rolling Thunder also. That is Boom most definitely in trouble. There we go. The buyback from Picard as well. Joining back in the fight. No more of Mana Remedio Chrysalis, but he's still he's doing a lot of damage. He's been able to take down Slatems and Illich. Illich dead. Illich will buy back here too. There's no buyback remaining on the Pangalir here. He's going to try and come forward with the Shiva's God. Chrysalis needs to get himself back, but he's being glimpsed back by the hands of Panda. The buyback is there. The he's back in. coming out from Arfu. But there's no follow-up here to work with this hook shot. He will fall. The buyback is there. As they've got themselves the Mega Creeps here on Boom, Crystalis, and the Clockwork along with Puppy. They're the only ones that can hold right now. As caught him down for 40 seconds with no buyback. Oh gosh, yeah, one tier four tower remains. It's the only thing keeping them away from the agent. It's gonna fall. The focus fire has been committed now. They don't have themselves a glyph. It looks to be game as the cars tried to lay into the agent. As Crystal, there we go. There's a static storm catching in place. The Medusa for cars is just gonna find the agent. There we go. GG game one. It's going to be going to Boom Esports here. Folks, they will take game one against Secret. Great team performance coming through all around, right? Like Picaz and Knight in particular, just involved in so many kills was this win ranger. 44 out of the 49 kills for a position one is almost unheard of, unless your team is going a full death ball strat, which, I mean, their draft absolutely wasn't, right? Like they... They went down a different sort of route. They played their own sort of game, despite 
being behind in win probability for most of that game just because of that strength of the Medusa. But they were able to divide, they were able to conquer, they were able to take out the important heroes and Panda a couple of times just hitting a great multi-man static storm to be able to turn the tide in his team's favor. Yeah, very well played there from the side of Boom Esports. It, it, it just all fell apart within that Roshan fight there. They all wanted to commit the buyback. I mean, especially top as well. Do you think maybe perhaps Secret, um, they went a little bit too aggressive here with the buybacks? Do you think they should have saved them? Do you think that was a blunder that cost them the game? Or do you think it was down to something else? I mean, I think Corden was just caught way too far on his own at the very end there. But uh, yeah, even just the decision to go up onto the high ground initially without a BKB, without uh, a Manta style available, even just using your own body to siege the high ground as opposed to Manta Illusions felt uh, a little bit questionable to me. But you know what? Again, high stakes game. Secret were in a winning position for a lot of it. And a lot of it was to do with the cohesion that they were able to play around with. A shame that Afu's huge play with the uh, Aegis Snatch wasn't able to be rewarded with a win. But Boom absolutely mm. doing some more impressing again in another series against another European team. Yeah, with that, folks, um, I think we'll take ourselves a break. But actually, before we go for a break, who do you think was... Uh, give us your MVP, certified, confirmed MVP of that game, Danog. Who would you think? Picard for, for me. Picard got way too much okay. out of the laying stage. Like I said, 44 out of 48 kills, 49 kills that he participated in. Uh, 70k damage, <sighs> by all means, give it to him. So there we go, folks. We are indeed going to go for a short break, but stay tuned because we'll be back with Game 2 in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere, and we'll see you for Game 2.
Hello folks, welcome back to the Elite League with myself, Epidam. Not joining me is Dana. We just had ourselves game one out of the best of three between Boom Esports and Team Secret. Now, we didn't know which team was going to win within uh, game one because it was uh, on one side and then it was on the other side. But it was actually Boom that came out on top. Uh, Cars was able to dominate here and he got himself the, the MVP from us two here with delivering a well-executed game here on a win wager carry, especially against a Medusa. So very well played to him, but we're coming in for a game two now to see whether Secret will be able to equalize or will Boom be able to take this 2-0? What, what do you think, Danok? Do, do you think it can be done? Yeah. No, because there were some instances where Team Secret are actually able to do really well. But I got to give props to uh, Illich as well, because looking back at that game, he did he was able to get off some really excellent dooms. And uh, not only that, but it was kind of the the way he counter-initiated some initiations from Secret here to turn back and say, oh, well, I've got doom, you better run. <laughs> and was able to cast that upon them. But yeah, we come in for a draft. remaining five seconds remaining well they definitely banned out the wind ranger on secret they don't want to go against the car's wind ranger again that will be gone um just a uh a novel a novel a novel another uh notable instance that's happened on the stream these are the right teams down below th th this is the correct this is the correct um way so it is indeed boom that picked themselves up conquer first pick and we are yet to see what team secret will pick up what's it going to be it's a lashrak okay so it could be a cordon lashrak maybe perhaps dire team back Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, they could always flex it as a, uh, a position four, though, as well. If, if it's looking bad. They do pick themselves up Tusk, though. Uh, we have seen some absolutely some beautiful snowball saves in the past. I think that was uh, from Scopefield, if I'm correct. Ten 
10 seconds remaining. <laughs> seconds remaining. Mm. Okay, so what will Boom Esports respond with? Yeah, Doom's banned as well. What a surprise, surprise! Doom is gone too. And it is. Okay. A crystal made in here, just a strong support. And is that a is that a pause? I wonder what was going on there. I had, I had a pause. Um. But yeah, if they're picking up Le Shrek here, it's like what what what's the way to kind of respond to this bloodstone? Is it something that has burst damage here for Boom Esports? Or do you think that it, it they need something that kind of stops the regeneration? You know, like um, a hero that would buy like a spirit vessel or something, or a hero that has a spell which can stop the, the regeneration and spell steal of a bloodstone. Radiant team pick. Stare your death in the face. Okay. Ten seconds remaining. Mm -hmm. Five seconds remaining. I think, um, I think Picard actually plays the, um, the Moeta, though. Uh, I think I have seen a few games where he's played it, so it, it, it could be what they're looking for in terms of, uh, of nuking against the Shrek, but uh, it will be interesting to see whether they, you know, you said that Knight played this, so we could see it as a, uh, a support, or they could flex it, so I, I do like these flex picks. And they do indeed come out. Team Secret, though, they will pick themselves up Tide Hunter and Rubik here for Team Secret. So they'll be the ones to pick themselves up Rubik this time. And they will deny them the Rubik pick by, I think, picking themselves up Tide Hunter here too. So they have themselves some big control here. And I think Boom is a vivid enjoyer from what I heard of you previously, Danog, of playing the Tide Hunter. But Pangalier comes out for Boom Esports also. So I wonder now what they are missing here on Boom Esports. They could be going a carry. They could be going a possible. It may look like it's definitely the carry here for Boom Esports, maybe, that they'll look for. They ban out the Morphling on Secret. In return, Boom Esports have banned out Bloodseeker, so understand that they're also looking for a carry on Team Secret also. But Team Secret, they do have themselves the last pick. So they will have the benefit of choosing that final hero, which they think will be good. You can definitely understand the Bloodseeker ban, because even though the, the, me and Danok have uh, kind of ripped into the, the Agnim shot here of Bloodseeker, and gone, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit, a bit poo. <laughs> but it, 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 he still has himself the rupture, and it is very nice to cast, especially against the Pangolier. We, we have seen many things that disrupt it, like the, the Soul Bind. That's pretty good in order to stop the Rolling Thunder, and especially if you cast Rupture upon him. Well, he's not able to have massive impact, is he? So, very good there. They ban out the Luna on Team Secret here, and now we'll look to see their final ban on Boom Esports, what they will deny for Crystallis. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. wonder what they'll ban here. 
What will you go for, Boom? What do you want to deny away from Crystalis? If it's me, I, I think you can hear me again. Uh, if it's yeah, me, I, I, it. I think you want to just go something that's able to stay at range and actually punish this Pangalia when he's running in at you. Because you've got you've got Frontline, right? You've got the Lashrak, you've got the Tusk, you've got the Tide Hunter. These are all heroes that you want to be standing up in front of you. So if you can get away with something like, I mean, Windranger would have been perfect for them, but they've already banned that out themselves. Um, I think you could probably do something like maybe a Terra Blade in this game, um, where if he tries to roll in onto you, you just pop the meta and start hitting him down as well. Uh, I mm. think that could be pretty good value. The one area that I would be a little concerned about if they did that, oh, actually, never mind, uh, Secret have last pick, not, not Boom. I was just worried about the potential of them flexing this Muerta to be a carry, because Muerta is a pretty good answer to the Terra Blade, but they won't have that option. It's going to be Boom that... Uh, that have to pick first. So really, what is the thing that they're going for for Picards is another question. Like, what's going to be able to dominate this lane against the Tide Hunter, uh, and also be able to deal with the Lashrak? Is it range? Like, do, do they go some more range for themselves? Can you get away with like a a gyro? Mm, I think maybe Drow with hypothermia arrows. Yeah, that was another consideration. Um, yeah, I'm just a little. Draw's a little less survivable, I guess, in in my books. Well, they pick the Terra Oh, they go to the Terra Blade on Boom. Okay. It's a little bit of a block pick as well. I like it. Mm. Uh, you can't really... Wouldn't that suggest... Or... Yes, would yes. that be even better for Drow? Now that you're against Terra Blade, so you have the Marksmanship, which pierces through the, the base armor of Terra Blade? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, definitely. Good against the TB. One of those things that can deal with the Pangolier. Nicely done, there, Pete. Plenty of stuff. Yeah. To play in front of you. <laughs> nice. Okay. I mean, I mean, I was um a little bit concerned of uh, maybe perhaps they they can catch the Drow with you know if, if they have Torrent Storm and Torrents because Drow really hates obviously being caught. Yeah. Um, but I do think they have some front line here like Tide Hunter and Lashrak. So I, I, I thought the Drow was good. Um, especially it, it, against some of the heroes that they have. It puts a lot of pressure onto Slotums, for sure, to basically only be on the Drow in a lot of these team fights. And the thing is, like, if you are, you're probably not dying, right? Tide's not doing damage to you, Rubik's not doing damage to you, Tusk's not doing damage to you. Um, Lashrak will do a little bit, so that's something that they do need to be concerned about. Um, if, however, they're the ones that get the jump on Team Secret, team fights just go, I think, overwhelmingly in your favor, right? You get the dead in the water onto the Pangolier, and then he has a lot of trouble being able to, you know, be that space creator for you. You get a Ravage off before he's able to roll up. Great. You know, he uh, he's in a lot of difficulty. And I feel like that just allows Drow Ranger to just completely go to town. Ooh. I'm also looking at Puppy here. Like, is he going to be able to use the Ice Shards cleverly around Slotums? Like, if he's looking to move on towards the Drow Ranger... You just put an Ice Shards in front of the Drow and interrupt that ability to be able to be that chain lockdown. Or you could just do the easier thing and, like, snowball the Drow, right? Off onto a, a safer position. Yeah. That's a possibility. I, I completely forgot that you could actually just completely mess up the Rolling Thunder here with the Ice Shards. But yes, folks, Game 2 will be getting underway here. Boom Esports versus Team Secret. Boom Esports currently one game up, one game away from completing themselves this series here. But let's get right into the game. Uh, Draft-wise, are you preferring Boom here, or do you prefer Team Secret draft? I like the Drow overall, and I have faith in Puppy in being able to protect him. So... Again, I think Slotums needs to be the MVP if uh, if they're going to get the W on Boom. So I, I do have faith that he will be, have a good game. I'm just a little bit worried that it's putting a little bit too much onto one person, you know? So I'm, I'm probably going to say Secret for this one. Okie doke. See how this guy... I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about how much damage the Terror Blade can do as well. He's not he's not a great damage dealer against Drow, is he? I mean, you do have the reflection and stuff like that, but in terms of armor that the, the Drow builds, um, Terror Blade may have some trouble, right? Yeah, even just uh, being able to have a little bit of that AoE damage coming through, right? If Drow opts to go for the, um, the Aghanim Scepter, you know? Um, just split damage into some of those TB illusions, which feels kind of nice. Just bursting and dealing damage in that big AoE. Mm -hmm. 
But he is a vivid Scaddy enjoyer yeah. on the Terror Blade, which will be nice, especially against this Leshrac. For sure. Mm, I mean, it, it, it does go in different directions, though, right? Pre Scardi, I would be feeling pretty happy as Corden, right? Because you've got the damage to be able to rip through a TB. And then at that point, it's really just about, like, what control is the Pango and the Kunkka going to be able to do to be able to stop you from just running at the TB. It's going to take them a lot just to stop him from taking towers as well, which is, yeah, there's a reason that this hero is banned a whole lot. It's just that it does so much. You take towers, you're a really solid laner. Uh, you don't lose too many lanes either, which is the important thing. And, uh, yeah, it's just a big threat at basically all stages of this game. Never a good thing when there's multiple things that you're like, oh crap, we have to deal with this. Yeah, so I do love the fact that they have themselves this hide. The reasons you said. Death in the water, as you said, is going to be nice too. I mean, I've had that used. Because I've seen it being used as well, and it's really difficult for Pangolier to get himself away. Mm -hmm. Just trying to bully away Afu on this top side is boom. Keep him away as much, even just using the reflection on him solo, not even worrying about the Tide Hunter. Why does um Does Boom get the dead in the water as soon as possible, do you think? Or is it that valuable that oh actually they might get a kill here onto Picard's, yeah. Still has the, the blood grenade. Oh they'll attempt to try and turn it around, but they will find the kill there with the anchor smash and Arfu. Holding his ground, but this may be a double kill here. The anchor smash ready. There it is. Double kill for Boom. Arfu will sacrifice his life for that. And that is a good start there for C. It is indeed. Uh, I'm also wondering, like, at what point do you want to get... Uh... I think you can rush Dead in the Water, but I think you need some sort of way to be able to find the targets that you're going to use Dead in the Water on, if that makes sense. Like, if Puppy has a good start to his game and gets an early-ish Blink Dagger and they're able to use that to, you know, initiate on the Pangolier, great, right? That, that's a good reason to want to have that uh, available for the uh, the Tide Hunter to be able to follow up on that. But if you don't have that, you're kind of just walking in and you know, swinging that anchor menacingly, and it, it just doesn't feel that great. Yeah. Might even just be like a... Is this like a Vlad's game for Boom first? Like if he went... Phase boots, Vlad's blink, dead in the water, or something like that. Certainly gives you a lot more staying power on the drought. Oh, maybe perhaps a kill on tonight? Oh, never mind, okay. Knight's alright. Did they trap him in the trees there with the ice shards on bottom, but he's okay. Mid lane, on the other hand, how's that looking? Uh, pretty average here at the moment in terms of XP. They're both pretty much the same here, Gordon and Slatums at the moment. Um, is there going to be a peak eventually where maybe perhaps one hero can kill the other? Because I'm, I'm, I'm not a... Um... I'm not very not... experienced in terms of seeing a Pangolier versus Lashrak game. That is, I think it's a bit rare. Nicely done. I mean, it's something that Quinn would love to see. Certainly two of the heroes that he's synonymous with. Uh, not, not on their own, I don't think. Like, I think you still need some rotations through from the side lanes if you are able to confirm that sort of thing. It's just a question of when that's going to happen. I, I don't really think you're ever going to be in a position to leave Crystalis on his own for too long. The only reason that Puppy is starting to make the move here is to try and protect the Water Rune a little bit for himself, as... Gordon's getting bullied a fair amount by Slatums, actually. Uh, yeah, I, I think Drow's for okay in a 1v1 situation, but yeah, if, if Tusk is able to identify that that 1v1 situation is happening and then make a rotation while Pango's stuff is on cooldown, that's when you could potentially look to see him maybe dying, but uh, that window is shrinking with him almost up to that level 6 already on Slatums. Quite a lot of action happening on the top lane as we were speaking about that with Metamorphosis being committed. Though Boom is completely fine. He's going for 
the phase boots here, and as you said, it looks like he will maybe go for the Vladimir's offering here on on the Tide Hunter. Yeah, Got maybe. a Morbin it, mask in his inventory. It might just be for staying power, right? Like you've already got the health regen coming through from the braces. You have a Sage's Mask for a little bit of that mana regen. And uh, yeah, all you really need is that uh, Morbid Mask just to be able to anchor smash a creep wave and you're fine. He <laughs> said double Morbid Mask queued up now. <laughs> I think we're going to see a little bit of chill time for now. At least until that six minute rune, so <laughs> actually only about 30 seconds. Uh... <laughs> Seeing the rotation start to come through from Afu, realizing that Boom's probably in a pretty safe spot. The wave, he can drag back, he can have it right next to the tower. There, well, actually there is the small camp available, so Panda is going to be able to use that to, again, manipulate the lane. There always needs oh, to nice be some sort of... Deny. Yeah, there always needs to be some sort of trade-off happening here as Slotum's even just... Oh, actually going to commit the Rolling Thunder onto the Rubik here. Actually confirm this oh, nice kill, might be able to with a CM. Oh, oh no! Oh, he, didn't, he didn't realize that he had himself some magic wand charges. So he's actually able to survive that, even with the retreat of the swashbucklers. Now they'll attempt to turn it around, knowing that Pangolay does not have himself a lot of mana at Corden. Still has some Pulse Nova ready to commit, but not a lot of mana for him either, as this Diabolic Edict is actually affecting the Crete Wave that he snapped along with him, which isn't very good. Yeah, and the support showing up just gives Slotums the space that he needs to let that regen kick in on the regen rune as well. So he's totally okay, and Lashrak just cannot fight at all. I think he almost wishes that Puppy would die just so that he can uh, get a bit of a bottle refill, but might be able to get it eventually with Puppy making a stack, getting the wisdom rune, and then TPing back towards the mid lane. I need not beg for scraps. I don't know if you uh, you, you know a lot about the how Lashrak builds. I don't know if it varies between player to player. But sometimes I, I have seen Split Earth kind of leveled on Lashrak before, but other times I haven't. Do you know like why that is? Because I've seen some people contest like, range creeps with it, but then they also use Lightning Strike as well. And, and this time we haven't seen it leveled yet on Cordon. I think Lightning Storm is really just your main creep contesting ability. Uh, of course, one point in Split Earth feels kind of nice, especially considering it's only 80 mana, but... I think right now he just wanted to get the absolute most that he could out of that lane because he knows that Slutums is a very, very good Pangolier player. I mean, we see what that means in terms of overall net worth, right? He was about 500 ahead of the Lashrak prior to him rotating top and getting that tower for himself. I wonder if Corden's going to look to do a similar sort of thing on this bottom side, though, as Chrysalis gets gone on. Yeah, caught in place. Rolling Thunder coming in again. They find the kill. Chrysalis will fall. No points in the gust either. I was thinking maybe he might hold one just to maybe give him a little bit of a reprieve from any sort of a kill attempt that goes in onto him. Looks like it is the Vlads that uh, Boom is working on as well. So again, just would allow the... Uh, oh, Knight might be in a bit of a precarious position here. Getting hit for a lot, okay. just a single right click. <laughs> Taking off 100 of his HP. Actually making another move here onto Illich on the bottom side. Just trying to live oh, yeah. with that rock boat rum. Didn't That's actually come onto him. Yeah. Just see Slatums here taking the the stacks of secret. On the Pangolier, able to take that up fine. And Boom has just moved himself back to top now, so. Going to continue to try and farm himself this Vladimir's Aura. They're going to need to be Vladimir's very careful off. or very quick with when they actually look to take a bunch of these stacks that they've built up inside of the Ancient Camp area for Boom. Just because you're up against a Lashrak and a Tidehunter. These are two heroes that, you know, A, they're very good at team fighting at this point prior to BKBs being available, and B, you've got maxed out Anchor Smash and just tons of AoE damage potential coming through, so the fact that Illich is taking this now, really good sign that they understand the threat that they're up against. Yeah, if they can take this middle tier 1 tower though, that might open up some room for them to 
Try and invade this triangle here. Sure. Yeah, either mid or, or bottom. Either one feels A-OK -okay to me. Gordon Meat even starting to make some of his own stacks while walking towards and hoping that that power rune is going to be spawning down bottom. It is, but a really nice time dead shot by night. Oh, and Stolen oh, Rolling Thunder. Thunder there too. I mean, they will take down Poppy, but in return, the Freezing Fields cancelled there by Arfu. That Stolen Rolling Thunder. Nice steal. I'll we'll just get one kill. I'm a little surprised that Chrysalis is this far behind on farm, though. I mean, and TB, of course, has the potential to use illusions to speed up his farm a little bit, but he did have that pretty lengthy period where it was a 1v1 situation against a Kunkka without the uh, the boat available yet in the lane, so kind of thought that he would be farming somewhat uncontested. At least he's got the Falcon Blade now, so a little bit of a power spike. And I, I, I want him to see him get the, uh, the Gust at level 4, just to be a little bit capable of uh, assisting the uh, the eventual fight that's about to break out, because I haven't seen a single Ravage yet. You've got the Vlads now picked up by Boom. I think you need to start taking some more towers and really playing to the strengths of your draft. Yeah, still Dying suffering a bit here on the Drab, I mean, below the net worth. I mean, Corden is not doing the, the greatest. The only one who is, is Boom. Yep. Sitting on top of... Uh, not, not to get confused that with the team. Boom from Team time. Secret is sitting comfortably on the top of the net worth here at 6,100 net worth. And speaking of Boom, he's actually going to head forward onto Panda. Ooh, he will really be okay, nice though. They've got to respond. Rolling Thunder is coming in. Slowed down there by the reflection. He has himself the Ravage. If they want to commit it, will use it defensively. And a snowball save coming out from Poppy there. Boom will be okay. But they don't follow up with that Ravage at all. Crystal is here, he has to be careful with in here. They found themselves caught in there with that Frostbite. Still trying to turn it around there with the Pulse Snow, but it will be found. They take out one. They will trade it for another, though, as they lose the Conquer. And Secret are on the retreat here as they find themselves Puppy there, too. Double kill for Knight. As they also find Rubik there. What was that? Was that a, uh, a double kill with the dead shot? Like, instantly? It was. He uses the Pierce the Veil. Rubik steals it. Realizes, hey, I'm going to be in ethereal form. He could still hit me anyway. No real point in using it. And, uh, yeah, ended up getting the dead shot reflected from one of them to the other, getting the double kill wow. really quickly. That was all what the tip was that Illich was able to put on down. So, once again, really nice play from Knight. Even just the use of the uh, the calling there when Tidehunter was behind the Tier 1 tower. It was basically the second that he was wanting to use the Ravage on Boom in a much more aggressive spot to allow him to, you know, get the control, find a quick pickoff so that Drow could rotate in and you know, be much more impactful than he uh, ended up being in that one. It felt like Chrysalis wasn't entirely sure on which hero he could actually engage in onto. And yeah, the damage was somewhat lacking from him. So attempting to try and pressure the bottom tier 1 tower now with the supports closely behind the Conquer. And they should be able to take that fine there. They'll be able to take that tower. No contest. Knight especially is, again, really impressed me this game. But I think overall, like, Boom are just outplaying Team Secret right now in terms of their overall movements. I, I did like the move that they were trying to make with the uh, the Tide Hunter, but again, it was just that individual play on the Muerta that stopped them from getting that Tier 1 tower. They got close, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, unfortunately, Epi. And uh, well, they blew up right in their face, that sort of movement. Uh, I'm really interested to see what they opt to go into uh, next as their, their next big movement. Like, are they going to try and make a play with this Dragon Lance? Are they going to wait until they've at least got the Yule Scepter on Corden, so at least he can survive through somewhat of the, the boat, the Rolling Thunder combinations? That might need to be the play, because we saw how the Frostbite was effective against him. <laughs> what is Latin's doing? He's just, he's just Watch waiting him. for Puppy and toying with him. They get the kill, utilizing this Diffusal Blade. Stolen meta on Rubik. He's dangerous. Oh, backline jump here on Slatums. Knows that there isn't the, the spell two. still available. Okay, uh, Torrent. And the boat as well. That gets the kill. Alright, they take Once down again, the Rubik. The calling the in the right spot again. Just right on where Boom is TPing in, realizing that the Ravage was a threat. And just taking that away. 
Gordon finally has that Yule Scepter to be able to potentially influence this next fight. And maybe the fact that they don't have the Rolling Thunder for quite some time, still just level 1, so full 90 second cooldown, maybe they want to use this time to be able to push out that mid wave and take the tier 1 tower. That's step 1 uh, over a, a long road that they need to be able to recover from. Yeah, there's the smoke. Lines being drawn on the map as well. Puppy at least has hit level 6, so he didn't have that a minute and a half ago, so Walrus Punch now available. Might be able to interrupt something like the Freezing Field, for example. Yeah. Ravage is ready to this. It's going to break on both of the supports here, but Knight with a really quick reaction has four staffs himself back underneath the tier 2, so that smoke is broken now. I mean, at least they'll find the tier 1, but no kill for them. No kill for them, and on the other sides of the map, you've got Slardom farming, you've got Picard's farming. Net worth lead went from 4k to 6k during that smoke where they took a tower, so they're just reading this map really well here on Boom and making plays and farming when they've got the openings to. And Picard is instantly trying to build into a Skaddy here after getting the Dragonlance and a Yashit. Mm -hmm. Like it, like it a lot. They've got the Arcane Rune on uh, Corden to be able to make plays though, so that's another plus coming through for Secret. Has to be a little careful with his positioning. You've got Slatums and Panda, who's oh, about to say willing to commit the Rolling Thunder, but it doesn't seem like it. Has enough yeah, for the Voodoo Master, if he wants it. That would have been a little bit too aggressive. We have some TP rotations here on Secret. Oh, no. Look this. Boom. Tonight. And Poppy, their smoke's going to break right onto Knight, who will force staff himself to the low ground. Oh, the nice. snowballs. That, that was lovely movement there from Knight. I, I don't know if anyone saw that, but the Ravage will come out, actually. Connecting onto three. And the rotation in from Picard finds the kill there onto Poppy. Boom now. Already committed. The Ravage will be found there by the boat. And they get themselves two kills here onto Boom. Can they possibly go for more? Picard maybe in trouble. Has the Sunder ready, but holds his ground. They find three. Possibly four here. Corden just going to be found. And a triple kill for Picard. Knight is a red-hot favorite for my MVP this game, man. Just those little things like you mentioned. I hope we get a chance to see that again, because just, like, perfect use of the force stuff down to the low ground at the very tip. He's able to use it as quickly as possible, and then when the snowball's about to connect in onto him, he just moves next to the cliff as well, so that Puppy is still down, still up on the high ground, actually, and able to get the escape. Even when Boom was just trying to confirm what he thought was a pretty easy kill, he pops the, uh, the Pierce the Veil, can't be hit, feels A-OK. -okay. He's going at Midas as well. He's really feeling himself. Yeah, that was really, really nicely played. Just small things like that which make you go, wow. Mm -hmm. That's a pro player right there. <laughs> That's why they're a pro player. And they're going to go on to Boom here. Boom on Boom. But he's still okay at the moment. Oh, and look at that lucky. Kraken shell. Yeah, yeah, Just able to dispel shell. twice. They may have found Arfu though. Commits the Torrent Storm, Slatton's just deletes him before that Torrent Storm even has an effect mm -hmm. with the Swashbuckle. Precious bounty. Dire structure. They don't really have much tanks, uh, Gordon. Oh, yeah. Dude, ooh, uh, just misses that Torrent's on it. off. X marks. X marks. Oh, the oh, blade mail there. Rolling Thunder coming in. I think this is a dead Gordon, Danog. I think this is a dead Gordon. It is indeed. He, he's not having a a game that he would like to remember, for sure. I mean, Knight is only 1k off of his net worth at this point. 11k lead, just 19 minutes in. And uh, one thing that I was really expecting, uh, just because of the way that he does like to play a little bit greedier on Puppy, is him getting into this Blink Dagger just a little bit sooner, you know? I, I feel like him not having that has really put them behind the eight ball a little bit. It means they can't play as aggressive as they want. It means Crystalis can't get involved in these fights. It means they can't use the pushing power of the Lashrak, and they can't take away more of these towers to recover some of this net worth lead. So I think it's really important that they just give more of this net worth over to Puppy. I hope they don't go for like a smoke right now because they're underneath an Observer Ward right now. Yeah, they see the vision here. And 4k ahead, Picard's is against Chrysalis. He's got himself that Scaddy. Going for the BKB next. 
This is a pretty big Terror Blade. And the pinging yeah, crystal is they want to go for him. him. They've got the X marks. They're going to bring it back here with the torrent. As in comes the swashbuckle and the boat too. We'll be able to avoid the boat. The gush comes out there, but I definitely think this Drought Ranger is dead. Yes, she is. They will take down the Drought. And, and they'll take Poppy out Puppy too. as well. Yeah, once yeah. again, great use of the calling. Made sure to land right onto Puppy so he wasn't able to get the snowball save while they dished out the majority of the damage onto that Drow Ranger. It's, again, it, what can be a great Drow game in theory is definitely not the case if you're just able to get on top of her like that. And just without the towers that they have to be able to play around with, it feels like it's constantly going to be this way. I don't think we've seen like a truly good Ravage come out either, so boom. He spent quite some time farming into this pipe of insight, but I think they just need to try and take the initiative a little bit more. Get that surprise jump so they can't just immediately react to you. They see the tide farming though. Oh no, yeah, he's being caught here within the ancient. Has himself that Kraken Shell there we've seen before. The gush comes off, the, the Kraken Shell dispel comes off quite a bit. Trying to flee now, the to the, the uh, yeah, that's it, the torrent catches him. Yeah, they will finally find the kill. There we go. Dominating spree for cars. And Panda even just stays around and takes the wisdom rune away while all that is happening. Like, everything oh is going right for Boom right now. A 16k net worth lead that these boys have been able to pick up. And go on, take the other one. Take the other one, Panda. You deserve it. Ah, oh, they're giving it to Picard. Sure. He's got a bit of a power spike coming. Never mind, Slotups. <laughs> And they get the Freebie. Tormentor too. Though, you did mention, really needed this Blink Dagger on Puppy. He does have it now, but you think that it's, you know, it's damage done. It's a bit too late now to utilize this Blink for some aggressive plays. I kind of think so. I mean, now you're kind of playing for the Blink Dagger on Tidehunter, which, like, how much can you make space for everyone on the map, right? And then... At that point, like, even Corden is going to have difficulties, less so once he gets the, um, the BKB for himself, but until that point, you probably don't want to fight into Panda, especially because he's got this Crystal Clone, right? Like, you just run forward, yeah. he drops the Crystal Clone, you get Frostbitten into place, what are you supposed to do against that? Like, you use yourself, and then your one defensive tool is gone. There's this Tier 2 Tower, speaking of gone. Tier 2 Tower will fall here also. Uh, yeah, about... they could take Roche with this. Yeah, 20 seconds. They can absolutely take Roche with this. Might be worth popping Pierce the Veil on Knight, just to be able to help with a little bit of the damage. We know he is a core, he is now ahead of Corden in net worth. Should you maybe give the Aegis here to, um... To Pangalir though, instead of the Terrorblade? Because I, I know the Terrorblade, he's not a very good Aegis carrier. He's not. I think I think you can generally be quite okay with this, as long as you look to make the Aegis push with uh, prior to the BKB coming out on the Lashrak, and if you are confident enough that you're going to be able to make the jump and land it onto the Drow Ranger, because those are the two heroes that the TB is actually worried about, right? So as long as those two heroes aren't a factor, TB doesn't care. He doesn't need the Aegis. Yeah, they give the Aegis to Pango. Slatums has himself that now, and is Picard's finished himself any items? Yeah, it really does feel like they're just trying to Kitty. get Boom into this Blink Dagger. They would have loved to be able to make a play as... Oh, Illich has found out Boom. He's trying to farm as he's getting ganked. There's no follow-up, though. He's just got a TP away. Nope. It's TP cancelled. Oh. Snowball save. Got the X-Mars. Oh, those Slatum's coming in. Rolling Thunder. Stun once. Another stun again. Might, might be dead. Another stun. It's just getting locked in place. I think this is Boom dead once again. Just being caught off by the rest of Boom Esports. Love their target prioritization. They know he's the one that's going to be able to potentially turn this one around with like a multi-person Blink Ravage. As long as they keep ganking him prior to him getting to that point, he's going to be in like... Oh, Illich? Maybe, well, maybe. Impressive initiation. He activates the blade mail here. The boat's coming in. Illich is live. actually able to just survive and they take down Corden. Wants to go for the aggressive play. Now finding Puppy here too. The freezing field will come out to play as Puppy is 
slowly falling will be found there by the Crystal Nova. They, just... they will lose another two heroes here on Secret. And they're just pushing tier three towers at the time. I mean, you are oh going to maybe lose Picards, but uh, yeah, Crystal is showing what happens in a 1v1 situation between the Drow Ranger and the Terra Blake, but that's not what is causing a lot of issues around this map here, right? It's uh, it's everyone else just making so much space for Picards. He was the clear MVP in game one, and he's doing a great job again of farming, but it's pretty easy to play a Terra Blade in this sort of situation where everyone's just setting up kills all over the map for you. I got a feeling, though, that you've been pretty impressed by Knight's performance here on Moeta, right? You think so? What gave you that idea? <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Just uh, the deadshot plays and the, the, the nice little mechanic movements here and there. Mm -hmm. The confidence to Midas. go into the Midas, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mage Slayer as well. All right. Nice way with the uh, the gunslinger to hit onto multiple targets. Oh, and he's got the he's got the freaking specialists array as well. So it's going to be so easy to apply that uh, mage slayer onto everyone. Oh yeah. It's going to be really nice here, especially against Corden. I mean, he's got himself a BKB you know, now. Just finish that up. He's bought that. It's on the way on the courier, so that'll be beneficial for the upcoming team fights. Question they is, will. can he survive through the damage of Picard's there with a scaddy? I don't think he can. I still think Picard's can die, though. Honestly. Like, if they get the jump onto him, without the Aegis, without him popping BKB, he can die. You know, you've got the Blink Dagger with the Ravage. You've got... Uh, actually, Don't they're going to try for it now. Oh, War is punched there, too. Activates the BKB. Sunder there. Onto Corden. Does have himself his own BKB. Nice ice shards there. It will protect Corden, will just TP away at like 40 HP. Oh no, Chrysalis, you can't get caught out here by the Pangolier chasing you down. So a big part of me saying that was Drow being able to dish out a lot of the damage, right? BKB or no BKB, TB probably dies if Chrysalis with a fresh level 18 and a Manta style is able to uh, to dish out the damage. But they just didn't have all the boys, they, uh, they don't have Ravage, and that's really all they need to be able to say, okay, high ground time, you don't have Glyph available. And we have meta. Yeah, there we go. Meta popped. They don't have creeps, though, because Boom has cut them. Nicely done. Do they have the damage to just backdoor it? <laughs> they might. The creeps coming middle, though. They should have the damage to backdoor it. Yeah, there we go. Now, now it's gone offline. They'll get mid tier three as well, at least. Yeah, maybe. I'll get that. The bottom set of Rax is gone. Boom having a great time here. 24k net worth at 27 minutes. It's looking pretty good. Still continuing to try and go for some uh, some creep cutting plays, but I mean, you've lost all of your outer towers. They could just keep on running forward towards you without any reason to stop. I'm sure they're going to have an idea of when that Ravage is back on cooldown. That's really the only thing that you're worried about. Still another minute. They just expired, though, on the Pangolier. I think they just pinged that out. Yeah. But what can you do without Ravage is always my main concern. You don't have a vision at all of uh, anything happening out on the map. So even if he chose to go into the Aghanim Shard, perhaps, on the Tide Hunter and, like, got a blink dead in the water on the Pango, that's no guarantee that you're going to be able to kill him. Is he, has he got a BKB? No, Basher. Okay, cool. Fine with that for Slatums as well. So, I'm wondering now, do you think they, they are okay here on the side of Boom to try and go high ground here uh, without the Aegis? Or do you think that it would be in their best interest to just wait it out, control the map, and get an Aegis here instead of closing it quickly? I don't even necessarily think they need to wait for another Aegis. I think they just need to wait for a couple of bad cooldowns to be used by Secret. They've got a 24k net worth advantage. They'll know how far ahead they are. It's just a matter of finding the right fight in a relatively aggressive area so that they can actually find that ability to go up onto the high ground. Boom's got oh, the blink. Get Picars. He's, got, he's got the Ravage. They do not see Picars though. Nighttime. Ooh, they might see him. Oh, there we Wars go. Punch. Nice shards block. Board is actually going to turn it around here with a Metamorphosis and a BKB. Ooh. And Puppy is going to attempt to flee, but they have themselves the bash there from the Swashbuckle. Is now catching Corden in here too. 
as the TP will not be able to TP away. The damage is too much. Finding two here on the side of Boom. This is what they needed. This is what we spoke about. And now Slatens trying to attempt to try and find more. The stolen swashbuckle was slowed down there by the defusal blade. Uh, that Nicely should done. Should blink Afu. away and Ooh. TP out. He tried to go for the basher uh, with the Agadibs there on the Pangolier. Surprised that the uh, the bash proc didn't go off on the TPing out Lashrak, but yeah, just the damage was way too much. And there we go. They just waited for a couple of those big cooldowns to be used. Not Ravage, but I mean, without the Lashrak, I'm just not sure they have the damage to be able to deal with this. They're going to need to try, though. Maybe realizing, yep, there we there go. There is. TB doesn't have the BKB. Out. Snowball there as well. Crystal is going to activate that cliff now to try and deal as much damage as he can but this boat room is having a major effect and chrysalis is practically tickling them at the moment as puppy just falls from the hands of the pangolier with the swashbuckle on shield crash and a buyback from puppy but they lose themselves the rubik the side is all food taken out and boom getting lower and lower chrysalis Still on this cliff here, resummoning that, but he's not able to output the damage due to the frostbite there. Boom will fall. That cliff will expire. Knight comes forward here. This is the post four, by the way. Luke just getting the kill there, helping to take down the Lashrak and the Drow. They take down Puppy there, two on the Tusk. GG is called in game two. We'll come here a lot faster with a 36k net worth at 31 minutes. Boom will clean up game two compared to game one. That wasn't a okay, cleanup. That was a mauling coming through from Boom. They were just clinical from minute one onwards. You know, being able to get a couple of those early kills, only giving up four of their own, limiting the amount of farm that Chrys Crystalis was able to get, putting a lot of attention onto Cord and realizing that he is the one that's going to be doing a lot of this tower damage and only one kill involvement for the Lashrak is not what you want out of this. And yeah, I, I also mentioned Puppy getting that Blink Dagger, allowing that initiation onto the correct targets was such a key thing for them to be able to uh you know crack open this game take towers recover some of this net worth they were just stopped at every opportunity by this combination between light uh knight and slatums but knight for mine mvp by far yeah i mean he didn't even die once and uh, nope. neither did slatums here on the pangolier even having a great game on pango 2 um dealing so much damage and so much impact here with the the swashbuckle did incredibly well and even with the the boat that came into effect here team secret tried to lay all that they could into the hands of boom but because of that rum effect and the fact that they were just way too farmed at the end of that scenario at that stage of the end of game two they were just not able to output any damage and they take the comfortable victory here on the on the side of boom esports so they get themselves a happy victory for them when a Crystal Maiden feels confident enough to, like, walk up to a Drow and Frostbite her while she's on that high ground vision, you know that, like, th there's just supreme confidence coming through from the side of Boom, that nothing's going to happen. We've got this heavy advantage. We've got so much tankiness across all of our heroes. Rum buff, even, like, when uh, Chrysalis had a couple of fights where he was able to stand and right-click. In that last one, Illich just popped the blade mail, and I, I saw Crystalis like, stop attack because he would have ended up killing himself as opposed to anyone else. That's how tanky they were. So, yeah, it's uh, another victory coming through for BB Esports, putting themselves 2-0 and zero now in terms of series. Just one series win away before they're able to qualify through to the group stage. Uh, not sure who they're actually going to be facing next, because we've only got uh, one other team that I think is 2-0. Actually, we don't have any. We, we don't have a result yet from the other side of the bracket, so... We'll have to wait and see how that one's going. Talon and uh, Enigma still going on, I believe. Yeah, it'll be intriguing to see how well Boom Esports will do because um, did they say that... Uh... Oh, no, what was it? Um, that was it. They they defeated uh, PSG Quest 2-1. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you say one of their games was pretty quick as well? Yep, really quick. So uh, they... They're, they're putting on a pretty great showing, are these boys? You know, we, we know they've got the individual skill, and it feels like, for whatever reason, teams are just letting them pick their comfort a lot of the time, right? Like, we saw Knight, of course, on his Rubik in that game number one. was fantastic. Illich on the Doom. Not exactly the most conventional pause three these days, but again, very, very comfortable with it. Uh, it just feels like three out of four, uh, three out of five heroes, excuse me, are just things that they're just happy to slap on the ground and go bang, bang, bang. They might not be core meta heroes but they make them work like we just saw with knight with that mvp muerta performance yeah i think all around they did 
extremely well. I mean, because he's he just proves why he's a, a good carry as well, actually able to farm up. And I got to give him props as well for that game one where he was actually able to stay ahead of the net worth beyond the Medusa, who's meant to actually accelerate in net worth, especially with the split shot. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, that will be series two covered as Boom Esports, they're able to get a 2-0. So quite a bit of 2-0s today. 2-0 versus Aurora versus versus Pro. 0 for Boom Esports versus Team Secret. But we will not be doing these next uh, best of threes, but you still have yourselves some great Dota to watch here. It is not the end yet. We've got ourselves Rest Farmers versus Blacklist International, and then Nouns versus OG for the final best of three on this B stream. I think we might have an interview coming. I'm not sure if it's going to be before or after a break, though. Um, maybe with the coach of Boom Esports, the one that throws together a lot of these strategies and... You know, it must be so easy as a coach, right, to be able to just have such individually skilled players to be able to just say, hey guys, here's the strategy, go and do your thing. But uh, we'll need to give him a second just to get hooked up to the interview system. Uh, we'll go to a short break and then we'll be back just in a couple of minutes with someone from Boom Esports. So catch you in a couple.
Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to Elite League. We're coming in for an interview with Vintage. Hello, hello. Hello, um, uh, Vintage is... Uh, I will be the trans translator for this call um, for Vintage. So... Because uh, he, he will be speaking Spanish. He doesn't understand quite well. Mm -hmm. My name is Mateus. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, so I, I guess the first question that um, I, I would like to pose to uh, Vintage, uh, first, uh, congratulations on getting a second best of three victory uh, within the Swiss stage. Um, regarding now that they have themselves two wins, they're going to obviously be going up against other teams that have won uh, two stages of the Swiss as well. Is there any team in particular that they are concerned about facing or are they confident? Within this Swiss stage. Uh, la primera cosa que he dicho fue eh, darte felicitaciones por las dos victorias de dos eh, de BO3 y que ahora van a enfrentar los equipos que también ganaron dos. Hay algún equipo que estás como preocupado para enfrentar o alguna que quieres enfrentar? No, o sea, no, no hay como que estamos esperando un equipo en específico simplemente estamos jugando cada serie como, como una final porque sabemos que el torneo es largo así que no estamos como con la mentalidad de esperar un rival sino simplemente hacer lo mejor que podamos cada serie ¿no? y es lo que nos está funcionando por ahora mm -hmm. uh, he said that he we not, right now we are not expecting or choosing any opponents uh, actually, we are playing every game as if it was the finals, because we know uh, the tournament is uh, is really long, and we need to be focused all the time. And it seems to be working for us, so we will keep on that. Between that, uh, just also to follow up on that question, um, you mentioned like mm -hmm. playing each game like it's the finals. How do you feel about like? How do you guys have a, a rest from that? Because it must be really mentally intense to be playing at that high intensity for, like you said, if you get all the way to the end, a full two week period. So what do you, as the coach, get the team to do that might uh, help them relax a little bit and, and take some downtime? El dijo que una cosa también es que si piensas que es como en cara con una final todos los juegos probablemente es bastante desgastante también la, como siempre tener tan focos y todo y qué, qué haces tú como coach para relajar un poco con la gente y que ayudarlos a focusear siempre así sin desgastar tanto creo que tenemos un ambiente muy muy bueno siempre estamos como haciendo bromas estamos como hablando del juego pero también estamos como Congeniamos muy bien, ¿no? Somos muy buenos amigos todos, entonces es que hemos aprendido a, a convivir y siempre estamos como un ambiente relajado por ahora, o sea, se está sintiendo bastante bien estar en esta bootcamp y no estamos sintiendo ninguna presión, sino que las cosas están fluyendo, entonces uh -huh. por ahora está siendo bastante fácil trabajar, poder dar las ideas, poder conversar de qué queremos hacer, porque todos están relajados, todos están tranquilos y está siendo incluso divertido, ¿no? Y como las partidas solamente son una, Al, al día, eh, pueden poner todo el foco en esa partida y luego como que tratar de despejar la mente, ¿no? Mm -hmm. uh, he said that right now we have a really good environment uh, as a team. We are all really good friends and we keep like uh, making jokes and having a really chill environment. So that makes everything easier. And also one good thing is that there is only one match per day, so that helps a lot, like really focusing for a short period and then uh, it's fine for for the rest of the day, etc. So right now we are not feeling a lot of pressure uh, and since the environment is good, everything is running smoothly. Cool. Oh, thanks very much for that. I really appreciate the Insight Vintage and it sounds like it's a, a good team to be a part of. Uh, congratulations again on the victory, bringing yourself two and zero. And uh, I'm looking forward to see who you play next and if you can advance on forward. So thank you very much for your time. 
eh, él te agradeció bastante por el tiempo y te desea mucha suerte para el próximo juego. Gracias. Uh, he said thank you, thank you very much. Easy. Always a pleasure not just to chat to the players, huh, Epi? It's uh, sometimes good to hear from the coach, either directly or indirectly, but, uh, you know, I, I, I took Spanish in year five and I understood a few of those words coming through, so that's always enjoyable to be able to, you know, get that, that little bit coming through. But uh, this is, I think, a roster that a lot of people will be able to root for, to cheer for, and, uh, yeah, they're playing some really exciting Dota right now, so I can't wait to see what the limit is for them because right now they're looking incredibly impressive but uh that's it for us for the night uh we've got two more series i believe on this stream the next one being rest farmers going up against blacklist another instance of uh, europe taking on southeast asia like we saw earlier today we'll see if it's going to be a different result or if uh you know western europe might come out on top this time so we will have to wait and see we'll go to a short break and then when we come back We'll have a new game ready for you, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody, here to the Elite League. We are now halfway through the day. We've gotten some upper bracket games, some lower bracket games of the Swiss stage completed, but we have a lot more Dota to be played. My name is Cryptic. I'm here with Zquixotics, and we've got another series about to kick off. Now, Rest Farmers versus Blacklist. We saw Blacklist yesterday. We didn't see Rest Farmers, but we've seen them in some qualifiers, so it mm -hmm. should be a fun series. Before we jump into that, Zach, how you feeling, man? I'm good. I'm ready for more Dota. Always ready for more Dota. And uh, so are these guys, they, they got started real quickly. Dude, yeah, they were not messing around. They're like, oh, uh, we know that's on follow by schedule, so we're just going to go. We're not going to say anything. We're just going to sneak on into a draft and start picking some heroes, which I, I honestly, I don't mind. I think it's a lot of these teams are kind of antsy. They, they've already been preparing. They, they want to get their games underway. So let's check out that draft. We've got already... A lot of heroes. <laughs> I, I was looking at my screen. I was like, yeah, we're on the second pick, but I forgot. Yeah, they started with us. So we are eight heroes into the draft. So let's just uh, real quick with just high, high overview. Tell me which draft is better. You got five seconds. Five seconds. All right. I see we have uh, the first pick, Timber. Always looking. Uh... It's too late. That's it. It's Dang. All right. My bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, I mean, I'd say uh, Rest Farmers looks pretty decent right now. It looks like they're picking an off laner or a mid here, and uh, they could use a little bit more initiation, but they got really solid team fight, some pretty good damage output, I would say. Uh, Disruptor is looking pretty good. His ult really strong versus many of these heroes, especially if you place it down. Like you're trying to blink Avalanche, like oops, silenced. You try to dive in Egg, oops, silenced. Uh, so that might uh, mess them up. A Viper last man. We're getting some spicy stuff. Hop into the draft into an immediate Viper last pick here, which will destroy a Primal Beast if they run it mid. But you can just swap it over to the off lane right now. I think. Yeah, that is a big deal. Um, I am actually kind of curious how they plan on doing this because sniper time. Like, yeah, it is like a very good viper game, but you have to try and dodge it. Maybe you just put the primal beast into the off lane versus the faceless void, which also doesn't feel good because time dilation, despite its nerf, is still pretty good, uh, especially when paired with time walk. So maybe they try to pick a better mid lane hero that try and shuts down the viper. And I think that's what they do here. So it looks like Wind Ranger, likely for Abed. Yeah, I, I like this. I think this makes a lot more sense. I think you, you definitely don't want to run the, the Primal Beast and Viper. <laughs> it might see yeah. us actually okay because you have so much damage to work with on the Primal Beast, but you're just better off like having a hero that isn't going to just spend a, a thousand gold on regen in the first ten minutes. Yeah, I was thinking like Primal Beast is actually one of the best for creep cutting in the mid lane and totally dodging a really bad matchup. So if they really wanted to do it, they could. But yeah, I think that Wind Ranger pick, uh, you just pop Wind Run anytime Viper's trying to go on you. And so what'll probably end up happening instead now is that uh, they'll probably both just focus on farming a lot and like jungling, hitting the timings. And uh, maybe at six, maybe we see kills, especially with rotations from the supports. But just the one-to-one, -one, it's pretty hard for Viper to kill Wind Ranger and Wind Ranger can maybe kill Viper, actually, but it, it it's not like the easiest because he's also a ranged hero, so he can kind of keep his distance well, make sure he heals up. Um, but I, I think that might favor the Wind Ranger because usually you pick Viper, you want to dominate the lane as a Viper, which is why it's a little surprising to see it picked up at the end when the opponents still have one more pick before before you or after you. Sorry. Yeah, I am curious how this is going to go. I, I am a little bit excited. Uh, we didn't really have much time at all to analyze what's going on here, but that is the nature of a rolling schedule. And I guess there were some issues with the uh, interview coming back. But also, just a big shout out to all of those South American Dota fans, because if you're not one, big, big shame on you. Big mistake. You guys are underestimating one of the strongest regions in the world, and I am very happy to see them doing well. But now... We can move on to some other regions. We've got SEA versus Western Europe here. And honestly, Blacklist looked okay yesterday. They had a pretty decent series, but uh, ended up losing 2-1 to one to OG. They dominated game number one, but OG came back with a vengeance in games 2-3. So I'm curious what they're going to be able to do here, if they can kind of rebound from yesterday's performance. 
Um, whereas Rest Farmer is a little bit of a more difficult day yesterday. Um, they ended up also losing 2 1 to Talon. So yeah, both yeah, teams both shown potential. Yeah, both teams definitely want to win here because if you end up at two losses, it's going to be pretty tough. You're going to have to win three series from there. Um, so not that anyone's out here, but it's it's uh, the pressure's on to to get a win here. Uh, so both teams are going to bring their best. Um, I think I do. I don't know, that last pick, Viper. So they ended up moving it to the off lane, Viper, and it's going to lane against Luna. The battle begins. So that's Timber mid. Yeah, Timber mid versus the Wind Ranger, which I don't know if I love that either. Okay, how do you let's let's talk it out. What do you what do you think? So I think yeah, Timber's the the main issue is when you're playing into a mid lane matchup, you typically rely on your whirling death to secure CS. This is gonna be a bizarre one for Xantic, so you in mid lane you typically just ignore Timber Chain. You'll go like two zero two. Um he's gonna end up having to spend a lot of money on regen here, but I think it's better for them to have the Viper into the Luna than it is necessarily for the Timber Saw. So I think at this at this point, they're rather just like have a slightly better off lane and try and slow down the Luna as opposed to having a better or maybe even mid lane. Mm -hmm. Cause like Timber yeah. Saw is still kind of farm. He's not gonna like shut down Wind Ranger. He might draw the lane a little bit, but as Wind Ranger gets levels, it's gonna hurt Zibe. Let's be a little bit careful here. A lot of damage coming out from this Grimstroke and this Disruptor. Hanskin, though, does have these Fire Spirits. Bobo, the nice two hero avalanche and a blood Ooh, double kill coming in. That is first blood. Zibe, but Zibe though, might die run instead. Run away from this Luna. That is not going to work. They can chase down Palace, though. He's got so many creeps on him. I think he's dead next. He has some body blocks yeah, here from Hanskin. Blocks. Is this Dude. a tri lane? Are we seeing the return tri of tri lane Dota? I love it. Bring back the tri lanes. I mean, yeah, they TP'd back down here on the Disruptor. So unless Tim's is going over, I mean, he is the position four, but... Wow, we're, do we're doing tri-lane Dota, man. Okay, so so real quick, in the top lane then, let's knock that out, because it's Primal Beast versus Faces Void. Because it's a one-on-one, -on -one, unlikely to really see kills. Both heroes will farm. When he goes on Faces, Faces will just time walk it off. Uh, Faces doesn't really have aggressive potential, but it'll get, do a little poking. So it'll be a lot of farm there. Mid lane, a lot of farm. Bottom lane, that try versus try. Oh, both these here are getting low. I think they'll be fine, though. I think, yeah, they're just going to split for the water runes. The try lane versus try lane, for those of you that haven't seen in a while, this can be very volatile. Um, because once you kind of get ahead, you can force pulls and fight over it because you're, you're stronger. So... Whoever takes a, a quick lead in the tri, tri lane versus tri lane often can hold that. Uh, but it's very easy to mess up, especially because teams don't practice it very much anymore. It's very true. It's a, it's kind of like a forgotten art. But if you were to tell me which heroes would win in a tri lane, I would absolutely tell you it's going to be the one with a uh, Phoenix and a Viper. <laughs> Those heroes do a ridiculous amount of damage, and having just a little bit of a con of control from the Tiny's Avalanche, it's a strong lane. I like what Rest Farmers are doing here. This is really cool. Yeah, the other scary thing is that um, Grimstroke, Grimstroke, you would actually think is like kind of good at this stuff. But he he prefers someone who can like run in, which there were only range here. So actually, he's come up here. I wonder. I guess this is the end of the tri lane. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. I think at this point they need to kind of start securing Shad's lane. It's not fun into the primal beast, as we can clearly see. Seventeen and eight to the ten and five. So yeah, they're like, okay, we've uh, we've hurt the Luna a little bit, but we're also hurting our Faceless Void quite a bit. I'm gonna play here at bottom. Viper did get to level three. That is gonna make him a lot stronger now with that two points and poison attack. 
should make this lane a little annoying and they'll have to be really careful of the toss back from tiny putting you out of position if you get to five poison attacks i mean that's so much damage you're probably dead so they'll have to be a little careful on the side of blacklist here but with that tri lane over uh, i mean it ended up pretty even i'd say for this bottom lane yeah not bad uh, i mean you have a little bit of extra gold from the kills right for rest mm -hmm. farmers but outside of that, I, I don't think you're really too worried. Mid lane, Timber is actually doing surprisingly well. Again, you kind of ignore Timber Chain early because you're in the mid lane anyway. So those extra points, that 202 where you start, having that a little bit of extra um, regen and armor against the Wind Ranger does help, despite the fact that it's been so heavily nerfed. Ooh, very nice grab here in the top lane. The silence onto the uh, Phoenix. You talked about this. Very difficult to deal with. Um, this game yeah, that the uh the silence from Grimstroke would be pretty good especially versus like phoenix and tiny have very slow attack speeds timber also pretty slow attack speed so they're gonna hate dealing with that i wouldn't be surprised to see him get some early points in it you get it to like level three for the to increase the amount of attacks it takes to destroy it um but inkswell is pretty good this game too so yeah i'm kind of curious we'll see he's level three right now one more level and uh we'll yeah. see what he decides to go for this is really hard for Tim's. Uh, there is, yeah, no chance he gets out of this. <laughs> this is level two fire spirit. It's one of the best abilities to get. To. It's similar to like uh, the poison attack almost, right? It scales so fast with just like a single point or a single extra point in there. And yeah, it's a uh, very good sustained damage. I'm surprised it's a hero we don't see as much just because it does have so much damage in the lane, but the certain Phoenix? teams, yeah, it's like certain teams love playing around it, uh, specifically nouns, right? Like Fly loves the hero, but mm -hmm. uh, other teams uh, outside of the Chinese region maybe don't put really much attention to it. Yeah, I, I think some teams really do like it and they'll prioritize it. Um, so maybe maybe Rest Farmers is one of them now. They are a recently formed squad, so maybe still trying to figure out their ideal identity. Ooh, Timber Chain a little off, but it doesn't matter. He's still. At the end of the haste rune, just walks in and finishes up the job. Yeah, Ooh, Oskin really looking nice. for a wisdom rune steal too. This would be really big. If he dies for it, I think it's fine. Radiant he's gonna. Primal's he's gonna try to not here for this. He's walking back to base. Like Grimstroke's looking for Hanskin. He's like, he's here somewhere. He sees. It's gonna be a click war. Nah, Ooh, the timing just a little off. It's really difficult Ooh. with the Inkswell, too. Tims? I think he should have had that, actually. He definitely he had that stun, too far. but... Bottom line, we're going to see a dive onto Palos. Gabby comes in a huge trample. You're going to kill the Luna, but it will cost you both. Very nice rotation from the Primal Beast. Zibe died first, so... He, like... I guess I killed the Luna, but he would have loved to get that experience because if you can pick up an early lead on Viper in the levels, it helps out your laning stage a lot. And I mean, we are running, running towards the end of the laning stage now, but um, picking up, like, for example, your ultimate before the enemy carry has it, I mean, that's an easy follow-up kill. All right, top lane. Looking for Tim's again, maybe, but... It's again, it's it's not hard for Tim's to just ink swell and try and keep them back, but Hanskin can just keep chasing you. These spells have such low cooldown. Nice power shot though. That chips a lot of his HP. Yeah, power shot actually does so much damage if it doesn't hit any other creeps along the way. Oh man, if he had hit that one, that'd be dead for sure. I think Phoenix yeah. might be okay, but Grimstroke is definitely gonna like keep giving chase. But dive should be up before he dies. Oh! Unless another power shot! Wow, who didn't expect, expect the third chase? one. <laughs> <laughs> surely, surely he's going back to the lane now, right? Yeah, I, actually, actually, I'm a little surprised by that too. Abed just kept going. He's like, yeah, I'll just keep throwing out these power shots. It pays off though. Picks up another kill. Yeah. He's at the top of the net worth. Oh, faceless voids coming through the portal. MJZ's being like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Spend another 75 mana, nerd. <laughs> Abed mid lane. We'll just take down Hanskin with a focus fire. Okay. Definitely underestimating how much damage this Wind Ranger can do, but she barely manages to dodge out some of the damage here from Atlantic. These power shots are so much damage. I, oh, like, 
Did, I feel like this hero's power shot got buffed, like, stealth somehow, like, five or six times. And every time I look at the damage on this ability, it's substantially more than I ever think it is. Uh-oh. Gabby the rotation. He gets the pulverize. That should be a dead Timbersaw glimpse. I mean, not onto the faceless void, but that Chrono's not bash. doing a whole lot. He needs another hit. He does finally. Nice avalanche and a Viper strike out from Zibe. They will be able to grab Gabby as well. So it ends up being a pretty worthwhile rotation to the mid lane here from Rest Farmers. Especially if they can put some pressure on this mid tower. Right? They have about 20 seconds before those heroes respawn. They don't have the most tower damage in the world, so uh, I don't know if they can finish it off here, especially with this 4 to 5. They'll get a little bit of damage in. Or maybe they'll get another kill instead. Chasing Tim's over here. Disruptor going to keep everyone else at bay, though, so I think Shad will just back off here. A little bit careful. You are in a weird spot here on the side of Rest Farmers, but I guess this Viper, I mean, level 7, his poison attacks do a lot of damage. Abed with that focus fire. Shad going to try and block him off. They get the vision for the glimpse. That's what they want. Viper strike out onto the Wind Ranger. A toss back. They've got Tim's. Here comes Gabby, though, once again on the Primal Beast. Doing some serious work, so it's a one-for-one one trade. Very worth it for the side of Blacklist right now as the Luna now looking to get active. Pulverize out from Gabby. Do we have any clips? We do not. She's holding the point to actually did Zantic. We'll just timber chain to safety, but a glitch pulls him right back in. Well timed from MJZ. And we got some action-packed game here. Nine to nine already at 11 minutes. Yeah, what the heck? Yeah. I mean, very close, um, though. Uh, from I mean, guys, it all starts with the tri-lane, right? Tons of blood in the bottom lane, and uh, everyone else is still actually doing fairly decent on net worth. Yeah, it's pretty even so far. I'm trying to decide how who that favors. I, I feel like Viper wanted to... You usually want a Viper pick to get... To, like, really wreck a matchup, so... Maybe the fact that it's even, you're a little sad about that with the Viper. But Viper scales better than he used to. Uh, especially, I mean, it's a long way off. But the level 25 talent making him universal is pretty insane. So nowadays, you don't feel too bad if you go relatively late in a Viper game. Plus, his ultimate being a break versus a Luna and even a Primal Beast. Like, both of those pretty good. Speaking of that Luna, out. there's yeah, the that's ultimate. That's a really nice kill. Viper Strike plus the Egg, more than enough damage. Hanskin will be the credited to kill it. Meanwhile, mid lane, they will do a little bit of an exchange. They do manage to take down Pablo, a support for the safe lane, though. Pretty happy if you're res farmers. You do also force out Static Storm. Yeah, I think you're pretty happy with that trade. Carry Luna for support, Tiny. Right around now, Tiny's just working on his blink, really, so... Is under attack. You don't you don't like Pretty need him off. in your place. Yeah, he's just gonna be like farming. Dyer's top tower has fallen. I'm curious to see how Hanskin's gonna play this Phoenix, because right now he's actually skipped Sunray entirely, just maxing out Fire Spirits, which Fire Spirits is actually fairly common because you can farm very fast on this, so maybe he's just mm -hmm. playing a little bit greedier on this hero. I thought he would get, instead of two points to dive, you usually see like yeah. one point in Sunray, but hmm, maybe think it's too easy to cancel, or maybe wanting the lower cooldown on the the Q. You're yeah, not really maybe. sure. I thought this game, it might be pretty good. There's some tanky heroes, plus the evasion chance is like kind of cool. Like even a yeah, small amount of evasion onto Wind Ranger using Focus Fire is pretty big. Uh, mid Wind Rangers don't. They tend to get a good amount of stats before going for potentially the Javelin. Um, so they can miss until... I mean, even with the Javelin, you can miss, but it, it just helps. Yeah. And it stacks, too. Like, even if you're hitting someone for only, like, a, a second or two, you know, it's it's a little bit. But as you get the higher levels of Sunray, and you've gotten, like, a three-second Sunray, four-second Sunray onto, like, the Lunar or the Wind Ranger, it becomes pretty problematic. They're smoking through here. Get some good vision into the enemy triangle. Timbersaw in the mid lane would be a fantastic kill if they can get it. And it's Antic. 
Just hiding in the trees for now. He, but not yeah, suspicious he is enough. suspicious, but yep, yeah, not suspicious enough. Walks right into the static storm, the kinetic field, as well as the ink swell. Will hold him down long enough for Abed to finish the job. Very, very nice rotation. That maelstrom just making its way through the armor from uh, Timbersaw, plus the static storm, just keeping them trapped in there. Pretty easy kill for them. They'll be very happy with that. And it looks like they might be rotating bot to try to take a tower off of that. Try to set up down here. All right. There's your sunray that we were talking about. Um, right now you have a faceless void who is definitely bottom of the course by a significant margin. Zibe, yeah, you're not getting out of this one. Yeah, you, you can do what you can to the primal beast, but he's even got a blade mail to add insult to injury. Oh boy, that's rough. Ooh, immediate smoke. They're going to keep going. They didn't even use Primal Beast ult, so they're going to look top to see if they can get a carry kill potentially. Hanskin, finish Just off. Dies. They're looking for faces in... void, maybe. Yeah, you're right. Oh, Pablo in a good spot to break this. Does have Avalanche, but gets caught from the silence from the Grimstroke. And Tiny, not a very good hero at removing the Phantom's Embrace. Still didn't have to use his ultimate. They could keep looking if they wanted to. But Chad does now know that they're up here. He's going to make his way up to the top jungle. And he is at the bottom of the cores. Not too far off from, you know, like the other carry. As far back as he could be, considering his farming speed's worse than Luna. But, oh, mid lane. Boy. Zantic tried to get cheeky, and he's going to die for it. They will actually get a decent amount of damage here into the Primal Beast, and this is a fantastic kill if they can get it. A nice Chrono, but he got the Wind Run off. You've got to swing back the other way. Egg is down. Avalanche toss trying to keep it alive, but it's not enough. They managed to finish the job. Shad glimpsed right Glimps back again. into the enemy team. And guess what? Abed's ready and waiting. Shackle shot. Not going to connect, but unnecessary. It ends up being a four for one for the side of Blacklist, just pushing their advantage. Rest Farmers is entering this period where they kind of need to hang on. Because I think the later this goes, Faceless Void is going to be pretty strong here. He'll pick up um, some some True Strike, either in the form of like a Mjolnir or Monkey King Bar to deal with the Wind Ranger. And he'll have the Chronosphere, which is just very good in the late game, but also really strong versus the Primal Beast who can't really get in there. So the later this goes, the better, but they're hitting a pretty strong timing on Blacklist Rivalry here, uh, especially with this most recent winning fight. They are now a couple thousand ahead on pretty much every core, and they have no real reason to slow down. Yep, 7,000 ahead now. So since that team fight, they managed to uh, increase their net worth by another two to three K. It's, it's definitely getting rough uh, for rest farmers, unless you find like a big chrono into egg and i think that combo is pretty much always scary but well did pablo get his blink is that what we're smoking up for he's got wow yeah he did oh the avalanche it connects they jump in they're trying to finish the job soulbind doesn't manage to latch there is going to be a nice static storm can he get out of here on this timber saw it doesn't look like it they were just slightly too far away And like that, they're gonna sacrifice Zibe as well. Res Farmer is feeling antsy, it seems. They will lose three for this disruptor. I think they were hoping that was a, a lone disruptor, which he kind of was, but because they had to reach so far, it took a little extra time to kill him, gave space for everyone else to get there. And yeah, I mean, at that point, once it's an even fight in numbers, I mean, it's gonna go the way of Blacklist rivalry. Yeah, he, it's a max range avalanche, so like they spend some time getting in, still manage to get the ult off. And then Soulbind and the Silence is just so good versus Timbersaw Tiny. You just cannot Timber Chain away. It takes forever to kill the, the Silence at that point. Yeah, the fight's over. Yeah, Luna is just taking off as well. She hasn't really struggled at all to like find net worth. I mean, obviously the lane started a little bit rough for her, but as soon as the tri lane ended and she was just back to farming, it was super easy for her to play the lane. 
And Primal Beast, we saw he was top of the net worth, absolutely dominating the whole time in that 1v1 matchup versus the Faceless Void. So Shad, the one who's really suffered the most, but... Yeah, looking we'll back see. on it, I think Rest Farmers was hoping to get more out of that tri lane because Luna has natural farming through Glaives and her well, her both her passives, whereas Faces Void needs to finish like a Mask of Madness, Maelstrom, and then with Time Walk he becomes like a very fast farmer, but it takes time to get there. So I, I think they were hoping to pick up a couple kills, get Viper a lead to just keep shutting down this Luna, and they found like some kills. But then it wasn't quite enough. Later they try to dive. It's not fast enough. Primal Beast rotates in, helps get some return kills, right? So they like, just didn't get quite enough to actually slow down the Luna. And I mean, here she is after being like a few hundred behind. Not a huge deal. She's now top of net worth. Faces Void has just recently kind of finished up all those farming items. So we'll start seeing him speed up a bit more. But I mean, he's going to have to try to catch up to a Luna. And that's that's pretty tough. She can farm pretty much just as fast as he can. And she just wants to fight, like she finishes a BKB, right? So this is this is just going to be Blacklist wanting to run at Rest Farmers. Pretty much forever here. Hanskin's going to get caught on the bottom side. Glimpse pulls him back, but they actually find the Timber Saw as well. Now Zibe going to get caught here from Pulverize, but a really nice Sunray to try and keep him alive. Hanskin is actually just dying to a good Yules to dodge out that damage, but Chrono. Only onto the Grimstroke, the egg committed as well. So Tim's, he's not even gonna die. Actually, he tanks Back all of full. the damage, just walks away, and now they're gonna lose not only the Timber Saw but Zibe on this Viper as well. I mean, Faces Void is trying to kill Grimstroke. He's got like 2,000 more gold. So this is a very tanky Grimstroke compared to the damage output that Shad has. I mean, from here, what Blacklist will probably do, start clearing out some of these towers, get Roche, and you just need to try to delay as much as you can on Rest Farmers. Like, if you can prevent the gold lead from growing and you drag this out to 30 to 40 minutes, like, you're going to feel a lot better, but they don't have the best heroes with the safest wave clear. Like, it's kind of the Timbersaw ult. Um, that's that's kind of it. So... It is not going to be easy. It's very scary versus the Disruptor as well, who, like, you try to step up, clear the wave, you might get Glimpse back, killed, and that's your wave clear. For example... Yeah, there's just no way out of this one for him. They do get, you know, uh, an ability to try and jump with the Tiny. Uh, Gabby's there to cut him off. There's just nowhere safe, unfortunately. And I I'm actually wondering in that fight, it looks like Tim's got, like, two massive heals, and he has Guardian Greaves. So, it, like, you can't, like lock combining them and then pop mech then guardians right like the, the heal is on cooldown is it not yeah yeah oh Ooh, Hanskin? Hanskin? Uh, <laughs> accidentally cancels sunray early and looks like palos will grab the kill anyway Radiance top tower is under a little hard to see i thought maybe there was a tree hiding him but unfortunately for him there is not i think i saw someone pinging roche i think they realized Hey guys, I think even if they chrono all of us and egg, I don't know. I think we could do it. <laughs> that is probably the one way you can try to come back. A massive wombo combo, but Blacklist just won't commit all five heroes in there, of course. They will they'll have people spread out and prevent that. And I think unless you get a, a huge chronosphere into egg, I don't think you can take any kind of team fight here. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I mean, you'd have to hit like a Dream Chrono, and to be honest, I don't think you need more than the Primal Beast and the Luna in the pit. They are actually pinging forward. They have a good ward. They're going to try and get themselves a pick off before maybe going for the Roshan, but... Shadow Pablo, they're going to back off. Right they're going give it up. Yeah, so, Luna's strong enough. You can... I, I think it would be okay to give Luna this this Aegis and have her start hitting the buildings and just stand behind her. Yeah, I'm not really sure how you would kill her twice because you probably have to Chrono for the first kill. And after that, she respawns, pops BKB, and how do you get the second kill? I don't know.
Timbersaw's got his BKB queued up, and I mean, he just like has to have it soon. Pulverize comes out. Nice, Ooh, nice timber, timber chain, chain timing. Very well played from Xantic there. This is the really so, hard part for them. Well, you're going to see if they can escape here. Yeah, Hans, he's stuck. Um, they are trying to do their best to Crete Cup, split the map as much as possible. Hey, we know they're doing Roche, push out every other lane we can. Uh, the challenging part, though, is that because the early game was rough, there's still so many Tier 1 towers, and with the Twin Gates, it's easy for Blacklist to get around to the different parts of the map, and with a Disruptor, right, if you show for just too long, and then it's like, okay, it's time to escape, you get glimpsed back, right, you're just dead from there, unless you're willing to pop, like, a BKB, which you don't currently have because you're trying to catch up and you're poor, so it's... It's really rough right now. Of course, Timber Chain we just saw there did get a very nice Timber Chain. So uh, that's like one counterplay they have if they happen to get that off. Uh, it's not easy to do consistently, though. Yeah, I mean, if the Kinetic Field was there just slightly faster, he doesn't make it out, right? So. Chad spotted. I believe this is a Disruptor coming in. Funny looking disruptor. He's doing his best. Yeah, he's, it's a very. I didn't know his dinosaur mount got so big. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there's just almost nowhere to go, right? Like, he's trying to dodge out this Prowl Beast. He's going to eventually get caught by the Pulverize. And he's going to be dead for 40 seconds now. And. I don't know. It, it just. You do have to continue to stall this one out. If you can prevent them from getting to your high ground with an Aegis, it's fantastic. But. It's not an easy task by any means. Palace has his butterfly on the way. That's really that's really nice. A lot of times you'll see Lunas go for like a conda here, but I think recognizing how ahead they are. Ooh, it's Antic caught again. I don't think he's getting out of this one. Yeah, that stun lasts so long. It may look funny to people watching, but like he has to do this, right? If you don't do this and you try to fight here, this is not gonna go well either. So he has to try to break things up. And he knows how dangerous it is for him and that he's likely to die, but he has to try, hope he gets out sometimes, and that's the only way he can really drag this out. Toss Very back good Avatar's back. He BKB'd this. He's gonna respawn right into an egg. Shad. Oh, Shad died. Oh boy, Very can Paulos there. get out? Wait, Shad died? The power shot, dude. It's been doing so much this whole game. If he had lived and gotten the chrono on the respawn, that might have actually been it. That might have been the defense they needed. But uh, just the, the pulverize and the power shot finishes them off. And Palace is now going to respawn with no problems. They're not going to go for the straight win. They're just going to get two sets here. The the safer play, I think it's fine. Oh, man. I, with that, I, I think that might... It's going to be pretty tough for rest farmer from here. <laughs> Try it again. Why not? For another toss back. Viper Strike does hit. Sunray from Hans get doing work, but it's these Guardian Greaves just keeping them plenty healthy. And every single time they go for this play, they're losing so much. They're going to have to buy back on the Tiny. You lose your Viper once again. Shad was not there for Chrono. They just smoke up. Blacklist, no fear at all. No need to have any fear. They are 23k up at 27 minutes. And the BKB is almost up on the Luna. She's going to go again here in a moment. Run it down this bottom lane. I think if they want to really play it safe, they can just take this tier 2 and then just hold the map. Get vision around the outside base of rest farmers and just, you know, continue to get pickoffs. Don't let them farm too much. Wait for the next Roche. I don't think you have to do that. I think you actually could continue to push high ground if you wanted. Uh, I'd say maybe the top lane where you've already taken the tower. Don't don't need to do this risk here on the bottom where you have to like break the tower again. Yeah. Um, but you're, you're I mean, 23,000 is a lot of money at this stage. So I, I think you're strong enough to do this without Roche. It just depends how, how safe they want to play it. Yeah, I agree. I think you have a pretty difficult time trying to defend here um you do you do always have like these tossbacks and into theoretically chronosphere if he's not dying to a primal beast walking in but uh we'll see if they can actually make that combination happen i would like them to play around their nighttime bonus vision as they do manage to find a bkb inkswell and pablo is gonna go down 
They should get the tier two and the tormentor here, just adding insult to injury. But uh, as I was saying, I was like, you have the bonus nighttime vision from the Luna. I liked your idea of like playing for pickoffs, just trapping them in their base and not allowing them to, to really get out. Who grabs the shard? It goes to the Grimstroke. Even better. Second and another set. pause. I will say the toss back was that was probably their best bet, and it's easiest to do that from the from the mid lane. It is the closest, like the the tower and the barracks are the closest uh, to the tier fours. It's hard to do that kind of defense from the side lanes. So. It, the thing is, the game plan hasn't even changed. It's just harder, right? It's still, we still have to try to drag it out. We still have to try to push the lanes out as fast as we can now into mega creeps. Uh, we're losing more of the map. Oh, they're having some real technical problems over there on Blacklist. Headsets, you, discords. You guys are pretty ahead. I don't think you need any of that. I, I think you can keep going in silence. I think Mike you've got issue. this. <laughs> just sign it, you know? I'm sure they've learned sign language. <laughs> Just back to pings and chat wheels. <laughs> just draw the line down mid. Like, Luna, just A-click. I think we're okay. Look, there's even an Amplify damage. Pick that up. A-click down. We'll stand behind you. I think that's all we got to do, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we're not like those other games that disable, you know, chat by default and prevent any sort of communication <laughs> with their allies. So you could definitely rely on the chat wheel and pings. Absolutely. Yeah, but here at the highest level, I'm sure they want it to work. So a good pause, rest farmers, waiting it out. Good sport, even though they're on the back foot. They're also required to, but I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, here they are. They're waiting for that pickoff we talked about. They're just hanging out, seeing if someone steps out just a little too far. They've got a decent war in their jungle there, which I am surprised about. Uh, I mean, Blacklist have been playing bottom for a little while, especially as they're going for the tier two tower and the Tormentor. So they haven't had time to sweep to the top side of the jungle and deward that cliff, but that is a, a ward that rest farmers may be able to capitalize on if they happen to get a lucky initiation. For the most part, I don't think they want to take any fight outside the base, but if they see like multiple heroes from Blacklist and like a support walking over to check it, they might be able to get like a pick off, right? So mm -hmm. it is something to, to remember or keep an eye on rather. But looks like Blacklist back to farming. At this point, two minutes to the next potential Roche spawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they're playing it safe. We did mention earlier they're down. Both these teams have lost their first series, so uh, wanted to get that win for sure. No risks necessary. Okay, Gabby's now dewarding this, and with that, that makes the the vision of rest farmers really dark. I, I think they only have observers, like literally at the edge of their base, and nothing else out on the map. And Xantic still yeah. has to do it, right? He still has to try to split push as much as he can. <gasps> Power shot. I think scouted him. Okay, maybe not. Maybe he's at the very edge of that. It looks like he's okay. Um, they still have to attempt this lane splitting. They just don't have the vision for it, right? And it's that is what is so hard for rest farmers right now. It looks easier from our perspective because we get to see everything, but they have to just play it by feel. Like, I mean, they disappeared five seconds ago. They could be here. They could have teleported. They could be running. And Xantic losing half oh, his health just to no, the Luna. No, he can't. Yeah, it's like he has to BKB. He's yeah. got. That's the one thing that like Grimstroke and Timber saw is such a uh, a problem. Well. Pablo also in trouble, just gets sold by Abed in the bottom line here. Gabby playing aggressive, wants to find him, gets on top of Zibe, does have the pulverize available, and he will finally throw it as the BKB Viper Strike comes out. He's trying to finish the job. Do they have the damage? They do, just barely. Oh no. I gotta say, stepping back. Thinking about the draft, this Viper last pick. I think it was kind of cool because they had Viper Timber, right? And so they were saying like, oh, we can flex this. These two heroes make mid lane pretty miserable. But I think there's a bit of an overlap with we make melee heroes miserable, right? And a lot of ranged heroes have some potential there. 
So I wonder if there is a different hero they could have picked. I know we jumped into the draft like <laughs> pretty late, so with very little time pick. to absorb what was happening. <laughs> um, yeah. But this Wind Ranger pick just worked out so well for them. Like it, it dodges both of these lane dominators potentially, right? Like the Timber and the Viper yeah. wanting to crush the lanes. She, she not, not only does she like get by, like I think she's actually pretty good <laughs> into these heroes. Um, so. A bit of overlap there. Maybe there was another hero that could have, like, hey, Timber crushes the melee heroes, and then this hero will do really well versus ranged heroes, right? And then it's like, now we've got both bases covered. What do you pick last? Or you pick something more generic, like, okay, we just need straightforward initiation. Oh, no way, Shad. no way, Shad. No way. Zero. A single it's, oh, it's not even shackle. done. He's looking for more. Oh god, that hurts. That like hurts the soul if you're this uh, faceless void. You can't buy back, right? So if you buy back, you're kind of just you might as well GG legitimately. Uh, I I don't know I what you're. Same either way. They're just gonna go straight tier four, so you do have to buy, buy back, back, and you have to hit the egg of your life. But well. More pauses. Guys, I'm you, you do not need your Discord right now. <laughs> <laughs> Luna can just A click here. She can A click and she she'll be fine. <laughs> this is a hands off the keyboard moment. I'm serious. Yeah. There are thirty two thousand ahead. Oh, we'll see. Here it comes. Here's buyback. He's buyback. going for an aggressive TP onto the far side. Shad. Look, I mean, you need to hit a huge chrono. Pablo apparently has an Aghanim Scepter. I don't know when that happened, but that's kind of cool. There it is. The egg, the Chrono Sphere gets the BKB. Can they bring down the Luna even once? <gasps> Come on, man! Lagging. Oh, no. Oh, no. Look, they're very apologetic. They realize how this feels. <laughs> they realize they've had to pause a lot. Um, okay, so... Let me just crunch some numbers here really quick. I got to find my calculator and find out if this Luna is going to live or die. Satanic on I mean, cooldown, BKB spent, yeah, she Guardian Grief spent. She might actually die here. They have no I damage think the left, rest though. of the team might clean up. Right? Paulos! Yeah, he goes down, but there's your Ag Static Storm from the Disruptor. Managed to catch. The Timber Saw as well. He gets the BKP off, trying to just make his way up to the high ground. He actually might. Gleipnir is not going to finish the job. Wow. And, well, Abed gets Wait, him with focus off. a power shot. Nicely done. And there's the GG. All right. GG, sorry. They they know what happened, guys. They know it was a, a little awkward for everyone with the pauses, but what can you do? Uh, clean win from Blacklist, despite all that. I, I think a lot of it comes from the lading stages. I'm... I'm very curious about that tri lane. I want to see more tri lanes because I think we've been in this 2 1 2 meta for quite a while, but it is pretty tricky. And I, I didn't see who initiated the tri lane. They both seem committed to it, uh, but I, I feel like they they got through it on Blacklist. They did not have, like, they didn't fall too far behind from that lane. Shad, uh, Shad was having a rough time in the top lane so that when. Tim's eventually goes over, Grimstroke plus the Primal Beast, who's already having a good time, made for a lot of pressure up there, and they found some kills after the Trilane broke down. So it just felt like Blacklist was pretty happy the whole time. Yeah, I think once the, the lanes broke apart and we kind of just saw how bad that safe lane was going for the Faceless Void, I was pretty worried. Because um, Primal Beast with a good start is actually... I think one of the reasons we see this hero banned out first phase from a lot of teams, if you don't beat the Primal Beast in the lane, if you don't slow him down and have a favorable matchup, he takes over the entire early game because the amount of damage that like Onslaught Trample will do to all of these heroes is pretty overwhelming. And you don't have the Disruptor. You don't have the Shadow Demon. These heroes that actually prevent him from becoming very strong. If you can't glimpse him away, you can't lock the dog in the cage, you can't you know uh uh demonic purge him or d disrupt him like you need to have an uh, a tool like that to deal with the primal beast and maybe they thought the viper strike was gonna be that tool but he still will onslaught onto you and kill you so it's uh yeah i think the lane just fell apart and he just kind of took over the entire game from there yeah i think pablo also didn't have 
Like, he didn't have the start the team needed him to have. It's not a flame for the player. I mean, just like, just what the draft requires, right? A Viper, Timber saw, your face is always going to be farming, your other support's a Phoenix. So, Pablo needed to have a good game to be the initiation for his team. And I believe this is like the first time we saw the blink. It's like 17 minutes, right? That's 17 minutes. You can't really easily make plays if you are behind. If your Timbersaw and Viper cannot just run it down the lanes, pressure the towers, if you're trying to find kills, it's really tough when Tiny just has to walk up and toss someone back. So, yeah, I think once the lanes did not pan out, it was really tough. And I think this is probably their best bet, but here, Chad gets 100 to 0 by the stun into like a power shot from over here. It was so close. He was right at the edge of being able to time walk off. And then maybe there's a Chronosphere there that gets the second kill on the Luna. And they wouldn't have had any saves for her at that point. Uh, so, they also just wouldn't lose their the point. Yeah, yeah. So. Maybe that was the chance right there, but with that, I think that was, yeah. from here, Blacklist, they took it nice and slow, but it, it never felt they were at risk of losing this game. Yeah, everything looked very clean from them. Uh, honestly, Abed on the mid -wind Ranger, he's always kind of a star of the show, I think. Like, very stable, very straightforward lane from him. He wasn't really winning the CS battle early, but he was more than winning the, the kind of, like, pressure being applied on the map. and. This is another thing where, like, Disruptor just seems like an absurd support. He's, like, up there with Shadow Demon, in my opinion, in terms of, like, heroes that you probably need to ban in the first phase. If you are not planning on picking it yourself, you might need to remove it. Uh, we didn't get to see the draft, unfortunately. We missed, like, pretty much the the whole thing up to until ninth pick. So I didn't really see what the beginning bans were or which heroes got picked first. We'll get to see that this next time, and maybe that makes a big difference, Being uh, seeing you know what the approach is going to be from rest farmers, but maybe they just change it up and they don't let those heroes through at all. Yeah, I think Primal Beast will also be highly contested. Uh, you and I have seen Ed Zantic play that hero a lot. Uh, this has looked really good for them. Blacklist also really liked Primal Beast, so I expect uh, whichever team has first pick, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they grab it. It looked great this game, but... You know, the other team may not want you to have it after you know seeing a performance like that. You're like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna ban it out. You're not gonna get Primal Beast, but it, it yeah. does look really good. Yeah, we'll have to see. We've got more Dota coming up, but for now we're gonna go to a short break. Apparently, there are some issues with the Dota servers, so we'll have to see. It's not obviously the 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 pauses and stuff are a little bit of a, a meme, but yeah, they are very warranted. Both teams were lagging. We're hearing from Pablo as well that he was having some issues. So the rest farm so it's much all lag. Sorted out. So much lag, yeah. guys. That was, that was <laughs> way too much. That game. <laughs> that explains the toss back clearly. No. Um, We'll see. Hopefully it's resolved in game two. We're going to go to a short break, everyone. We'll be back. We'll see you in just a bit.
What's up, everybody? Welcome back here to the Elite League. We've got a game about to begin. Now, this time we're going to be jumping into the beginning of the draft, which is fantastic. So we'll kind of see what happened in game one. We were doing a little bit of research after the game, trying to like break down where the draft may have gone wrong for Res Farmers. I think we kind of pinpointed some of the main issues, so we'll see how they kind of approach draft number two. Um, but uh, Zach, high, high level overview. Um, what was like the the main problem that they had that game? I I feel like the supporting like they opened with the timber saw, which I think was fine. But some of the bands they picked, or they they had what they banned, knowing that they were going to pick timber saw, I think didn't quite line up as well, and it let timber saw enter this point where with a strong game, timber saw looks nuts. But when he's kind of countered by multiple, like just supports, like even just Grimstroke and Disruptor make Timbersaw's life so hard, that then makes everything else hard. Um, now at the end of it, into the game, I, I think Blacklist played the lanes pretty well. Uh, their bottom lane was like the bit of a hard part there because it was the tri lane, but they kind of got through it. And in the meantime, the mid lane was going perfectly fine for the Wind Ranger versus the Timber. And then uh, Primal Beast was having a great time versus the Faces Void. And from there, they made use of those strengths. Gabby had a bunch of great rotations that just felt like they took control of the game from there. So coming into game two now, uh, we do have the draft ready to show uh, at any point here. We are seeing some adjustments. So we see a... Uh, you guys are going to see this in a moment. Centaur first phase pick this time and a life stealer counter. Yeah, now these were both actually banned out last game in in phase one, and we were talking about this uh, that typically you you don't actually want to ban Centaur unless you see a Mars ban because it's one of these things that like Centaur is a hero that is very good but is so heavily countered by the existence of a Mars that it kind of creates this like weird circle circular effect in this off lane hero pool where it's like well I want to pick the Mars but Mars is countered by Timbersaw and I want to pick Timbersaw but he's kind of countered by Mars and Centaur and, and so you kind of have to like ban a couple pick what's left um and I like the Centaur pick uh, this game from from Blacklist because right before they pick it, they banned the Mars. And so it leaves it into a pretty good position here. So now you feel safe with this hero. Stampede is not going to be, you know, heavily countered by just an arena locking your whole team in place. Um, Shad does get his Lifestealer, one of his most played heroes recently, and it is into a Centaur lane. So he should be very happy. He has... Obviously, the first couple levels is a little bit difficult. Just playing around just stomp and double edge damage is pretty overwhelming. But as you get to levels like 3, 4, 5, and so on, uh, Life Store should never have to leave the lane. Um, so I like that idea. The response, though, of Bane, pretty interesting. We can talk about some more bands in a moment, but your BKB piercing Fiend's Grip. Like, this is a very cool response to a Life Stealer. We haven't really seen it all. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty cool because. Obviously, Life Stealer will do fine versus the Centaur, um, and it, it's like people know that, but usually you don't pick your, your carry so early because oh, it can be countered. But many of the hardest counters to Life Stealer, such as the Shadow Demon, uh, were removed already, making his life much easier. Which is why Rest Farmers felt like they could pick Life Stealer so early. Bane, though, he has been. He's like at the edge. Some teams are experimenting with him because they think he's good enough. Other teams are like, hey, he's like not quite there. So I'm really excited to see this uh, because Bane essentially does something similar to Shadow Demon, which is like, oh, here's this life stealer. No, you know, he's like, I'm going to fiends grip you and then I'm going to nightmare you and I'm going to uh, enfeeble you. Um, and currently with the life stealer bat rider, there's not a lot of stuns right now to, to counter that. So rest farmers does have three picks here. I do think they need to get something for that. But uh, whatever you pick, I mean, that Nightmare into Arrow combo, it's going to be there. Arrow into Stomp combo is going to be there. You're probably not killing a Lifestealer with that because uh, once he has Rage, it's pretty hard to land that. But uh, whatever support ends up in this lane with the Centaur and I assume position five, uh, or sorry, position four Marana, I suppose. I, I saw some people try position four Bane. I don't think I love it. Uh, I guess we'll see, though. Brewmaster, Crystal Maiden. This is actually so sick. 
We've seen the Batrider Brew matchup a lot. It's a very strong lineup. And now Crystal Maiden into the safe lane to help the Lifestealer is pretty great. He just needs a little bit of mana regen to be able to spam that rage mm -hmm. whenever it's necessary. Um, and she has great ability to hold the Centaur back. Uh, hold the Marana back so you're not likely to hit these like stomp arrow combos at least on a life stealer but it does mean she is also the one who has to be careful about her own positioning if yeah, she gets caught sure. by a stomp into arrow she's definitely dead there is no way <laughs> she's gonna survive <laughs> the amount of damage that comes out for those two heroes yeah so we'll we'll have to keep our eyes on that lane i think there's gonna be a lot of fighting but same thing kind of happens with the Batrider Brew lane, right? You Cinder Brew a hero, you Flame Break them, instantly procs the Cinder Brew, knocks them into the Brewmaster, and you're just going to start taking a ton of damage. So we'll see how they approach it. Pango picked up mid lane for Abed. I mean, the hero, people say, quote unquote, nerfed in the recent patch. You and I say either equal or buffed in most games. Uh, so I, I, I feel like this hero is very good and likely to, uh, have a pretty good game here. No real ways of countering him out. They'll just immediately ban the puck. Yeah. I thought we might see them pick their carry here because you already know the carry to carry matchup, carry versus off lane, but they don't have last pick here. So I think they're prioritizing a very stable mid laner such as Pango, Agreed. and then you can potentially ban out some of the worst matchups. It does mean you might lose a couple carries that you could have picked, uh, such as the Weaver now getting banned out by Rest Farmers, which we saw have a very good performance the other day. Uh, I believe it was Tomato playing Tomato, against Broom, yeah. Brewmaster. Did very well in that lane. It's a it's an old classic counter. There are some others, I think. So uh, Blacklist must have a couple in mind that they chose to prioritize the pango I, I do think it's quite nice because I, I think rest farmers really needs a mid laner that has stuns or silences which i think is part of why we see a puck ban here because you now have fiends grip to deal with if you want to kill pango you also need to uh control him up prevent the roll which roots will not do right you also have a stampede just running you away which roots kind of help deal with but i mean if you have a dispel then right you just pop that get away as the game goes on so I think Pango's a cool pick here uh, because of that. He's just like another hero now. It's like, okay, if we if we commit Lasso to stop the Bane Fiend's Grip, then like Pango's just like running around freely doing whatever he wants. Um, so it's kind of like putting this pressure that this last pick really needs to uh, deal with quite a lot of this. I'm actually not sure what they can pick. Maybe like a Void Spirit with an Agnims. But that's just yeah, a silence that, actually... that can be dispelled. Um, that's true yeah i mean for carries i am gonna be shocked if we don't see something like a okay i was gonna say maybe faceless void removed but they end up getting rid of the naga siren so they're a little bit more worried about that I, i'm wondering if there's something from the mid lane that i'm not seeing that is really good at dealing with the faceless void because puck is already banned and the pango is already on the side of blacklist so i'm not sure what their plan is in case a faceless void comes out maybe they just think the brewmaster batrider lane is good enough to prevent a faceless void from being pickable because it is a lot of just solid damage over time so we can't really time walk off much here but batrider is considered one of or like if you think about the general batrider counters in terms of carries Mm -hmm. that can play okay to him in lane faceless void has always been one of those heroes it's like faceless void slark pl life stealer those are your four picks that play well into a bat rider lane traditionally now it's changed a little bit over the years but still dire team pick storm yeah, spirit storm. man that's just good at helping prevent them finding the bane i think that makes a lot of sense Radiant you could go for something similar if you really want to help find the bane for something like a Zeus, if you just want overwhelming damage and scouting potential, but Brewmaster doesn't really build like the blink daggers, right? He's, he goes for Radiance, right? Like he, he kind of greeds out plays for his own items and goes for a Radiance build. We'll see if he changes it. Maybe that he has a life stealer, but how do you feel about the Luna here? I'm a little surprised about it. Like, I think it'll be okay in the lane. Uh, especially because if the lane does go poorly, you can go jungle pretty easily. So like that part's fine. And we did just see Palace have a, a great game on it. Into the life dealers a little surprising because I feel like with Infest and Rage, you can dodge out like Eclipse. You can dodge out uh, 
Like, uh, she pops her shard. She's taking reduced damage, doing a bunch to melee heroes. You just, like, pop inside of her, dodge all that. Um, I'm a little surprised about that. But if you believe your team can kind of, like, slow down the life stealer, and you're just trying to hit that same powerful tempo of, be like, you four do things, and I jungle, I come out, and I A-click down the lane, right? Uh, Luna, Luna does that really well. So I guess that's what they're going for. This last pick, Ember... He's pretty mobile. There's actually not that many easy stuns. Like there are stuns, but Ember's pretty mobile and can dodge quite a lot of these. Uh, so, in that sense, I think it's pretty nice. The matchup into Pango also works. I think it's a little bit skill matchup because you can't Flame Guard can't be broken by Pango at least until he has uh, his ultimate. Uh, but it also Pango can then just like directly damage you with all his physical damage. So there is a bit of a skill matchup there. Uh, it'll be fun to see how that goes. Later on, the mobility, the roots will be pretty useful. But again, it's roots. So I'm a little worried if they need something like... I, I feel like we could see some pretty good Fiends grips in this game. That is kind of where I was going to or transition slash wonder about is... Bane can be very scary if he's allowed to just actually use his spells the the only thing that balances bane is that the they're like all of his spells are like relatively easy to interrupt but this game i'm like looking at the uh, side of rest farmers you don't have a lot of options right like uh mm -hmm. fiend's grip should be no, pretty reliable the only thing i can think of is brewmaster getting split off but if brewmaster is the one that gets <laughs> fiend's grip this game did they just pause JK? <laughs> oh my god. That's great. That's oh, great. Oh, I love Pablo. That's good stuff. It's good to know like the players have the uh they recognize the realities that playing with lag sucks, but it's also like, you know, you poke fun at it a bit. It's good to see them in good spirits. Everyone having a laugh there. Yeah, that's good stuff. All but, right. Uh, all right. First, I like it first bounties looks like the wards uh nothing too crazy it looks like zibe is gonna go for the urn potentially but we'll have to see he's got like extra circlets queued up instead of the bracers and typically if you've got like the extra circlet it's because you're building into the urn so we'll have to see it's not a bad urn game now that i look at it you know, you're against Centaur. Uh, Luna obviously loves to play around the lifesteal that you're going to get from, like, Mask of Madness. She will have a Manta eventually, but still dangerous. Shad needs to be careful. A giant horseman is walking at him, has to back away. All right, they will just take down the range creep. Wait, wait, wait. Hello, Cleona, hello. Crystal Maiden's uh, going to body block the enemy lane so that it pulls a little bit out in front of the tower. That's smart. Otherwise, it's going to push, right? You have to make sure to try and clear these creeps pretty quickly as he has no range creep to aggro to. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a good call, but you kind of see like it's happening anyways. Uh, but there's only so much you can do about this kind of stuff. So we'll have to... Uh... Yeah, look at that. Tim's already blocking, unblocking his hard camp. And Crystal Maiden is not the kind of hero who really wants to have to go body block. It puts her in a pretty dangerous spot. Top Shad's lane in the meantime. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shad's like, I'll you help, help you, out. <laughs> <laughs> Carry players. You got to help your supports do this stuff. It's too risky. Otherwise, they feed, and you're like, man, my supports are so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I can't believe my support's feeding my lane. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, your camps aren't blocked. Or you're... On skin though, okay. I know we just said something about support speeding the lane, but <laughs> not his fault, okay? We did talk about the fact that there is a, a lot of damage coming out from a Centaur Marana lane. He doesn't even use the arrow, I don't think. This is just, you know, being at a massive move speed disadvantage. Yeah, she took Crystal Nova to try to secure range creep since Lifesteer can't really do that, but it means no, no route to uh, save her. Uh, quickly, we'll take a look at the other lanes. Uh, mid lane, like we said, a bit of a skill matchup here. I think it'll be okay uh, for now, it looks like. Maybe at Xanta getting a little bit ahead with the early points in the Flame Shield. But as you get more levels on Pango, the Q does start ramping up, and I think he'll he'll balance out after that. 
I feel like the last couple times we've seen this matchup, it has Top lane, been Palos getting favored. really low. Oh, there's the blood grenade on him as well. They're trying to just toggle back and forth here with the nightmare. Oh my god. <laughs> they've been on they've been asleep for a while. Uh I mean this is where things get a little bit scary, right? You have your level twos on the brewmaster and the bat rider. It's a very easy cinder brew into a flame break every single time. The thunderclap, is it in range? Oh, it's just not, just barely. Dude, that was very close. They got to play for this Lotus here in just a moment, but it's so easy to continue this harassment, and they've got to send out a lot more regen here. Salve up. Are they actually afraid to go for the Lotus? Really? Okay. I mean, no I think it's not worth rider, it so. because of the yeah the the Bane can just nightmare whoever goes potentially. And there's a, a huge wave, wave coming in, so you don't really want to risk dying and then losing all of this. Uh, the point I was making earlier, though, I feel like the last couple times we've seen this Ember versus Pango matchup in the mid lane, it has been Ember favored. And there was one game where, like, the Pango got first blood and started with just a Blightstone for free and had, like, half his bottle at the start. And that's when it looked really good for the Pangolier. He kind of overperformed the lane, but it looks like on an even start, not bad for its antic. Top, they're gonna go again. Just the classic yeah. Cinder Brew into spell damage. Gonna run down Palos here, and gonna look at MJZ. I don't think they got the damage now that Cinder Brew's down, but I mean, you're perfectly happy with just killing the Luna. Yeah. Two points Firefly is the big difference, right? Literally doubling in damage. So, absolutely worth it. The level three from both these heroes is pretty scary. Yeah, with that, Zubay's finished around. his urn. So he is going for the urn. Okay, that's I figured. I was like, if he's got three circlets queued up, he had to go for urn. So, I like this build. A little bit different from the traditional double bracer radiance, but maybe like Pablo's gonna be leaving the lane soon and wants to go stack play a little bit greedier, and the urn does help Zibe kind of sustain uh, or have his own kill threat. Well, they're gonna go for MJZ here once again. No mana for the Firefly though. Zibe just gonna try and beat him down. Pablo will get tossed back. He needs a couple of auto attacks. He still doesn't have mana for that spell, and MJZ's gonna survive. Maybe a little I bit mean, forced top, not having enough mana. And yeah. then I'm a little confused about the Nightmare switch. I feel like they intentionally passed it over, but I thought it was about to fade. So I definitely like at that like point, it, right? Yeah, I think at that point you just let it fade. Maybe he wanted to die. He's going to TP mid, fill up at Xantic's bottle here, who Tim's rotated over to help out the Pango. They didn't get a kill, but they put some pressure on a Xantic. So a bit of a bottle refill here. That's, uh, that's what I was doing. I was, uh, I knew exactly where I was going to die. I'm dying for top. my mid laner. Yeah, it was all part of the plan. They're looking back top at Palos. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them turn around pretty soon as six minutes is uh, getting real close. Crystal Maiden's kind of in the area. Is she going to take it? Looks like maybe Adzantic's coming for that bounty rune. He might. He, I mean, he'd like to play for the six minute power rune as well. And the Crystal Maiden is your nightmare out from MJZ. He's going to take a decent amount of damage. Like, wait a minute, he woke up. Gets the bottle. Who's here? He's so close to level six, but oh, just that barely damage. too short. But yeah, that damage, four stick charges and one bottle charge left. MJZ dies. Luckily for Blacklist, the regen rune is bottom. Otherwise, it's Xantic. One of it will take a lot of advantage of that. He's going to teleport home with his newly acquired level six off that kill. So... Uh, he would have loved to have that regen rune, but I I'm sure he's pretty happy considering he was so low. He ended up with a kill and now full resources. Pango will probably hang on to this regen rune until he hits six. That way he can use it, pop it. Oh, maybe he's going to need it here, actually. Okay, he hit six just in time. He should be okay. Yeah, they can't buy too much. Bottom lane, Gabby and Tims are just standing next to the tower trying to kind of put some fear into this life stealer but he's uh he's he's doing all right again not a hero that gets pushed out of lane easily gabby also really farmed on the offlane centaur he has not been pressured out at all 
Top lane, though, we're going to see Brewmaster continue to try and just put some damage into this Luna. The three points of the Cinder Brew actually doing a ridiculous amount of damage. He does have Wand. He does have a Salve. So we'll just back off, Salve up, go for a reset. Bottom lane, Gabby getting real low. Uh, Stampede, Stampede, though, he's got the trouble. level six, and they're going to go for a Hanskin as well. Pablo with a rotation and real. Who's Dude, killing the who? Wait a minute. Yeah, who is nightmare killing pass? who, actually? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Pablo onto MJZ now. The Bane does have a Brain Sap Shad here with the Fiend's Grip. Also has an Infest to play around, so they should be able to chase him. They do finish the job. Now pinging Gabby like, hey, do you want to dive here? Because I'm down to clown. He was telling Pablo to dive. He's like, die for me. I'll go get him. He's like, no, no, no. Let's just far. Let's just far. He's like, are you sure, though? Like, Are you sure about slow. that? <laughs> Are you sure you won't die for me? Yeah, in nice meantime, dive in the mid lane, lane dive. Oh, yeah, it's Antic is kill. really strong right now. Level seven. They're gonna bring in MDZ Hanskin here as well. Actually, has a lot of damage into Hobbit. Does he get the chains? He does. The root just in time to cancel that uh, rolling thunder. And now with the haste rune, Bane. Pretty sad as his TP to the mid lane is gonna just result in another death. He just goes right back to base. Dude, it's Antic actually showing up big here in game number two. Middle tower is under attack. Haste rune is so good on Ember because otherwise that remnant does not make it in time, right? Because it travels based on your movement speed. That's a great point. Something it's uh, like you don't think about too much until you get hit by a ton of slows and you see how slow your remnant's going. You're like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's, it's determined by my speed. <laughs> getting like demonic purged by a shadow demon and you're like walking as fast as your remnant that's going out and you're like uh <laughs> yeah definitely it's uh it's not a very feels good moment for the ember players shad doing the classic walk at you strategy here with the life stealer and forces the stampede classic stuff they're gonna see uh, tims the... now at yeah. Zan, they're gonna grab a second kill here yeah nice slight meanwhile on the top river they do find bat rider so a little bit of an exchange set up from the nightmare so kills from both sides of the map it is eight to four 1000 gold lead for rest farmer still a very close game a much closer than game one and gabby here in a lot of trouble does not have any mana on crystal maiden though so there is no route to follow that one up they will put pressure onto the tier one though Stanta getting real active getting all over the map Blacklist going to try to clear out their stacks real quick, kind of recognizing the pressure coming out. They don't want any of this stolen, so just going to clear it off real quick. Get towards that defusal timing. Secures an amplified damage rune for himself. He might hold on to this until he has the defusal, and then we could see a, a play come out from them. Maybe like a Marana ult plus a smoke. Yeah, I could see that. Try to line that up. Although, Tim's because of his deaths, he's uh, still a little bit away from level 6. He says no, pops it, and he's like, I want to farm Ancients. This is better. That's fair, it's an Ancient stack. Luna's like, wait, wasn't that my Ancient stack? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is my Fusal Blade. belongs to Pango. Yeah. The thing is, Pango doesn't even need the Amplified Damage Rune to get kills once he has the Defusal, so it's actually a fair call. Just like, I'll just finish the stack with this, and then like, I'll get the kill anyways. And with that stack, we see him at the top of the net worth, despite a little bit of a... He was having some struggles as the, some rotations came in, but in the end, both mid laners feel like pretty happy with what they got from the mid lane. Level 6 on the Bane, so we can see in the bottom lane, Shad, he's not wanting to contest the lane by himself. They are bringing in some friends, though. Hanskin here, as well as the Brewmaster, and they actually see the Brew TP, so... They know there is no more of that happening. Shad, you could infest the catapult. No, they're just going to deny the tower instead. So a lot more tower gold going the side of the Radiance uh, as they've gotten both bottom and top towers now. And only the one denied tower for Blacklist. Makes difference in the early game for sure. Smoke up. Into the Moonlight Shadow. Hanskin is standing right under a ward sentry. So if he happens to dodge this out, it'd be great for him. But Lifestealer. 
Yeah, so that's mm. Dude, he, they, he is... He has to be aware of the smoke. This is such a good rotation out. Stampede comes out. Chad gets the rage off, but there's the Fiend's grip immediately. The arrow to follow it up. They've got so many stuns. Chad, the Wait. armor toggle. He gets the infest. No way. Abed, though, with the Rolling Thunder trying to get out of here, doesn't have it. I cannot believe he survived that. He missed the first shackle, or the the swashbuckle i is that what it was i don't know what happened but yeah he was uh the first swashbuckle missed i'm pretty sure which would have finished off that kill and then i think there might have been a Let's little bit here. of overlap in spells oh he did miss to, like, completely nuke it yeah which is surprising because I, I, they were stampeding in for it so i feel like it should just be fiend's grip initiation into everything else but maybe they... yeah I, I don't know what happened guys but they're going to pay a hefty price for that mistake. Yeah, those uh, those types of mistakes like seriously cost you a lot. Because that is your first Fiend's Grip. It's now on cooldown for another minute. And they're going to try and just dive Palos in the top lane. I mean, they've got everything they need. Split hasn't really even been committed. And yeah, that's a much more successful gank. As now you're going to remove done, from the field. And they're still looking for more. The Bane on the run here. Not looking like it's going to have a good time against this Brewmaster as the Cyclone comes out. And it's only a matter of time. More uh, earn charges for this Brewmaster, which he's not going for the Vessel, right? He's going straight for that Radiance, and he has his Relic now. This guy is enormous. Yeah, I think he picked Abed up. on the bottom side. Oh, the mana burn actually prevents him from getting that lasso off. And Abed with his Rolling Thunder are going to do some serious work. Infest actually saving Pablo and Hanskin uh, from the defusal. He's going to try and just TP out. That's not going to come through in time. He's shackled up. Abed, he does at least find a kill. Stampede and Moonlight Shadow should get him to safety. It was actually a bait to line everyone up. <laughs> I mean, true. All right, I mean, I definitely thought he was going to die for that TP being messed up. So getting a kill and getting away. Many of these stampedes being used a bit defensively, but that's okay. Uh, it is, Palos has been mostly spending his time farming. They did make one good rotation up there to kill him. And he's sad about that, but, well, he, he is at the lowest of the net worth. I don't know. I, I thought he would be a little higher. I guess that kill, he has died twice. Once in the lane and now just the uh, the death we saw right before this. Okay, so I gotta ask you something here. We are almost to the Radiance on the Brewmaster. He's 800 gold away. Lifestealer also has a Radiance queued up. Double Radiance. Um, Is it worth running double Radiance, or should he be looking for something like the Maelstrom build? Uh, like, does that make a difference? Sometimes it's okay when you consider that they obviously don't overlap but they are pretty good items individually for the heroes. And like, if you play different parts of the map and play different parts of the fight, then you're, it's like, it's sort of okay. That is true. Um, they are in very different parts of the fight. Yeah, so it might be fine. I'm trying to think of like another item he could get instead. It's just mail. I don't know. It's I think another farming item, right? For yeah, so I, Radiance bottom I feel like it'll be, Okay, I, it is a bit of overlap, but Chad, bottom lane. There's the nightmare. Again, guys. But are they gonna learn their lesson? Arrow connects. They're like, okay, let's not dive this guy a second time. We'll let it slide mid lane. It's Antic. Gonna get the shackles here. Do they have the blink lasso? They do, but he's not quite close enough. And the fiend's grip just comes out onto the ember and said, "Great TP from MJZ and his Antic." Gets a lot of damage, but the lasso into the freezing field. It's going to get canceled. The Rolling Thunder just destroying both of these heroes. Abed with a double kill. Zibbe, he wants to come in. Slide chains onto Tim's. Taking a lot of damage here. Does he have the ability to finish him off? It doesn't look like it's a mech completed at the exact perfect time. He makes it out. 
And Zibbe needs to be careful. That mana burn will eventually cause him some serious issues if he doesn't get the bruise split off. And he's going to have to commit it. Now, figuring out who he's going to go for. Looking at the Luna, this would be a fantastic target. But, dude, the swash... He just dies buckle. instantly. I actually don't understand how this swashbuckle gets buffed like this. That is so much damage. They're going to look for the Pango here once again. But the whole team is ready to go. It's three hero stomp from Gabby. Pablo falling incredibly low in trouble. Trying to get away. Not going to be able to. Another swashbuckle. Finish off in Xantic. He's got to find Abed here. He gets him on the shackles. Finally, as an infest from the Lifestealer. Now looking for MJZ here. He needs to be able to finish these guys off. Gets himself a double kill. Now looking for Tim's. The last leap spent. Do you have one more slight change? Catches him on the high ground. And Xantic's gonna go for it. The mech is there. Luna with the Eclipse just gets the kill instead. It's Xantic. Gonna regret that one. All right, you know, to be fair though, Ed Zantic got out of like three sticky situations in a row in that fight, so. That's true. He had to get, he had to be brought down eventually. It's only fair. That was a long fight, man. That was really back and forth. And I, I'm not even sure who came out ahead. I think, I think Rest Farmers a bit in the end. I think they picked up like one or two extra kills, and that was even before the Life Stealer Radiance. Which, thanks to those kills, and he did live. Uh, he's he's real close. So we are in fact double Radiance. Is it a mistake or not? I don't know, but I think it'll be okay. I'm sure these fine. guys are communicating. Yeah. I think based on what you're saying, it does make sense. Like, Brewmaster, he's running his boys around on the back side of the fight, trying to find, you know, whatever he can. So the Radiance Burn isn't necessarily always going to be hitting the same target that the Life Stealer is hitting. And it does give him some necessary evasion against someone like Aluna. So it's all right, I think. I think he made some good points. I do my best. Super even game, actually. We've been sitting at pretty much exactly 1k net worth or less for almost the entire game. Fiend's Grip out from Bane immediately. The lasso there to cancel it, but it's Zantic getting chain stunned down. It's going to be a one for one trade. He needs to get to safety. Oh, His remnant. Is perfect. He didn't throw the remnant out. Uh, okay. Well, Brewmaster split coming off cooldown in one second. Would have been a very different fight otherwise. But yeah. Really good stuff from Abed. He has been playing this Pango exceptionally well. He now has an Aghanim Scepter, so. That means the damage is only going to get stronger. That means he can almost solo kill these Brew splits until... Okay, he did get another level, so actually they are a good chunk tankier. But it's still... He's got to be careful. Between the Glaives and the Swashbuckles, there's a lot of damage on the Brewlings. Yeah, I'd be trying to TP out of here. No lasso. He's out. Amazing what you'll find laying around. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. All right, Hastrun for the Ember. Not a bad find. I think they see Palos. They do, and he's walking right off. into the enemy team. This is definitely just a death. There, there's nothing you can do at this point. You're like, all right, guys, I got a little bit too far onto the enemy side but if you get Xantic, it might be worth it you know taking down this ember spirit once again obviously yeah losing the luna not great but at least you're getting something else on the other side of the map yeah they're gonna smoke up too fiend's grip is up in 20 see what they can find they don't even strictly need it just because like any stun into arrow will probably be a kill Saw the life stealer. See if they manage to grab him. Beautiful stomp out from Gabby into the Fiend's grip. Perfectly executed. Dude, MJZ, this is what we're talking about, man. This Bane versus the life stealer is pretty overwhelming if you cannot stop this Fiend's grip. So. It ends up being really good. They, yeah, you lost the Luna a moment ago, but taking the Life Stealer off the map now is fantastic. Pablo Blink gets broken out from Tim's here. He's on the run, but no Firefly for three seconds. He's running into a Bane. He has a Blink. Looks like he's going to make it out. All right. Oh, nice. That creep saved him. Arrow got Yeah, it did the arrow. Arrow hit the Ancient Creep. Top lane. Abed, under a ward. 
Hanskin nearby as well. He does have roll up though, so I don't think he's too afraid yet. Instant freezing field gets canceled as the rolling thunder comes through from Abed. It's Zantic. Kind of just dodge this one out as MJZ is here as well. Oh, Zip. Uh oh, oh no, he is stuck. Can he get out? We'll see. Tries to swashbuckle away, but the brewmaster gets him. Abed. Unfortunate circumstances. That's like the nightmare of all Pango players. MJZ gets thrown into the air, brought back down. He had such a flawless game on the Pango and. Those like tiny little areas on the map can be so problematic. Yeah, that's pretty unfortunate for him. There's no way he dies there without being stuck like that. He took so much damage while being stuck, and then by the time he has the the jump again, roll was over. So pretty unlucky for him. Rest farmer's gonna be pretty happy with that though. Man, it's been so back and forth. It's really coming down to these fights, but so far we haven't seen uh, like the full five on five. It's been they, there was a, a smaller one earlier. Oh wait, mid lane at Zantic. That Very nice arrow. find once again. Yeah, it, it's the thing is right. You can just play the Marana behind this Centaur all the time, and you're almost just guaranteed to find pickoffs if there's no response, like no save coming through, right? Which you're not really going to have many options for a save. It's either like Pablo with a good flame break to push the enemies away or an infest out from the life stealer. And yeah, he will get an Aghanim Scepter eventually, but it's pretty far off. I also want to point out Zibe is just farming all the ancient stacks himself. He's just like, yeah, those are for me, right, guys? My you know what's better than two Radiances on a team? Radiances plus Mantas. There's going to be so much Radiance burn. It is going to make Nightmare difficult to use as a saving tool. I'm gonna kill Pablo down here. I wonder. They could do Roche. Level 18 Luna. Yeah, they're getting started. They can fight this if they know and they all come over, but I don't think they do. Oh. Well, yeah, I think uh, without the Bat Rider, you're missing some pretty like necessary pickoff. It's one of your two stuns, so. <laughs> Uh, without that, I don't know how you can contest the Rose shot on Gabby here. Maybe needs to be a little bit careful. Cinderbrute, they actually just didn't get the Frostbite? Okay, never mind, he's out. Scan comes out, a little bit too late. Paulus will grab the Aegis, and with this, Blacklist. Now looking very good. Is able to just disengage from the Roche pit here. Yeah, not quite fast enough here. Otherwise, I think you can just send in, like, Manta Illusions from the Brewmaster and then maybe pop Primal Split to delay until Batrider's up. But they might push further and try to catch catch them here at the Tormentor. This is a which big they're find. They are very low. Pablo up. comes in. He's wanted the Luna, but only finds the Bane. And, and even then, well. the Stampede to safety? Oh, they no. Nothing. You had Yule. And he gets he Arrowed. Lasso. Uh, insult to injury yeah i mean he was looking for the luna and didn't want to commit for the bane ends up getting nothing for his troubles i, mean, I guess yeah, i get the a little bit two, of but... processing there he's like oh i'm right next to night to the bane oh wait that's not a very good one i'd rather get the luna but wait if i get luna nightmare's just gonna save her so, so in the end doesn't like doesn't react like split instant fast enough and everyone just gets out i guess you got stampede all right, so maybe you can continue to look, but it is into Aegis now, so not the easiest. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this, I, this is a much better game here, right, that we have. Like, game one was, I think, a little bit of an outdraft and then just pretty flawless execution from Blacklist. Right now, much more life out of Rest Farmer. Zibe will walk right into Palos, does see him. And it's Zantic also getting some vision of MJZ up onto the high ground. He needs to be careful though. If he gets caught out, he's in so much trouble. Pablo goes in looking for the lasso, but an immediate BKB. There's your Fiend's grip onto the life stealer. There's no way to save him. He's gonna need a little bit of help. Nice freezing field from Hanskin. Palos afraid to go back in because of this. Centaur War Runner. Will be the first fall to end this fight. Looking for MJZ now as the urn, plus the burn damage from this Ember Spirit. Just a little bit too much. The rest of Blacklist will get out. I am surprised Shad makes it through there, but this might just be the Sanj status resistance buff making a big difference. It's only level one Fiend Grip. 
yeah, it helped him out a ton there. And I thought they might have more damage. I think Palace, he had to pop the BKB like a little early. And I think just does not quite have enough damage yet. Because uh, he did have to get the BKB. So he has like Mask, Manta, BKB. And then he has a Crystalis. But it's just like not quite enough damage on this fairly tanky life stealer. So he ends up getting out. And I don't know. With that... You still have the Aegis, so you could, like, technically try to find the fights, but... I think it was also awkward, because, like, Blacklist was kind of on the low ground into the high ground, so it was just, like, kind of a weird spot. All right, we'll see what they can do. This game still incredibly close. Both teams, I still think, have uh, the ability to take the fights. It just comes down to that initiation, right? If if that last fight, if, if your Luna's not the one popping the BKB first, probably very different, like you were saying. Tim's does finish up Guardian Greaves going Pipe. MJZ has his Aether Lens going Glimmer Cape. Any substantial Tier 3 items coming out? Defiant Shell for the Brewmaster is quite nice. And a Vindicator's Axe for the Lifestealer. That's about as good of a find you could get. Uh, Gabby. Well, he's like, okay, not letting you get that Wisdom Rune. Lasso will come out. Centaur maybe baiting, though, as the rest of the team's coming through. There's the Stampede trying to turn around onto the Batrider. Abed looking to try and just grab a Zantic, and they do the Infest trying to just bring down this Bane. It will come through, but they get the kill onto the Ember Spirit in time. Now Pango trying to get away, but Hanskin finishes the job. Apollo's doing some serious work, though, as they're now looking for Gabby. The Vision... It's there. Shad needs to just try and finish burning down the centaur. Needs a couple more seconds to do so, but he dodged. Dude, it's just Moonlight Shadow. They cannot find their targets. Classic strategy of just go in his and walk away, man. It's too good. It's too good even at the pro level. Dude, the fact that Gabby starts that fight, gets lassoed, pulled in, and lives is wild and paulos i mean this is the difference right he gets to press bkb walk in and kill everyone arrow comes out not in time he's gonna turn around onto gabby it's gonna be a lot of damage but the guardian greaves are there the status resistance actually just saved his life right there that arrow was so close to hitting in time uh, that fight went pretty well for blacklist they managed to kill ember without him being able to do anything he adds a good amount of damage and he went mage slayer so he would have reduced the enemy's damage by a lot if he'd managed to get anything off but tp'ing in uh pango rolled up right on top of him and then arrow actually connected instead uh and it just meant he was chain stunned into the fiend's grip didn't get to do anything that fight yeah that's huge yeah, the fiend's grip if it's not interrupted we can see is a huge problem and i think brewmaster his goal is he's got to save cyclone for this bane like he has to find him but they're also lacking vision right if moonlight shadows out in these fights and they can't scout the the bane it's going to be seriously problematic and to make it actually so much easier for the bane he finds a psychic headband too so even more cast range added on to this uh fiend's grip nightmare everything yeah these nighttime fights were also really good for them because not only you have the the invis from Marana, but you had the vision advantage from the Luna. So now it's daytime. They might have an easier time finding fights. But we are getting to that point that we were worried about, which is, do we have ways to stop Fiend's grip? And currently, it's either the the primal split pandas doing the work, like Pablo has to either blink lasso or you uh, use the Yules, or you have to kill the Bane, which means you're focusing the position five, and the other heroes are just free to go around. Uh, on the other hand, Pango has... Oh, actually, he was working on a basher. I thought he... Is it on the way? No, I think he's pivoted. Never mind. I was going to say he's getting a basher, which is going to give him a lot of control for this life stealer. Who wants to just, like, run around, do things? So if you don't fiends grip the life stealer, maybe you're just, like, bashing him up, running away. Uh, but it looks like the Octarine instead will be the play. I think that makes sense, too. I mean, it's really... Having these abilities on such low cooldown are so good. Yeah, and he's got the money for it, so why not? Radiant are scanning. They are smoked up as an infested life stealer is leading the charge with the Wildwing Ripper. So an interesting little potential play that could be made from a hurricane. Uh, Centaur makes it through the gate just barely as the Batrider blinks up there to try and scout him out. 
They're looking for him. They know he's going for the wave. I'm gonna move It'd quickly though. They're about to run into the next creep wave. I think it's a already scouted them. didn't scout Pablo, but it will see CM and the Life Stealer. Another Radiance Burn hit in time. They actually get him! Just barely the slight chains out from Atlantic and the lasso coming through as well. Gabby will get tossed in from Eels, but the rest of the team's coming. We've seen this before. You go onto the Centaur, and it might just be a bait, a big freezing field. The Beans, Beans Grip's caught the life stealer. Does manage to get canceled, but Paulus with the BKB just shredding the side of Res Farmers as Zibe is forced to run away. And they're just gonna keep the Earth Panda alive. This is exactly what you need to do. He's got to find the Cyclone. He's got to get this Palos away from him. Zibe, will he make it in time? He does. Nicely done. Gabby comes in, does get the hoof stomp. And now, Brewmaster, you're not getting out of this one. Surrounded by the side of Blacklist. Try well, maybe he can. Or is he? Evasion, near haste, move speed. He's doing his best, but... Yeah, there's uh, quite a bit of damage coming out from that Lucent Beam. 11k gold lead now from Blacklist. Really the first substantial gold lead of the game. It has been so close up until that fight. I feel like they need a Lotus. Like instead of this Vlad on the Brewmaster, I think maybe working towards a Lotus or someone else. Because I this Life Stealer is just getting controlled up in these fights. It's part of the reason why he got the Radiance. But still, you don't want to be chased on the whole fight. And that's what's happening to him. He's just not getting to attack. So either they need to take the fights a little differently. Currently, they keep initiating on Gabby, who's extremely tanky. And at first, I thought maybe Gabby stuck around too long. But once again, it's a bait. Stampedes the rest of his team in. Stampedes himself out. It's at another like choke point. So the roll is just hitting everybody. Luna Eclipse. No creeps nearby to eat any of it. And all these fights just feel like... I think Rest Farmers has the damage if they can actually do the damage. And so far, they're just being controlled up. I feel like their damage is very lacking into the Centaur. They can kill almost anything else, but now that Centaur also has a Lotus, this guy's never dying. Like, actually, Shad does not have the damage to bring him down. He needs like 100 auto attacks to actually kill this Centaur. Um, and you don't have like a Shiva's on your Ember Spirit or anything to sort of like try and amplify the magic damage or reduce the healing that he's receiving. Like he just casually regens like 40 health a second. Palos walks in, finds out that that's an infested life stealer. As Pablo comes in, gets the lasso onto the Luna, the Lotus a little bit too late. They will just drag her up onto the high ground. Follows with the RTZ cosplay. We'll see how that turns out for him in a moment as the rest of the fight underway. Abed doing some big work here on this uh, Pangolier, just rolling back and forth. Luna trying to TP to safety. They've made enough space. She makes it out. MJZ will be the sacrifice, it looks like, for Blacklist. Huge brain sap onto all of the illusions. Right. Cyclone a catches bit of a Centaur. Fiends grip there. Big aggressive blink. Almost manages to find Hanskin, but it's going to be a swashbuckle from Abed that does. The Luna, she TP to base and she's actually back into the fight. Crystal Maiden's going to buy back. They're just actually losing this engagement on the side of Rest Farmers. They need help and fast. Hanskin with his buyback will grab Pango. Going for the roll up. Freezing Field is there, but he gets pushed down to the low ground instead. And now Shad trying to stay on top of Palos here on this life cellar. But there's a nice stampede. Getting on the out. Chains does connect, but Palos will lose the Aegis. Swashbuckle from Abed continuing to poke down this backline at Zantic. He is out of man. He's got nothing less. The roll is there. He's going to claim two victims of his own. Now Palos just walking the dog life stealer doing his best to try and stay on top of him but his entire team is gone he's still got a bkb and an eclipse to play around he's gonna just dump the damage back into shad here as he cannot stand his ground zibe will eventually fall an absolute master performance from abed in this fight i can't believe how <laughs> this is going that fight started with luna being cliff and no way down because they don't have they have no force They staffs. don't have any four staffs or anything like that. And I thought they should just get out because Luna TP'd all the way back to base. But they actually reinitiate. It looks really bad off of that. <laughs> but I don't know. Luna makes it back in. This Pangolier hero just constantly with the Octarine just spamming out these swashbuckles all over the place. Shad again gets kind of kited around. 
Now you're gonna lose uh, your base. That was. Uh, you're gonna have a fortify here. Well, I guess your your heroes are gonna respawn. Maybe you'll. You really oh. need an open wounds like badly on this life stealer. I don't know how you stick on your target without it, right? It, it's got to be able to just like bounce around in these fights and and control them up. You have the manta and the lotus. It would also help break the Lincolns on the Luna, which is now completed. But you can't... Like, Pablo needs a lasso. I just don't know who he finds. I think cliffing the Luna was, like, the best thing he possibly could have done there. And then yeah. you just dodge that fight around that area. You are just seriously lacking damage on the side of Rest Farmers. Like, this Ember Spirit's getting nothing. Out of his build. He's got like Kaya Sanj and, and a Gleipnir, but it's not doing a whole lot. Lasso comes out to instantly cancel the grip. The get on top of MJZ's Bane. That's a great start, but so much sustain. He actually just full heals off the Fiend's grip. Shad has to leave. They've taken down Pablo and Xantic makes it out as well, but Shad chain stunned up here by Abed once again. He's got no mana and the Pango. Just crushing the dreams here from Rest Farmers is now Zibe will be next on the chopping block. Triple kill for the Pangolier. Nerfed hero, by the way. And Zibe, I, uh, I, I hate to break it to you, bud, but this one is looking over for you. That was probably as good as it could have gone with the Fiend's Grip being instantly canceled. But unfortunately, the rest of the team not quite really there so life sealer on his own for a moment everyone else is kind of like funneling in but at that point luna's just standing her ground attacking glaives doing work didn't even have eclipse for that man they're just gonna go straight for the win here no buybacks on life stealer crystal maiden Abed, yeah, he's just gonna try and keep them off the throne and let Luna do the job. Lasso actually pulls Abed into the fountain, and that is still not enough to kill this hero, and that will likely be the end of the game here. Paulos actually turning his attention back on over to Atzantic. The Eclipse coming out, adding insult to injury. He's gonna buy back on Atzantic, try to do what damage he can here, but the Glaives, as well as the Luna, will finish this one up, and it's gonna be a 2-0 for Blacklist here over res farmers a very nice performance by them i would say game one feel like a slight draft advantage maybe more than slight as well as then just playing really really well i think this game was a lot closer there were definitely definitely uh some back and forth the game was pretty even for like 30 minutes but as the game kept getting later i think we started to see the benefits of Blacklist's draft, which is that they just had so much more control, so many more ways to kite out this life stealer, and I think that's a little bit of the risk of the the first pick life stealer, or I mean, it was a response to the centaur. But you then had four picks to deal with it, and we were a little worried about Luna, but it turns out like she just did not have to ever one v one the life stealer. Just the team gave her the space to just a click down and like do all the damage she wanted to the only fight he was able to 1v1 her she had aegis and then she respawns and is like hello there uh your whole team is dead yeah. while you were yeah. doing this so it's like it just becomes so difficult and i i think a lot of this just comes back to abed pango he finishes the game 16 5 and 9 absolutely crushing every single engagement like he the fact that he survived certain engagements when it looked like he had almost no chance of getting out uh, is just wild. The amount of swashbuckles he's getting off with the Octarine is, is bonkers. He also goes for a Disperser here as his last item. We didn't really see it play any effect, but if this goes later, dude, how do you kill anyone if he has Disperser? He can just throw that on like whatever hero the Life Stealer is trying to kill uh, or the Ember Spirit like chains is someone and they're just like, bye. Like, it is so easy to to item counter what Rest Farmers is coming up with in the late game. Yeah, I think they were hoping for the Ember to have a better lane versus the Pango. And he he did. He started off, like, uh, pretty decently, but some rotations come in to help the Pango. Pango does Pango things, which is, like, he clears stacks, right? It's, it's so hard to shut down this hero, even if he starts off a little bit behind. Uh, just so much... So much he provides his team with his 
his abilities and his toolkit. And so once you get past the laning stage and it's like, we didn't really shut down the Pango. Okay, we have to play the rest of the game. At that point, we have the Ember Spirit who did make use of his mobility. We saw some of these early fights, like in the replays here, where he lived for so long, got so much done. But as the game keeps going and BKBs come out, the roots that Ember provides just aren't really strong enough crowd control for Shad. And like you said, the one time we saw him fight the Luna, it was going well, except there's an Aegis. And then after that, he's like, oh, my team is dead. I have to run. So if, if maybe there was a stronger initiation, then maybe Shad would have been able to do more work. And, and maybe this goes back to that double Radiance, right? We were like, maybe it's okay, but maybe it wasn't. You know, maybe different itemization helps them out to deal with some of their kiting issues here. Yeah, I mean, it's a terrible Desolator game for the Lifestealer. So that's why I was like, the only other item that you could build in this scenario is, is Maelstrom um, and play for kind of like a... a some, like it's still a semi magic damage dealer, right? Because you have radiance normally, but the evasion didn't seem to play a major factor for him in the game. Like it, it really just felt like if he is not, if if they're not dying 100 zero to fiend script, which seemed pretty difficult because of status resistance, then yeah, maybe maelstrom into mjolnir would have been better. The static charge would have done a lot of damage in these fights. Um, also, just giving you more attack speed. So it's hard to say. Like, there's there's a lot of things they could have gone for, but yeah, I I have to wonder. Maybe yeah, the second radiance not ideal. Hindsight's twenty twenty though. It's one of those things that it's it's not I it's not a great life stealer game when you overall first pick it in general, right? Like they're gonna respond with good heroes against you. Yeah, and and blacklist played it out really well. Gabby. Uh, just, I feel like he made so much space. People were constantly going on him. He died a couple times to it, but many, many of the times there's a, a large rotation to over to him and he just stampedes away. He was so tanky with, uh, two armor items. I think he had like Shiva Lotus and then eternal shroud. So his resistances yeah. were off the chart. And then once everyone's focused on him, everyone else has the freedom, right? Like, uh, the Bane is like, okay, I'm going to. Nightmare this guy, and Feeble that guy, Fiend's Grip this one, and you're going to arrow combo this way. Pango's like, line up the perfect swashbuckle, can't miss <laughs> into all these radiances, roll in, right? Palos yeah. is like, this is so easy, I just run in and I attack, like, how nice, right? So I, I think Blacklist executed very well, even with like even with some of the draft issues that we, we talked about. Um, so very well played by them. Yeah, very, very big fan. I think they played incredibly well. We are going to go to a short break, and I believe we'll be back with an interview here from Blacklist, but uh, we'll uh, stay tuned for that, everyone. We'll see it in just a bit, hopefully, with someone from Blacklist to talk about their uh, first win here, actually, in this tournament. So we'll see you in a bit.
Welcome back, everybody. And as promised, happy to say we do have an interview lined up here with uh, Blacklist. And Zach, you want to do the honors once again of introducing our guest this time around? Yeah, well, this time we got a support player interview. We love support players. We got MJZ here. Hello. 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 Welcome. <laughs> So first off, congratulations uh, on getting your win here in round two. Obviously, the Swiss group stage is a little bit different from what you're probably used to. So for starters, mm -hmm. how do you feel uh, like coming into the Swiss stage? Like, is this like a fun, like kind of deviation from tournaments that you guys have played in? Uh, never played this the Swiss stage, but I feel like it's interesting how the format is now. Uh, I guess it makes you kind of like feel every game is so important to win, so you can secure your spot and the next stage. Yeah. Nice. Um, and then I got a question for you specifically. Um, obviously coming from SA, I've I've seen you on teams down there for so dang long. How has the transition been joining Blacklist for you, and what's the communication? Or is there any like really any communication barriers for you and the team? Um, uh, communication wise is not that different because I think all of them have experience in like international teams, so they communicate in English. Uh, so that's fine. And adapting to the team, I think is, I feel like I'm learning a lot. Things that I didn't think about before, now I'm learning and stuff. So it feels good to have this, uh, I guess, I don't know, new, new team, new region and stuff. It's a uh, really refreshing. New team, new region. Way. Yeah. yeah, awesome. I love to hear that. That's cool. Uh, Zach, what do you got? Hey, uh, so you guys played very uh, some very nice games there. Something a little bit different that we don't see that much is there was a, a tri-lane versus tri-lane at the start of game one. <laughs> was that, I mean, you don't have to reveal any <laughs> strats you don't want to, but how much of that was planned and like, how do you know when to no, end just, that? And then you eventually break yeah, it's, out it's of this that. Viper, uh, this Viper hero is so annoying after a tri-lane or something. We did play against some Viper, uh, I think, on the qualifier games. And we kind of did the same thing this game. We're like, oh, let's go trade on this guy and see. But I wasn't the best, I think, because we kind of die. But then at the end, we know like we have the better carry and better mid matchup. So you have, just have to, like, I don't know, just get into the mid game and then things will go better. Got it. So it yeah, is something, like so there's a little bit of practice. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> Zach, you got another question? Gotcha. Yeah. No, I mean, go ahead if you got something. Okay, so uh, I'm a little bit curious because game one, they actually ban out your guys' Centaur. You go back for it in game two. It seems like you guys are very comfortable on it. Is this something that, because a lot of times we see like kind of a dance with the offlane pools between like Mars, Centaurs, Dooms, all these heroes. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys have like certain conditions where you prefer the centaur, or is this kind of just a, a comfort for your first opener? Uh, it's not for comfort heroes, to be honest. If they leave it, we can pick it. If we feel comfortable, we're like, let's go with it. So we're like, fine, we can do it. Because uh, right okay. now, I think that hero is really popular. And I see like the hero winning a lot. So we're like, okay, we can do it too. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Okay, and then I got another kind of interesting question. Was Pango buffed in this last patch? Uh, I don't think it's a big nerf, to be honest. I think it's still kind of the same thing. Not that big difference yeah. right now. Because it feels like we just see people pop off on this hero. Abed has a good time. Um, yeah, the hero is really but, uh, stable, I feel. That's why. Okay. That makes sense. Doesn't seem to really lose lanes. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, do you have anything that you'd like to say before we let you go? Because we've got a lot more Dota still to be played. You guys obviously... Yeah, being, there's many uh, games. <laughs> yeah, you guys are going to be moving on to 1-1 now. So you, I don't know if we have uh -huh. your opponent decided yet, but um, this is a big win. Like you said, each of these series count quite a bit. So uh, again, congratulations. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say before we let you go? Uh, thank you to the fans, people who support the team and me and we'll keep working and i don't know getting back <laughs> yeah love it hey well congratulations and uh i'm glad you're you know fitting well in with blacklist over there and hopefully we'll see you again soon 
It's okay. Thank you. So that's cool. It's always fun. Like we were talking about this yesterday, how there's a lot of South American players that have been like spreading out now that the DPC has, you know, ended and they can play on more international teams. And there's a lot of talent uh, coming out of that region. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see him doing, you know, well on Blacklist and them having a successful second day here. Yeah, there's a, a lot of these teams with the the SA players going international. I'm kind of curious if they'll like stay international because many of them seem to be doing well or, you know, they'll come back now with their, their newfound global experience, pull together the super team, who knows? Um, but it's always fun to see. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, we've again got more Dota coming right up. Almost no breaks at all. So we're going to be back in just a little bit here with uh, Nouns taking on the side of OG. Should be a lot of fun. So stay tuned, everyone. We'll see you in just a bit.
Welcome back, everybody. It is the final series of the day, OG versus Nouns, which should be a blast, honestly. A lot of these players have some history, so I'm excited to see how that's going to lay out. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in. My name's Cryptic. I'm here with Z Quixotics. Uh, fun first series to kick things off. Very quick 2-0. I'm not super quick, but a convincing 2-0 from Blacklist. Uh, how are you feeling about going into this, uh, this series? I think it should be pretty fun. These teams both won their last series yesterday. So if they can win today, that puts them at 2-0. That's a very comfortable spot to be because you only need three wins to get in. So first we've got OG, Tomato, BZM, Whisper, Ari, and Seb. Uh, yesterday, game one, they had a bit of an awkward draft that just didn't seem to come together. Uh, but for game two, game three, they rallied and they had some really good performances there. They actually beat Blacklist, who we just saw playing. And their opponents are going to be Nouns, Yuma, Copy, Gunner, Lelis, and Fly. Copy is the, the new mid laner for them. He's been playing some qualifiers. I think this is the first tournament they're doing together. Um, Definitely the that? first, like, major tournament. Yeah. Outside yeah, of some qualifiers. Yeah. This is the first, like, major mm -hmm. tournament that they're doing. Um, young, talented player coming out of Germany. And, you know, he's, he's stepping up. He's had some pretty solid mid performances, I think, especially in matchups that he's favored in like on the heroes he's he's making some good stuff happen we'll have to see obviously uh, as you know it's gonna be i think coming down to the draft between these two themes because nouns does have a very particular style of game that they like to play but so does og like og also plays very odd drafts right with the introduction of you know whisper and having seb potentially pulling out like an occasional io uh there's a lot of things that these here these teams can do so i mean i am most interested to see how this draft is going to develop between these two teams so yeah we'll have to keep an eye on that but i'd imagine something people have to pay attention to is going to be yuma's amiibo because every mm -hmm. once in a while <laughs> they will squeak it through a draft and it ends up being a very good meepo game so uh i imagine og's done the prep work here they'll keep an eye for it but something that we'll have to remember Five seconds remaining. Yeah, in the meantime, we got some pretty standard stuff. I'd say a Dragonite pick after the Shadow Demon ban. Terribly got banned out earlier as well. Uh, Dragonite just seems so stable. We've been saying that for so long. Got a little nerf. Still seems pretty good. So you can put this in the off lane or in the mid. But I, I think we've seen Gunner Gun usually do quite Stand well with this hero. Um, so they can always adjust as they see fit. But... I wouldn't be surprised if it's just their offlane pick right off the bat. And then the Bat Rider response, one of the few heroes who can potentially bring enough magic damage early on to kill that Dragonite. But even if you don't, we've seen so many Bat Riders just play pretty greedy, farm up, and remaining. grab a fast Blink Dagger. OG will run the offlane Bat Rider. Remaining. Probably the only team we really see do that consistently. But they're they're willing to do that, so it's a it's a flex pick for them. Yeah, and then the Doom actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it for that exact reason, right? They love running this Batrider Doom lane. They flex it between the three and the four, depending on if, if they need to run one or the other as a core. So they actually ban that out first phase. We're going to see the Disruptor and Chen also banned out. The Techies is a little bit surprising for me, but um, Lelis is a really greedy four player. Like, he manages to find a lot of farm, and Techies is one of those heroes that can kind of take over the game uh, from the four position with a lot of net worth. So I, I like those bands. I think both teams doing the correct prep work here as we see the IO Brewmaster band here in phase remaining. two. We'll see what they want to get rid of on the OG side before they go for their second pick. Five but seconds remaining. I, I'm curious how their plan or how they plan to address the DK. Cause like you said, it's almost always played by Gunner in the off lane. And I've said this before and I will just say it again. Even in lanes that Gunner looks like he should lose, come the 10 minute mark, somehow he is like at the top of the net worth. And I don't know how or why it happens, but it keeps happening. Um, so we'll see what they uh, do to address it. They will just grab the Mars. Solid pick. Uh, we've seen this hero pretty much offer a ton to the team fights. I think counters out a lot of other heroes as well. So I'm a, I'm a fan. Yeah, it, it does very likely mean remaining. that this is Batrider for support with the the Mars off lane, which is a really strong combo. And we've seen Ari have good performances on the Batrider, so not worried about it at, at all. In fact, I think it's more standard, and I, I don't know if the off lane bat has looked that great. I feel like 
there's a couple matchups it looks pretty good, but Batrider as a hero feels the best right now when it's uh, like this greedy support to me. This is a neat pick because Nouns is also one of the teams that loves to play Gyrocopter, something I kind of forgot about, but it's a Lelis classic on the four position, but you could run this into the Mars lane if you wanted. It's not Ten super pressured remaining. by this hero, Flat Cannon. Decent enough at harassing the Bat Rider as well. And if he tries to go on top of you with the Firefly, you just pop the Rocket Barrage. And then they go back for the CM, which is a classic Bat Rider counter in the lane. Yeah, I will say the lane, I think, goes fine for Gyrocopter. But later on, it's a little awkward because of Arena blocking so many flag shots, potentially. So... I, I think it is flex. They can do that still. But I, I would Five lean towards this being support Gyrocopter just because support Gyrocopter doesn't really care if Flat gets blocked. Uh, he's all in on that spell damage, which will just go through the arena anyhow. And as a four support, that'll, that'll be a pretty strong combo if this is the gunner off lane, like stun into yeah. rocket, rocket barrage going on, just constant attacks. Or you go Flat Cannon early on, plus the Breathe Fire, plus just like your passive generally getting you ahead in these trades. They could just play this War of Attrition style in that top lane. Yeah, eventually you get level remaining. 6 and take the tower, right? That's yep. probably what we end up seeing. Um, but yeah, it's one of the reasons remaining. they picked this gyro. And I, I would be curious to see how many times they've picked it with the DK. Uh, it, I'm, it's probably pretty high up there. We see Lesh coming out from OG, a hero that we've been seeing get a lot of attention lately. And rightfully so. I mean, this hero dumps out damage, does love playing around his mars as well so having that blink spear sets up for an easy now split earth you have lasso to split up for split earth and they will grab the rubik perfect great support pick lots of magic damage good spells to steal from all of these heroes does this mean it's a position five well i guess you could position do either right rubik, you could do position probably. five bat Ten or seconds. position Ten five minutes. rubik but i think lately Bat Rider's more favored as a four five support than a five remaining. support. Yeah, I would assume so, unless they really want to dodge the Bat Rider into the Crystal Maiden lane. Just for those of you who don't know, the the Bat Rider basically struggles heavily into Crystal Maiden because of the double slow, one of which being a root. So it is really hard for Bat Rider to to get a lot done. It's they end up no, typically just stacking, which may end up just being the play. Stands ready. All right, send for Yuma. Classic hero of the patch. Pick it on 18 yes. too, so you can protect ban for it. Mm -hmm. And Life Stealer is already banned too, so is that Terra Blade. So uh, some like harder matchups already gone. Uh, he he won't have a trouble any trouble with the the arena BKB builder, very frequent Ags builder or a Blink builder. So you choose when to initiate. Uh, you're not controlled up too much usually. Crystal Maiden plus Sven will also be a very strong lane into whether it's Mars plus Rubik or Mars and Batrider. They definitely have the, the tools to fight it out. And even if it goes badly, Sven will just go jungle. And well, actually, these supports aren't the best at wave clearing to hold that tower. But yeah. I don't know. I, I don't even think it'll get there. Like Sven has just, he's just looked like such a solid hero. I'm kind of surprised we don't see him more. But I, I do know he has his counters. But every time you and I have seen him, it he looks great yeah and i think because the life stealer is already banned they can afford to go for it here because you can get rid of the morph you can get rid of something like the terror blade as well but that's already banned so uh your actual like really rough carry matchups are kind of already dealt with we do see sven actually be one of the best heroes at, at killing medusa so you don't really want to pick up a medusa now for tomato that being said, Tomato also has a very wide carry pool. We talked to him yesterday about it specifically. He's like, yeah, I haven't played TA in months, but it was a good TA game. So I told him to pick it and then goes like 19 and zero. So it, it you can't really just rely on getting like the favorable matchup when you're playing against Tomato. Yeah, he's shown some great performances yesterday. Looking to continue that here, I'm sure. OG will have the last pick, so they get to see what Nouns needs here. Nouns could still choose a mid, could choose an off laner. It's very likely to be a Leshrac mid, so if they want to punish that with something, they could, or if they feel like DK will be fine, then you can try to predict what you think the enemy carry will be and pick an off laner oh, preemptively good versus bad. that. I feel like Dragonite's fairly safe into, the, into many safe lane matchups like maybe don't crush them but 
you'll get by. So yeah, maybe countering the Leshrac might be better, but I guess it depends how they feel, how Copy feels. Because Copy plays the Dragonite too. It's not always Gunner. He plays a pretty good Puck and a pretty good Queen of Pain. So Five I would say those are definitely eight. on the list. His Invoker is also an option, but Invoker is a very niche pick. That being said, you do have Missile, Dragon Tail, and Frostbite to set up for Sunstrikes if you want to go for an Exhort build. Um, against Lash, you probably want to go a little bit more of the Quas Wex, though. You can get an early Vessel, uh, which is great. You need that healing reduction against the Lashrac, but we'll have to see. Uh, I like the Arc Warden and Pango Bands. I think those are the most straightforward heroes that you do not want to deal with on OG. So we'll see what uh, they want to pick up for copy here after the fa after the uh, last, last ban. Yeah, I'm curious how OG wants to approach it with their no, carry too, because I feel like Rubik is not the strongest five. So you're either picking a carry who can jungle pretty quickly, or it's a really strong carry who can kind of like make up the difference. Um, I was thinking troll, but now with this razor pick, it's really cool because you these can. are two flexible heroes. You can mix and match this in the lanes however you want. So depending what OG picks here, you just decide remaining. this is how it will, like this is the best setup for us. We did see Razor not do amazing versus Leshrac yesterday. Um, I mean, these are totally different players, so it could end up pretty different. But we did see Razor as a response to Leshrac. You don't crush it as hard as other matchups, but you kind of like get by, you get what you need, and then you can go participate. Uh, so if you do end up running Razor into that Leshrac, I don't think it shuts it down, but like you're you're okay with that. I think, like you made a really good point, the fact that it blocks the Troll Warlord is pretty rough. Like, that is a hero that you would have loved to grab this game. It does well into the DK lane. It doesn't really get shoved out, making it difficult for the DK to take the tower. So they're forced to go for Whoa. an anti-mage, which this is a very interesting AM pick because, yes, it's great at being able to kite out these fights, but I don't see him as, like, a primary damage dealer until super late. Yeah, he So like lane wise you're fine, but the direct matchup versus Sven, if both heroes are allowed to hit each other, typically goes Sven's way because of the immense physical damage and anti mage is not anti armor. He's good versus magic damage, which I mean there's magic damage here, but it's not the greatest. I think what they're going for here is that anti mage is a very fast farmer. So if you don't get shut down in the lane, which I think he should be okay, and you give him some space, you can hit an item timing that is strong enough to then just like hop around the fight, kill off the other heroes. You don't try to like directly fight the Sven right away. You kind of like, first we kill the supports, then we like dodge out Dragonite. Oh, he used God Strength, we kite. You know, then we, you pick the fights you want with a pretty farmed anti-mage, and then it's fine because it's not a direct 1v1, two equally farmed carries. It's like, yeah, my anti-mage is richer and we're picking the good fights. I think that's what they're going for here. If they don't get that and it ends up being a direct fight, I think it will be pretty tough for him into this Sven. That is where I come back to is the timings because Sven comes online very quickly and he has no problem joining fights if he is in the neighborhood. Just popping the God Strength, double taps a hero and goes right back mm -hmm. to hitting creeps. And that's what we see a lot coming out from the Svens, right? Like, the difference being that anti-mage like TPs to the fight has like 900 HP, maybe pops a mana void, but there's not a good mana void target outside of like maybe Crystal Maiden, but she's a low mana hero. It's actually one of the things that balances her is the fact that she has a very low mana pool, but high regen. Mm -hmm. So I don't see anti-mage being able to join the fights anytime soon. So I think nouns, if they're able to push the aggression, if they have good lanes, should have a really good mid game timing, but... That's what it comes down to, right? It's always the what ifs. If you're just yeah, joining what? us, welcome to the stream. It is OG versus Nouns here, the final series of the day. Both teams coming off of wins yesterday. The winner of this will advance to the 2-0 series, which, you know, will be joining the likes of Boom Esports and Talon. So we do end up with a Razor mid. So that'll be versus the Leshrac, BZM's Leshrac. And it is going to be Gunner's Dragonite versus Anti-Mage. So how this lane goes will be, I think, pretty 
pretty important for deciding this game. Because if Anti-Mage is stuck behind, his tower's gone, he's like trying to finish that Battle Fury, and Sven's already got it as part of his passive, right? You're never going to hit that timing of like trying to keep up and surpass the Sven. Um, and then, like you said, I, it's just not that great of a mana game uh, in terms of like the mana void. The See if there's it's a first blood me. here. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like you, nah. you, your gyrocopter is always very scary to fight in two level ones, so they do not want to risk it. Gunner, obviously, would probably rather have Breathe Fire for the lane to secure the range creep, so doesn't obviously want to pick up Dragon Tail. We'll have to see. It is going to be annoying getting mana burned from the Anti-Mage in this lane, but it is going to be the five-position Batrider, like you were saying. Again, I think primarily just to dodge out the CM. Mm-hmm. I do worry a little bit that Batrider, whether played position four or five, does want to be a bit greedy. It's just the nature of the hero. And I'm worried with an anti-mage, he's going to have to dedicate more to the lane and try to help out as much as possible. But it's going to be tough against Dragonite Gyro. And then it might mean that in that early to mid game, we're not going to see the impact from Batrider that we typically see. Like he's not going to have his blink and be able to like jump around, start fights for his team. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna see, how do you feel about the flat cannon level one here as opposed to like rocket barrage, which we see kind of often? I think they're just looking to keep Tomato low. I think we're probably gonna see like two bracers from Gunner go stat heavy and you're just not gonna care about your mana. You're just going to right click. And then with the added flat cannon, Tomato's just going to be kept so low that every time he walks up, you can punch him. You start winning the deny war because Dragonite does have better base damage. Especially True. if you just don't care about mana. The other thing is they're pushing for a level 2 advantage, but they're not going to get it. Uh, I was like, if they get the level 2, maybe you actually find the kill on Seb there with like the Rocket Barrage. I do like that Tomato goes for this Orb of Venom. I think this is a... This item is pretty sick after the changes, um, but uh, yeah, like you said, eventually DK just doesn't really care about losing his mana, I feel like. This Orbit Corrosion is actually pretty cool because oh, okay, first Lelis. an attempt on Lelis. That's a nice usage of that first flyer fight. They get the kill, but you're gonna lose Tomato and Gunner. We'll just continue to chase down Seb. Three Might have the damage. Seconds. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah, he's he's got a fairy fire. Okay, Seb playing with fire, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Let's just... He's like, I don't need to pop the fairy fire. It'll be okay. He's going to have a salve, though. So my... I was going to say, I think this Orb of Corrosion could be pretty cool on this Anti-Mage. Because one, it's the armor to help in this, like, constant flat cannon plus... Uh, harass from the Dragonite, but two, it actually reduces regen, which might actually help versus this Dragonite. I kind of don't think it'll be enough, but it's it's kind of a cool concept. I'm looking forward to see how it plays out. Of course, dying here. He got the kill first, but then he yeah, himself died, so uh, a little painful on in, in that way. Um, that might skew how well this Orbit Corrosion ends up doing. And you would have loved the kill bounty to actually go to your anti-mage, but unfortunately it went to Seb on the Batrider, so... Oh, Seb got it. I didn't even notice. Yeah, so he ends up just getting boots for free, which is great for a Batrider, right? He's super mm -hmm. quick and can actually kite out this gyrocopter, but it absolutely does hurt your anti-mage. Which, well, let's just be careful. They just dump what damage they can here as the anti-mage tries to contest the pull. Nice flame break back here. Black Cannon just coming through again. Tomato? Tomato? He oh. wanted that creep. It calls just, to him as a carry. They end up just putting more points into the Breathe Fire. I think definitely underestimating how much damage this Gyrocopter and Dragon Knight can do. And Copy in the mid lane. Wanted to get this Water Rune. BZM forces him back. Have four wand charges. He's going to pop the Fairy Fire as well. Bat Rider, the flame break comes in. BZM dies in the process. Fly a little bit slow on that rotation. That's a great kill for BZM. Gets the kill, dies before enemy supports are there to like really get anything from it. And he's going to come back full health, full mana, so there's no risk of like a return kill. 
to the Razor, who was doing pretty well up to this point, getting those denies with that base damage. And he'll probably still be able to do that, but you wanted to be able to shut down the Leshrac more, and absolutely being killed like that is uh, gonna set you back a little. Not on Just a little. I mean, he's doing well on CS is the thing, right? Like. Your your razor. We 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 saw the matchup the other day. We were curious like how well it was gonna play again this time. He's gone for the two point static link instead of just a single point, but it's allowing him to just get a just enough damage to get a like a lot of denies in this lane, or maybe not a ton of denies, but actually securing a decent amount of CS. So. In terms of the lanes, how are you feeling about each of these teams right now? Mm, I like where Nouns is currently, Tomato. I see he was he was thinking about that Orb of Corrosion. He's gone ahead and locked some items so that he's just going to go for power treads. I think he realized like we didn't get the aggression we wanted. That kind of tells me like the lane's not going quite the way they were hoping, um, which I would agree with, I'd say, with the uh, two deaths on the Anti-Mage. Still kind of like the last hitting okay, but Dragonite is, he's already level five. He's getting, he's on his way to his level six. He's gonna start like pushing your tower. You're nowhere near a Battle Fury on this Anti-Mage. He does not want to lose this tower. He does not want to have to start jungling at this point. And that's a little bit of a worry. Sven, on the other hand, he's been doing fine. So is Mars. So maybe they can make some plays around the Mars, but I mean, you must just on pace, right? And that's the scary yeah. thing about the, the Sven versus Anti-Mage. Yeah, um, I, I don't want to say keep an eye on the Gunner net worth at the 10-minute mark, but you might want to keep an eye on Gunner's net worth to come the 10-minute mark. Fly here, gonna get chased Radiant down in the jungle a little bit by Ari, and Yuma is close by with the storm hammer. They throw the blood grenade out. He's gonna try and finish off Fly here, but he has the Lotus. He'll survive. Fly's the one who picks up the kill. So a little bit of space out away from uh, Yuma to come all the way into the jungle here to grab this, but. It does allow Fly to make stacks, and I think that's why he makes this rotation. He's like, I need my support to, <laughs> to make stacks for me. <laughs> yeah, he's getting close to God Strength. He'll head over to those, pop God Strength, and clear out the stacks, I'm sure. There's not too many stacks around the map quite yet, but I think this is where we'll start seeing people start to prioritize it. Yuma, like, support, stack for me. Get over there. He's trying to do something else. Level six of the Dragon Knights up. Gunner gonna start chipping at the bottom tower. Now they did nerf the the duration of the debuff, which I think was really smart. Makes it a little bit less powerful. But mid lane, a great rotation. Whisper with three point God rebuke. Gets an arena out onto fly. Okay, Whisper is salvaging a very nice play in the mid lane. And bottom, we're gonna see some aggression come out. Is the mana void. Not enough to finish the job, Seb trying to get a kill here onto somebody, but they're surviving, and now Gunner's gonna turn it around. He's got three points in this Breathe Fire. It's a lot of damage. The Batrider still surviving, thanks to the raindrops as well. Very good moves here from OG. BZM gets a haste room in the mid lane too. Gonna come see if there's any stacks made for the Sven. He's gonna steal them if he can. Just a double stack, so not the end of the world. But still a bit annoying for Nouns. He's, He's looking for Gunner. Gunner. What a really good dodge here. Ooh, might run if he into walks Seb, into though. Seb, he might kill him is the thing. They know where he is now. Free fire, constant, just dodging him out. Dragon Tail does connect Seb, knocks him back. I mean, a really nice stun out Double from the stun? Sven. They got him. Okay, Sven's a one for one trade. Get Getting out. Gunners though, pretty good. I mean, Gunner has what he needs is the thing. And I think that kill going to Sven is huge. Sven, he's gonna, he's now top of the net worth. He's over, a, almost a thousand over the anti-mage and he's, He's full farm mode. He's got everything he needs. Anti-Mage is, uh, oh, I don't know, about a Battle Fury away from Battle Fury, it looks like. <laughs> oh, so it's going to take him quite a while. I love That's one of the best ways I've heard that ever described. That's very funny. Top lane, Arena comes down from Whisper. Just like continuing to put a lot of pressure on the map. He is 
the shining star of OG at the moment. And mid lane, a nice dive from Seb, looking to get on top of Fly. Gunner is here, doing a lot of damage back his way. Lasso comes out, not enough. But again, uh, some good movement from this Barrier and this Mars. They're getting a lot done despite, you know, the care like your other heroes maybe not having the best start. But yeah, Whisper is owning. Yeah, I think they need to focus around that. They got to keep playing with Whisper, make space for this anti-mage. He won't die easily to the Dragonite. It sucks to directly lane for a long time, but I think if you can keep it to like a 1v1 down here, Tomato can get a bit of space to try to pick up his Battle Fury. And we got to make use of the strength Whisper has. He He's still working on the Blink, so maybe they'll leave him alone a little bit longer till he has that. But once you do... I think you need to disrupt too. the Sven. Yeah, I, you gotta do. He is very farmed. Radiant His Mask of Madness scanning. is done. He is... What has he got on Courier? Yeah, that was like Ogre Axe probably. Yep, he has his Ogre Axe, so he's working towards his Echo Saber. BZM is recovering nicely off of the like quad or penta stacked of the, uh, ancient, er, of the ancient camps area, Triangle. But... Sven is not a hero that you can just be like, oh, he's not farming, right? Surely not. Copy's doing great on the Razor as well, I will say. I'm kind of surprised. Like, we haven't really seen Razors in the mid lane be this dominant CS-wise, or this net worth-wise. He is basically neck and neck at the top of the charts on his way to an early BKB. And we're going to see a smoke actually come out from now as they're heading to the top lane. They want to fight. This is scary. You're playing into an arena, into the lash, level 6 of the Rubik as well. They're going to lose the tower. The DK, his TP comes out just in time. The root onto the Rubik. All right, they get one kill. The question is, can you get another? Gunner reading it well, finds BZM, hits him with the Dragon Tail up top, and call down as well. Is it enough magic damage? It is. Oh, man. That's a... I mean, it would have been pretty good for OG if you only lose the Rubik, but that second death definitely costly as now they find... Back to Seb is level 8? What in the world? I think he stole some stacks down here in the meantime. I was worried about this position 5 uh, Batrider maybe not finding enough, but he's definitely yeah, getting some work done. It, it is a little bit at the cost of some teammates dying in the top, but... It is the space that Tamano wants. He's now halfway to the Battle Fury. A little more than that, even. So, I think you're kind of okay with this on OG. Yeah. yeah. They're definitely okay with this. It's looking very good now. Doesn't mean Leshrac's game is really struggling. That is true. BZM's not having a great Fourth time. Fourth death there, I think. Yeah, he's on his way to a Yules, which will definitely help, right? Being able to dodge things like Missile, Stormhammer, even get yourself out of the roots. There, there's a lot of things Yules can be uh, used for this game. But with all this going on, it I was going to say maybe it means Seb gets a really quick Blink Dagger, but he's actually going for a four staff first. So not super quick. Lelis will scout him out here, and that will be a Missile going his way. Not really going to chase I'd say I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, and I'm pretty impressed with Tomato. He's really not that far behind, actually. Uh, for every everything we've been saying about him being slower than farming, and even though he's 0 2 and 2, like he's actually not that far behind Sven. Not at all. Dragon Tail bottom lane though does catch the Seb. The five position Bat Rider will finally get cleaned up. Goes to fly again. Are scanning. And maybe they push the tower now that you have the DK form, but they're actually just afraid of, I think, of Mars. Like, they know Whisper has to have a Blink Dagger now, so... Actually, they should know. He also has an Ogre Axe, and they're going to smoke up. Looking for the Sven in his own jungle. Let's we'll see if they actually find him, though. This could hit at a huge moment, because Copy is so close to his BKB. He just needs like a hundred more. If you could kill him right now, that'd be so good for OG. Gunner mid lane. Oh, he got a blink out. Whisper, unable to connect on the spear back. I think he might have seen Ari, I'm not sure. Bottom lane though, they find the Bat Rider again. Call down right on top of him. The two supports, man, it's a lot of magic damage. 
They're gonna sack their mid lane potentially, but they are TPing in, looking like they want to fight. Gunner Dragon Tail does connect onto the Mars. Yuma pops the God Strength. If you can finish him off first before the Arena Spear combo, it's massive. Spear comes out, but it's still not enough. They take him down, Mars. The big winner so far on the side of OG. But now, Blink Dragon Tail into the missile once. Just a double tap from Yuma, my lord. Supports keep picking up the kills, though. The supports of Nouns are, have seven of the kills between them. <laughs> well, this is huge now. Radiant That's really you must pissed. It's like, I'm joining these fights. Why aren't I getting any kills? It's tough to hate them. I mean, he definitely would be a little richer, but he's still, he's still relatively happy. He's not behind the anti-mage, so they might still... I don't know. I'm like, I'm getting worried because this anti mage with the battle fury now, he's gonna start being really mobile. They are picking up blinks, so maybe if they can get an anti mage kill here or there. Uh, but the follow up chain stun is a little difficult unless you have a lot of the cores nearby. And I, I kind of think it'll be tough to kill anti mage because of that. And so I was kind of hoping they'd be like for their strategy, they'd be like running down lanes a bit. Um, but they've only got one tier one right now. Maybe with Both BKB now smoked. finished. Yeah, maybe maybe they're looking for something right now. Yeah, both teams smoked in the mid lane. There is a 16 minute power rune coming up. If it's bottom, it'd be good for nouns, but it is top. And BZM will grab the bot, uh, the regen. As you say, if you walk top here into like the, the Mars that's smoked up, maybe OG find a very good fight, but instead, they're gonna be walking in potentially finding Ari. Not the best kill, but definitely value if you are copy. This is very easy for him to pick up. He gets himself a nice one. BZM will take the portal to the bottom side. He's gonna be okay. What are we waiting for on Nouns? Are we just gonna are they just content farming? I'm not sure. Maybe they have a different read. I mean, we were saying like Sven versus Anti Mage in the direct one v one should be fine actually. So if they actually feel like they're pretty suited for the late game, that kind of explains that they're taking a slower pace. They are also trying to get some BKBs online. So Sven's working on his Dragon is trying to finish this Mage Slayer. So maybe just waiting for these items to come online as well. I I sort of feel like they could have pushed it a little bit more earlier in the game. But maybe really respecting the strength of Whisper at the start, because I mean he was at the top with them. I wonder if it's too much respect. Uh, they well. caught anti mage. Oh no! Gunner with the blink into the stun and fly just barely gets the frostbite off in time. Uh, you actually made one really good point. I think the mage just slayer one. is necessary into the lash. I mean you made several really good points, but oh, no, no, it's okay. RTC cosplay. You. Nice little lasso there from Seb into the arena. Yuma, the return kill you're super happy with. But can he finish off BZM? He gets the ult to dodge us from the damage. Seb gonna TP out, gets canceled. The freezing field as well. Help to find the kill. Yuma's like, thanks brother for the backup. We got him. The carry suffering from the recent fights, but uh, everyone else pretty happy. Okay, let's see if Nouns, oh, wow, that tower was one shot from dying, okay. Uh, they they need to start putting to use these early BKBs. I think if you get this many BKBs and just farm, you're uh, you're gonna be a little sad with that. So, I imagine they're gonna be hoping to find some early fights here. Whispers working on his own BKB though, so he might be able to match some of this. But his ult is really like if Arena can't stop people because they're just BKB. I mean, you're missing out a lot from the team fight you have on OG. You have a ward scouting Tomato here in the triangle. They know he's farming those ancient camps with mid lane. They get the Dragon Tail out onto Seb again. The Frostbite to follow it up and copy. Just so much damage coming out from him. But Gunner, he's in trouble. Tries to pop the stick to survive. Gets the Mage Slayer debuff onto the to the Lesh, but he just pops it right off. And now Tomato trying to chase BKB. He's gonna expire. Tomato with an aggressive blink in the Mana Void to finish the job and Whisper. A huge grab onto the backside, but in comes Yuma. He doesn't Wait, finish him off. The Echo Saber. He, he disassembled, 
And his items are in his backpack. Oh, no. Yuma has to BKB. He has no TP either. Whisper's going to chase. He's got an arena in a moment. Thinking about gold. Dude, what a wraparound from Whisper again. I think Yuma should have had that. I think he should have hit the Mars to cleave once and then keep walking up and hit anti-mage once. I mean, that's easy to say. I got the I got the space and the time. He's probably doing some inventory management there, getting his BKB assembled. But oh, with an anti-mage kill, I think that fight is like kind of okay for his team. But without it, uh, OG pretty happy with that. Yeah, I mean, he had just Dyer's disassembled his uh, and his Echo Saber to finish BKB, and it backpacked his broadsword. And so I think he, when he walked up to kill the anti mage, I think he was expecting the double attack. Mm, that's a good, yeah, that probably makes sense too. Wow, that is really rough for them. Copy will not find Whisper, of course. He's TP's on home, but dude, huge wins for OG in that fight. Like you said, the anti mage surviving now on uh, to a completed Manta style. He is really farmed. Gunner as well as Lela scouting here in the bottom lane. They will see Seb. They have a blink dragon tail. They just destroy him with the magic damage of that gyro as the missile. I mean, he's got a shard as well. Very careful. PCM looking to find the DK. Tomato with an aggressive blink forward. Again, the Manta is available. Yules comes out. You've got to throw the call down. you got to do something to keep your DK alive. But he is all alone. Almost managed to take down Lesh. But Whisper, a beautiful arena blocking off all of Nouns. Lelis. Stuck inside, they're gonna try and chase down the Mars as BKB to try and get him to safety, but Copy just doing too much damage. BZM with a TP out just barely. Ari in the trees. Do they find him? They do. Will get themselves an extra two kills. It's a trade going a little bit in Noun's favor. Rush with God Strength? Oh, they have yeah, God Strength, like yeah. It. Nice call. All right. I think in the end, I, that works out, especially as they pick up this Roshan. It is a bit of space for Tomato. And this is where I'm very curious on the read of the game between the two teams, whether they feel comfortable in the late game or not, or if they're worried about Anti-Mage getting really slotted. But either way, taking up this Aegis, we can see if they use it to just like play casually, kind of farm up, that means it's more late game oriented. And if they, if they really start pushing the tempo, that means they're worried. Gunner might be in a bit of trouble here though. Yeah, you know, Surrounded by three, Lasso, that's pretty darn good. Uh, we've seen Lesh like, be able to just kind of shred through the DK as long as he doesn't have that uh, Mage Slayer debuff. So. Plus he also finds Whisper of the Dread, dude. This Edict is doing a ridiculous amount of damage. Bottom lane, we're gonna see Lelis get caught out a little bit and trying to finish that jump through the tree or through the portal not going to happen are we actually stealing rocket barrage as well quite nice very close game here so it's an aegis onto the razor what do you think they're want to do with this is this kind of like a farming aegis or are we going to see them kind of group back up with their bkbs and dk here sometime soon Man, I'm really torn. I feel like late game nouns is actually fine, the more I think about it. And I I think they can just farm, because Razor is actually really good in the late game, and so is Dragonite. Uh, not that Mars and Leshrac are terrible either, but I don't know. We've seen the fights go really back and forth. I think you have to be careful about what fights you choose. I don't think you can just like run it down a lane and feel great. So. I think they will take this kind of slowly, look for the right fight before committing. And if they end up just farming, then so be it. All right. We see both teams do their Tormentors. Unfortunately for OG, they get arguably a negative shard. They get it for the Batrider, which just effectively increases his net worth and makes him worth more money. So <laughs> unlucky. <laughs> Uh, but Gunner gets his, so Fireball. Again, not like the best shard, but it's something. He's definitely struggling on 
the Dragon Knight now after a few deaths, right? Normally, with the start he would have, we'd expect him to be a little bit higher on the net worth charts, but going for an early blink as well. Oh, big game with blink. Dragon Tail out onto the Mars. Flies zooming through here, trying to get in range. Does manage to get the slow. He's got a BKB. He's going to be forced to use it. Yuma, does he have the damage? Not without the God Strength. That is the BKB down, so they're going to immediately fight. They TP the in lines to, to try BZM. to catch BZM. Seb here as well. Missile's coming out. He has to dodge us with the Yules, but Yuma, Blink Dragon, or er, Blink Stun into the Dragon Tail as well. Seb will go down first. Dyer's and BZM tanks the stun for now. This copy's going to come through. Pops the BKB. Try and just run him through. The Yules does not help him here, sir. Uh, that sucks. That is a really rough DC. I I'm mean, pretty he sure pops he's... Bloodstone. Can he survive? I mean, there's still half the BKB duration. I can't imagine he lives through this. Yeah, I'd be a little surprised. I, you still have Blink on Dragonite 2, so there's no TPing out of this. You might back away for a moment, but I don't think Reason? he will. What? <laughs> <laughs> <Next day. laughs> I don't think right, he'll... Uh, I don't think he'll... Uh... He'll be able to get out of this. Especially Yuma's in the back, too. He's got his blink. He's looking for the kill steal here. Look at it. He's waiting. He's not going to blink in until BZM's about to die. That's my, that's my call right here. You think so? I think he's going to blink immediately. <laughs> I to think he's out. just about to blink let's in go, and tap go. him. Nah, I just got to give it to Copy. All right. Not reveal his location. He's going to go back to farming. All right. Well, that is the strength of the Razor, right? When he has this BKB up, he is incredibly scary. That was also Arcane Rune, so he'll have BKB back up fairly soon, as well as the Eye of the Storm. Does need to be careful, though. His team reconnecting with him bottom, but he is alone for the moment. Look at Whisper. I gotta, go. I gotta lanes to cut. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. They don't have a single creep, do they? Well, they have a catapult way back there, but that's not enough. Catapult versus catapult. It'll take 10 seconds for this Dyer's resolve. Top tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Antimate just finished his agonims. That thing's super annoying to just keep tossing it out, find the vision, burn off mana. Uh, very, very useful agonims. Titanic done. Panic done on Razor as well. Hmm. I don't know. I guess at this point we are going into the mid to late game. Oh. They saw Whisper for a second. He's got a deep blink. Oh, no. He's just going to TP. Yep. Oh, that was very close. Gunner blinked over and just barely missed him on the fog of a tree. Oh, anti mage blinks into the mid lane. They actually don't know if that one was real. Turns out it is. Copy, you're just gonna go ahead and siphon a bunch of damage out of the illusion. He's still cycling for another 10 seconds. He is level 20 though, so has that eye of the storm strike interval, you have to be very careful. Dude, this game is just so back and forth. OG is very comfortable playing the split push and just the cut game. They do not want to fight Noun's head up, it looks like. I think it's pretty tough. I think if you try to take a direct head-to-head -head fight, Nouns does have... Unless you get, like, a good combo stun, like, arena into multiple stuns from, like, uh, the, like the lift and the split earth. I, I think it's tough. I think there's, like, Razor stealing damage, Sven doing the AoE cleave. So they want to kind of rat drag out these fights, find pick-offs with, like, Lasso, which Batrider's almost at blink. You have the blink on the Mars, too, for these kind of setups. He's almost at Lincoln's. They're close to some item timings, so they're, they're just going to wait it out, I think. Gunner's going to start chipping away at the mid-tower. Obviously, the DK Illusions pretty good at doing so. But Tomato's doing the same thing, just constantly throwing these blink fragments and his mantas up onto the high ground, and that tower is taking a pretty sizable amount of damage. Uh, it's down to half HP, guys. You've got to respond to this. 
express one in chat if you can relate to being ratted by an anti-mage. Mm. I don't have as I, I like literally could run out of spaces on my keyboard for that. Just give me all ones. <laughs> Ari, he was trying to take the wisdom rune here, but copy makes his rotation over, so not gonna get it. Well. I mean, this game has had such a low net worth advantage. I think at one point it was slightly favoring now. It's about 4,000, but it has been pretty much neck and neck after that mid fight. You see him here in the bottom side. They have vision to scout him out. He doesn't even pop the BKB quite yet. As in comes Yuma. Tomato's here as well. Yuma, you gotta turn around. You gotta be careful. His anti mage freaking hurts, man. BZM with the Bloodstone. It's finally enough to finish the kill. The root holding Tomato in place, but Lasso from Savage there. Whispers got an arena as well. Yuma, you gotta get back in this fight. Dragon Knight coming through. Dragon Tail will keep him in place, and Yuma finally finds a target. But Anti Mage, he's just skirting around on the outside of the fights. Ari's gonna go down. Mars goes down. It is Anti Mage versus the world. Now surviving the onslaught. Dude, that was so close to being a massive win for them. I think the shield rune Copy had may have won them that fight because yeah. Copy was dropping so low. Yeah, we're gonna see it here in the replay. So he he's in this fight the entire time. Steals, I think about 200 damage and he gets so close to dying, but lives long enough that he's allowed to just continue to attack as a satanic going. And that is, that is a lot of damage every single attack with how much he stole. Like, look at that. So much gets committed on him. He lives, he just goes and kills Batrider now. Uh, and then just like keeps going around. Now he's gonna go kill Whisper. So that shield rune keeping him alive because I think he did drop down to like less than a thousand, which the shield rune definitely gave him more than that. Yeah, and combine that with the build from Lelis here, just Glimmer Cape, Solar Crest. It's like as soon as he's getting low, it's like boom, drop both of them on the hero, and suddenly it's a lot more difficult to kill the Razor. He also has a Vindicator's Axe, so your lasso, your stuns that are coming through, just gives him an extra. Um, 20 armor during these stun durations so tanky boy indeed bzm is working on a shivas which will help them a lot that's a really good item versus like three right clicking yeah. heroes essentially he has the plate mail so he's getting the armor but uh getting that aura passive versus the enemy will be really good he's uh he might buy it out i guess actually in, in that case he's quite close but it's a little scary because Roshan could be coming up soon, so you might want to save buyback to to fight fight over that. It is a bit of a long spawn. We still have another minute and forty. I don't think you can farm up buyback and the item in that time though. Yeah, probably not. Where are we at? I mean, smoke up from OG, feeling like maybe they do have the ability to find this fight. I mean, you're so close to the level 20 talent on the track as well. Level 18 with the Agnus Scepter Dragon Knight. So the Dragon Form now, very scary to play into. He's going to be able to just scout with these as well. You know, they're back here. The question is how far? Seb, of course, has his blink. He should be safe. And OG potentially giving up the locations here for the Roche is it's going to be respawning in just about 45 seconds. Ooh, Tomato just found an amplified damage rune. Well, it'll probably expire by the time Roche is up, but a fight might happen before then. He could take a tower push. with it. Yeah, yeah he might force Nounce back. He's going to get right on top of Lashrak, slowed up here by this DK as well. Yuma trying to get active, gets caught from a lasso. Mitzel's going to catch onto the Lesh as well. Whisper comes in, gets a nice arena, but you're just you're just getting shredded on the Lesh here. They're eventually just going to isolate him, and they do. Seb trying to get out, blinking one. He gets out for the second, the missile chasing, but guess what? Tomato is on your high ground. He's taking a tier three. Ones Yuma in chat. wants to finish the bat rider. Start typing ones. Yeah, dude. Tomato's got his own game plan. Spear back finds Gunner Fly as well. These guys need to get out of here, but they're continuing the chase. Tomato's here, ready to fight himself. Flies the first to fall, does get the crystal clone off, but the chase continues, and Tomato will claim another. Oh boy, oh boy, anti-mage. Causing some serious problems now for Nouns. 
As soon as they sent Razor back, OG knew we can fight. A good call by Tomato. He he saw where that fight was breaking out. He's like, there's nowhere good for me to end that fight. I have this Amplified Damage Rune. I can just go and finish off this uh, this tower. But because that fight went on long, I was like, well, actually, now it's pretty close to a tower. So I can come join the fight. There's no Razor. Let's just run at them. And they're going to get the Roche off this and the Roshan's banner. Game one, ratted by Anti-Mage and the Creeps. Impossible to deal with. Yeah, Tomato literally played that as perfect as you as you could. That was such a sick sick call from him. And we'll see the replay here. Amplify damage just on the barracks and they're trying their best to find kills here, but they realize like copy TP'd and they're like, uh oh. We have nothing left. Like we've we've spent everything. Yuma's god strength is down, like Gunner's dragon form is down. Yeah, this is just such a sick play. Yeah, I wonder if there was a bit of miscommunication there on nouns, because I think as soon as Copy leaves, you all have to leave. Copy's actually the strongest hero on their team right now. So without him in the fight, I, I, I think they're extending too far. So maybe he left a little too soon, or his team chased a little bit, thought they were you know a little stronger without him than they were. But pretty costly mistake. Not out of it, but it's getting annoying. Like The, the anti-mage ratting is not going to stop. And I mean, I guess as you get, as we get later and later, maybe we'll see some hexes picked up or something, and that might make it possible to catch anti mage. But until you reach that point, it's it's very annoying dealing with this hero. Whisper also dealing with annoying heroes in the bottom lane here. are scanning. That's so stupid. <laughs> oh. Tomato has his butterfly looking for an abyssal blade as his next item. Obviously, if he's able to get on top of these heroes, lock them down long enough to mana drain them, he might be able to burst them. It's not easy for the Razor, though. He's got Satanic, BKB, and a Lincolns. So this guy should be able to survive quite a bit, but he can just mana burn all of the DK. Still a little bit of damage there. Gets the blink out. He'll be just fine. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Take that. All right, 5k goal lead for nouns doesn't really seem to matter though, right? Dyer's bottom tower is under yeah, attack. it's still... It's very much about how these fights happen, Dyer's and we kind of saw that at that Roche fallen. fight, right? Like, once you overextend, you can still lose. You're not, like, 5k means nothing at this point. Now you're dealing with an Aegis anti-mage. You're gonna have to kill that guy twice. That's pretty insane. I will say, Copy did hit his level 25. The Static Link steals attack speed is a pretty wild ability. But they don't back them away. Okay, that's a TP out from Lesh. They smoke immediately. They're like, okay, run to Lesh. They know we know they're going into this side of the jungle, but unfortunately for them, they're gonna run into Tomato, and he just blinks to safety. He's out. And Lesh will not is, stick have... around to find either. Yeah. The thing is, you have Blink stunned from Gunner, and then Yuma can follow that up. Maybe you get the Rocket. Because Rocket is so slow. I like. I don't really think you can count on that. That's your two stuns, like the DK stun and the Sven stun. Can you kill Anti-Mage in that time? And I don't think you can. That is, like... That's the yeah, troll the here, right? Maybe, with the 25 talent as well, a god strength is possible. Maybe. It's just so hard. He's got his tier 4 too, he's trying to decide. I wonder if he has the option for the, uh, what's it called, the cap one. Yeah, aesthetics cap? Yeah. Yeah, if he gets aesthetics cap, ooh, rattle cage, also very good. And this puts him up to 71% physical damage reduction. Oh, along with Knight the doesn't make it in time to stun up the Mars as he'll just pop that Ogre Seal Total. Even the Arena to guarantee he survives. Anti-Mage on the bottom side here. Getting slowed up by Copy. Will blink to safety. They'll get the D-Wards. 
But that is God Strength down, BKB Arena down. So some spells being traded. Both teams kind of grasping for any pickoff right now, but... Not easy. Oh, Seb. Maybe he found the pickoffs. Crystal Maiden goes down. Tomato with immediate follow-up. Nice grab there. He is going... He's going Disperser. He's got his Diffusal done now, too. More mana burn plus the haste dispel. Very good. Yeah, I mean, Sven's a hero who doesn't want to be kited, right? And uh, you've already got the blink. You've got evasion move speed. And they're going to be even faster with that dispersion. No boots anti-mage. I mean, the team fry from OG late game is getting very scary. You have the refresher picked up here on the Mars. So you're going to have double arena, double spear. Sometimes you go for like the scythe late game, but he's got an abyssal blade queued up at the moment. I don't know if you're going to have the mana Radiant for your spell kit scan. without a other mana item, but Radiant either way, it's like you just, if you take one fight, you win the fight, you have a second fight to throw your spells. So still pretty solid. Maybe it's time for Lullis to start scaling as a core. He does have a hex queued up, but it's uh, what I say earlier. He's like a hex away from a hex. He's nowhere yeah. near this item. It is uh, not going to come online until at least 50, 55 minutes. Unless he picks up some massive kills. Oh, whisper. Lincolns will protect him from the Dragon Knight. And Ogre seals away. Just constantly slowed up here by these DK illusions. Tomato, no blink to safety. Whisper actually needs to be a little bit careful. He's gonna be forced to BKB. Coffee's just gonna chase him down. He's trying to play on the arena wall, but not enough. This guy does a lot of damage. And it's gonna be, you know, Eye of the Storm, BKB out from the Razor, but no Mars for 70 seconds as he bought out that refresher. Don't know if they'll realize that. They are pushing down, so at least trying to make use of the fact that Mars is dead. I don't know if they will... How close they were paying attention, like, hey, he just got that or not. Uh, but you could definitely punish here a bit. You kind of need that arena for your team fight, the stuns that Mars brings. Yeah, absolutely. Gunner just Dragon trying to whittle down, down the towers. Though. Yeah, that's true. Doesn't seem like they're pushing it that hard. Maybe trying to catch BZM, but he's gone. Really good. He's yeah, great, great read from BZM. Shows her one wave immediately leaves. All right, so now as we'll back up, we are at 41 minutes, and neither of these teams feeling comfortable taking the five-on-five -five engagement. Uh, it's like you said, a lot of it just comes down to how the fight develops, and. If you're the ones taking the bad engagement, it's... I mean, the, the game could end so fast. Yeah, I don't think you feel up, pressured to... I don't think OG strictly feels pressured to take these 5 on 5s, because you have this anti-mage, and... I, I really think it's hard to... to catch him. So they can just keep letting anti-mage force rotations, and then you take the fight. I say that, but you're right. They are smoked up and looking for something. That's exact. I think Seb's just looking for a pickoff, right? He, he's got telescope, blink, force. He can find someone from so far away. I think they're baiting this anti-mage. Sven's not here. Well, they find the real Dragon Knight. He's got a BKB, but just loses all of his mana immediately. He can't cast it now. He's dead without buyback. He just bought out an Olifier. That's 90 seconds, no Dragon Knight. I mean, the that is a good call from Whisper. which he was mana burned was insane. Dis Diffusal plus the mana break. Dragon Knight, not a huge mana hero. It's just all gone instantly. You throw like two blink fragments and a Manta, dude. That's, yeah, your mana is super gone. What is this nullifier? Just for like Four. Yule Scepter on the Lash, I'd imagine. That's gotta be it. 
Uh, I mean, technically, he can dispel Disperser's buff as well, so maybe he can't, like, surge himself away. I, I don't... I'm not 100% sure. There's got to be some yeah. other reasons behind it, but... This might be a Tier 3 bottom, and you do not have another fortification coming up after this tower, so BZM feels very comfortable just taking this down himself. He's going to start popping those split earths. He also completed an Aghanim Scepter, which I did not notice. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. And those Edict Explosions, that's going to make quick worth of work of this lane of barracks. And Roshan is up. We'll be third Rosh, meaning it has the Refresher at the moment. Goes to the top side, we will be seeing the Aghanim Scepter. An immediate smoke, but they're positioned on OG for this fight. They are daring you to walk up onto the high ground to go for this. Tomato gets the blink out, throws on forward. Whisper gets the arena, but the BKBs are out from two. He needs to be careful. Copy on the backside. Try to just chase down BZM. Whisper pops his refresher, trying to just run away. But Copy, he gets trapped on by Tomato. He guts him, takes the kill, and now it's Gunner versus the rest. Tomato's going one by one, takes down Fly, the anti mage is too damn strong he's gonna buy back here on this race running back into this fight but tomato's on top of yuna he's got one more second if he can get out of this one but he will not be able to this is tomato's world you're living in mana voids back up gunner gonna be executed next double kill for bzm and nouns are crumbling as a blink dragon tail comes out from rubik this time you must back in onto the high ground great split earth catches too they will take down ari but you need way more you buy back three heroes, and you only get the supports. He found an amplified damage rune too. Hmm, it's uh, I I don't know how Nouns take these fights anymore. I we're kind of seeing it right. You you try to go on anti mage, you can't. He's just like jumping around. You try to go on these other heroes. Like, they pop BKB and they're just running. I, I guess that is partly what the nullifier is for, is to try to prevent these, like, four staffs and glimmers that are kiting the Sven. But it just doesn't feel like it's enough. They're trying to get Roche off their buybacks. I think and Copy course, also Ari's. held BKB in that fight. He was chasing down BZM, and Tomato just does exactly what, we were what happened to the DK. He blinks over, throws, like, two blink fragments and a Manta completely mana burned the razor and he didn't get the bkb like if he bkbs there maybe they kill the uh the lashrak and he's able to stand his ground a little bit longer but no, not anymore and now we're gonna see aegis cheese and an agonim scepter go their way ags i mean i feel like you just give this to seb right or rubik it's one of the two okay they will give it to rubik I like double lasso could be pretty sick but they'll uh Nouns actually That's kind of true. a bold move here, playing under their own ward sentry. Seb comes in, catches the dragon tail, pulled back. He's dead immediately. Decent start to the fight for Nouns, but will you actually find the real Tomato? I don't know. Buy back here. They're going to back to their base. No longer feeling confident they want to play on the high ground. I mean, they know that's God strength. I think they're just going to push up as soon as that ends. What a bounty! You're just going to send Tomato up. Actually, I don't even know if you will. Like, you'll probably send uh, Tomato's Illusions up, and then <laughs> you're going to have to deal with them. Lasso's available, obviously, right? Seb died before we got to see him use it in this last engagement. And he's just going to try and scout, find these targets, gets the Lincoln's pop here on the copy. If you can pull this Razor in, it would spell disaster for nouns. We'll take down another lane of barracks. No heroes with buyback outside of Tomato. As the Dragon Tail comes out, finds the Lush, but comes in, gets a great arena. The Spear catching Razor as well. Call down, zoning them, but there it is. The Lasso finds Gunner on the Dragon Knight, and Tomato will make quick work of him. No Dragon Knight for 90 seconds. BZM focused up on these barracks. And, you know, we were wondering can Tomato put this game? 
on his back if it goes late. It looks like absolutely he can. Arena Spear out from Whisper perfectly. Don is Tomato. He's just held Yuma in place. The BKB comes out, but he blinks the safety copy. Just completely kited out on the backside. A Glimmer Cape rooting him. And there it is. One by one, a big mana void out from Tomato. That's a dieback on your Razor, a dieback on your Crystal Maiden. Yuma takes a split earth from BZM, speared into Oblivion, and that will be four dead, no buybacks. GG comes out, and OG will turn around game number one. Beautifully done. That's a very impressive game. I was not sure how to read that anti-mage pick. But the way they played around it was so nice. I think the lane probably was maybe a little rougher than they were hoping. But eventually they started to make space for him. He recovered really well, got his Battle Fury, got all the items he needed. And then he just became so difficult to deal with in these fights. And the, the decision making on BKB, I know it's easy to say like, oh, they should just BKB. But it's so hard because if you BKB early, because you're not sure if it's the real anti-mage or not, so you pop BKB early, they're gonna kite you, and then you're gonna get you're gonna get shredded by the Leshrac. You're gonna get stuck in the Mars arena. So you need to you need to have like the perfect BKB usage by nouns. And it's it's so tough when you can just bait it out with the the anti-mage illusions. And I think OG made great use of that, just constantly ratting, finding the right fights baiting out even the five on fives like just baiting it out like just keep throwing illusions until like yes this is this is the fight we want now we go yeah i mean tomato as soon as he got the aghanim scepter seemed to just break nouns uh, he did, he got so much done with it not only just scouting in the early fights but he was able to split push so reliably without having to commit too much and then he just farms like he was split pushing their tier three top like you said you know ones in chat for the animated split push he then backdoors the mid lane or just cuts the mid lane during the fight comes back kills you know two more heroes on the on the retreat uh he really had an, an exceptional performance this game on the anti-mage and it i will have to say seb's early game uh, impact on this bat rider cannot be understated he was level eight when he had like no business on a five position bat rider being mm -hmm. that high level able to get a lot done and of course whisper on the mars was the uh, kind of tag team right those these two guys got so much momentum back their way when nouns were starting to kind of pull away from the lane stage yeah that bottom lane by og really they they played i i don't know how wrong my read is i guess but like i did not expect that bottom lane to go that way at all and og did it like i was worried about a bat rider 5's impact with the needing to help the anti-mage but seemed to be do fantastic and i was like oh anti-mage seems like he's a little behind he's not gonna farm as well he had a really good timing on everything so i don't know i guess 2k cast are at it but uh, that's something i'm curious if they do end up winning another game we get an interview i'd be curious on how they, they expected this lane to go because i think yeah. both of them played really well i'd have to agree i, I was definitely surprised with what they were managing to accomplish uh, from that, I mean, looking back at some of these fights early, you can see like Tomato, he's still getting a lot done, but he never died. The the one mistake from Yuma in that mid game, or that mid lane engagement where he had disassembled his Echo and and mm -hmm. thought he was gonna get the double tap on the anti mage, he ends up living was definitely costly. It's not like game changing, but. Getting that kill definitely gives Yuma a pretty good amount of XP and gold, and it would have slowed down Tomato a little bit, maybe changing some of the mid-game fights, but yeah, uh, Tomato played this ridiculously well. This was the fight I think that broke down. They were at a 6k advantage here, and I don't think they ever got back from here. Yeah, I think if they... Yeah, maybe if they win that fight, I mean, it's so close to the enemy base, right? Maybe you can break the game open there, but instead ratted by an anti-mage and he joins the fight and wins the fight that was kind of that was kind of it apparently so i think nouns showed some good stuff there i i, I overall like the draft i think maybe it needed more early pressure like not not that the heroes had to change but like the way they played it felt like they were waiting for certain items but i, I just checked their stacks it's not the greatest amount of stacks for uh, some cores, you could really clear it. So maybe if they had, I don't know exactly what they needed to do, 
but like either maybe make more stacks or make more early plays one of those like hit those timing faster or instead of farming waiting for stuff you're just applying the pressure then maybe it would have gone better it feels like og made it through they i felt like they were struggling a little bit but they bought enough time to the point where i came how do you deal with them i don't know i wonder if like you needed some form of healing reduction to try and kill the lesh because copy this game was just chasing bzm constantly and it's like eventually lesh becomes so tanky that you can't kill him uh and so i wonder like if the play was something like going for the refresher maybe a scotty and just like I don't know, like the nullifier on DK makes sense later because you can maybe try and just burst down the Lashrac, but it doesn't end up happening. And buying time in these fights for OG is the best thing in the world because Anti-Mage will win all of these fights that don't result in a hero getting bursted. So yeah, exceptional performance from OG. Really good patience from them as they grab themselves their first, uh, they're winning this first series or first game, but there's still a series to be finished. So we'll be going to a short break, everyone. We'll be back with game number two of OG versus now. And stay tuned. We'll see you in just a bit.
Welcome back, everybody. We are at the tail end of the day here for the Elite League. We've got uh, this last series, one, potentially two games, depending on how this one's going to uh, kind of flesh itself out. It is Nouns versus OG here. Uh, my name's Cryptic here with Z Quixotics, and honestly, an incredible performance from OG in game one. Nouns looked like they were in relatively good control for quite some time, but just probably one of the best anti mage performances I have seen in a very long time to make... Uh, <laughs> tomato sorry see, i to see you doing the tomato memes but tomato had just an incredible performance that was i was a pleasure to watch yeah he's been doing really well this series and i think og is giving him a little bit more emphasis trying to set him up for success um and i feel like they've been sacrificing bzm a little bit but sometimes that's how it goes right you can't make every single lane win you sometimes do have to focus on people so for now it seems to be working out for them we'll see what adjusts nouns here in game number two because nouns i mean they definitely want to go to three games right they want to they want to bring this back around and i think the draft was not to start was fine i'm i'm very curious how both teams take the the anti-mage like if that's how it should have gone and that's something i'm sure we can ask in the interview no matter who ends up winning uh, but for now, remaining. they they made a slight adjustment. They're going to ban out the Bat Rider. I feel like that was the start of the problem. It does mean that they end up giving the Doom over to OG, uh, which other teams will pick Doom if it looks like a good Doom game. But OG seems to put a lot of emphasis on Doom. I guess it's because they do flex it between the three and the four, and they maybe sometimes feel comfortable grabbing that early. I think the Centaur is a fantastic response to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't want to pick Mars with a Doom on your team because you don't want to run a Doom Mars off lane. That sounds terrible. So <laughs> with the Doom reveal, you're like, okay, if someone gets Doomed, we stampede no, them out to safety. To Hopefully pick. it's enough time to uh, wait for that Doom to expire and then we turn the fight in our own favor. But yeah, I, I like the Centaur a lot. It's another classic hero from Gunner. He he's been playing, I think, mostly the Dragon Knight and the Centaur as his two main heroes. So... I think he's happy with his pick either way. Ten the other bands, though, we're going to see the Life Stealer and the Meepo removed. Both of them very good against Doom. If you don't Doom the main Meepo, he just presses Mega Meepo, and you're like, well, that sucks. So <laughs> I like it. And they go back for the Gyrocopter. Yeah, if this is for support Gyro again. It will be pretty strong. Uh, lane combo right there. If, if not, you can still run in position five, carry. How do you feel about that gyrocopter the last game? Five seconds remaining. I mean, Lelis owned. He did a ton of damage on this hero in the last game. He almost sold a Lashrac in one of these fights. Uh, I think <laughs> he's very good at it, and I think that's why they don't mind picking it early in the draft for him. Mm -hmm. um, there is always the flex potential for Yuma, but it usually is played by Lelis. And this lane, not a traditional centaur partner, right? Usually you want to play something that can, like, allow the centaur to get close to the hero or gap close things like bat rider shadow demon rubik different things like that they do go back for the mars now i look wrong, stupid Ricky. og why would you do that that's exactly why they did it they're listening to the draft <laughs> five position doom it's actually what it has to be like this has to be seb playing doom in the five i actually don't know what you do otherwise mm. i think they just play it pretty greedy the uh the wind ranger pick very likely to be a support wind ranger seb kind of the only guy who's just like really doing it you can actually run carry and mid wind ranger still i think into the centaur you have to be a little bit careful of that it is uh flexible in that sense but it would if you've been following og it's no surprise at all if this just ends up being position five wind ranger and she probably won't die in this lane because of wind run. She can just get away. She is a little fragile at the start. So if she does get caught, that's a lot of magic damage. If it is the no, centaur no. and gyro. Um, but yeah, that Mars doom does feel like a little bit of an awkward lane. And we're going to have to see how they play it. Maybe there's going to be a lot of creep dragging or something. I'm interested to see where this clockwork goes now because Lelis is normally the one who plays it for now. So... It could be a core gyro. They could do five gyro. Maybe fly will take the clockwork. We'll have to see. They do go back for the Luna. So I feel like your safe lane is now Luna clockwork. I feel like that's what we're looking at here. And that seems pretty good against a potential either Mars Doom lane or just Mars plus one. 
Yeah, yeah I think something. that should be fine. It, it like even for us, we're a little bit confused how this offlane will go. But if it does get kind of strange, Luna's pretty solid because because of how quickly she can jungle and her just very stable lane. She can use Q to secure creeps, good base damage just to like last hit deny. Uh, so I think, you know, being unsure of how things look, I think it's a pretty safe pick. They're going to go with the Morphling. He, That's good. Yeah, we see him do pretty well versus the Centaur. Like maybe the first levels, it's a bit annoying with Centaur's high base damage. But once you pick up a couple levels, you're never like that worried about dying. And you, we often see just both these cores farming in this lane matchup. Yeah. They eventually just ignore each other and they both get last hits and both get their items like neither of them have kill threat after the first few levels um i'm curious where they want to go with the mid lanes like like you said you could flex the wind ranger into a mid lane or carry now that we see the morphling i'm kind of leaning towards this being a carry or a mid lane wind ranger and then maybe you're last picking your four position or something maybe they're gonna run a mid mars and an off lane doom i don't really know like the fact that you pick doom and mars on the same team does definitely throw a wrench in things but wind ranger morphling does not sound like a very convincing safe lane for me and seb like you said is normally the one that plays this wind ranger so i don't know maybe bad. maybe still put ari on the doom when you just swap the lanes and put doom bottom seb still takes wind ranger but plays from the off lane i wouldn't hate that I hmm. I don't know. OG does not have last pick, so they are going to have to reveal their last pick here. And hopefully that helps clarify for us where things are going. But I am curious what Nouns is imagining. They think it might be a mid laner that uh, OG is looking for. And I think it... I don't know. Maybe maybe they're, it's still open to them, but maybe the hero they're thinking about does not want to play into Puck or something. I I do not know. I, I do think for now, so the, with a clearer draft to us, uh, I do think they need their remaining. their mid hero who I wouldn't mind if it had some playmaking potential, but you do have this clockwork with uh, level six hookshot. Uh, Stampede can help you make aggressive plays, although, I mean, defensive, we actually see that maybe a little bit more. Um, it's a little bit covered, so if they just want a really good mid laner i think that's okay to shut down whatever they see i think something to shut down the morphling could be good but since you have last pick on nouns you can just try to set copy up with a really good lane matchup and maybe play around that yeah i'm curious what his plan is because they banned out templar assassin which i'm a little bit surprised about i know obviously it's it's an okay matchup uh for certain things but uh, Puck definitely struggles to it. They don't want to play into Lashrak again. It looks like that they're tired of that one. So <laughs> makes sense. BZI made a good case for the hero last game. And even with the counter pick of the Razor mid, they didn't feel confident. And I think this game, you also don't really want to take the Ten Razor seconds, mid because of the morph, remaining. right? Like it's an, similar to the anti-mage where he can't stick on him. Five so. seconds remaining. Plus, obviously, yeah. you just steal static link and then it doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's true. You're so looking at who's available. I don't know. We've seen some like really good Kunkka performances, and he actually has made it all the way through this draft. That is true. A lot of teams, have, we've seen several teams actually first phase banning this, uh, but Pango is still, no, Pango was banned. Okay, never mind. I was like, was Pango banned? Dying it wisened up. There is a Primal Beast option. I think the clockwork little... is pretty rough. Yeah, that's the awkward part for them. Um, Nouns maybe could run it, but it's a little awkward into Arena. And even like the wind run, it's hard to, like if it is end up being a core wind remaining. range, it's hard to like actually kill her sometimes because she like outruns you, but. Five seconds remaining. I mean, Monkey King ban leads me to believe they're looking for something like Ember or Kunkka. Yeah, some kind of melee hero. Was TA does well that? versus those two. That's true, yeah have to imagine that's what we're looking we only have a couple seconds left here no, og gonna have to show their hand okay boy spirit decent enough universal hero with lots of damage in the lane so pretty safe what could you do on nouns to shut this Ten down obviously 
You could look for something like a Queen of Pain. Five seconds remaining. I don't think. I mean, you could look for a Zeus, but I don't know if it's enough. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think you have like the ability to stand your ground on a Zeus this game against like Mars Wind Ranger and a more yeah, voice I think... like so much backline dive. Mm -hmm. I think something either relatively tanky or with your own mobility, because I do think getting some help to slow down this Morphling would be good. I mean, Tomato's been having such strong performances. I don't think you want this guy to just run free. So you either need a Morphling response that you just don't care if he's farmed, like you're going to handle it, or you pick up... Sniper. Someone's going to shut him down. I think Sniper... Dude, okay. I, I thought about this hero, but when I made my Zeus point, I was like, eh, they wouldn't do Sniper for the exact same reason, right? But I guess because of the Ags build, it's not bad into the Mars, right? I guess. I'm worried about it, though. I mean, I like it. I love seeing Sniper. Sniper is one of my favorite heroes in Dota. Uh, don't hate me, chat. But my worry is that let's say Sniper absolutely pops off and dumpsters this void. When you want to take fights, you simply arena the area you're interested in and Sniper cannot contribute. I mean, he can shrapnel and he can use his ult, but like all his right clicks will not go in. Uh, obviously, there's more to a fight than that. You can, you know, do a little bit more, but I that's what I'm worried about with this, with this Sniper pick. And as anticipated... Or like predicted, I guess you could say. Seb on the Wind Ranger, Ari on the Doom. We see these guys play these supports all the time. A little bit unorthodox from what you would probably see in some other drafts. But I think the idea is the Doom will be in the Morphling lane. And Seb will be in the off lane with the Mars. I don't think you want to run double melee into, you know, Clockwork Luna. That seems pretty rough. I bet they will, though. <laughs> you think they will anyway i don't know i'm, I'm okay if they swap I, I think it makes sense if they swap but i also think uh i think to i guess the way i would approach is i i think morphling just needs to get through the first few levels and then he'll be fine um so i guess you only need a support to do that much and it depends if you think you can play this lane like running mars wind ranger and just play like a straight 2v2 because otherwise if you're just going to creep drag then just have doom do it and in fact that might be better because you could even take an early point in devour and at least you're like getting something out of like moving around the map because you're eating jungle creeps as you move um so i guess it depends if they like if they think wind ranger will make that big of a deal like of a difference in the way they play in that lane ari's got boots he's just creep dragging does nom, he nom, actually? Nom. He's gonna eat. <laughs> Does creeps. he actually just have boots? He's yeah, just got boots. Okay. Uh, so he's gonna. I mean, if you go boots first, Doom, you're playing in the off lane into the clockwork. That's the idea. He's like, yep, I have to just run away from this little mech goblin who's gonna ruin my life. Sniper does have the bonus nighttime vision, right? So a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. Not full vision, but a little bit of lag. It's okay. Yeah, there's been some lag today on the servers. Uh, our last series, the teams were mentioning it as well. I'm sure we'll get going in a moment here. I am... How well do you think Sniper will do versus Void? Because... So range like versus melee, damage usually... Disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, usually good for Sniper. That's what I'm worried about. Void being universal has a lot of damage. And then later on at level 6, Sniper's weakness is people gap closing on him, which Void Spirit is fantastic at. I think for the most part it's fine because you will probably end up maxing or at least putting two points in Shrapnel from the mid lane. The idea being is like you can pretty easily farm the medium camp behind your tower as Radiant. On Sniper, you can stack it super easily. And BZM is going to be forced to play in the lane. And Resident Pulse does not... It's never going to hit the hero. So he's only ever going to get, like, the base barrier, which is almost nothing. And it doesn't help you against Shrapnel. The, the longest wraparound from Nouns, by the way. Do you see them? The smoke for this top rune. They're waiting, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> he's baiting it. I love it. Seb's going to walk right into it. He goes, oh, oh. I just saw it disappear. Hey, wait a minute. Gunner trying to block up 
tomato as well as the creep wave we'll just pop the stomp here to guarantee it okay so they do actually put uh yeah seb just here on the safe lane wind ranger in this matchup the tower okay the creep doesn't make it in the tower so he'll be fine all right i'm definitely gonna be watching mid because i am curious but for now, he's got one point headshot. It is very annoying to play in the lane when Sniper has this. Did you think it was yours? Bottom lane, something cool they did is they just immediately shoved in this lane so that they go creep drag. But actually, the way the creep split, things are getting like really wacky in this bottom lane. And it is hard to tell how this is going to play out in the end. I'm a big fan of wacky Dota. Sign me up. Ari I think right now just... it's going OG's way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Yuma is CSing fairly well, but the full creep wave drag there is going to be very nice. They'll completely reset. Whisper's going to get a hard camp pull as well. So Luna now has to go contest this, and they have ward vision. So this is fantastic has been for the side of OG. Meanwhile, Fly is still chasing R to the ends of the earth. Those first item boots paying off. All right. And the wave's going to combine under the tower again, so making it difficult for Yuma to see us here. There's like two bottom lanes happening right now. This is this is weird. Yeah, and I think it's going... I think this is really good for OG, unless you punish Whisper right here with this huge creep wave, and I kind of think they need to. I think Fly's got battery salt, and he should just wrap on Whisper. He's about to hit level two, but he's like one creep away. If if Fly hit level two, maybe you could trap Whisper in and and, and put some damage there. But you must just gonna keep pulling in the safe lane here, try and just realign the waves. Yeah, it seems like it. Well, he's gonna deny that banner creep. So okay. <laughs> BZM. Taking a lot of headshots here in the mid lane. Now, the real question is, will he hold his points or continue to put points in take aim? We'll have to see. All right, he's got the point of shrapnel now. So this is kind of what I expected. The early points in the headshot just for easy harassment. And then eventually, you start going for more points in your shrapnel. That's going to be your big farming tool. You kind of want two points by... If you're worried about being killed in the mid lane, you kind of want two points in shrapnel before that point, which tends to be level six because that's when the enemy mids often pick up their gap closing abilities. Uh, that way you can just clear out creep waves and stay safe. Fortunately for Sniper, one of Sniper's weaknesses is getting ganked, but the, the supports on the side of OG are not really the best ganking heroes, especially when you have to just keep creep dragging on Ari here. So yep. that helps Sniper just be able to like play the lane, shove things out and either farm or punish really hard without being too worried of suddenly, you know, like a tusk or something, just suddenly jumping you and you're trapped. They're really wanting to get on top of Ari, but two points scorched to earth, gonna make it very difficult. And Fly needs boots, right? He needs like 70 more gold to get to his boots if he wants to be able to try and chase down this doom. It's gonna be a minute though. My just such a bizarre bottom lane. This just isn't Dota anymore. Oh, this is Dota in 2024. This is this is new age laning. Why play the lane when you can simply not play the lane? Exactly. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? It's Lane's genius. too hard. We don't do it anymore. I mean, overall, I think the game's still okay for now despite all the shenanigans that's happening bottom. It's going well for Radiant's Whisper because I thought this lane was going to be a lot worse. Mid lane's kind of a draw. Gunner doing well in this off lane, which is expected, right? The Centaur versus Morphling matchup is kind of the same matchup every time. Yeah, I think it's it's going a little better for Gunner than I thought. I think maybe some of that's the uh, the oh, extra Ranger. power from the gyro. I've been watching bottom, so I haven't seen exactly what's happened, but he's picking up more of a lead than I think we've seen other other Morphlings do in this lane. I will yeah. say Gunner, as a former mid laner, is very good at last hitting. So he tends to do pretty well, as you mentioned, like on the different heroes he plays, 
he he's really good about making use of the like slight differences in damage. He's also doing the build that I like in these types of matchups where he just goes two points in the retaliate because it, it allows you to do a lot of return damage to this Wind Ranger who typically would like to just harass you down, but kind of goes back the other way. All right, fly, time to shine to the bottom here. It does have his boots, gonna just chase down Ari, but he's managed to pull the uh, little acorns and he's forced away. All right, short-lived, but might he do it again? We'll have to see. He, there's no way you didn't see him place the ward, right? He had to? He's Maybe got he to have seen that. Ari with his own score. Dude, they're just literally trading Scorched Earth for Battery Assault constantly. And uh, Fly's gonna call a buff. He's like, I'm stronger, dude. I will kill you. The question is, Ari. Oh, the shrapnel for just safe measure in first blood going the way of the sniper. He drops the sentry, but it's just off the mark from the wall. Wow, that is unlucky. He must not uh. have. He must not have had Doom selected, so he knew it disappeared in this area, but didn't know exactly where. That's unfortunate. I think something that caught Ari off guard, Clockwork not super popular right now. And so this recent change kind of forgotten a little bit, but Power Cogs actually gives you a magic barrier when you use it. Yeah. And it's pretty small at level one, but it made just enough of a difference there to to get them the kill, along with a sniper throwing in the shrapnel from afar, of course. I mean, that magic barrier, It's it absorbs 50, but that's like post reduction, right? So it ends up being like, 70 HP or 70 damage from the Scorched Earth that's absorbed, which is like two full seconds. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, makes the difference for sure. Whisper in the bottom lane has the the spear to push back the clockwork. Blood Grenade comes out, Stampede as well, and yeah, he's not getting out of this one. They're bringing some help though. Seb and Ari coming to the bottom lane. They will not be able to help as uh, Lelis offers quite a bit of extra damage thanks to the gyrocopter is well BZM's copy, looking for getting chased by BZM. Dude, he's got a regen rune running as well. Copy has to pop the stick as well as the fairy fire, so he's gonna make it out. That is a very nice regen. They have to know there is still a ward there. Seb? Oh boy, he might just have died 100 to zero. Oh, nice pop of the uh, kill Ari drops, too? but- No way. All right, he has an astral step in four. But Sniper's coming back. Oh, he goes in aggressive. Copy, gonna do some serious damage. He goes right into the Luna though, BZM. Ends up getting baited by these supports. Dude, Nouns these are massive kills for Nouns. I mean, I guess I hadn't thought about it, but now seeing it in action, that 2v3 from the Noun supports. Oh no, fly! Sorry, go ahead. Did he miss go it again? Ahead. Oh, again. rip, rip. He's like, it's farther in the jungle, right? No. <laughs> the wrong direction. The third one. The third one. will get it. You couldn't pick. These are like two of the highest damage, strongest supports you could get. The Clockwork and the Gyro. So they are dominating in these early fights with the damage they can output. Uh, I mean, like Undying, Enchanters, maybe they're like Chen. Like these are some other strong ones, but... We see it again. Stampede committed to the bottom lane, but now you're stuck in the arena as a rotation from BZM is going to try and isolate Yuma. He pops a Lotus, trying to maybe find a kill on a Whisper, but cannot do it. Beautiful bait this time from the side of OG as Fly will be the next to fall. Nice. Three heroes dead on the side of Nouns. And BZM at the ready for this one. Yeah, great response from them. In the meantime, top lane is what we talked about earlier. It's like, yeah, they're just farming. Two of them are just going to take turns farming while everyone else is playing. Sniper trying to finish up an item. He's getting close to Dragonlance. I'm curious if they'll start playing around him more or if he'll start joining things. Uh, but you don't want to get involved too soon as Sniper because it's just not your strong point. You do want to pick up uh, some early items off your strong laning stage and then start getting involved. They're looking for fly bottom lane. Beautiful cogs out. We'll be able to push Ari at bay, but... A lot of damage to follow it up, so. Well played once again from OG and Seb. Just gonna stay here back behind the tower, keep them guessing on where this Wind Ranger is. That being said, you do lose your mid tower for all this pressure on bottom. It might be worth it for slowing down Yuma, because this Luna does have a pretty good game at the moment, but. 
I'm actually a little surprised Fly even tried to defend that bottom tower. I thought they would just trade mid for bottom. Let's see, Sniper's got his Dragon Lance. He's still farming, though, so maybe he wants something else first. I mean, I'm curious if he's just going to go straight into the Aghanim Scepter. I feel like a lot of times that's what I see from mid lane. It's like a Dragon Lance, straight Ags. It's not as easy to hit against the Void Spirit because he has, you know, Dissimilate, but... There's also a waveform on the Morphling. I still think it's pretty good when you factor in the fact... Wow, that was a terrible sentence. When you factor in the amount of burst damage you have from these other heroes to follow it up. I guess it would set up, like, if you land the, the Assassinate, easy hook shot, maybe homing missile. It just kills everyone that's not morph or void spear, right? And I think that's the yeah. important thing. But maybe he'll right, play more of a carrier build. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I wouldn't mind like one more carry-ish item before going for that Ag's Conda. Um, but yeah, he's holding the money a little bit. So maybe thinking about it through with his uh, team as well. They do take this top tower. I kind of hope to see them just like camp this top half of the map for a bit here. I think they're before they commit to that, they're waiting for the supports to hit six because uh, they, they were really strong, but they were kind of like roaming the jungle, getting kills. So they are both under leveled a little bit, but both these alts, hookshot and uh, call down, very powerful. A lot of so heroes you want closing those. in on a mid lane. It is. I'm going to try and force them out. They want to secure this uh, power rune. Fly not quite, like you said, level 6, but enough to zone him away, and he will just take the haste rune. I mean, you don't have a, a mid rune, uh, like a, a rune carrier in the mid lane, right? So just denying him from the void spirit is good enough. Oh, blink reveal into the stun. Void spirit. He's going to have to be able to dodge out the missile. Stampede comes through. Lelis, no call down, and they will not be able to close the gap. He's out. Very nicely done from BZM. At the same time, he's being bullied out of his own jungle, and it's making him go home, which means you won't see him making any ganks. So as long as you're careful here, because you know he's got to go home, as long as you're careful of him, like, respawning, or sorry, teleporting out, smoking, making a play, I think you don't mind, because you are just kind of letting Sniper hit some timings, let the, the gyro... Clockwork, get their all yeah, so avoids TPing bottom. They're, They're looking for a kill. Bottom. They're already smoked here. They see Yuma. This is the blink on Whisper. I mean, getting this would be huge. The arena comes out immediately. The spear connects. Is he gonna get any help? The doom is out, no chance. He's gonna pop the mask of madness, try and maybe get a kill of his own, but can't do it. Mid lane, looking for Seb here. Call down is out. Fly uses the hook shot gunner to follow it up. Uh, I mean a way better trade if you're OG. Yeah, I think Yuma needed to get out of there a little bit sooner as, like, his team is playing on the enemy's half of the map. So if you can't see anyone, I think you need to be really careful attack. and kind of assume that they're coming to you. Is under Sniper also, is going straight for the eggs. Is he? Okay. Uh, I was going to say, they've dedicated a lot of vision on OG to the Radiant Jungle, right? This ward recently placed, but they've had the early ward near the river there and an even deeper one in the jungle for quite some time. Bottom lane, fly. Stampeded on in, looking for the Doom. Does manage to get on top of him, but he's fast still. Question is, will he be able to hit the Cogs? There's a missile coming through. Meanwhile, a whole nother fight happening as Mars and Centaur are doing their own thing. Doom, though, gonna eventually fall here. Trying to get a deny off, but Fly saves the kill. Oh, okay, there is some very interesting stuff. Oh, Mars has no TP, that's why. I was like, doesn't he just TP out? He, he got it canceled by Gunner. He thought he went up the high ground and started TPing, but he was just low enough that Gunner could see him. Uh, oh, otherwise, okay. Gunner might have like blinked too far and then missed the stun. So it was a nice try from Whisper. <laughs> he was trying to, like, again, min-max, just falls a little short. You see this, the circles drawn on the map from Tomato. He's like, look, guys, they're all back here. It's fine. They're not do they're, on, they're not on the map. It's like he's I'm farming, farming so the much now. Yeah, he's not wrong. BZM and... Uh... Morphling, Tomato, they're, they're just farming up. Trying to catch up a little bit here. I mean, Tomato's not really that far behind. No, not at None all. of them are that far behind, but there is a lead going towards Nouns. Bounty. Just slightly, and I think part of that 
will start to disappear as we get more levels on the Doom, right? Because Devour does end up being a pretty substantial GPM talent, basically. That uh, being said, in the jungle, they managed to find Seb as well as the Void Spirit. Hookshot comes through. They just stunned up Seb. He's stuck inside, but a massive arena from Whisper is going to do a lot of damage back the other way. Gunner trying to finish off EZM does manage to do it. Fly comes in to finish off that set, uh, Doom. I mean, I thought for sure with this, they were looking way better, but they even find an extra kill onto the Wind Ranger. Costs Gunner his life, though, as Whisper. A lot of damage out of his Mars. Dude, these fights are so weird. Yeah, I, I thought the arena would be a bigger turnaround, but I think Doom and Wind Ranger do, just don't bring the early damage the way that uh, Gyrocopter and Clockwork do. So even though it's a really good initiation and the initial burst is there, like the actual finishing damage is not. Dyer's top tower. That is true. Like, the Wind Ranger gets, like, a lot of damage out from Power Shot, but he has no points in Focus Fire as the support Wind Ranger. So you're not getting, like, this sustained damage out. Lelis bottom lane in some troubles. Fear not at the moment. Does finally connect, but quick pick up there for Tomato with the waveform. Fly will get the D ward. He's like, all right. Tired of that one. Found one of the wards, guys. I did it. He's uh, He's been unfortunate. He's missed quite a few. It's just how warding goes sometimes because it is a bit of a bit of a game of chance sometimes on like where they placed it, but they're a little unlucky. There's been a lot of sentries placed that bottom half. Yeah. Boom, there it goes. So Yuma top lane. He has a Manta style done now, so quite a good pickup for him. Copies really close to his ags too, so maybe we'll see them start to group up more. I believe Centaur is really close to BKB. Yeah, uh, so ags plus BKB sounds like a good timing to me. I'm surprised he's going for the BKB. I, I would kind of expect maybe like a Shiva's or something this game, but we'll probably go back for it. It is still a very good Shiva's game with the amount of magic damage you're bringing can't imagine that it gets skipped here. Uh, hook shot out. Finds the Doom. Good catch by Fly as Ari. No chance of survival. And BZM looks at this. He's uh, going to go try and just cut the next wave instead. He, he's, he wants no business fighting that one. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Fly is nearby. He knows. Okay, he was thinking about doing it, but once he saw the clock work. They're going to follow behind, though. They want to get fly. Seb's career goes down. Fly. Stuck in the bottom lane here. The team starting to surround him. BZM with a nice remnant and the power shot to do the job. God's Rebuke from Whisper to finish him off. As Gunner needs to find a target if they want to find this fight. But his BKB is on Courier. I don't know if you want to take this engagement before that comes out. They blink away. Lelis now needs to be very careful. Tomato is going to turn it. Throw a missile out aggressively, and Lelis, no chance of surviving that one. He was so close to a spirit vessel, too. Oh, heck, you're right. I mean, I think they're strong as these items finish. OG's found a couple good back-to-back -back support kills there to give themselves a little space, but I do think Nouns with these items should look to at least make a play. I guess maybe they have to wait for Stampede. But I don't know, if, I, if that keeps happening, like, I feel like we keep saying, oh, they're close to being able to make a play. <laughs> if it keeps getting delayed, then that means nothing ends up happening. They have such good aggressive vision, too. They see BZM. They know he's over here. The question is, can you burst him? And I don't know. Ari's going to walk right underneath a ward here, so Lelis will scout him. Uh, gets the blink away at a last bit notice, but Gunner should intercept on the Centaur if he needs to. First stun comes out, fly with a hook shot. With the cogs, that's an easy one. That will be the vessel coming out for Lela, so a fantastic find. As they can look to clean up the tier 2 tower. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, nice grab here in the mid lane. BZM, he really wants the rune. It's going to be top, though. 
It's a shield rune, so unlucky there for him. This is a tanky sniper. Dyer's middle tower 2,000 HP, yeah. Dyer's top tower is under attack. All right, Yuma should get the tier two here now. Well, maybe not. They're actually afraid. They don't know where they are. So they back away, at least for the moment. Lelis is going to be the one putting his body on the line, maybe. Gunner now his turn. He's like, okay, someone finish off the tower, please. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Yuma realized he was hitting a tower instead of creeps. What am I doing? Oh, <laughs> get back in the jungle. He does need a BKB, right? Like, if you get doomed, being able to press BKB will turn the fight, you know, very easily for you. So it makes sense. I, I can understand it. Mid lane. Beautiful grab by Gunner. The follow-up is there. Fly, does he have the hook shot? He does, but... I think maybe there were creeps in the way. Yeah, there was. Very close to finishing off BZM there. Yeah, they're going to need to relax a little bit now. Gunner lost a lot of health in that attempt. Yeah. So, I don't know. I keep feeling like both teams are, like, kind of... Well, I don't know. OG feels like they're still taking their time. Um, letting Tomato farm up. Ari on the Doom. I mean, he's a hero who scales really well off that Devour. So, there feels less need for action on the side of OG. More okay just dragging things out. They've got the You're blink BKB be on Mars. Easily take the bottom tower. The question is, can you do anything else? Gunner is here alone, and a TP was just canceled. He actually needs to get out of here. Oh, Yuma coming, coming on the back the side. Top? They get the stomp, the hook shot onto the Morphling. Maybe actually he's got no Manta. The damage from Yuma. He almost finishes the kill, but the jump away. The missiles come and can Tomato get to safety? He cannot. Yuma with the BKB gunner with his own whisper responds with his. He will BKB TP out. Lelis now looking for Ari, looking for Seb. TP number one. Can they cancel these? It doesn't look like it. I thought for sure there was no shot of them getting that Morphling, but Gunner, persistence pays off. They might be able to do Roche here if they want. It's a little slow, but I don't, OG is not in position. I mean, they all TP'd out, so it'd take forever to walk back. Yeah, definitely taking some time here. A little bit slow. But, yeah, first Aegis will be very nice for Nouns. As, again, very similar to last game. There's been almost no gold advantage for either team. I think the highest we've seen is about 1,500 gold, almost 2,000 at one point. But that's about it. And, you know, while they do the Roche, OG pushes in mid and top. Dyer's bottom tower is under so attack. So they're still farming. They're still getting stuff done. Man, look at Ari and Whisper's positioning right now. They're just like hoping Sniper walks up there to go farm. <laughs> Please. You can't resist the call of the jungle creeps. I tried. in here alone. It calls to you. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it calls to all out. of nouns, and they are—they're all coming here. Uh oh, Yuma—he's gonna be like, "Is that a doom over there? How did he get there?" Whisper—he's—he's uh, he's gonna just leave. He's like, "All right, sorry, Ari. This one's all you, buddy." It was a cool idea for sure. It was a cool idea for sure. But now, oh, yeah, like you said, unfortunately, all of nouns walks up. <laughs> Now, are they just going to keep farming with this Aegis? Because this is Luna BKB. She's got a Manta Mask. I feel like they're relatively strong. Vessel and Shard on Gyro. I think you should fight. Like, if anyone doesn't BKB the Gyro's damage, you're going to die. Yeah, and I mean, that was a Doom kill, too. By the time they get here, he's almost up. I think they could have come a little sooner. Okay, they're kind of meeting in the mid lane. It's going to be a proper five on five at this point. Oh, they're smoking. They just finished up the Agon and there on BZM a moment ago. So he still has a lot of burst potential. They're going for a nice wrap around. And nouns are kind of split. Yuma playing aggressively here. 
I think they're kind of just hoping he's baiting on the Luna in the mid lane, and they are right. As Fly will be the one that walks in, pops the smoke here. Not the best kill, but you'll take it. Nice call down comes through. The silence, though, preventing the damage. On to BZM. The missile will catch Seb. Takes a beating on the backside, but Whispers in super aggressively. That BKB is about to expire. Arena Spirit does come out, though. Buys him a little bit of time. The damage from the sniper connects. Lelis needs to get this vessel on top oh, of him. He gets him right with the, the missile. Arena. And there oh, they've fine. done it. One that was trade. so close to being amazing for OG. They were so close to finding the sniper first, and that would have been a, a very quick kill. But instead, Clockwork is like the worst hero you could possibly find uh, from the enemy team. So no way are they going to find Seb here, are they? Oh, they want the Doom shots. potentially instead. Call like yeah, they just immediately pop the Stampede, jump in, Doom. No chance of getting out. Yes. Wind Ranger TPs immediately. They're looking at the sniper. Copy playing it very safe. I say as he he leaves the safety, steps out. Oh, There's TP's coming and Yuma is here as well. They scan up onto the high ground. They actually know Morph is here, and Tomato I think figures it out. He immediately TP's. Wow, BZM also just got very lucky. He was walking under Invis and just dodged Gunner on a tree, but there is a Sentry up on that cliff, so he nearly got spotted. It's a very close calls these last few minutes. You know what I just realized? What's up? All three of the Conda builders are in this game. There's like no other Conda builders in Dota besides Luna, Sniper, and Morphling, and they're all here. I don't see oh, a mid venge boy. here. <laughs> you don't even. I that that <laughs> has ruined my game so many times. I'm not joking about mid venge anymore. Uh yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you can see the damage from the sniper set up there, right? Seb loses almost his entire life, has to get four-staffed back into the base, barely survives. He loses the tier two tower. Whisper on the bottom lane. I think he knows something's up. I think he, yeah, he, he pings Zygar and he's like, I think they have a ward over here. It's actually just deeper in the lane, but Yuma, with this 40 seconds left on the Aegis, gonna try and just get to work. Look at the damage onto the Mars. Oh, uh, nice setup here from... Seb with that Gale Force. They want to just pop the Aegis, and they do. Okay. You got to probably bail here. Tomato doing what he did last game, but on the Morphling, just split pushing. And it will force Nouns back. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. They got about half that tier three with that Aegis, more than that a bit. I guess it's not too bad. Um, we might see them posture up in that bottom half of the map, try to take those two towers, and that'll set them up in a good position for Roshan when it respawns on the bottom half. Yeah. OG, I think, will try to defend that, though, because keeping that tier one tower in the offlane will actually really help with the offlane, or with the Roshan, because they can buy back TP in there. Jesus. The damage on a BZM hookshot barely missing Ari there. That would have been very nice, but nice dodge from OG. BZM will dodge out the missile, of course. Who do you One think? thing that I've noticed, Doom starting to creep up on the net worth here. Yeah, he's definitely getting a lot of farm. That's what actually what I was going to ask you. Who does he look to Doom in these fights? Probably Centaur. Just I, to get I don't, him killed off? I, I, that, but also, like, his stun double edge and, and stampede, I think, is way too good. If they get those spells off, I don't think you actually can win the fight. But, if you, I mean, if, if you solo out the Luna, maybe it's good enough. She just still can just press BKB and do a ton of damage is the problem. Yeah, that's like oh, Gunner. Oh, he really underestimated the damage there. I think that's a very recently finished Conda plus Enchanted Quiver on Morphling. So that's actually an insane amount of burst coming out. We find Ari in the bottom, the bottom lane. lane. Very nice, but a good Hurricane forced after safety arena. We'll keep him alive as well. Fly now. Needs to be a little bit careful. He's thinking of going for the God's Rebuke, but nah, does not want to dive here. I mean, again, uh, this is a massive death on your Centaur. 
Yeah, pretty painful, but fortunately, uh, he's going to respawn in time for Roshan. I think both teams should be looking to set up down here. Yeah, now that Tomato has is like his 20 talent with Konda Enchanted Quiver, like you were saying, like the amount of damage that this is. Dude, the amount of damage Do you see that. that? <laughs> yeah, it's like all three Double of these heroes Konda press hit. one spell. They just lose half their health. He has the man to dodge that one. Yep. Hook shot, backside. Who have they found? It's going to be Mars. He's going to be forced to BKB. There is no arena, but Gunner jumps onto the backside, gets on top of the Morphling, forces Seb out as well. That's going to be a waveform to safety. You get the Doom onto the sniper, but Copy, he's going to be just fine. Gunner, wondering if they can go for more. Looks like for now, the fight's going to come to an end. Very different team fighting than what we saw last game, right? Last game, the fights were a little bit more spread out and more kind of elongated. This is a burst game if I have ever seen. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I think the draft is really good versus a first pick Doom because I'm I'm really not sure who you're supposed to Doom because, like, if you Doom Centaur, I think it kind of makes sense. The spells from Centaur and Clockwork are pretty strong, but those are your initiators, and... Okay, hold on. Centaur <laughs> in a little bit of danger here. He still has the BKB, but how Morphling many times ratting. have we seen this? Morphling, ratting once again, Tomato. He just, like, reads the movements from now super well. He's like, yeah, they're going to go mid. I'm going to go uh, split push because no one can go high ground anyway. So does they did take the tower this time, which will make the next one really easy with the Luna. And then yeah. as they retreat here, I think they should all just move together to this bottom lane awesome. for that Roche. Uh, which will be spawning here in 20 seconds. Um, but the Doom, like, if he Blink, Doom, Centaur, and then everyone's like, okay, quickly kill Centaur, that's kind of as if Centaur initiated on a group of people because he's drawing all that attention, and Sniper and Luna just, okay, we just throw our Condas in now, right? But at the same time, if you Doom... Oh, oh my, my God. God. Good by Seb. He's going to buy back, but a great arena on the backside. BZM comes in, pops everything. The BKB from Yuma's doing work. He gets up onto the high ground. Do they have catch? The sniper is dead from Tomato. Oh, nouns. Can they do it? BZM down to a fraction of HP, but Yuma, he's got to be careful. Tomato's killing his entire team. Triple kill for the Morphling, and they are going to just stay on this Luna. Centaur can't get them out either. Uh-oh, uh Nouns. Tomato with this Blink Dagger getting some serious damage done. They're trying to just keep him in place. Mask of Madness comes out, and there's the Spear, and goodbye, Yuma. Goodbye, Gunner. Five heroes dead on the side of Nouns. Tomato seemingly doing it again. So much of that was started... I feel like all this was possible because Mars and Void Spirit found the sniper, got him killed off right away. That's like, that is sniper's weakness. But the way that fight was set up, they just weren't ready for that. Three of them caught in the arena and all the Void Spirit AoE spells. And once sniper was down, the fight broke down and Tomato was allowed to just go from target to target. Ooh, they tried to catch Tomato off guard here. Uh, that missile's still gonna hit. You don't have call down. He's full strength morphed pretty much. Uh, actually, he's still got a decent amount of agility left, but yeah, it's uh, not an easy kill by any means. You need a little, quite a bit more. They protect the lane of barracks. It's about as good as you can ask. But I mean, massive wins here from though. OG now. Yeah. That's such a good find from OG. That is the fight they've been patiently now. waiting for. Yeah, I looked at the death recap on copy, and it was just 1,700 magic damage from BZM. Like, that's it. Flare comes out. OG, knowing they can do this far faster than Nouns can get down the lane. So Aegis will be on Tomato. Whew. BZM player, let's go. Nouns in some trouble here. Running out of damage against this Morphling hero, and... Looked good for a while, but... Tomato? What? Okay, hold on. Not running out of damage against this Morphling hero. Does he go down a second time is the question. Probably not. We'll have to see. War dropped immediately up onto the high ground. Seb loses actually almost his entire HP here. Mars goes into the back line. The BKB 
gonna be popped, but Yuma standing his ground as well. Still has his BKB. He's gonna finally pop and try and just bring down Whisper on the Mars. Can he do it? He's trying, but Whisper, he actually falls heroes with a Satanic God's Rebuke, and now Gunner Cop from the Doom Tomato. Still plenty healthy, looking for Fly. Copy on the backside, trying to run for his life. I don't think he's making it out of this one. Oh boy, now it's dead on four. That God's Rebuke Satanic. I thought for sure Whisper was dead. That is such a sick play. I think they got a little scattered in that fight. Yuma was going on some targets while Sniper was being jumped in the back and Gunner was trying to help Sniper. They do kill Ari, but yeah, with Yuma dead. Uh-oh. Gunner. He tried to make a play, does not find the the Seb Wind Ranger, and as a result, he's stuck pretty deep onto the map. Bottom lane will fall to Tomato, now looking for the mid-tier 2 tower. EZM comes in, gets a grab onto the gyrocopter, and he's dead. Does have buyback. Can pop it if he needs. He'll pop the fortification as well to try and slow down these two lanes being taken. You have Sniper up in seven. The Luna up soon as well. But you're going to lose two lanes for this. And OG likely to back, not wanting to risk this one. Dude, Void Spirit actually just running Manta Illusions with a Cloak of Flames onto Gunner so he can't blink initiate. That's Fake so back. smart from BZM. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a great use of the illusions. They're going to smoke to see if Nouns will step out just a little bit. Tomato. He gets the bonus night vision when the Luna form as well, right? So can see pretty much everything in the base. Pops those Mantas to scout. Yeah, I mean, he sees everything. I think Whisper knows where Copy is. They have an observer pretty deep in the base. Has been oh, hoo -hoo, blinks away just barely. Yuma has Scotty Divine Rapier queued up, so that fight hitting them. <laughs> They're starting to feel it. Incoming. I think that last fight was. Uh, it did have them split up. I, I think. Luna is the sustained damage in the fight because of the build Sniper went for. He's like popping people on the ult. But the one who can actually do damage consistently is the Luna. And I think they tried to save the Sniper, but it let Luna die. And then from there, you can't take the fight anymore. So I, I think Sniper and Luna need to be closer, not on top of each other, but closer. So it's easier to protect both at the same time. That makes sense. I mean, a lot of the fights we've seen have been these very scattered fights where Tomato kind of waits to enter until he can see like clockwork or sniper or the gyrocopter and he just pops them right like this this mm. guy does so much damage yeah the fights that are going well for og are when they find the sniper and force force the like sudden chaotic like oh god save me <laughs> it breaks down the fight nice four staff out gunner again trying to find the void spirit but you are trapped inside your base. It is a 21,000 gold lead. Again, right before this fight, it was a 1,000 gold lead. This has been such a close game, just like game one, just so back and forth. And then it's just these one fight from OG where they just outplay Nouns Tomato, doing some crazy work on his carries performance in this, turn in this uh, series. Yeah, I have to imagine Seb's a big part of it because... Thinking back years of OG games, they have always displayed incredible patience in games that have been like even or behind, and they just hold on until finally they find like the perfect fight, and then they come back or they win like off of that. Uh, I feel like he's got to be a big part of that, seeing as he's been here the whole time as either a player or a coach. Let's see, I have on his courier here. That is a BKB. He's like, yeah, I don't want to die. Not risking this. Sells boots, buys BKB on the Morphling. Very safe. Ooh, Sniper's going to find. This, this is looking like a pub game, man.
They're gonna sit in here, they're gonna farm divines on copy. Radiant He's just gonna ult kill supports in one shot. Just sit at the fountain with three divine yeah, rapiers. Yeah, he's not gonna leave, yeah. Ho ho, ha ha. You think I'm trapped in here with you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, 40, 000, or 40 minutes of the game, a 22k gold lead, and OG just slowly trying to chip away at the high ground here. Next Roche, quite a bit away. I mean, any hero that walks out of this base is likely dead. As Whisper, he's finished up an Assault Kuros now. And he's queuing up an Overwhelming Blink. This guy does some serious damage. OG still has to be careful since... I mean, Luna's the type of hero, like, if you throw the fight on this high ground, the death timers are long enough that you can run it down and then take open, take the whole base. They're gonna go in. They jump for the clockwork. Gunner manages to stun up the morphing on the backside. BZM. He should be okay, as the rest of the team is not wanting to just jump in quite yet. Whisper, actually, underneath a ward sentry in the mid lane, as he pops that Trickster's Cloak, but... It is so hard to engage and first down a hero. Stampede comes out immediately. They're trying to get fly to safety. They get on top of Whisper. He pops the BKB. There's the arena. Gunner forced to pop his own. Yuma will stand his ground for the moment as Tomato will take the first lane of Barracks. Or, I'm sorry, the tier three tower looking for the last lane of Barracks. Is gets out for the moment. BZM will survive. Pops a regen rune. Tanks the stun. But they're so afraid to get out of the base. Well, they actually managed to find the Mars, the Force Staff. He's got that God's Rebuke, trying to heal himself back up. And Gunner's in trouble. Beautiful Spear actually just pushes back the Clockwork. Centaur is dead. Tomato with his BKB just tanks the entire Eclipse. And Yuma will turn around with his own. Whisper walks away under the cover of the Trickster's Cloak. Oh, they're trying to chase, but it's very scary. BZM coming back the other way. Gets on top of Yuma. The Doom comes out. Triple kill for Tomato. He's on the run now, though. Is Nouns will defend right outside their base. Can they get him? They finally do. No, he waveforms in the last second. The missile's trying to chase him. Is it going to connect? It will not. Tomato barely escapes. As the stampede now coming out, Tomato TPs to safety. Seb gets caught from the assassinate. He will die, but it costs you three buybacks. And a very long Roche. They don't even get Roche for that. Um, did we make any Divine Rapier progress? Oh, Sniper actually pretty close. Okay, close maybe gold. that is what Nouns needed. I mean, that was that's not what they wanted. They they would have loved to win a much bigger fight there, but if they get mega I mean, the game gets so hard for them. So they did commit a lot to try to hold that. This is their, I mean, it's truly the, de the Desperation Divine, right? This has to save the game for them. Yuma has no BKB bottom. BZM's gonna go in. Okay, does not manage to find him. I don't think OG needs to go crazy or anything. I feel also like they just wait for the, the buyback. They see him. Vessel's out. BZM goes in aggressively, managed to find Gyro, and that is it. Tomato cleans him up. Now looking for Gunner. No chance of escape. This guy's doing way too much damage. That is a dieback on the Centaur. Copy has his Divine. This is it. This is all you have left to defend the high ground. Or maybe you yeah. wait for Aegis. No, nah, no way, right? You're up a hero. I mean, you want to try and find this. Who do you go on? Going this for freaking... Gonna... The Granite Aura on Ari. Look how tanky everyone is, dude. 4,000 HP or more on pretty much every hero. It's Tomato getting to work on the Tier 4 Towers. The fortification comes out. There's the arena coming out from Whisper. They collapse on top of him. Divine and down. Tomato makes quick work of nouns. That is it. An ultra kill for the Morphling. OG clean up the series 2-0. And Tomato making a really good case for himself in this tournament. I feel like the story of this game was such good patience from OG. Again, like ratting with Morphling, uh, poking at Nouns, trying to find, like, do we know where Sniper is? If we don't, don't commit too hard. Like, finding just the right fight, break open everything. Again, just like really well played. When we thought the lanes looked really funny too, and they were, 
right? The There was endless creep dragon going on bottom. Top lane started off a little rough, but I, again, you just can't count OG down. Even if you are taking an early lead, a small one at that, right? Many teams see that snowball into the end of the game, but OG keeping it close. This went, it was like 30 minutes before there was actually a sizable difference, right? Like 35 yeah. minutes. Yeah, the game was like within one to 2,000 gold all the way up to 35 minutes. And then they take the one fight, get Roshan, and from there, OG basically control everything. I wonder if Nouns is not pushing enough. I feel like both in game one and game two, as it as we leave that laning stage, I know it wasn't a massive lead, but they felt a little bit ahead. But it feels like they're waiting for certain item timings to line up. And in that time period, OG was just farming incredibly well. I mean, maybe it's maybe it's Tomato doing it again. I I don't know how he's farming so fast in this early game, uh, but it feels like you give him an extra minute or two. You give all of OG like that extra minute or two whispers hitting his like blink BKBs, uh, Morphling's getting like real scary ramping up. Right, I, I don't know if you can give them those few extra few extra minutes. Yeah, I think there were there were a couple things that happened in the lanes that really I think cost Nouns their momentum. That first like stampede gank into the bottom side where it ends up turning three kills for OG completely salvaged BZM's early game because he was struggling a lot. He was definitely like at the bottom of the net worth for quite some time, and then he gets like a triple kill off the rotation, and suddenly Nouns like. Are definitely like struggling to uh, keep keep that void spirit under control, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I just have to say like Tomato in the late game looks like one of the best carries uh, I've seen in a while. He is so crisp. Yeah, I really like the way OG's doing it. I, I do think they are. It's part of their game plan to do that. I think they are enabling him. So n not to take away anything from Tomato, but making sure his teammates also get the credit, right? I think they're making sure to pick him a strong hero. They're making sure to give him the lanes he needs, make the space he needs. So just a fantastic team effort to play around uh, Tomato's like incredible farming speed into like the late game execution has been so good. Yeah, absolutely. And it's late game, like we see him turning into the Luna and I didn't even really consider it, but he gets the, the damage reduction shard from the Luna, which is huge, right? Like he just war like waveforms on top of the Luna with his own damage reduction and just shreds her. Like she doesn't stand a chance. So just a really cool performance from OG as, as a whole. I think Whisper on this Mars looked super good as well. Like he had uh, incredible arenas. And Seb Windranger, what does it really say about it? This is like his the one the one person in the world who was playing Windranger support when everyone thought it was dead. So it you know? is just not to him though. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's crazy because I, I looked at this draft, I'm like, no one in their right mind would pick Mars Doom on the same team, but OG will apparently, and it worked out great for them. I think they, they did it really well too. The uh, Nouns tried to adjust to it, but I think the immediate shove of the first wave into everything else like the repeated creep drags they're playing these weird lanes and they're playing it well um it, it's really tricky try lanes and like creep dragging lanes it's it's kind of this exact science that you need to know as a pro player and yet it's not done very often so you're not as practiced at it as like the usual 2v2 lanes but if just like a little bit goes off it, it completely changes a lot in that lane and teams that it's easier to be the team that does it, right? Because you are practice, you are yeah. thinking about it. And OG runs these weird off lanes that catch all of us off guard, but they know why they're doing it. And that puts it on the enemy team to have prepped for this one team that does this, right? You gotta go out of your way to like discuss like, this is exactly how we play the lane versus this one single team that does this weird stuff. Uh, and if you're not ready for it, you get games like this. Yeah. That was a super fun game. It was a very fun series. OG looking very strong so far in this tournament, but we're going to go to a short break and we'll be back with an interview to talk to them about this in just a little bit. Stay tuned, everyone. We'll see you in just a moment.
Welcome back, everybody. And as promised, we will have an interview here in just a second. Uh, let me ask you, Zach. Uh, well, okay, never mind. Let's not. Let's not. Let's not mess around. Talk to me. Who do we got for our interview this time? <laughs> We got BZM from OG here to talk to us about that win. Uh, very dominant win, I feel like, in that uh, series. How you doing, man? Nice. Thank you. So, I'm gonna, I got a question for you. Uh, this series, like, both games played out extremely similarly. There was almost no gold advantage for, like, 30-some-odd minutes. And then you guys kind of just group up, take a couple fights, and steamroll the rest of the game. Was is this just like intentional, or is this just kind of a byproduct of what was going on? I mean, no, it's not intentional for sure. More, more like uh, um, we just see that they're kind of not not so lost, but they just all win on like first 20 minutes and they bring five people or four people for every move and we're like okay we, we will see you in another 20 minutes and see how you do then you know <laughs> <laughs> all right that works uh so uh you got to play void spirit here in game number two um playing against a, a mid sniper and like transitioning what was like kind of your game plan like approaching these team fights uh for like you know just as the void spear player um well you always have a a, a basic plan right so you, like an ideal plan so ideally i jump the sniper right but uh if he's a good player he's not gonna give it to me at least not easily so if he hides in the bushes for 10-15 seconds while we're fighting, then you know, we'll fuck him. I will just kill the rest of the team, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, mainly just don't go on the centers and the wunas and just kill the rest. Yeah, I think that was it. Nice. All right, Zach, what do you got? Um. I am curious to go back to that point about how I feel like OG has always been a team that shows really good patience and uh, looking for the right fight, I feel like, where either you're behind or maybe the game's even, and it seems like you find like this perfect fight and the game opens up for you guys. Is that something you discuss beforehand or in the games themselves? Who Who's leading that? Is it... Uh, like the team captain and on Seb sharing his like influence, or is it all of you guys kind of being part of that? Mm, I would say more of everybody, because like I'm like I'm saying, we're not planning to make these games be so slow and uh, uninteresting and uh, like stale, <laughs> and then in one big fight and everything explodes. We're not planning it, but that's how it turns out. So. Uh, yeah, timings come together, uh, like we get into one, like make one strong call and fall with, with everybody, so nothing too uh, special, nothing too complex, we just wait things and uh, use them. Yeah, that's it. Got it. Okay, then another question for you as a mid laner. Yesterday, you guys played Blacklist, and we saw game one, they killed you first, and that made your lane hard. Game two, you get the first blood, then your lane goes a lot better. Right now, it feels like a lot of first bloods really impact the laning stage. As a mid laner, if your opponent gets first blood, do you do you try to like call for more help? Like, How do you deal with that when it seems so powerful? Um, step one, don't try to not give first blood. Step two is step two is uh, if the matchup is still in my favor, then no need to do anything. Uh, but if it's like most uh, step three is if it's uh, DK versus uh, Puck, for example, then I'm definitely gonna need help. So yeah. 
uh, really depends. Like before, I thought whoever gets the first bot, if it's like it would, that, it would be better on side lanes because uh, mid lane, you are, like I used to be getting first bots and I'm buying bottle like from, from the start. And then I'm taking so bad, so bad trades that I'm because I think oh I have bot like I can do anything I want right, and then I get into some insanely bad trade and I have bot right but the guy against me is more than fine, so I thought it's a bait but past couple weeks months the definitely not a bait like uh, just don't buy bottles yeah with the first bot. Nice. Got it. Okay. Okay. I got you. one more question for you. Uh, so, being that this is like a very new group stage, how do you feel about the Swiss stage format just in general coming into now that you guys are up two series, one more puts you guys directly into the next, uh, you know, the next stage of the event? Do you like the Swiss group stage or do you prefer, or like, do you kind of like the traditional ones we've seen in the past? I am enjoying it for now. Um, I mean, mainly because it's something different. So anything different than the go-to formats that have been overused, I like because it's it's just different. It's just new. So yeah, I like. Nice. All right. Well, I appreciate that. That's kind of how I was thinking, but. Uh... Just want to say thank you for joining us again. Congratulations. Now you are one of four teams going to be playing for the uh, qualifying spot tomorrow. Um, but is there anything that you'd like to say before we let you go? Uh, I mean, thanks to everybody that... I mean, I'm going to be cringe, but thanks to everybody that still believes in OG and all that stuff. Let's go. Uh, Let's go. No, no worries, BZM. Thank you so much for joining us, man. You played crazy well today, so congratulations, and hopefully uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, guys. Goodbye. All right. OG making a name for themselves here once again in this uh, event, as they are now, again, like I said, one of four teams to secure themselves, like two wins at the moment. Uh, let me see if I can double check who those are. It should be Boom Esports. Entity, OG, and Talent. So South America, Western Europe, and Southeast Asia all looking very good. Good mix of teams. Yeah. I wonder but... if tomorrow we'll start seeing... There's always a level of, like, you got to win, try your best, but you also got to explore a little bit of, like, different ideas, right? I'm curious now that we're getting into teams that have uh, two wins in the series technically means you only need one more series win over the next three series. So especially in like game one of the next series we see tomorrow, I wonder if it feels like, yeah, let's try something wild, right? Because we lose this game. I mean, we still could win the series. We could still win two more games. Or if we lose this series, we still have two more series to try. I'm I'm curious. That might be, maybe we'll get to see some fun stuff. I'm very excited. We haven't gotten to see Entity yet. I don't know who we're covering tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I want to see the Monkey King Strat come out. This is it. Someone try to let them have it, beat it. I want to see it. I think we have both of the 2-0 games tomorrow, you and me. I think we have OG Entity followed by Talon Boom. I'll have to double check, but I think when I looked at the schedule originally, that was what it was. But either way, I would love to cast Entity because we got to enjoy them a lot through the qualifiers. I think people were underestimating this team quite a bit. We love their position for Monkey King, so hopefully... Hopefully it's going to be us, but we don't know. Uh, just in general, it's been a very fun day. It's been a long day, but it does finally have to come to a close. So um, for those of you who maybe don't know, there are two channels you can catch all of the Dota action happening here. So there is, of course, the B stream right now that you know we're about to close things up on. And then there is the main stream without the underscore B on it. So make sure to go check that out. Uh, you can check them out on Twitter as well. But I think that's it, right, Zach? I don't think we got anything else we got to do. Nope. Just get ready for more Dota tomorrow. Uh, teams will qualify tomorrow. Two teams will. But two teams yep. are also going to be out tomorrow, guys. So tensions are high for those teams. I believe it is uh, Nine Pandas, uh, KV, Rest Farmers, and Virtus Pro. So two of those teams will be sent home tomorrow. You don't want to miss that. That's the most exciting part about Dota. 
Dude, Eastern Europe actually struggling a lot. I did not realize they were both own. I didn't realize the team, the two teams are zero and four right now. But yeah, VP and Nine Pandas on the chopping block. So we'll have to see. But it's been a fantastic day. We want to say thank you all so much for tuning in again. My name's Cryptic. I've been here with Z Quixotics the whole damn day. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you tomorrow.